We have a mission to unlock the dreams that football makes possible. When they told you that the dream was over, but here's the truth, your dream is just beginning. We are ready for football and an opportunity for everybody on the field, but throughout these 18 to 10 weeks. Rossman oh! wins the cape! Parker Romo, 57 yards, and it is good! Tanucci, Gordon caught it! Gordon's backstepping, Gordon's gonna score! <laughs> Abram Smith, how about it? Another huge run, and he's in the end zone! They feed off of the beer oh, snake, we feed it off of the beer snake! <laughs> Jordan Thomas just took advantage of his opportunity. I've been through a lot, man. I'm grateful for my opportunity. My oldest, he's six, wanted me to really get back into playing. Dad, I want to watch you play again. It means a lot, so that's why you made the decision, brother. When you're looking for football fans with undying passion, you have to play the game in St. Louis. Oh, it's a fake and it's gonna work! Jennings, 64 yards! Jacor Pearson, touchdown Seattle! Silvers, they're gonna look for a double pass. Downfield, wide open, touchdown Houston! Win or go home, the playoffs are here. Wide open is Ethan Wolf. He's in, touchdown DC! And the defenders will play for an XFL championship. From four and six to XFL championship game, the Arlington Renegades have won the South Division. They have worked all season for this, and tonight a champion will be crowned. Here's Sal Canella. First down and room to run. Touchdown, Arlington. Goes deep downfield, and it is caught. Josh Hammond will take it 72 yards. Luis Perez finds his receiver in the crossing route and roll for Brown. He is in again. The Arlington Renegades are XFL champions. This is the goal I had. This was the goal when I first signed up to play in the XFL. What a game, what a season, what a league. Parker Romo kick to Darius Shepard. Now the players can go. Shepard from his 15. He's going to take it just outside the 30-yard line. And as promised, we'll get a look at Battle Hawks quarterback, two-time national champion in Alabama, A.J. McCarron. Hey, that's Colin Tash. That's a college test. Swamp left, F fly, past 14 Willie, Z deep cross, someone, right? Talk to Bruce Gratkowski before the game. They want to take a shot on this first play. Look for the deep over by the Z. There'll be a post on the other side taking the coverage off the top of the offense. And there's a check down. I told Bruce, don't start this league off. Don't start this game <laughs> off with a check down. Let's take a shot down the field. Former quarterback of Joey Galloway's. Karen play fake, looks downfield, had no one there. That's caught by Hill, and Brian Hill does a nice job for a first down on the first play brought to you by Drew Lewis. And this was a look. They got the safety going down through the middle with the deep over. A.J. McCarron played a lot of football, knew the safeties were back. Take the check down, move the sticks early. Uh, Joel and uh, Jordan were the starting linebackers. Jordan. So throughout the afternoon, we'll hear from the offensive coordinator, Bruce Gretkowski, as well as the defensive coordinator, Jim Herman. Set. Listen. We expect Hill to be busy, and what a play on defense by the Brahmas, and that's Jack Corner, a good play coming up from the safety position. You watch Warmont's corner made one of the best receptions 
in practice, jumped up, grabbed it with one hand, and you can see they're at the line of scrimmage. This is going to be a physical football game. Talk to these two coaches, two physical players, and Anthony Beck was a tight end. Hines Ward was a receiver, one of the most physical receivers ever. You know this game is going to be played physically. A loss of three, second and 13. Set! What are you? Wait, set! Again, the hill off the right side. Both of these teams want to run the ball today. They get the three yards back. Check that gain of two. Drew Lewis on the tackle as we bring in both coordinators. Jim Herman, the D.C., Bruce Breitkowski, the O.C. McCarron quickly to Prohl on the slip screen. Prohl a good Where's job, that? and he's going to have enough for a first down. Flag on the play, third and 11. We'll see what that is, but for right now, it is a first down battle Hawks. Holding. Offense. Number nine, 10 yard penalty goes down. A little bit uncomfortable getting out there, holding his block. The wide receiver just got that hand over the top. Joey, what are we doing? Y'all don't block anybody on the edge? That's exactly why I didn't block anybody on the edge. Just run them <laughs> off. Get them out of there. The crazy part is where the call came from. Came in the middle of the field and late. That drives coaches nuts. down the gate another third and long for McCarron they elect to run it with Hill Hill's got some space he's a good looking running back brought down by Luke Bark who will get into his story today and a nice job by the home team Brahma's defense they're gonna force a punt on the opening possession Joey, surprised by that play call there on third and long? Well, you're getting third and long. It, it doesn't surprise me that they want to play it a little closer to the vest. I know the attitude coming in was let's air the ball out, let's go down the field. But if it's not there, you can't do it. They turn to the run game, which did not help them out. Sterling Hoff, Richter, the punter, Landon Akers, deep to receive for San Antonio. Another flag on the play as Akers takes it to the 25-yard line. We will walk through the punting rules when they become relevant. Punt of 47, a return of 14. Stripping number two kicking uh, receiving team. Here, he, here he's calling it. Yeah, he, right. During the kick of the receiving team. Okay. We're going to go 10 yards from the end of the kick. 10 yards from the end of the kick. During the kick, tripping. Receiving team number two will be in force half the distance to the goal. First down. Now time for San Antonio's offense. Jack Cohn, former quarterback at Wisconsin and Notre Dame, he will lead this Brahma's offense, who we believe will be heavily relying on the ground game of Balazs and Patrick. Bad gorilla, Z Casper on bait. Ready. He's got a loop. We go. That's Balazs on first down, just past the six-yard line penalty, took it back to the five, and a gain of two. Atkins and Rose, talented linebacker out of Iowa State on the tackle. On the ball, on the ball. Hey, good donkey. Good donkey, donkey. I'm under, I'm under. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Mighty. 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 Two plays, two runs, Balazs off the right side. There goes Kalen. Kalen's going to have enough for a first down and a big run for the former Arizona State star and a gain of 15 forced out by Kelly. A guy the size of Balazs with the ability to move, switch his hips, 
jump outside at 237. When he gets to the secondary, that's the last thing a corner or safety wants to see. That's the exact thing I was just thinking. A man that big making a jump cut, getting outside, then you see the wheels. This guy's listed 230 pounds. Man, he's moving down here. Opposite, opposite, opposite. Omaha, Omaha, we go. That was Bellage again after the big gain and a gain of two, brought down by Lakeo London. Anthony Back, head coach of St. Louis Battlehawks, former colleague of ours at ESPN, but he's loving this opportunity to coach him up. Yeah, he's excited about this opportunity. His first time being a head coach, he's coached some high school, he's done some different things, but this is his team, and they have his attitude. They want to be physical up front, Vegas, Vegas. and they want to go on the offensive side and also run the football. Rex, Rex, Vegas, Vegas, we go. Whitey, my son. First pass of the game for Cohn. Scans the field, goes back to Bellage out of the backfield. That's good. That'll bring up a third and hey, hold five. On, hold on, hold on. All right. Give me, uh, give me a nickel. Z right, Z right, 72 fist dagger. Z right, 72 fist dagger. Fist, fist, you got a uh, diagonal. Here we go. Vegas, Vegas. Here we go. Whitey! My son. Third and three. Cone across the middle of the field. Wants a flag. They get it intended for Jalen Tolliver. And we've got a player down in the backfield. It's number 72, it's Norman I think Price. 28, spot of the foul. Flag's in a good spot. All right. Pass interference, defense. Spot of the foul, automatic first down. That penalty on Official Elijah Hamilton. For an injured player. Bad Oscar F dial. Check that, check that. And you can see why these quarterbacks make so much money, why they're the highest paid players on the field. Did you hear Cone tell Patrick what route he had? Your quarterback has to know every single route, every single protection, every single coverage he's looking at. He has to tell these guys what they're doing. So Norman Price, injured player. Kai Abshear will step in in his absence. Talking to some of the league officials, Russ Brandon Press, very happy with injuries in yesterday's game, got out relatively clean. So we'll keep an eye on him. First down after the penalty, ball spotted now, just shy of the 35. It's Patrick up the middle for a gain of one. Stay in nickel, stay in nickel. Okay, we got, you got trips left, 65 under, X in flare. Trips left, 65 under, X in flare. 65, 65, what? Flare. What is the mic? Hey, takes two, Jalen, takes two. Vegas, Vegas. We go. ID, my son. Here comes the pressure, Cone gets it off. Tolliver can't hang on. A good job by Cohn reading the pressure. Yeah, you can tell Co you heard Cohn say, Chalen, it takes two. That means if two guys blitz, then you're going to break your route off, and that's a hot route underneath, which Cohn tried to hit. They were a little off, but you can hear the communication to his receiver letting him know that if two of these guys blitz on the defensive side, I need you to break it quick so I can get the ball out of my hands. 65, scan, read. Lloyd, Lloyd, we go. Whitey, why is it hot, hot? Omaha, Omaha, we go. Third and nine, Cone again over the middle, pass tipped. I can't tell if that was picked off. It looks like it hit the turf. Interception. Yeah, we're looking, we're looking, we're looking. Does TV want the break? So Nate Maders for now credited with the interception. 
The pass was tipped by Alizé Mack. Got to Tiffany Blackman. Thanks, Matt. I am joined by XFL owners Danny Garcia, Jerry Cardinal, and Dwayne Johnson. And you all just announced that San Antonio and the Alamo Dome will host the first XFL championship game here. Danny, what is it about the city of San Antonio and the fans that made you want to bring the inaugural championship game here? Well, I mean, you can feel it today. The passion, the excitement. This city has been overlooked in the past, and this is an opportunity, and we are not going to do it. This is an incredible city. They are so warm. There is so much to do, so much history and history, heritage, and this is a football town, and we love it. Jerry, you all kicked off the XFL in Arlington yesterday. Today you're announcing that San Antonio will host the championship game. Has it been a whirlwind 24 hours? It definitely has, and what a great way to kick off the 2023 season for the XFL and the heart of football nation in Texas. Arlington, Houston, great returning cities for us. Fans didn't miss a beat, and here in San Antonio, I have to say the fans haven't missed a beat either. They're new fans of the XFL, and they've blown us away. The, the, the atmosphere here is absolutely electric. Dwayne, the city of San Antonio, the Alamo Dome, they have a special significance for you. What is your connection to this city? You know, I, I started my career, I started my career right here in San Antonio many years ago uh, when I was a rookie in the world of professional wrestling. But, you know, coming here to San Antonio helped shape and form who I was, not only as a pro wrestler, but also as a man, as a young man at that time. So to be able to come back um, with this, in this capacity, for us to bring the XFL here, uh, deliver a team here to San Antonio, and you feel the passion, you feel the mana and the excitement here, the electricity, is really special for us. And on top of that, football, this was my dream. I was supposed to be in my head on that field. And winning Super Bowls, I mean, that was the dream in my head, but um, you know, I love the fact that years later, life comes full circle. Danny and I and Jerry are able to put this league together and, um, and able to provide opportunities for players to live their dream. And what a perfect place to be able to finish the season here in San Antonio. Matt. Tiffany, great stuff. Thank you. As you see St. Louis with the ball, they had a gain of seven on the first player. That's Brian Hill. Want to bring in Dean Blandino. Dean, the interception stood. What did you see? Yeah, we were looking to see if the if the nose of the ball touched the ground before the player gained control of it. We got a couple of really good looks. It's going to be the left hand. Watch the left hand of the defender just get underneath it. We didn't have enough definitive evidence to overturn it. So what we call that, we're going to clear the interception and we're going to keep it keep the game going. Dean, thank you. Third and one for Ready? St. Louis. McCarron fakes to Hill. Tries to set his feet. Here comes the pass rush. And he's going to fall down just short of the first down marker. Drew Lewis on the tackle. And Joey, first opportunity for Anthony Bex to make 12, a decision. 12. 12. Jingle Let's go. right, F King. Let's go! to Kareem Walker, McCarron, receiver out of the backfield, and just misses Jake Sutherland. Here we go. One flood, burn Buffalo, boom, lock on Vegas, ready. Norman Price back in at guard after the injury. Here we go. Mighty, son. After the fourth down stop, Cone, the play fake, eyes down, failed, puts one right in the middle of four St. Louis defenders, and that's Travis Johnson at a gain of 17. And this is just a stop route in the middle of the field. You go down, you're reading the safety. If you can get beyond him, you keep going straight. If you can't, you sit it down in the middle of the zone. Great throw Vegas, by Cole. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Mighty. 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 Tempo, Balage. A gain of three brought down by Atkins. Bad Bronco, Bad Bronco, Bad Bronco. Balazs set an FBS record. Eight touchdowns in a game against Texas Tech. Drafted in the fourth round by the Miami Dolphins. Omaha, Omaha, we go. 
the pitch to Belage to the left side. A good job on that St. Louis defense. Strung him out a little bit there, able to get one, bring it up a third down. Talk about the amount of talent on these teams. And Belage was a guy that Hans Ward has talked about numerous times that he can't believe he's actually in this league and not on an NFL roster. Belage is the kind of guy that this is a chance for him to showcase what he can do to get back to the NFL. So third and six. Here comes the pressure. Cone plants that back foot. And a good job getting it to the receiver, Landon Akers, his first appearance on offense. And that'll be a first down, San Antonio. Great job by St. Louis's defense. Ben DeLuca in the backfield to get Bellage. Loss of two. This defense is really just flowing extremely well. They're staying patient. Gaps sound the linebackers. Coach Beck said that's the strength of our team. We've got a bunch of war daddies on that second level. You see those guys feasting right now. We out. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Quick out again to Akers, gets a couple of blocks. That Akers, he's a little shifty down there. They call him the Cooper Cup type of this offense. And that's a big game. Even though it's not a first down, it gets them back into a rhythm where they can go back to the run game if they want to. They can throw the short passes. It's a third and five. But more importantly, they're in scoring position now, Matt. And for people that have bet the over in this game, there's been no points yet. We'll get into that. Harry, 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 Harry. Harry, we'll go. Whitey, what's that on? Omaha, Omaha, we go. Back off the pressure. Cone's got time, has a receiver, and again throws it high. Johnson can't hang on. Hamilton there for the deflection. Rama's players slow to get up after the defection here on third down. And this is one you'll see on film and you'll wonder, Hamilton, just catch the ball. I mean, grab the football and go score. Willie Wright, the injured player for San Antonio. Played his college ball at Tulsa. A lot of these Brahmas players, connections to their home state of Texas. Throughout training camp here at the XFL, the hub was in Arlington, so everyone spent a lot of time there in the North Texas area where they go to the respective cities. Let's take a look at 58 here on this play. You see his right ankle rolled up on there trying to get the pass protection. But Joe, you said Johnson catch the ball a little bit high from Cone. Yeah, well, Elijah Hamilton had a chance to score a touchdown, basically. This ball was tipped in the air, and it's sitting there, and he's driving on it, clearly sees the ball, and just smacks it out of the air. Now, obviously, as a receiver, I would look at that and say, that's why you're playing deep in the back. The every over hit in yesterday's opening game. So you're saying there, there will be points coming in this game because it's off to a slow start. And if you took the over, uh, the way I like to look at it is you need about 10 points per quarter. And right now they're behind that schedule. You're so negative. Well, Romo. We don't, we don't have any points. 43-yard attempts. How about it, Parker Romo? So by my math, you just need 35 more points in that overall hit. Also, by my math, you've got a Romo playing football in Texas in February. Joey, it's a slow climb with the points. Have you ever bet an under in your life? No, the heck no. I'm always going over. So that's Brian Hill with the kick return past the 32-yard line. We talked about A.J. McCarron and why he wanted this opportunity in the XFL. I love y'all. Big kiss. Lean down here. You lean down here, Cash. Down here. No, go down here. Mwah. 
Love you, Hap. Daddy, let's go, Daddy. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, Daddy. All right. Let's go with. Huh? Go. I got to go back and watch him. Karen said his kids would find clips of him playing football on YouTube. Got it. And this was an opportunity for them to come out and see him play football. And I've had that issue myself. You know, I, and I have a chance to coach my kids in football. And they'll do some things, and I'll tell them, like, run all the way to the end zone, don't celebrate early, those kind of things. They'll go to YouTube, pull up some video of, of <laughs> me not doing what I'm coaching, and say, Dad, Right. Uh, what about this? Dad, tuck in your shirt. Quit showing your stomach. Exactly. Quit golfing with a towel on your belt. Wear pants to work, you know. That's Brian Hill starting running back, going off. He was a remarkable player at Wyoming in college. Fifth round pick of the Atlanta Falcons back in 2017. Going to be Kareem Walker now in the backfield for St. Louis. They start yeah, with the ball good, just off the 30-yard line. Set. Wait, 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 wait. Quick throw, McCarron batted down. Mug. backfield for McCarron. You heard him tell Kareem he's got a go route. Pressure gets to McCarron and he just gets as much as he can and a good job avoiding that rush brought down by Williams and a gain in six bringing up third and man. San Antonio's defense has been really good in this game. The attitude of St. Louis was to open up this offense. Go down the field with it and they haven't been able to do that and you can see this offensive struggle. So third and three. Set. Wait, wait, set. Crowd loud. McCarron time over the middle. Misses his target, Gary Jennings. Hey, don't stop. Man coverage, man coverage. McCarron's telling him it's man coverage. Well, he wants him to keep running through the defensive side. If it's man, you continue on the move if you're a receiver. If it's zone, you sit down and the quarterback puts the ball on you. You can see there's a miscommunication. Jennings not reading the coverage correctly. So you'd mentioned San Antonio's defense, a great job on this offense early on. Hoff Richter to punt again to Akers. A punting rule that I'll walk through with you real quick. If the punt goes out of bounds inside the 35 yard line, the ball is spotted at the 35 yard line. If it goes out of bounds, what does this do? It is, encourages this returns, as Dean said with the kickoff return as well. They want to show that there is an opportunity to be able to do kick returns and punt returns safely. That was a punt of 43 and a return of six. Listen, listen, hey, we just got to get momentum going, okay? We got to put one play. Patrick in the backfield comes out. Cone has to avoid the rush and a nice job doing so. But St. Louis's defense right there after Alizé Mack picks up four. Yep, double right, good frog, good frog, good frog. Vegas, Vegas. Here we go. Second and six, Patrick off the left side. Boy, is he a physical runner. And that's going to be a first down for San Antonio. And barring anything else, likely as we get to about 10 seconds here in the first quarter. It's a quarter. It's 
start of the second quarter. Three nothing. Jack Cohen of the Brahmas Thanks with the ball. Thanks to Fred. Thanks to Fred. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Righty, son. Cone to pass. Patrick open out of the backfield. He goes across the middle. Finds Fred Brown with the reception and a gain of seven. That's a perfect play call. Jack Cone gets him seven yards. He's done just enough in the pass game to make St. Louis's defense respect their ability to pass the ball. And now they can get back to their run game, which is what they want to do with these two good big frog, backs they have frog, in Patrick and Balazs. Vegas, Vegas. Here we go. Righty, right side. Two passes in a row. That out to Akers. Should be enough for the first down for San Antonio. All right, here we go. Let's go even. Let's go mixer Nicole. choice Let's fire zone. Kilo. Even mixer choice spread fire left zone. Kilo, 75 Haas, Y option. Spread left Kilo, 75 Haas, Y option. Boy, boy, boy. 75 Haas sounds fun. Kilo. <laughs> So the Y, the y option part of that is your tight end has an option route, which means he's probably going to work the linebackers to find an open space. Why is it hot? Who's the hoss? Hey, takes two, takes two. You might have to ask uh, Eric McClain that question. <laughs> Cone empty backfield shotgun. Pressure comes. Cone took a hit, but he's able to get it to Dion Yelder. That was Willie Harvey. You heard it on the microphone. The hit Cone took. He came unblocked, but Cone stood there and made the throw. You figured the uh, defense coordinator Donnie Abraham was going to send something at Cone to make this offense uncomfortable, but you did see the choice route by the tight end. Sits down. Yelder makes a nice, easy catch and moves the chains again. Vegas, Vegas. Here we go. Righty. My son. Six different receivers have caught a pass so far. Akers again. Boy, they love this Landon Akers kid. Chris Cooper on the reception. Iowa State. Hey, Bison. Bison. Was where Akers played his college ball. Bison, Bison. We go. Patrick off the right side and a gain of two. Elway, Elway. Flex 54, Flex Elway, 54 three hole, again. Elway. Flex 54, Flex 54, pack, pack. Don't wait, don't wait. Get set, Fred. Flex 54, Flex 54. <laughs> Quarterback sneak from Jack Cohn. <laughs> Jack Cohn's wondering, we got these really big running okay, backs behind go. me. <laughs> <laughs> and you send me up flex, in the middle? Flex 51, flex 51, flex 51. Check that, check that, check that. Flex 51. Stay nickel, stay nickel. We got three hole, bad Oscar, F dial. Three hole, bad Oscar, F dial. Hey, bad Oscar, bad Oscar, bad Oscar. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Ladies. My son. So first and ten after the sneak, high snap, and Cone is getting absolutely pummeled from that pressure. Travis Feeney with the pressure forces the out of bounds throw. That little hesitation, the pump fake by Cone, the offensive line is thinking this ball is coming out quick, and that's why he took the hit because he held onto the ball a step too long. Hey, Harry! Harry, Harry! We go! Lady! Why is it hot? Omaha, Curtis, Omaha, Curtis, we go! Curtis. Cone pressured, balls out! Scooped up by Feeney! Feeney caught, but a big play by the Battle Hawks defense. Travis Johnson, the fast receiver, able to get Feeney. And I talked about that pass rush, Joey, being aggressive, and they got to it. Get him out. Get him out. And you can see Donnie Abraham, the defense coordinator, was starting to send some pressure at home because he looked really comfortable in the pocket, finally getting home. They put a number of hits on him, this time getting there quick enough to get the ball loose. And this is a huge play for St. Louis. Ready, 
Watch that. Good field position for McCarron in the Battle Hawks. Play fake, climbs the pocket. That is good quarterback, and in a great catch by Jake Sutherland. And a big game for St. Louis, gain of 20. And you can see McCarron sees the corner sitting down. If you just look at this, you think maybe that's not a great throw, but it actually is a really good throw because he sees the corner sitting outside, so he throws it to the inside to stop his tight end from running into that corner to a big hit. So first and goal, St. Louis. Set, let's go! What is What is Walker fake, McCarron end zone, incomplete. That was intended for Marcel Aitman. Seventh round pick by the Raiders in 2018. Played his college ball at Oklahoma State. And Aitman is 6'4". You could just see the size. Now, that, that appeared that there should have been a call there. Why can't Dean Blandino call down there and say, hey, <laughs> that was pass interference. Get him off the receivers. Well, Dean can't just go rogue. I don't know why shot. not. Dean, jump Set. in. <laughs> what do you say? Now we got movement. See, now we got more time to jump in and say that was a pass interference. Ball, ball start. Off offense. Number 61. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Mike Panashuk. Yeah. Double right, Z tap, tie, 50 hoss, F you go on. Motioned out of the backfield, empty backfield for McCarron. Looks to the end zone, has a receiver, overthrows the intended receiver, Darius Shepard, bringing up a third and goal. I'm not sure Darius Shepard knew the ball was coming to him. It looked like a miscommunication ball in the middle. Didn't seem, seem like he knew it was coming. Let's go, trips up, tight text, Lincoln extra. Their first timeout. Come on now. The half. So after the turnover, now third and goal for St. Louis, looking to get on the board down three nothing. Joey Galloway, Matt Berry, alongside Eric McLean, Tiffany Blackman. Opening weekend of the XFL. Empty backfield for McCarron. Here comes the pressure. Escapes. Can't get away from it a second time. And it's that Brahma's defense again. Mike Scott brings down A.J. McCarron. That'll force a field goal. And Joey, I'm impressed with this San Antonio defense. Yeah, what a win for this defense to come on the field in short field position, ball already in scoring position, and to get a stop and hold them to a field goal. We know that St. Louis wants to air this ball out, and that defense on the back end has been outstanding, making plays, taking them out of their game plan. Again, if you're a person that has bet the under, Matthew, I know your math was uh, pretty good early. If you bet the under in this game, you're feeling pretty good in this first half. Donnie Hagman on for the field goal attempts. They whistled it dead. A timeout for St. Louis. Prior to the snap, St. Louis. Calls her second timeout of the half. Anthony Beck nailed that. Maybe his best call of the game. I don't know what else he's done over there, but that was his best call of the game to save a field goal attempt that went wide left. Oh, 
These are the decisions head coaches have to make. It did. Hagman hooks that thing. But back to able to call the second time out. Hagman, by the way, named Mountain West best under pressure by Sporting News. Take that for what it's worth, Joe. 32 yard attempt. Jay, the pressure after the timeout splits the sticks. Yeah, get a second shot at it. Worked out for him. I don't know what the math is now. Six, three, 32 more points for the over crowd. The under crowd feeling good. Tiffany. Mike, your pursuit of the quarterback was relentless, and now they walk away with just three points. How are you able to get to A.J. McCarron? Uh, my teammates doing their jobs, doing what they're supposed to do. I'm just the one that came free. Uh, shout out to the system. Go Bombers. Mike Scott, his brother Delonte Scott, both play on the Brahma's roster. Joey, you, you despise the undercrowd. Yeah, it, it's just no fun to, to root against points. Everything we do in sports is designed to help teams score more points. Whatever sport it is, we're always on the offensive side. So give me the over, even though in this game it's not good. That's the negative outlook. What I would say, those who take the under like defense. Yeah, no, nobody likes defense. That's why they keep making rules and make it tougher to play defense. <laughs> That's actually true. Football is so slanted toward the offense. Buckle up and let's play. Again, kickoff rule, five yards apart. Cannot go until the ball is touched. Brown touches, players go, kick return from the three. Brown quick crease, there goes Brown up to the 30. That's a good example of how the kickoff can work as Heinz Ward loves that defensive stop. there. Boom. Stop. Brahma's ball at the 30. That's Balage up the middle and a gain of two. So far, Balage, seven carries, 23 yards. Atkins and Dennis combined to bring him down. They haven't been as dominant with the run game as they had planned coming into this game, but they've done enough offensively to possess the ball, get some first downs, and keep St. Louis's offense off the field, keep them off balance. Fake to Balazs, cone to his right. That's Alizé Mack, the tight end. That's going to be a gain of one. Tiffany? Hey, guys, just some updates on the Brahma's offensive line, some injury updates, that is. Left tackle Norman Price is out with a knee injury, and left guard Willie Wright also out with that ankle injury, guys. Norman Price, 72, was having, having a tough time with that pass rush. We go! Watch it on us! Movement. Offside, defense, number 95, unavailable to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, third down. I talked about the pass rush. Listen to this. Ah, we go. So that's the penalty. He brought it third and one. Balaj is going to have enough for the first down. But we had talked about the, both coaching staffs, and Hines Ward specifically said the toughest part about this is the offensive line. A lot of the good offensive linemen are already in the league. You got to develop these guys now here at the XFL. Yeah, you know, I talked to these guys, and they mentioned if we have injuries, especially along the offensive line, it could mean trouble for our ability to do what we want to do Omaha, on offense. Omaha, we go. Quick shot outside to Akers. Tell you what, he is a shifty player. He won a Super Bowl ring with the Rams and a gain of eight. He has been by far the go-to guy for Jack Cohn today early on. And we've seen a lot of these throws out wide. I think partially to protect that offensive line and protect their quarterback. You get the ball out of your hands quick wide. It's just as good as a run play, and it gets the ball out wide, so you don't have to deal with the injuries on the inside that your offensive line has sustained. 
He was short there, bringing up a third and one. And Joey, it is a good point. A few times today we've seen Cone drop back, set his feet, and for the most part, it's been quick. Hey, boom up. See? When in doubt, quarterback sneak, first down San Antonio. Eric? Yeah, guys, these injuries starting to add up for both teams. Travis Fee that we just saw had the big scoop fumble. He is out with a concussion. He will not return. So Feeney out for the game. We wondered with training camp. Omaha, Omaha, we go. How much work there would be, and that is a good job. Well, I tell you what, that St. Louis defense is feasting on this offensive line right now. Silas Kelly out of Coastal Carolina with the drop in the backfield. Defense coordinator Donnie Abraham, and we've had him on the screen a number of times. You could see starting to bring guys down to that line of scrimmage. In their pass game, so they're going out wide. Move. In their run game, they want to go in the middle. So bring those guys down, bring a safety down, get extra guys in that box to stop them, especially on first down, getting behind the chains now on second and 12. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Hey, my son. Cone can't find anyone. Goes to his right, flag on the play. That'll almost 100% be holding by Kai Abshear, number 79. Cone taking back. Holding. Offense, number 79. 10 yard penalty, second down. We go. Bye. 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 Ball start, offense, number 79, five-yard penalty, second down. Back-to-back -back by Abshear. Guys, when those bright lights come on, Joey, you talked about it. If there's a position you don't want to lose, guys, it's the offensive line. These guys are nervous. They just got Too hit back. with a holding penalty. Now he's Thanks trying to back. get an early start. It's a tough being in that spot. You got to be ready. Matt Klein, go get you a contract oh, 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 oh. at halftime. Hey, I'll see you all next week. Second and 27, screen to Balazs. No room for him as he's forced out of bounds by Lockiem Williams. You see the blood coming out of Abshear's right side of his face towards nose. You always wonder in basketball, a guy's bleeding, stop the game, get him out of there, get some solution on it. Football, it's whatever. Just keep going. A little blood, just keep playing. Who's the mic? Who's the mic? Hey, Dallas, Dallas. We go. Hey, why is it hot, hot? Play call third and 28. Get as much as you can over the middle. Balaz catches that, makes a man miss. You see that good individual effort out of him, a guy that size with those moves, but that's going to be a forced pump by St. Louis after a gain of eight Carson Wells on the tackle. See Austin, Austin Troll, son of wide receiver, former NFL wide receiver Ricky Prohl, scored the first touchdown in the XFL back in 2020. Ricky Pro was a great leader and a great guy. And it's funny when I look at these rosters and these coaching staffs. Easy. I played with Bruce Gretkowski and, and Anthony Beck in Tampa. I played with a lot of these guys. Set. I've got a bet that Galloway will have a what connection to all what eight of set. these teams throughout this season. Mateo Durant, first time we've called his name this afternoon. He was a talented back for Duke. As we approach the two-minute warning here in the first half after a gain of one. So six degrees of Joey Galloway, the way to Galloway. It'll be like episodic TV. Stay tuned next week to see who Galloway has a connection to. Good, good. Good job by San Antonio's defense again and Ben Davis. And that play call. All right, so we're being told there was a timeout call prior to the two-minute warning, and this is now the two-minute warning. 
you can tell from that play call, uh, they're not trusting their offensive line right now to protect A.J. McCarron. They're running the ball with two minutes left. They're, they're thinking we got to get out of this half. Tiff. Hey, Coach Ward. How do you feel about the way your team is playing in this half? Um, turnovers on offense. Um, you know, we got to get better on that. We got to move the ball and execute. But the defense has been playing their tail off all game. Hopefully we can get a stop and get the ball back and try to put up some points. Then we get the ball back in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank and it will be a story, Joey. The offensive line now for both teams here in the second half. Yeah, St. Louis wants to throw the ball. They want to lean on A.J. McCarron to carry this offense. Hadn't been able to do that in the first half. Has gotten much, pressure in the backfield, and that is definitely a concern and adjustment they'll have to make at halftime. Hey, hey, 25 is the mic. Be ready for corner cap. Set. Y80. Y80. Third and 11 for McCarron and the Battle Hawks. Again, cannot get up in that pocket because of the pressure. Durant stepped out of bounds. And if you bet under 37 and a half and you see six points with under two in the first, you love defense. Is Ben Davis, the hey, team the, the captain. Not, right? Okay, all right. Played his college ball at Alabama. So Jack Cohn and San Antonio get the ball under two with two timeouts. Akers deep to receive. Good looking punt by Hoffrichter. Akers, it is 24. Cuts back, the special teams finally catch up. That's a good cut back by Patrick, and right now they're just content pounding that ball for eight yards on first down. We've yet to see many shots down the field by either team. Both teams are playing the short game, running the football, the hey, shorter I passes. I expected to see more fireworks going down the field with the football. There's Patrick again. Why go away from what works? First down, Brahmas. Clock stops after the two-minute warning. Like college, they'll spot the ball. Then they'll resume running the clock. Cole over the middle. Alizé Mack ruled incomplete on the field. San Antonio running up like it was a catch, but it was ruled incomplete. I am looking at it. Let me know if we got anything else other than the high end zone. Let's give let's let's give them a review. Reggie, stop game. We're going to review it. Stop game, stop game. That's the one I'm on the right here. Play Again, the see the, I see the ball on the ground here. Now I'm going to take this in the high end zone. And we'll sink them, and we'll sink them up. Yeah, see, I've got ball on the ground. I see one hand on top, one hand on the side. Your hand, L. Okay. That one's hit. Okay. We're going to let it stand. Reggie, we're going to let it stand. Let it stand. Ruling on the field stands. Let's bring After in Dean Blandino, VP of officiating here. Stands. Dean just walked us through quickly. We heard the down. explanation, but what was the tell for you? For me, I was looking to see if the hands were under the ball or if they were on the side or on top of the ball. The ball hit the ground, didn't have firm control before it touched the ground. There just wasn't enough to say that it clearly was a catch. They ruled it incomplete. We had to let it stand. All right, Dean, thank you. So second and 10 now under a minute to play. San Antonio, Joe, with their two timeouts remaining. Thank you. It's a quick stop, Joe. Go! Hey, my son! Cone, caught. 
Jalen Tolliver went up and got it. Gain of 24. 64. 60, 64, Again, 64. clock stops like college. 64, you gotta sneak, you gotta sneak. Look Now some rhythm, Patrick the catch. And a gain of nine. You would hear Cohen telling Patrick what route he had, told him he had a sneak, go up on the linebacker, go out, and then Cone, waiting on Patrick, got him the ball for a first down. Yep. Hines not using the timeouts. Second and one. Go. Cone's got to be quick. Decides to throw that one away to bring up third and one. Excuse me, I said it was a first down, but it's actually got him nine yards. Now set up a third and one. 19 seconds left. You have a timeout. You can still run this ball if you want to and then bang the timeout. Yep, yep, yep. So still the two timeouts. Bison on Blue Girl. Bison on Blue Girl. Ready. Cone now eight different receivers. Spreading the wealth here in the first half. And Joe Heap. That's going to be close. They're going to give him forward progress. Calls their second timeout of the half. 30 seconds in lane. Will the clock operator please reset to 19 seconds? Okay, so it will be a first down. San Antonio takes their second timeout. Here's the catch that was ruled by one official as a catch. It was ruled an incomplete after they reviewed. Here was Hines' reaction to that. Three. Phil Dean, I disagree. It's the clock, it's the clock going to stop. It's fourth and one, right? No. Zero on Puma. Okay. Hey, it's four. Hey, get this, get this. Huddle, huddle, huddle. Hey, I want to bring in Dean Blandino for a minute. Dean, one of the officials ruled it okay, enough hey, for the first down, and then they backed one. it up. Yeah, that was us in replay. We looked at it, and the ball did not make the line to gain, so we were able to communicate to the referee, move it back half a yard, and make it fourth down. So that an example of when you guys can hop in when you see something to make the change. Correct. Quarterback sneak or Patrick? Jack Cohn undefeated from one yard out. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, kill. Hey, kill, kill. Kill, kill. I mean, he didn't get a lot. Doesn't need it. For where they're marking this ball, Dean might have to jump back in. Let's go. Back in the spot. Kill, kill. Kill, 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 kill. Clock starts. Fakes the spike. Cone up top. Oh, it's dropped by Travis Johnson. Joey, he fakes the clock. Think of the defenders would jump, and Johnson had an opportunity. And they had touchdown. extra time. The official was holding the play, so he had extra time to get this play in, which is a great call. Throw it up. Let your receiver have a chance to go up and make a play. Johnson on the outside is 6'5". He had a chance to make this catch. This would have been huge. So here comes Parker Romo to give us a point total of nine for the first half and a three-point lead for San Antonio. Can't take him with you. Timeout, St. Louis. St. Louis. The third and final timeout of the half. Hey. 
So he heard it. He knew it was a fake spike, Joe. So here comes the attempt by Roma. No good. Help the job. Help the job. Uh, so you want to be a ball coach, huh? We got one play. Take your knee. So St. Louis will take the knee. Again, the kickoff rules. Players five yards apart cannot begin their movement until the player catches it. Brown the catch. There go the players. We got a kick return here in the third quarter. And Brown's got a crease. And that's why they love this rule. Encourages the kickoff return safely as he takes it across the 32-yard line. That's what we'll see Jack Cohn in this Brahma's offense. Give me a second half key for Cone. Take care of the football, and I think continue to take the short underneath passes. It's worked very well for their offense. Thank you, thank you. We go. Heidi, up? You heard Kalen talking to Tiffany Blackman in the locker room at halftime. This guy to keep staying physical. Getting the running backs their opportunities in a short game there. And a gain of one. They do have two big backs between Belage out of Arizona State, John Patrick, got Quest Patrick out of Florida State. Number nine, both of them 6'3, well over 225 pounds. Balaj again up the middle. Kalen gets it going in a big gain for Balaj, gain of 15. Kind of a body blow, body blow. London missed the tackle, and Balaj took advantage. And this is a great start for the for the Brahma's offense. They want to be physical, they want to run it. This time between the tackles for the big play, Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. get to the second level for Balaj. He's tough to bring down. Guy his size, though, Joe, too, his lateral movement is impressive. Yeah, and, he, and that's why Hans Ward talked about uh, Kalen Balaj as a guy that he just, it's hard for him to believe that this guy is not in the NFL. He has that kind of talent, has to take care of some of the off the field things, hey, um, but he has enough talent to play at the next level. Talked about Jacquez Patrick. This duo is going to be something to contend with here in the XFL this season. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Play fake to Balazs. Good job by Cohn. Here comes the pass rush. He's got no time to throw, but he created it by getting out of the pocket, finding Tolliver, and that was all Jack Cohn. That's the second time we've seen Jack Cohn go down the field to Tolliver. I mentioned in the first half, went in many shots down the field, and then toward the end of the second quarter, found Tolliver up the seam, and this time, by his time, gets outside the pocket. Tolliver stays alive, and it's a nice throw by Cohn to the sideline. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Heidi. Watch it. Back to the running game. That's Patrick back in the game. Cone's a great example. An undrafted free agent with the Indianapolis Colts. When we talked to him, he said, could I have signed a futures contract? Maybe. Whoa. But I wanted to come out here and get some stuff on tape and play some competitive football as we see Patrick down uh, for the Brahmas here early in the third quarter. Hey, the oh, okay. The ball control the Brahmas. No secret about what they want to do and what they've done at this point. It's been all San Antonio despite the 3 3 score. Vegas, Vegas! We're going! Heidi! My son! 
You see Bellage here in the second half early on, having some space, gain of three. Just going to bring up a third and four. This is a huge play for St. Louis's defense. I mean, they, San Antonio's been able to move the ball down the field, running it, being physical. Now it's a third and three. You can go either way. You can run it or you can pass it in these situations. And this is the big chance for St. Louis's defense to make a stand and try to get off the field. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Four of eight on third down. Cone, quick throw. It's Akers. That could have been a late hit, not flag. Sebastian takes Akers out of bounds, and that's going to be a first down. Late hit. Let him play a little bit. Hey, this, I'm just this telling is on the look, sideline. This is a receiver. This that's is a late hit. Back. That's a late play hit. Play ball. Now, if, if that's Tom Brady on the sideline, yeah, that's a late hit. Receiver, running defensive back, let him play. Okay. But you Great look, throw by You'll agree it's a late hit, though. If it was on me. But <laughs> in a game like this, I'm fine with that. All right. I'm scarred by everyday football. Let him play in the XFL. Balaj out to the left side. The defenders are getting smart. Guy that big and powerful, get him low. DeLuke on the tackle after a gain of two. See Travis Johnson there limping off the field. San Antonio told us, look, they didn't do much contact in, in preseason camp. This could be the first time they were going to get a full contact for an entirety of a game. Yeah, Coach Hyden Ward said his idea was to keep his guys healthy, get his guys ready for the season to come in healthy, and you can see in this game they've had a number of guys go out banged up. High snap for Cone, does a good job corralling it, has to go outside the pocket. Is he going to keep it himself? Cone does. Chased out of bounds, 26 there, Nate Maters. Good job, Cone the athlete, not only catching the snap, but getting the gain of six. Is he a dual threat quarterback? Uh, no, but I would say that Cone has done a really nice job of staying relaxed in this game. He's taken a number of hits in the first half, high snap, catches the ball, makes a play, now to get to a third and short. He's done a really good job of keeping his composure. Hey, opposite! Opposite, opposite. Let's go, let's go. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Balazs danced in the backfield. Battle Hawks there, led by go, London. Go, go. So it looks as if Hines Ward is going to bring out Romo on fourth and two. Joey, your thoughts? I would go for it. Uh, but that's why I'm in the booth. In this situation, 3-3, three, three, your defense has played very well. I can understand the thought process of let's get the lead and get our defense back out here, see if we can get another stop. But I personally would go for this. Okay. As long as you have that disclaimer. Romo missed one just before the half. That one goes right down the middle, 6-3 now. San Antonio down to Tiffin. Decision not to go for it and to go for three. Listen, right now we just need to get points. Um, you know, we wanted to come out. We missed the opportunity to score before half. We get a chance down here. I just didn't want to gamble on that. I just wanted to walk away with some positive, something positive, and uh, we kick the field goal. So we're good. Thanks, coach. Allow me to brag on the XFL for a minute. We all watch games in college and in the pros, and we'll be sitting there saying, why didn't he go for it? And then he got to wait for the postgame press conference and to explain himself. In the XFL, we'll send Tiffany, we'll send Eric right to the coach to have them answer for the decision. That was a good example. Just wanted to be positive and get some points. Yeah, I agree with you. And Tiffany should have started off by saying, coach, you should have gone for that. Gallo and then, then now Gallo we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. If Tiffany would have walked up and said, coach, bad decision, you should have gone for that. Galloway says you should have gone for it, but why didn't you? So 6-3, Darius Shepard deep to receive. Shepard across the 25. Shepard across the 30. Nice kick return there to the 35-yard line. Right now, the Brahma's up 6-3 on the Battle Hawks. Wait, Wait a second. 
A.J. McCarron, first possession, third quarter, swings out of the back foot of Mateo Durant. He does a good job staying on his feet and a good first down gain forced out by Ryan Lewis, gain of five. Maybe the best thing that the Brahmas have done defensively, they have not let St. Louis take any shots down the field. Everything they've had to hit was the underneath stuff. They opened up a game with a shot play. They were not able to go downfield, and they haven't been able to do that this entire game. I expect St. Louis at some point in time to just take a couple shots to see if they can make a big play. Officially a gain of four. Durant gets the ball off the left side, tries to make a defender miss. Not happening. 28 on the tackle. Siverano after a gain of one. So Siverand on the tackle. Third and five here for St. Louis. There was some confusion there with Kroll coming in, and then the offensive line, you see him move. Brahm is right on it, moves it back five yards. Now third and long. He just gets out of the way. And that pass rush by Kobe Smith and Mike Teverdu get there in a loss of nine and another punt for St. Louis. And this was nothing special. This is just, I'm going to beat you across your face and come straight up the middle of the field. I mean, that, when you go to the sideline and you make those kind of adjustments to the offensive line, you look around and say, what are they doing that's confusing you guys? You have to be able to block the guys in front of you. Just two first downs on the game for St. Louis. That's Akers at his own 25. He scoots across the 30 to the 35-yard line, which is where the Brahmas will take over. Get punt to 51 and a return of nine. Who's Mike? Who's Mike? Oh, yeah. All right, takes two over there. Takes two. Vegas, Vegas, we go. Mighty. All right, son. Cone. I mean, these quarterbacks. So, St. Vegas, Louis, Vegas. the line is still three. Mighty. All right, son. And remember, both overs hit yesterday. We are going to need a second half of the third quarter and fourth quarter, Joey, for the ages as Kalen Bellage in a gate of eight. And I think if you're St. Louis, you're hoping that there is a lot of points scored in this game. If you're at San Antonio, you like the way this game is being played. You want to run the ball and be physical. You like the low scoring game. And it leads into taking a field goal on a fourth and one instead of going for it. Hey, good steer, good steer. Hey, bad steer, bad steer, bad steer. Vegas, Vegas. Here we go. Mighty. I said. Third and two. Balage up the middle. He is running motivated right now. Robinson brings him down. That's going to be a first down, San Antonio. Double left, Mason. Gaining double left. 67 scan. I, Scotty, sneak. Pressure, tried to dump it off to Bellage. He couldn't hang on to it. All right, here we go. We're nickel, we're trips right here. All right, Able. let's go trips Shade, right. yeah, exactly. clip open strike, 51. Shade, clip open strike. Bad, bad gorilla, bad gorilla. I'd love to hear Abraham be like, you know what, they can't block you, just keep going. Just rush. Bad gorilla, no, bad gorilla. 
Vegas, Vegas. Let's go. Heidi. Nice Patrick back on the field after the injury. Cohen, the quick toss outside. That's Mac. Mac in a gain of four. Eric. Yeah, guys, we're talking about this offensive line here for St. Louis. A lot of communication on the sideline, things that they're trying to figure out. A lot of back and forth. Coach has been busting it down here. Again, just explain this to these guys. And Joey, to me, what the biggest thing is, it's all about communication. These guys are on different pages where you see the point. The left guard's not going with the point. The right guard's doing his own thing. That has led to these sacks. Third and six, Cone dropped, throw, had his man, had the coverage he wanted, Joe, and Tolliver couldn't come up with it. Yeah, and, and partly when you talk about the offensive line, and that is another area when you talk about not having a lot of practices, not having a lot of opportunities, not having chances to scrimmage against other teams and play uh, practice games against other teams, and because let's of their go, numbers, let's go, let's go, they don't get a chance go. to be physical in practice very often. And offensive line is not one of those positions on, where you can become good by not hitting one another. And that's what this league is lacking because of the numbers, the time frames. They didn't get a lot of practices in, a lot of chance to hit each other. Aussie punter Brad Wing played his college ball at LSU. Successful career in the NFL. Austin Prohl, son of Ricky Prohl. Catches that at the 12 yard line. So the former O lineman and the guy up front, tight end, just trying to get something out of that offensive line, Joe. Yeah, and he, when you talk about, uh, he was a tight end, but uh, his nickname was Dump Truck <laughs> because he wasn't very fast. He's a big physical guy, as you can see now, he's still a big physical guy. Uh, and so, offensive line is a place where he would take a lot of pride in their ability to be physical and block like he did. McCarron to Pro. Good start. Good start. is seven. Hey, Tay hot on the tag. One step. Twelve counter. Ten. Nineteen truck on one. Twelve counter. Ten. Nineteen truck. See Austin Set. Pro played his college ball in North Carolina. Hey, Ken Ken. Ken Ken. Toss to Hill off the left side. Good patient running. And here comes St. Louis. Little bit of momentum and a first down after a gain of eight. You just mentioned Pro. You mentioned some of the receivers on the outside. Great block by Pro, sealing the end. You just have to get in the way and give your running back Hill a chance to get outside the pocket and get to that second level. Here we go. Set. White White set. For that rush, just 13 yards for the Battle Hawks. Trying to get it going. Good job by McCarron. Buys more time. Tell you what. Ball's on the turf. And St. Louis hops on it. He looks fleet-footed here, Joe. Hey, I wouldn't say that. And, and, and <laughs> around this stage, you said, I tell you what, he literally had gained two yards at that point. Well, it's was... a lot of movement. He had gained two yards, and you were just about to get excited. Hey, and then he got tackled and lost the ball. They give up the middle to Walker. Joey, what I was going to say was, I, before the fumble, I tell you what, for just a gain of two, uh -huh. he looked pretty good getting out of the pressure. Well, yeah. You can say good if you want to. He was running for his life. And, and that's really been the problem for this offense, is A.J. McCarron does not have a chance to sit the ball and deliver the ball down the field. Let's see if Brad Kowski can get a ball play here on third and down. It's been an offensive struggle. Pressure. McCarron, he doesn't have any. 
Joey, he can't even plant his back foot before the Brahmas are on him. Yeah, Bruce Gratkowski is going to have to figure out a way to get the ball out quickly. I don't know if it's the swing passes, uh, maybe something underneath. But clearly McCarron is not getting protected in the pocket. By the time he gets to the back of his top of his drop, they're already coming. That time they sent the blitz, a great call. But offensively, St. Louis is going to have to figure out a way to just get the ball out of his Green. hands. You got to go, baby. Akers deep to receive the punt. He's going to have some space, too, at the 30. Akers takes it out past the 35-yard line. Punt of 47, gain of nine. Tiffany. Hey, Coach, what did you see there that enabled you guys to go for the blitz? Job three. Uh, the guys are playing hard. They, they, they're they feeling the game, and the game's, you know, they got the anxiety out. Now they're just playing football, which is what we want them to do. And uh, right now they're, they're seeing what they're supposed to do, and uh, we have very limited mistakes. And to me, when you do that, you got a good chance. Thanks, Coach. So he's got to love how his defensive unit's been playing today. Just 61 total yards for St. Louis. It's Kevin Atkins, perhaps a little eager. Defense, number 90. Five-yard penalty, first down. So Big Atkins takes goes the sidelines for a minute. Sixth penalty today for St. Louis. 14 seconds left here in the third quarter. Hey, Lloyd! Lloyd, Lloyd! We go! Omaha, Omaha, we go. Balazs off the right side. It's going to be a gain of three in the final play of the third quarter. Quarter, quarter, quarter. Quarter, quarter. Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, Tiffany Blackman, Eric McClain opening weekend is a second and two faces the Broncos. That's set, that's set. Harry, we go. Aidy, what's it on on? Omaha, Omaha, we go. Patrick off the left side, kind of lost his footing. Now it is the NFL ruling when it's down by contact, Joey. You can hit the ground. But then you can get back up, but then you have to get touched by the defender. Yeah, give Patrick a lot of credit. He slips, nobody touches him, bounces right back up. Because, I mean, that would have been a loss and put him at a, a third and long. That was a nice play. Here comes Akers off the end around. Akers is that little Wes Welker type. He can do a little bit of everything. Wes Welker was so good at what he did. I, I, I hate to put guys in his classification because I, I don't know that people understand just how good he was. But Akers has been that guy for this team that you can put anywhere, give him the quick Vegas, passes, Vegas. bring him around for handoff, and he finds a way to make plays. Six for 37 receiving. Punt returner coming out of the backfield cone. Quick toss to Akers again. Had to go down to the turf to get it. A good job by the Battle Hawks defense. That's Hamilton. Okay. All right, here we go. We got trips left. Trips left. 65 no nudge. Rips, Check that. Four. Trips right. Trips right. Trips right. 65 four. nudge. Blazers sneak. And we've seen a number of times the sneak route has been the running back coming out of the backfield. And it's been Patrick a few times. Didn't get out the last time, but it's been the running back trying to work a linebacker in the middle. Omaha, Omaha. We go. Third and ten. Patrick does get out of the backfield. Cone takes a shot. Wide open receiver at the pylon. Give me Detroit. Sideline. Detroit. Detroit. Fred Brown and a first down gain of 18. We're one up fast. Bad Philly. One up one. fast. Bad Philly. Detroit. Defensive backs just got a little nosy. They haven't gone down the field much. They've thrown it underneath. Defensive backs want to come up and make a play. Great read by Cone. Vegas, Vegas. Here we go. One of the first big plays we've seen in a while. Patrick, he's just going to bang it up the middle. Okay, listen to the call. I want one up, Fap. 
Still on the One Cougar fire fat, zone. On the Cougar fire zone. Bad donkey. On the Cougar fire zone. New time. Yep. Yeah. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Whitey. Fight up. Patrick, oh, he had a one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll tell you what, Hamilton, he can come up on these big backs for a loss of one now, third down. Hamilton's a big corner. He's 208 pounds, 6'1". That's a nice size corner. And you can tell he brings a load when he runs into these running backs on the edge. So Akers coming off. A little limpy. How about Elizondo already telling the the Clock. San Antonio offense yeah. use some time. There's 12 minutes I left. Picked up on that if too. you took the over, you oh, might be in trouble. Oh, over's done. There's plenty of, plenty oh. of time. Caught. That's Brown who had the big reception a minute ago for 18. He gets seven and enough for a San Antonio first down. Big, bad gorilla. quick route. Here comes some tempo. What an individual effort by Dion Yelder. High stepped his way for 16. Brahma's in business. First and goal. Hampton on the tackles. St. Louis gambled, brought a blitz inside. Both linebackers blitz inside. Great play call by San Antonio going wide and then a great individual effort making guys miss. Joey with St. Louis's offensive struggles. This could be a knockout punch. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Cone looks. End zone. Has a receiver. Touchdown, San Antonio. Fred Brown. XFL. There are your extra point tries. One point from the two, two points from the five, three points from the ten. Yesterday's results, two of 11 on extra points. Hines said it. He's going for one. You have to lock it in. You can't change your mind. Once you decide, you're in for one. Toss to Patrick. Patrick trying to get around the corner. Good defense by St. Louis. Brandon Sebastian. Coach, we're getting the ball back right here. It's getting close to that time. What do you want to see from your offense? Yeah, we just got to put a drive together. We got to win. Get a first down. Start there. We're only down a touchdown. We can get a three-point opportunity. There's a lot of time left. I got confidence in our offense. We just got to get something going. We get one big play, I think it'll juice up our offense. Thank you, Coach. And the way the XFL is structured, St. Louis can. They can go down, score six points, go for three, which is amazing you can say that, and tie the ball game up at 12. Which is why the play by Sebastian was so huge, because it keeps it at a one-score game. And it starts here with good field position off the kick return. Darius Shepard. So A.J. McCarron. How about the one of eight on third Here downs? Goes. There's your problem. Let's go, fellas. Floyd Wright, 18 Springer plus on one. Seven of 12, 53 yards for McCarron. Hey, what is the mic? Set. 180. What's that? The give to Hill on first down. Can he make a man miss? There goes Hill. Hill's got one man to beat. To the sidelines. What a big play for St. Louis. Is Brian Hill got to the edge for a gain of 40. 
Anthony Beck just said we need one big play to get in a rhythm on offense. Now we'll see if this is the big play they needed to get things rolling, but that is huge running the football. Yeah, guys, and when you see this offensive line change, there's some guys that have been substituted out. They're not doing their job. Coach Beck saying, we're getting the next guy up. We're getting the men. You see the big spark there. Can they capitalize? Back to the ground. Gain of two. Walker on the carry. Before that gain of 40, they had just 61 yards total offense. Move. Second and eight, McCarron, quick out route. He just overthrew him. Eight. Uh, 11. Seven. 11, 11. One play at a time here. Trips right tight, text. No. Jen left towel. Jen left towel, time. Here we go. One mouse. Rush, one mouse. Field. McCarron has a man. They just, Joey, was that miscommunication? Well, what I do know is that safety was back there, so I don't know that that was the right place to go with the football to begin with, but I don't know about it. It has looked like they're not on the same page a number of times in this game, but this throw, as you can see, the safety's sitting on the goal line, so I'm not quite sure where this was going to be because Adewusi is sitting there, and he's going to make that play either way. If it's inside or outside, he's in position to make the play. So Donnie Hagman on for a 43-yard attempt. No good. And the momentum that St. Louis had yields no points. San Antonio, the perfect place for an XFL franchise. Those fans came out today. You see Balage minus one. This wave has been going for about five minutes now. It's actually I'll impressive. Be honest with you. This is the longest wave I've seen going in a crowd in a long time. Still rolling. Execution on the wave, flawless. It's Balazs off the right side again, and, and Joey, it's still going. The wave has hit the over. Definitely more wave than we have points in this game. And this is a huge play right here for St. Louis. They're down nine. You know San Antonio, Elizondo wants to take more time off the clock. This is a chance to get off the field, save some clock for an offense that has been struggling the entire game. You heard him say clock with 12 minutes with 12 left. 12 minutes. So you know Cone's eating it now. You watch the play clock go down as we approach under seven Who minutes. Ivy! Nice Quick shot outside. T.J. Vassar. Vassar's got some speed. From Texas Tech. And gain of 10, and that's a first down for San Antonio. And this is another one of those quick throws. We've seen this a number of times in this game. Cone just getting the ball out of his hands quickly and allowing one of his receivers to make one guy miss. You block one with the other receiver, make the other guy miss, and move the chains. went over 200 yards with that pass. Another quick shot. And that's all it is, Joey. Quick throw, really an extension of the run game, and that's Tolliver on the reception. It's really all you need. Now you're getting under six minutes with this next play, and this is perfectly playing into the hands right, of the offensive coordinator, Elizondo. I mean, stay in that nickel. We're going to be double right. Good frog, F-dial. And 
Good frog. Good frog. Vegas. Good yeah. frog. Let's go. Let's go. Vegas. Vegas. We go. Heidi. Eyes up. Balage. Space. Balage. First down. Alizé Mack, a key block to spring him for 11. And now to our top story. The wave is still going on. Hey, Harry, Harry, Harry. Harry, Harry, we go. Hey, Harry, my son. Omaha, Omaha, we go. That is the NFL back in Balazs. He stuttered in the backfield, found his way to four yards as the clock continues to roll here. Don't forget tonight at Eastern over on ESPN. We're going to cap off XFL's opening weekend. Sea Dragons and Defenders, 8 Eastern ESPN and the ESPN app. Skilled players from the Sea Dragons and Defenders. Josh Gordon, storied NFL career. He's had problems off the field. He's back in Seattle, Ben DiNucci, former Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Be fun game tonight over on ESPN. Play clock goes all the way down to one. Balazs for two. What you're seeing now is a tired St. Louis defense playing against a San Antonio offense that has a lot of confidence in realizing all we need is a couple more first downs to end this game. Go save clip over strike 51, save clip. Hey, 64, 64. And Joe, you're right. You're, you're one first down from. As Cone's going to throw, has a receiver, takes a shot, overthrows Basher. Interesting play call. Thought the same. Very interesting play call. Now you got a decision to make. Can you Field kick goal. it from Field here? Goal. Okay, here we go. Okay, all right, here you go. Now this field goal is big because if he makes it, the nine-point score, which is touchdown three-point conversion, is out for St. Louis. And you can see the clock running, and that's another XFL rule. Incomplete pass outside of two minutes. They spot the ball, and then the clock winds and continues to run. Be a 48 yard attempt for Romo. You get your set of Reynolds. Oh, yeah, if he misses for sure, he won't come. Fourth and four. 48 yard attempt. Romo, kick on the way. Good. been solid today. And here's what this brings in as we talk about the uniqueness of XFL and the rules. St. Louis, if they go down and score, they get their extra point. They then have the option yeah. of the fourth and 15 play rather than the onside. So I'm not sure which one I like more. I love the fourth and 15. I was going to say, look, it's going to take something special from St. Louis, but the, the, the rules are set up for a comeback if they can get something going offensively. It starts with the kickoff, and Darius Shepard, can he do something special? Tries to bring it down to the bottom of your screen and get that crease. Shut down by San Antonio's special teams. South left tight, green jet. Live coin, Omaha, London. 71 yards for the score for St. Louis, just 103 yards all day. Out of the backfield, Durant. 
The defender pushed right into it. That was corner after a gain of one. This is an offense we've seen lacking the ability to go downfield, and now is a time in the game where they have to go downfield. These swing passes won't get it done. Second and nine, McCarron finds Walker out of the backfield. Seconds for the 10 minute, two minute warning. Gets the playoff. Looks to the sideline. Good throw, as comfortable as we've seen McCarron all afternoon. Finds Marcel Aitman. That'll take us to the two minute warning. Hoping they can finish off the win against AJ McCarron in St. Louis. Got a little bit of rhythm going now. Hakeem Butler on the reception. And Abrama's players down. That's Ryan Lewis. Talked a little earlier about these guys that have been in the NFL. Ryan Lewis is one of those guys who has played with Buffalo, Indianapolis, Miami, Philly, the Giants. He's played some NFL football. There's a lot of talent out here. Yeah. St. Louis, all three timeouts. Set. Ready. Set. Ball just across the 50. McCarron takes a shot. What a grab by Aitman. Marcel Aitman on Luke Barku. 6 4 2 13 at Oklahoma State. Remember, college. And I don't know if the crowd realizes you only need one, one foot. foot. One foot in the XFL, and down goes McCarron by Mike Scott. St. Louis going to use one of their timeouts. Joey, let's go back to that. And you were talking about possession. This is the college rule. One foot inbounds uh, for a reception. Yeah, and that's the part you got to realize about the XFL. There are going to be some rules that you aren't used to. And so you could hear the crowd go nuts when they saw the replay because they saw only one foot down, but that's all you need in the XFL. And I think it's a terrific rule. I love the way that's played. You need one foot, one body part, whatever it is, but it's like the college rule. Aitman, seventh round pick by the Raiders at 18. Big receiver. Coming up with a big catch there to keep St. Louis alive in this game. McCarron. He's got plenty of room to the left side, and he's going to get out of bounds. Forced out by Williams after a gain of five. You can see now San Antonio is only rushing three guys, keeping eight back in coverage. So all those windows, as they know, St. Louis has to make big plays down the field. Now it's against eight guys in coverage. Going to be tougher, smaller windows to throw the ball into. McCarron. End zone has a player caught. Touchdown, St. Louis. Hakeem Butler. Butler is six six. We've seen Aitman on the other side, 6'4", Butler 6'6". Six, six. Throw it up, let your big playmakers go up and make a play. So St. Louis has elected to go for a three-point conversion from the 10. One attempt on those yesterday, 0 for 1. This would make it a field goal game, 15 to 12. McCarron. End zone, squeezes it in there, three-point conversion, 
Good. That's it. Good. Let's go. Fourth and 15. Fourth and 15. Middle, where do you want the ball? Left hash. Left hash. Left hash. Okay, so let me walk you through what's going on. That was a nine-point play for St. Louis, now 15 to 12. You heard Anthony Beck say it. They are going to elect to go for it on fourth and 15 instead of right hash, an onside right. kick. Left hash, left hash. We got it. If they get the fourth and 15 conversion, the drive continues from that spot. This is fun. <laughs> and this is what the rules are in place for. You got him. You got him. In, in regular football, yeah, this go. thing is out of reach. We're running clock. Now down, this is in play. If we get this, okay, we have to have another play ready, okay, because they're going to start. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not its own deal. All right, so have something brewing. Have something brewing. Alert AJ. Okay, you got it. You got it. Again, instead of an onside kick, they've elected to go for it fourth and 15 from their own 25. McCarron buys more time, keeps his eyes downfield, has pro. Yes. They converted on fourth and 15. Let's go. The clock's going. Gain of 22. On the quick. Injured player for San Antonio. So injured player, here's Anthony backed in his reaction. Yeah, let's go, play, 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 play. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The clock's going. We got a first down, yeah. The receiver was out of bounds, he caught it and went out of bounds. So the clock does stop, I think. You know, hey, look, we're all in the moment. Exactly. We're all trying, we're we're all all trying to get up. these plays Horses together, get these yeah. rules together. The clock does stop. Go Puma. If they go cover two, convert it. So no timeouts Fellas, remaining. Dig deep right here, baby. Here we go. Trips left. Two jet. Utah. X pool one one, right? Yeah, you can go check out. Hey, be ready for right here. Set. What do What is that? Brahma's bringing the pressure. McCarron plants his back foot. Goes up top, incomplete, intended for Aitman. We have a flag on the play. Here we go. What do you think? Hold up. Do you like it? I don't think there's. What did you have? High contact? I, yeah, I, no high contact? Oh, he is I'm not sure. Go with it. Right to the face. Yeah. He got me. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 15. 15 yard penalty, first down. That is a huge penalty. Wait a second. McCarron over the middle, another completion. That to Hakeem Butler. If I could, I want to bring in Dean Blandino quickly. Dean on the hands to the face and the roughing the passer. 
Yeah, what the referee saw, the defender left his feet. He launched, made forcible contact with the right shoulder up in that head neck area. Awesome. Thank you for the explanation. Quick show out of the backfield to Hill. Hill's got some space. He'll make it a man miss. Gets out of bounds. All right, right the at the 17-yard line and a gain of 13. Two timeouts remain for St. Louis. Clock stops, 46 seconds. Joey, you said it perfectly. This is the XFL in a nutshell with the rules in place. Absolutely. Pressure comes, McCarron has Hill hit immediately. Great play by Barku. And a gain of three. No timeout from St. Louis. Seven. Seven. On the quick. quick snap, McCarron, end zone, eight men. Incomplete. Barku on the coverage, third and seven. San Antonio now bringing the pressure. They were just rushing three a possession ago. Now game on the line. They're starting to bring the linebacker blitzes. That was a lot of contact again down by the end zone. Could have been called, wasn't. Now setting up a third and long with the game on the line. With two timeouts, Anthony Beck still has a challenge. San Antonio does not. That ended a streak of 10 straight completions for McCarron. 180! Third Third and seven. McCarron has a receiver. Caught! Touchdown, St. Louis, and a flag on the play. That is pro. That's his dad, Ricky. Former teammate of Joey Galloway, and his son just had a huge touchdown with 16 seconds left. What an amazing moment to be a dad <laughs> on the sideline for that. Now, it's a good thing he's not mic'd up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can read lips. <laughs> I don't think we want that on the air. Where's the penalty get applied? Where's. Uh, there is no foul. For the result of the play is a no touchdown. There is no foul for a personal foul by the defense. The play results in a touchdown. All right, VP of officials, D. Blandino, Dean, can you can you walk us through this? So originally the back judge had a flag down, which I believe hit on a defenseless player. They got together, they talked about it. a couple of different officials from different perspect perspectives decided that there wasn't forcible contact to the head neck. The touchdown was good, it was a catch, and they picked up the flag for the, the hit on the receiver. All right, so one point conversion. Mickey, Mickey. What are you? What is that? McCarron, nothing. For those with the point spread of three and a half, that tackle is big. St. Louis minus three and a half. It wasn't two and a half at one point. So if you got in on the line early. If you got in early. Eric. Hey guys, I'm trying to catch him. He's out of breath. He's fighting guys. He's scrapping, talking to his dad down here. Unbelievable catch. The concentration. Walk me through that play. Uh, the good Lord. The good Lord blessed me with some hands. I made it happen. Shout out to my boys down in Florida, man. NSB convention. My nieces, Hadley and Coven. All the good Lord, man. What'd your dad just say to you right there? That's unbelievable. Good catch. That's what we do, though. That's what we built for. The good catches are routine. The great catch is what they do, guys. Unbelievable effort. McCarron, 11 of 14, 133 yards and two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. I wish I could explain succinctly what we just saw with how far San Antonio just came back, or St. Louis, rather, how much they came back 
within the last two minutes of this game. And the way they did it with an offense throwing the football, which they couldn't do for a large part of this game. San Antonio went up 12 with 3.02 left. And because you can go for a three-point conversion at a fourth and 15, St. Louis has the lead. So here's a look at that sequence of what happened. This is the touchdown to Hakeem Butler. Six St. Six. Louis went for three. Got it. Got it. Went for it on fourth and 15 instead of an onside kick. Troll. Got it. Touchdown. Troll. As simple as that. Yeah, big guys early on to get things going and then coming back to Troll in the slot. <laughs> timeouts for San Antonio. They have to be stunned by this last two minutes. Cone's going to have to throw. A sack would end it. A sack would end it. And St. Louis. And LaCale London ends the game in improbable fashion for the Battle Hawks. St. Louis down 12. With three minutes left. When I looked at AJ, I said, here's a guy that's played at the highest level in college, won two national championships, went to three of them. What, Eddie? What, son? Led some of the best players in college football. Gets drafted, goes to the NFL. I said, man, this guy's got to be hungry. We got snug right, 300 jets sticky on one, right? Yeah, I think you always got something to prove, to be honest with you. You got to believe you're the best out there. And the competitor I am, like, I, I, I want to go out and win. I had some NFL workouts, but I just wanted to play, just have fun. I, I want to prove that I, I can win at this level, too. Here we go, let's go. On the ball, on the ball. 300 jet. White 80, white side. Every waking second that he came on board with us, he has been immersing himself. He's bought in, and he is all about it. He's got what we need on game day to be the best team. We are ready in the Alamo Dome. Good crowd on hand. San Antonio won the toss. And as promised, we'll get a look at Battle Hawks quarterback, A.J. McCann. Come on, man, one try. Let's go. What's that? The give to Hill on first down. Can he make a man go! miss? There goes Hill. Hill's go! got one man to beat. Go! To the sidelines yeah! for a gain of That's 40. It. Gets the playoff. Looks to the sideline. Good throw, as comfortable as we've seen McCarron all afternoon. Got a little bit of rhythm going. McCarron, end zone, has a player caught. Touchdown, St. Louis. There are unique rules. St. Louis to go for a three-point conversion from the 10. McCarron. Zone. Yes, squeezes yes. it in there. Yes. Three point Fourth conversion. Good. Fourth and 15. Fourth and 15. They are going to elect to go for it on fourth and 15 instead yes. of yes. an onside yes. kick. If Back they up. get the conversion, the drive continues from yes. that spot. Yes. McCarran buys more time, keeps his eyes downfield, has pro. Yes. Yes. They yes. convert yes. it on yes. fourth yes. and 15. Yes. Dig deep right here, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Third and seven. McCarron has a receiver. No! Touchdown, St. Louis. No! That is pro. And St. Louis ends the game in improbable fashion down 12. That's what it is. But you never say die. You never say die, man. Hey, it's a, it's a great day to be a battle ball. Hell yeah. yeah. Both teams will line up five yards apart. They will move once the returner touches the ball. That's for safety purposes. Daniel Whelan boots things away to get the party started. Darius Shepard lets it go into the end zone. So that's the lesser of the infraction. St. Louis will come out on their own 35. Bring him out, bring him out. Here he is, A.J. McCarron, starting quarterback for the St. Louis Battlehawks. Hey, hey. 
AJ trying to determine where they want the ball in terms of which hash mark. Obviously, you see the right. accolades. What a tremendous Middle college five. career. Bounced around the NFL. Let's go, fellas. Very, very experienced. Has seen an awful lot. Been a lot of different places. Come on. Come on, big boy. Set the tone, all right? Set the tone. Trey Wright, cat. F. Peel. 12 power plus one, right? The big news for the St. Louis offense here in this week is their running back, Brian Hill, so dealing with a hamstring injury, will get the start today. He is in the backfield behind A.J. McCarron. And they're going to give it to Hill, his first touch of the game. That D.C. defense making their presence felt. Just a gain of two. Yeah, Brian Hill's a really, really good football player. Big physical back. Kind of fits what they are on offense. They're a downhill physical point of attack running team. Swap right. F5, 13 counter on one. How amazing is it that he's even playing this week dealing with that hamstring injury? Yeah, and, and Anthony Beck, the head coach, said he just guts through it. He finds a way. They're not quite sure how, but he's practiced all week, and set. he's their best weapon at running back. One eight, eight. One Second and eight. They give it back to Hill, and he's going nowhere. Joe Wallace, the man to meet him first, a loss of three. Luke's, you talked about this D.C. defense. Well, they've come to play. And this is just winning at the point of attack here. Shooting the gap right there from Joe Wallace. He's not very tall. He's got great leverage. Really good first step quickness. And a good Hurry set up. of hair. Hurry up. Look at those curls. Set. Wait. Wait, set. Third and 11, McCarron. The swing pass to the outside. That's Darius Shepard. And D.C. defenders winning the battle. First drive of the game. Reggie Northup and Kentrell Bryce there on the tackle. Harry, what you got for us? Well, guys, uh, for St. Louis and their offense, they want to kind of stay in third and short, third and mediums. When you get to third and nine plus, that's when this defense is really at their best and they stop opponents. Not many people have completed third or fourth down and longs on them, and that's when they really like to thrive. Good stuff, Harry. So D.C. will force a three and out. Sterling Hoffrichter, the punter, will boot this one away. Jaquez Ezard. And he does not get anything on that return. Hard hitting to start this one in D.C. Both teams undefeated. I mean, this should be the best matchup of the week. Yeah, it should be a really good matchup. Both teams are confident. Both teams can run the football. And, and really, you know, something's got to give, right? D.C.'s been really good defensively, creating turnovers. St. Louis hasn't turned the ball over yet on the year. Leading the defenders is Jordan Ta'amu. Now, this is a dual quarterback system, but Jordan Ta'amu gets the start with Abram Smith in the backfield. Here we go, here and, we go. and he'll run it, too, now. It's not just when we see Derek King coming off the bench. Ready, ready. Set, go. Ta'amu looking to throw on first down. He finds his tight end, Ethan Wolf. He is chopped down by Chris Cooper, a gain of six. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. How about this? A little tempo yeah. to start the game. Ready, ready. Set it, go. Here's Abram Smith. Finds the hole, makes the cut, lowers the shoulder, and he's got a first down. Ace left. Ace left. 22, Zulu. 22, 22, Zulu. 22, Zulu. 22, Zulu. That's offensive coordinator let's go, let's go, let's go. Fred Kais giving the plays to his quarterback, Tamu. Ready, ready. Set, go. St. Louis showing pressure. And Tamu with the correct read keeps it himself. And he picks up five. See, I, lo I love the blend of the tempo and the quarterback run in the backfield action. You don't give St. Louis a chance to diagnose anything. You're snapping the ball quickly. You're getting the ball to the line of scrimmage, and the defense is wondering, does the quarterback have it or does the running back have it? Second and five. Tamu looking to air it out. He's got a man open. What a throw and catch. Chris Blair tackled inside the five. A huge throw from Jordan Tamu, principally brought down by Brandon Sebastian. A gain of 57. Really good job here on the release to the inside from Blair and then getting vertical again off the stem and a wonderfully thrown football from Jordan Tamu. DC's longest play of the season right there sets them up at first and goal from the four. Tamu keeps it himself. 
and he'll be stopped at the five. That was Elon Lumore with the tackle. Monique Starline. 181, Hyatt. 181. 181, Hyatt. 181, Hyatt. Tighten it up. That's good right there. Here we go, here we go. Tighten it up, what does that mean? It's talking about that bunch set of the formation here to the bottom of your screen, those receivers. Tamu looking right, now scans back to the left, still has plenty of time, directing traffic, throwing end zone, but throws it away as he is hit after the throw. Pressure applied there again by Lamore. It's one of the good things about the coach to player communication That's is ball, right? it doesn't come, it doesn't stop at 15 seconds like it does in the NFL. So they can give little tidbits to the players on the field, lining up correctly, making sure you're snapping the ball on time. That's what I love about the right. XFL, the access that we get here. Get out, get out. Oh, yeah. Donnie Abraham, the defensive right. coordinator Flex of St. Louis. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. First go. third down of this drive, third and goal. Tamu scanning the field. Touchdown, D.C. defenders. A seven-yard touchdown pass to Ethan Wolf, the tight end. We came out talking about the defense, but it's the offense for D.C. that strikes first. Confidence riding high right now for this offense. Now you've got the opportunity. You've got three choices. You can go for one point, two point, three points. D.C. electing to go for two points here. And you look at the percentages through the first three weeks, from really through last night. D.C. is three of four on two-point conversion so far this season. Here they go from the five-yard line. Tom rolling out, pitches it to his tight end, Wolf. Rumbling in there. It is good. D.C. with an eight-nothing lead to start this game. Darius Shepard is the deep man. Daniel Whelan, excuse me, Matt McCrane is getting set to kick this one away for D.C. Both teams can move once the ball is fielded. There they go. Shepard trying to make a move to the right side. And he is brought down shy of the 30. Send it down to Harry. Jordan, you guys had an explosive play, the goal route to Chris Blair. What did you see? Uh, I saw them playing press. Uh, knew I had a you know, goal route backside, so I uh, wanted to give it up, uh, leave it up there, and uh, Chris made a hell of a catch, hell of a play. Uh, that, got the, that got us going. Then you got down to the red zone. Ethan Wolf, explain this touchdown that you connected with him. Yeah, it was just so easy. Uh, you know, you sat in the zone. Uh, you know, saw him wide open, big body guy. Can't miss him. Uh, just hit him right in the area, and he'll come down with it. Thanks, Jordan. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Harry, good stuff. All right, second drive of the game for St. Louis. Tom, what do you want to see? I want to see some up-tempo. I want to see them get the ball out of their hands quick, like they're doing right here. And again, as we talked about coming on air, don't play into D.C.'s hands defensively. They want to move and they want to change and they want to do all this stuff post-snap. Don't let them do it. Get them out of their comfort zone. And you're seeing that now from St. Louis offensively. A.J. McCarron, he's got that NFL experience and it has rubbed off on his wide receivers. Second and six, looking over the middle. His receiver fell down. It's picked off. That's Michael Joseph, his third interception. And it's a pick six with the flip. Michael Joseph, hey now. Well, he wasn't lying. He told Harry exactly what he was going to do. They're going to give us one. They're going to throw one right to us. The receiver's running the out route here, and he just slides and falls down. That's likely a completed pass. Easy pitch and catch. Michael Joseph. Really the exact same area of the field as it was in week one for his pick six there. Rowdy fan base there in that end zone. Fantastic start with a two-point attempt coming up for D.C. D.C. didn't even need the lemons for that pick six. <laughs> so they're going from two from the five-yard line. Tamu, pressure, throwing, and overthrows his running back, Smith. Harry, your guy said it before the game. Mike Joe, you said it before the game. You spoke it into existence. Talk me through it, my man. 
And you got to manifest. I told you you're going to make a mistake, and I'm going to take it from him. That's what I did. Take it to the crib. We back at home. We got to put on a show for the fans. Man, I love this team. We got to keep it going, though. It ain't over. So last week when you scored a touchdown, you said it was a party on you in the end zone. Is it party on me, party on three right now? It's always party time. It's always party time when you get that ball. Got to touch that paint. My boy, CB, my roommate, I told him earlier in the week, we got to start fast. And I love, I love to see it. Let's, we got to keep it going, though. Keep balling, my man. You know what I love? I love the XFL. <laughs> this is fun. Well, a lot of energy in this building. It's a fantastic venue, and fans are loving it. Listen, DC's given them a lot to cheer for so far here in the first quarter. That's the standing room only section here at Audi Field. As a reminder, the kicker has to kick it into the target zone. Here's Matt McCrane, kicks it off. Once it's fielded, both teams will go. Shepard can't get anything going, tripped up around his ankles once again, shy of the 30. All right, a little extracurricular. That just means these guys are in it. They're excited. Week three in the XFL continues later today at 4 p.m. on FX. It's the Guardians and the Renegades. Then at 8 p.m. on ESPN2, see the Brahmas and the Roughnecks. Both games are also available on ESPN+. Just get comfortable. We got the XFL well, for you all day long. We certainly do. And, and, and by the way, don't count out the St. Louis team. Just because they're down 14 nothing, they kind of thrive in these moments, as evidenced through the first two weeks. Oh, yeah. Just wait till the fourth. Yeah, just wait till the fourth. <laughs> McCarron, strong throw over the middle, completes that one to Hakeem Butler. Butler is taken down after a gain of 19. Butler's got an incredible story. Wasn't picked up originally. Reached out to Anthony Becht over Twitter, DM'd him, and that's how they picked him up. He's a big body guy. All of the receivers from St. Louis are big players. On first and 10 on the ground, they go with Brian Hill, trying to get him going. Picks up three. Taxi on. Swamp right. Taxi on. It's Bruce Kretkowski, the offensive coordinator for St. Louis. Talked to AJ McCarron, said he was so excited to come here to be able to learn under Gretkowski. Hey, easy. 51 mesh. 51 mesh. Mesh. AJ McCarron sees cover one right here, man to man coverage. Second and seven. Good protection. Put some air under it for his running back. Hill completes it. That's why they wanted Brian Hill on the field. He can do so many things. All right, G left there ain't no slipping. That's it. Okay. Hey, let's go down and drive together. Okay. It's simple. All right. We that was that was a mistake on us. It is what it is. All right. That's AJ McCarron showing his leadership skills before this drive started. Yeah, and listen. One of the most difficult things to do at the quarterback position is, is play the next play, right? You can't let things linger and, and, and sulk about it. You've got to move forward. Aaron empty backfield. Throws it to Austin Prohl. He's the son of the wide receiver coach Ricky Prohl. Picks up six. I saw Ricky Prohl on the field before the game. You could still play. He is still jacked. He is. Here, Greg Williams on that call to lurk. So we're going to have cover two here, two high safeties, and those corners are going to they're going to lurk. They're going to kind of sink. There's the toss to Mateo Durant. Durant, he's the guy who delivers the blow. Somebody's helmet popped off there. Picks up the first down, a gain of six. There's Ricky Prohl. Played so many years in the NFL. Now passing down his knowledge to the wide receivers here at St. Louis. Clocks at two. McCarron gets the snap off. Good protection again. Direct in traffic, telling him to go left, throwing end zone. Incomplete. He was looking for Akeem Butler, his big target at 6'6. Yeah, Marcel Aitman, 6'4. 
Butler 6-6. Six, six. Bump left extend 14 Willie Z smoke. Here we go. This is the fun chess match that Bump I love to see. Extend. Offensive coordinator versus Willie. defensive coordinator Z on the smoke. left. Come on. Let's go, let's go. So Z smoke's gonna be a wide receiver quick screen. Likely to the bottom of your screen here. Oh, to the right of the screen. Throwing to the right. Yep. That's Marcel Aitman. Hey. And Aitman is dragged down. Hey. That was Dewan Neal on the tackle after. Right there. Oh, did you see him? Did you see him come back? Gain of seven. 99 killed back this way. Jin right tap. Jin right tap tie. Jin right tap tie. Jin right tap tie. Jin tall F2. Hey, two jet. Two jet. So the first third down of the drive coming up. It'll be third and three for the Battle Hawks. Timeout St. Louis, their first of the half. 30 seconds. So St. Louis on third and short calls a timeout here in this first quarter. If you're new to the XFL, We've got eight teams spanning coast to coast. Here in 2013, we've got the North Division starting in Seattle, Vegas, St. Louis, and D.C. The South Division, we got three teams in Texas, Arlington, Houston, San Antonio, and the Orlando Guardians. So far through part of three weeks, the Vegas Vipers 0-3 after Seattle got their first win in Vegas yesterday. Yep. Who's impressed you? Really, I got to be honest with you. I think the, the teams that have been able to come up with ways to run the football, knowing that the offensive line is an issue early on without preseason games, D.C., they play like a college team. Running quarterbacks, zone read, quarterback power, quarterback counter, makes it very difficult to defend in, in professional football. And then I think, uh, without question, that offense down in Houston is really impressive. McCarron is 6 for 8, 65 yards so far this game. He's hit five different receivers. He's got a third and three right here. McCarron throws to his running back. Hill all alone. He will walk in for the touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown pass from McCarron to Hill. And St. Louis right back in it. Oh, the people's elbow. <laughs> See the running back and leak out to the left. And the man responsible for covering him can't get through all of the traffic. So Anthony Beck said he's going to go for two every single time until it gets late, and then he has to go for more. Here's the two-point conversion from the five-yard line. Karen pressured, goes back to his left. Throwing, he's got a man. It's good to Darius Shepard. Ooh, A.J. McCarron, that was clean. Making Joe Wallace look silly. And we love that. We've got a good game here. So Donnie Hegman will kick things off from every. He has to get it within the target zone. That's inside the 20, outside of the goal line. So it is fielded by Ezard. Now both teams can move. And Ezard is brought out of bounds. How about this celebration? Let's have some fun here in the XFL. Got to give the people what they want. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just don't get hurt. Football's supposed to be fun. Hey, spread out. Jordan Tamu will come back out. Hey, bunch left, bunch left. He'll be joined in the backfield by Raquel Armstead. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. There's Armstead with his first carry. Man, he has got such a speed. Burn. Wait, the ball comes out. Was he down? Wait a minute. Waiting for the signal. And it's St. Louis ball. 
Ben DeLuca with the fumble recovery for the Battle Hawks. Well, we got Ready spot here. 34, 34. I didn't see anybody point anyway. Defense up. Defense That's a good spot. Up. Turnover clear, turnover clear. End zone shot had it. Showed it really well. Take a look from the end zone shot here. You heard Dean Blandino at our command center. It was a very clear shot. The ball is out and loose before his knee hits the ground. St. Louis with the ball back. McCarron will use his legs and will slide down. All right, so one of the other unique features here in the XFL is that you can challenge any play. And now it doesn't matter if the penalty was called or not. You can challenge something if you think that there was maybe a missed penalty. Right. The only caveat is that you have to have a timeout remaining. So the challenge chip is that red chip below the timeout marker. You can use that in the first half the sec or the second half. You only get one per game. Second and nine, DC with the blitz, setting up the screen, and it goes nowhere. A loss of two, Francis Bernard with the tackle on Durant. Well, Francis Bernard here saved a touchdown here. here that was a really well set up screen. That's just a good tackle, good play. Did I hear Obama special here well, in D.C.? We're in D.C. You did. Let me see what this looks like. Oh, we got some penalty flags. No! That's bullshit! That's bullshit! He's offside! Legal snap. Offense, number 61. Five-yard penalty, still third down. That's fucking horseshit! That's the center, Mike Panashuk. First penalty of the game on either team. Well, you see a lot, a lot of movement by DC getting at St. Louis, a little antsy up front. And again, we, we talked about what DC wants to do. A lot of post snap movement. And I was looking forward to seeing what the Obama special looked like. <laughs> Third and 16. DC's only rushing three. McCarron with room will just get down. No, that's that was Anthony Hines with the tackle there for DC. I don't know if AJ McCarron got as much yardage. Number 61 of the offense as reported as eligible. It, had, he, had he been able to throw that football, they'd be in a much better position here. This is a long field goal attempt. A 53 yard attempt for Donnie Hagman. Kick is up and he pushes it wide right. No good. Defense for DC holding it strong. Forcing a missed field goal attempt after fumbling the football offensively. Well, if you're an under fan, you'd love to see that. Yeah, because both offenses <laughs> were right. lighting it up. Stormy, we, we talk betting with you because you're our betting expert. The under, the over, what's the good move here today? Here we go, here we go. Well, you would have thought coming in perhaps with the wind that an under might be a good bet in this one, but uh, the scoring was off to a fast and furious start, especially with that pick six early, ready, guys. Ready. Go. And off goes to Armstead, who just fumbled it. That's some confidence. Your running back fumbles, you go back to him your next try. Absolutely. Have a short memory, get his confidence back. You know you trust him. Ready, ready. Go. Back to Armstead, trying to stretch it out. Upended, oh, spun around, and he lost it again. Mike Hampton delivers the. He comes away with the ball. The ball coming loose. 
It's third we're good, down. We're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, wow. That's, we had a sub, a we had a sub. Rattler, zero. Cub, Rattler, zero. Here we go, Alaska, Alaska. Rattler. Back right, Alaska. Alaska, Alaska. Alaska, Alaska. <laughs> Ooh, oh, that ball is moving before he hits the floor. Hey, 22, 22, Monday, Monday. Monday Dean, Monday. is that something that can get looked at? There's the whistle. Yep. Okay, he wants to challenge, challenge the fumble on the plate. Okay. St. Louis is challenging the ruling of the runner being down prior to the ball coming loose. The play is under review. To see that stuff and do that, or do I have to? I'm see with that? you, Chris. How's that work? Is he supposed to challenge? I mean, isn't he supposed to see those fumbles? Dean? This is what I'm That's looking at. Snow, I'm, I know that. What I'm Prior looking at here challenge. is that left arm. See, I can't tell if that left arm is down. I'm getting blocked out. That's why. See? I'm looking at the left arm and I'm looking at the right elbow. And again, is that forearm down? That's what I just can't tell. I don't know if we've got anything else. I'm looking at the low end zone, yeah. And I'm see, I just so in the same shot, right? Ball's coming. It looks like it's coming out right here. Okay. Do we have a recovery? Give me a clear recovery. Okay. Give me a spot. The B48. All right, Chris. We're gonna Stand. we're gonna overturn. We've got we've got a fumble recovered by St. Louis. We're gonna put the ball at the at the 48 yard line. We gotta make them pay. That would be the B48, right? The, the B48, side. correct. Yeah. B48. We'll leave the clock where it is. And St. Louis is not charged a timeout. And they can't challenge again. Correct. After review, the runner, the ball became loose prior to the runner being down. It was recovered by St. Louis. It's first down. St. Louis is not charged a timeout. So DC has now fumbled on their last two drives. And a good challenge by Anthony Beck. That's what you can tell. You can challenge any play, and they don't lose a timeout. Well, you heard, you heard Anthony Beck saying to the officials, why should I have had to challenge that? Shouldn't that have been looked at? Um, and so nevertheless, he's right in using the challenge. Dean, what, what, what's your take on that from, from Anthony Beck's perspective. Yeah, we were we were looking at it, and Coach is right. That's something that we were looking at. We just couldn't tell. Then finally, we got that low end zone shot. We were able to tell that it was loose. So got good it. challenge by Coach Beck. Pass is incomplete. It's second down. Here we go. Let's go. Well, after a hot start by right. DC, going up 14 nothing. St. Louis. After the hey, second gun, Mike, turnover, gun. find themselves here in second and ten, great hey. field position. We're good, we're good. 180! One shot! And off goes to Hill, running across the formation, still on his feet. Brought down. Hey, Inside the 45, last? that's Santos Ramirez with a tackle, a gain of eight. That's, remember, go. Double right, Z short, action 78, slick, come on. Set, one eight, one set. Third and two, McCarron, here's the blitz, picked up nicely, completes it to Shepard with a stiff arm at the end, balls out, but it gets out of bounds. <laughs> a gain of 20 and a first down. Well, A.J. McCarron's been able to do something that the previous two quarterbacks that have faced D.C. have not been able to consistently do and find the open void because they're, they're there. there. There are some unsound elements to this defense when they decide to bring pressure. He's hung in there, showed some points, and delivered the ball. Trey Wright, boom, Z-fly, 18 taxi on. 
Let's go, let's go, move, move. 30 seconds to play here in this first quarter. Set, Wait, Wait, set. Tosses to Hill. And nothing doing over that right side. Picks a short game, two or three. Good job, guys, on the slick. That's a quarter. Good job. B Hill. Hey, B, tell B Hill. You all right, bro? It's the end of the quarter. Get some water. So, Stormy, if people listened to you last week when we were live betting in-game, you said it was a good pick to take D.C., and they went on top. Yeah. Any, any picks you're looking at right now? Well, D.C., obviously, their odds of here. Go ahead. Shepard. A huge game taken down inside the five-yard line. And we have a DC, yeah, D.C. defender player down right now. We'll keep an eye on that. But as far as your question goes, John, D.C. was certainly looking like a good bet when they were sitting there middle of the pack. But as the odds get shorter, less and less are you going to want to buy in on them. I think Seattle could actually be an interesting team to get invested in. Best offense in the XFL in terms of moving the ball. But the points just hadn't really been able to follow until last night when they got their first win of the season. So uh, 10 to 1 odds, a little bit lower on the odds board, could work their way up. Ooh, okay. Stormy Sportsbook. <laughs> Write it down. Dialing it in. Make yourself some money, everyone at home. That's it. I'll go under. Hey, I'll go under. Battlehawks in the red zone. Durant, the man in the backfield. He gets the touch, and he lost it. Did he get it back? There's a fight on the bottom of that pile. DC comes DC away ball, with it. DC ball. Dewan Neal with the fumble recovery. It looks like it's a, a good mesh. Taylor Durant just doesn't. He doesn't give a big enough envelope there for A.J. McCarron to put it in. He almost as if he grabbed at it. Traded points for turnovers. So the second turnover for D.C. Harry, we're seeing a lot of sudden changes out here. Yeah, it's just a great job by this D.C. defense that's been a strong point of this team. When you have turnovers like they just had offensively, we call it sudden change. And two times in a row, this defense showed up big, forcing a missed field goal and also forcing a fumble right there on that last possession. And you know, Harry, what's unique about this offense for D.C., Jordan Ta'amu, De'Eric King, those guys get along so well. So do the running backs. Abram Smith, Raquel Armstead, Harry, I know you played for 10 years in the NFL. Is that normal for these guys to get along like this? It's not, especially in the XFL when you know these guys are competing, trying to get to a spot where they can make an NFL roster or whatever professional team. But those guys' relationship, I interviewed Abram Smith last week, and he insisted that I have Raquel Armstead right there with them. That speaks to those guys' relationship. That is awesome. Guys know there's plenty of opportunity to go around here in the XFL. You just got to get something on tape yep. to show scouts and get to the next level. You got 10 weeks to put your best out there. And when you get your opportunity, you got to make the most of it. Ready, ready. Tackle. Second and six. Tamu throws and just past the hands of his receiver, Lucky Jackson. Right Man, he'd still be running right now. Yeah, he sure would be. Jordan Tamu would love to have that one back. That's a throw that you got to make a foot in front of the numbers, and that's just on the outstretched fingers of Jackson. And you're right, John. He might be off and running. Lucky, 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 lucky. Lucky, racing lucky. Lucky, lucky. So the clock continues to tick here outside of two minutes. Third and six for D.C. Hey, 10, 10, 10. Ready, ready. Take off. Tamu on the rollout to his left. Oh. A lot of contact. Incomplete. Looking for Josh Hammond. No flags. That was Lavert Hill there in coverage. Got the rollout right here, trying to throw the corner route. Oh, he tackled him. Mm. He's got that right hand right off of the break around the hip. Oh my God. 
Jordan Tom, none too happy with that no call. Daniel Wheeling, he's got a huge leg. Austin Prohl has to back up. My goodness, what a punt. Fields it at the 15. Prohl runs into his own man and is brought down around the 26. Let's go. Welcome back to DC. John Schriffen alongside my partner, Tom Lukenville, Harry Douglas, Stormy Bonantoni on the sidelines. We got a good one. Battle of the Unbeatens. Both teams with two turnovers here. 12 counter, F smoke one, right? This is two plays built into one. He can either run the counter play or throw the quick screen, which is the smoke. He'll base it on the numbers in the box. And off goes to Hill, pushes the pile. Empty left, empty left, Lincoln extra. It's a gain of five on first. Empty left, Lincoln extra. Muddle, muddle. Here we go. Hey, Lincoln extra. Lincoln extra. Lincoln extra. Marcel, help him out. Help him out, Marcel. Lincoln, Lincoln extra. Set. Y90. Y10. Empty backfield trying to set up the screen. And the pass is complete for a first down. On the ball, 10. That's Steven Mitchell Jr. Let's go. Gin left out. Gin left out. No, Gin left open. Gin left open. 300 jet. Brag. Y hand signal. 300. 300 jet. 300 jet. Brag. Rag, we're gonna jet. Hey! So Durant Set. is in there at running back. He's the guy who just fumbled it for Flag. St. Louis. White side! Flag is out. Completed passes to Mitchell Jr. Gain of seven. Let's see what that flag is about. Number, number six. Number six. Offside in the neutral zone at the snap. Defense number six, five yard penalty. Replay first down. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. That's Fidal Brown called for hey, the offsides. Play? First penalty Let's against DC right. today. First action right. of the season for Fidal, Fidal Brown as well. Smoke. Here we go. Trey Wright, F Pill, 12 duo, X and Z smoke. Two plays here. Duo's an inside run play where you're going to have two people doubling hey, you got a, a defender. That's where the term duo comes from. First and five. Handoff is to Durant. Gets by one tackle. And he does have enough for a first down. Picks up six. Xerox, Xerox, Xerox. Hey, King, 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 King. King. All right, King, King. Hey, Xerox, Xerox, Xerox. Look at Marcel, look at Marcel. Set. Here we go. Marcel eight and that. He's at the top of the screen. And off goes Durant. And he's brought Set down right. after a Set gain right. of seven. Action three, jet. So why did he ask Snug him to look for the Action wide receiver jet. at the top of the screen and then hand it off? Snug right. Action three, jet. Hey. G smash. Let's get this call. Because initially no, right. the defender hadn't Action walked over Aitman Action yet. And he was just alerting three him, jet. you might have that smoke, which is One that quick screen. Back. And you hear him say Xerox. Guess what a Xerox is? It's a copy. We're going to run the same thing again. <laughs> back to back, same place. Simple, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Second and three. Looking for a tight end. Instead, he's going to Aitman. Jump ball. And Aitman never saw it. That was Michael Joseph in coverage. You know, Harry, these receivers go shorty swamp right. uh, are really 11, big, 11, 11, 11. but you got to be able to separate. Right. I think that's a bit of an issue for this team. Well, yeah, when you're a bigger receiver, now you're more susceptible to a cornerback putting his hands on you, which we just seen right there by Michael Joseph for the yep. DC defenders. Aitman, he's six foot four. Campbell, six foot three. Hakeem go, Butler, six foot six. They got some big wide receivers. They do. Third and three coming up for the Battle Hawks. McCarron, empty backfield, pressured backside, gets rid of it, and Durant can't make the one handed catch. Go out! Go out that way! God damn! Dude, the running 
Jags wide open. A.J. McCarron is a guy, who, because he's playing the NFL, he demands excellence from everyone around him. No doubt. He wanted Mateo Durant to be a little wider in his route, was not happy with where he was at in terms of the spacing on the field. Fritter with the punt, fair catch called for by Ezard at the 10. See the first three episodes of the XFL docuseries, Player 54 Chasing the NFL Dream. It's available now on ESPN Plus, directed by the great one Peter Berg. This nine-part docuseries chronicles the creation of the XFL under new ownership and provides an all-access look at all eight teams. The owners of the XFL, Dwayne Johnson, Danny Garcia, Jerry Cardinal, their vision years ago to bring this league back, to give these guys an opportunity, a chance to live out their dreams, here go, here go, keep their go. dreams alive. This week three, it's been incredible so far. It has been. De'Eric King in at quarterback. We talked about this two quarterback system for DC and Reggie Barlow, head coach for DC, said the reason why it works is because they respect each other and they care about each other. Force, X plans, 29 lock. 29 lock, force, 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 Hear the 29 offensive lock. call there. Slant, 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 slant. 29 lock, 29 lock, 29 lock. Wait, wait, to go. This is Armstead trying to find a hole. Now bounces it outside, but a flag is down in the backfield. Yeah, slant. Looks like a hold. Hey, who better want to go like that? Offense, number 72. Half the distance to the goal, replay, second down. That's the right tackle, TJ Stormont. Yeah, you see him just grabbing. You see the jersey extended right there on Carson Wells, number 53. Left. 16 Gucci. 16 Gucci. Hey, 16 Gucci 5. 16 Gucci 5. 16 Gucci You start hearing those team numbers in this offense. That's quarterback run. 16, 17, 18, 19. Second and 15. Trouble for DC. De'Aaron King just does get out of his own end zone. And Lorne Lamore again was in there for the stop. Talk about collapsing. The gap, really well done, and back has no chance there. Abram Smith holding up that block off the edge of Lorne Loomer. Let's go. Flex right, race arrow. Flex right, race arrow. Hey, flex right, race arrow. Flex right, race, race. Let's go. And go, go, go. De'Eric King, known for his legs, he's going to have to throw it here. Third and 18. Rolling out to his right. Decides to take off, and there is just nothing there. St. Louis was ready for De'Eric King. That's Carlos well Carson Wells on the stop. Really good defensive stance there by St. Louis. They were prepared for quarterback run. Elorm Loomer, number 95, blew up the play on the second down. And we got flags. Were y'all holding him up? Were we holding him up or no? Okay. Okay, so not, nothing there. Okay. There is no foul on the play. Re please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Thank you for the explanation, Chris Coit. So Whelan will come on to punt it away. His last punt was an XFL season long. 61-yard punt. <laughs> he can hammer the ball. Man. Austin Prohl is the deep man for St. Louis. Whelan gets a ton of air onto this one. Prohl backing up again. Another booming kick. Prohl spinning away from one defender. Eventually brought down past the 40. Gets the ball back. Finding themselves down 14 to 8 here in the second quarter. White side. Handoff is to Hill, and Hill, what a form tackle there by Dewan Neal. 
You know, Tom, we had a good conversation this week with Anthony Beck, and he was telling us about why he's enjoyed this XFL experience. He's had an opportunity to build this St. Louis team from scratch. That right. means recruiting guys, watching their tape, drafting them, coaching them, and he's really enjoyed every part of it. He's been involved in every single facet, and I think the thing that he's done a really good job of is they've got a lot of high-end coaches on his staff. And he told those guys, you can't coach these guys to, and expect them to play like you did. They're not you. And so I think they've got a really good approach from a coaching staff standpoint. Karen, strong throw to the outside, just throws it over Shepard. Stormy? To add to that point that Tom just made about the St. Louis coaching staff, I talked to wide receiver Hakeem Butler, who said that Ricky Prohl has been the best coach that he has ever had. He has a way, despite being a two-time Super Bowl champ, of making things extremely digestible, and that group is better for it. Yeah, Stormy, I'd say the same about Leroy Glover, the defensive line coach, former All-Pro. Same thing. When they speak, you listen. Third and nine, McCarron bouncing around, and he just gets rid of it. That was Jarrell Owens, the guy pressuring McCarron. And D.C. will force a three and out. Yeah, and I agree with Anthony Beck. They were moving the, fo the football well, but for whatever reason, not on the same page there in this drive. And that's two back-to-back -back drives for both D.C. and St. Louis where the offenses got behind the chains. They got to do a much better job on first down, both teams. Offrichter, plenty of air underneath this one. And Ezard will call for the fair catch. FX Snowfall is back for its sixth and final season where a feud threatens to destroy the Saint family every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific on FX, also streaming on Hulu. All right, 421. What do you want to see out of the defenders here at this drive on offense? See what they're going to do at quarterback first and foremost. They've got Derek King back in the game. And at some point, you know, Derek King is going to have to prove that he can throw the football effectively enough so that people don't just load the box and say, hey, we're going to we're going to match you hat for hat and we're going to stop quarterback run. So at some point or another, we're going to have to see Derek King throw the football. Yeah, even on a third and 18 on his last drive, he decided to take it down because nobody was open. There's the shovel pass to the inside to Abram Smith. And Smith will pick up five. So Jordan Tom, who started the game, there's the drive chart, last five drives for the defenders. Right, and, and look at the time. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not taking any time off the clock, and, and, and you're not coming away with anything. Hey, 16 pitch. Hey, not, not shuffle, not shuffle, not shuffle, not shuffle. Yeah, pitch, fire. Yeah, 16 pitch. Yeah, yeah that's all he does. Ready, ready, to go. Second and five. There's the pitch to the outside to Armstead. But St. Louis was there. Stopped him for a gain of three. Bring up third down. Personnel, left personnel, left personnel. Left, left, left personnel. Left, left, left. Flex right. Flex right. Flex right. Get him over there. Flex left, right. Left, Get the wide over there. Left, Flex left. right. 15 Bronco. 15, hey, 15 Bronco. Bronco. 15 right. Bronco. 15 Bronco. Another quarterback run here. Got third and short, exactly what you'd like to do. You got the whole playbook when your quarterback run game on third and two. St. Louis is stacking the box right now. They were ready for it. Bring down De'Eric King. That was Kevin Atkins with the sack. I don't know if this is just a bust up front. We got Certainly, I mean, they don't block the edge. They don't block the A-gap between the center and the guard. There's nowhere to run for De'Eric King. And they got to get short up in their offensive line there in your protection patterns. So now St. Louis forces a three and out as Whelan is on to punt away again. Another booming kick. Here's Prohl. who field at the 31. He's got some blockers in front of him, still on his feet, down the right sideline, but we do have a flag down behind the play. Doing the return, number 25, blocking the back. Oh. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 25. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first and 10. That's Lucas Dennis called for the foul. You know, we don't talk about special teams much. 
But Daniel Whelan, the punter for DC, oh. man, he has been impressive. Almost a five second hang time on that last punt. Crushing the ball. Talk about putting some good stuff on tape. Hey, smoke, smoke. So a shift over to the left side of that formation for St. Louis as Hill is in the backfield behind McCarron. First and ten, handoff is to Hill. Goes over that left side. Good blocking up front for St. Louis as Joseph brings him down after a gain of eight. Well, we know what's coming now, don't we, John? <laughs> Xerox means copy. <laughs> Let's do it again. Keep it simple. Oh, he Second and two. No, they switched it up. Screen passes to Shepard. Spun down, but he does have enough for a first down. Joseph on the tackle. We have hit the two-minute warning. Welcome back to Audi Field. So as a reminder, inside the final two minutes, the clock will stop. We go to traditional college rules on first downs. The clock will stop. So plenty of time for St. Louis here with two timeouts, 155 to play here in this first half. And I like this because I, I, you want to get as much football as you can in in those two minutes. Give as many opportunities for each team as you can in those two minutes. I like this rule. I also like the running clock outside of the two yeah. minutes because it fits it in this nice three-hour window. Oh, yeah. Fans can enjoy a nice quick game. Yeah, it's fast-paced, up-tempo. <laughs> you see Anthony back there going, let's go. He forgets that he used to be us. <laughs> he knows about TV timeouts. Come on, man. Set. Hill in the backfield with McCarron. McCarron will complete it to Akeem Butler. Oh, what a move. Hakeem Butler making the defense look silly. Hakeem Butler just kind of hanging out in the open void there. AJ McCarron shows a nice poise, patience, gets the ball out. 200 jet. Hey, easy, easy. Go 200 jet. 200 jet. Seven. I know Harry had moves like that back in the day. <laughs> Making defenders fall. Second and one. McCarron over the middle. Back to Butler showing those strong hands. Reels it in for a first down. St. Louis going quick. Picked up 20 yards there. Ball is spotted, so the clock will continue to run as we approach a minute to play in this half. Empty backfield, former Karen goes back to his bu receiver, Butler. And he's dragged down after a gain of seven. Jim Wright, Jim Wright, Jim Wright, Tau, Jim Wright, Tau, six, fifty, Haas. Jim Wright, Tau, Haas. six, Haas, 50, Matt, 50. This was that last two. big play by Butler, a gain of 20, showing those strong seven. mitts. Yeah, he's got that wide catch radius, One big eight. body. One touch. 25 seconds to play in this half. Second and four. McCarron finds a soft spot in the zone. Completes it to Butler again. Somebody guard that man. Jim, who called time? Keen Butler doing a nice job just getting down the seam and then settling in the hole. 30 seconds. Such a big body and a big target, especially in the red zone, huh, Harry? We got everything we want now. Yeah, Three he is. Easy. He's a big body guy. And guys, I'll tell you, the, the previous big play that he had, he got man press across the board by D.C. Mm -hmm. So A.J. McCarron is doing a nice job of picking his matchups. Also, when D.C. is going zone, Butler's doing a phenomenal job finding the soft spot and making himself available to his quarterback. And A.J. McCarron's doing a great job finding him. Yeah, A.J. has been doing, you know, Harry, what other quarterbacks haven't been able to do, and that's dissect all of this post snap movement. He's doing a nice job of it. Harry, is there a name when the rod receiver makes the defender fall on a move? Is that called anything? You just laugh and point at him. <laughs> <laughs> and watch it on film and laugh some more. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Butler's got a lot of ha-has on this drive. 18 seconds to play in the half. First and 10 for McCarron. Finds his running back Hill out of the backfield. He's going to be stopped at the one. And a timeout, St. Louis. Hey, 12. Timeout, St. Louis. Stay out there. Stay out there. Stay out there. 30 seconds. Stay out there. Hey, we cannot have a sack. We cannot have a sack here. Yes, sir. Please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. 11 seconds, please. So Anthony Beck telling his quarterback, we're out of timeouts. Yep. You cannot afford a sack here. No negative plays. You want to get the ball. You're going to throw it, get the ball out of your hand quickly because you might have a couple. And let's go double right clamp. Double right clamp. Two Jet Ohio and wrap to the left side. Hey, double right clamp. Two Jet Ohio. 11 seconds. Can you run the ball here? Darius picks for Hakeem. Boy, you, you'd have to have two plays in your pocket. You could. But that second play, you better be ready to roll and snap the ball immediately. Hey, hey. Loudest part of the stadium. St. Louis on second and goal from the one. McCarron looking right. Lofts it up. Incomplete. And he's looking for his big receiver, Butler. We're going to do this quick. Field goal team alert. Be ready. Jin left open. 300 jet blog. Wide hand signal. Jin left open. 300 jet blog. Wide hand signal. Got to be fast. Only six seconds. Let's go. Jet swag. 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 You're going to say Y hand signal. He's going to give the Y receiver a signal of what route he wants to run here. They've got matchups because they've got size on the outside. Third and goal, hot route, touchdown! Two point, two point, two point. Hakeem Butler with the touchdown reception. And they got to break him up afterwards. 10, 10, 10, double right, two jet, double wrap. Double right, two jet, Man, Butler just came alive on that drive. Yep. That's the route AJ gave him. Perfectly thrown football. Here we go, let's go. Let's go, we got to finish. Come the Hakeem Butler show. 11, 11, 11. Double right, 11. two jet, double wrap. Here we go. Be ready. St. Hey, Louis ready. is going double for right. two. They two converted jet, earlier wrap. on their two point conversion from the five yard line. Let's see what they can do here. We're all tied at 14. Check out AP on this spot right now. Set. Hill is the man in the backfield to the right of McCarron. Three wide receiver One set. McCarron, good protection, double pumps, but it breaks down. Sack, Jarrell Owens, two-point conversion, no good. Kick off, kick it off, be smart, let's go. Wrap this shit up. All tied up at 14, and Hakeem Butler, yeah, I know. What, what a remarkable drive, making plays when contested, making plays when he's covered, using that big body, that wide catch radius. Make a couple people miss, but if you're A.J. McCarron, you've got to feel really good about the trust you have right now and the individual size mismatch that Hakeem Butler brings. He's just got a good feeling. Harry said it best. He's really good one-on-one -on -one using his body, but then when it was zone, he did a really good job of just settling in to the open space. And, Tom, this is a guy who was originally not on the St. Louis roster. Right. He reached out to the coaching staff threw a DM on Twitter, sent him a video, here's my stuff, take a look. They took a chance on him, and man, is he paying off. Yeah, and he's a remarkably productive player in college. There was plenty to watch on this hey, guy. You know, we got to be ready for all their bullshit. Gotcha. That's that's uh, desperation time for the guy. What are you doing now? Ain't working. Right. <laughs> Here the coach is discussing there on the sideline, I think some of the chippiness that's happening between these two teams, and when they go into the locker room, make sure they're taking care of business and acting like pros. With three seconds to play in the half, Donnie Hagman will kick things away for St. Louis. Ezard is the returner. Both teams can move once Ezard touches it. If it goes into the end zone, that is an infraction. It will come out to the 35-yard line.
So Jordan Tom will come back in at quarterback for DC. Three seconds. They try anything here? Uh, they might be able. They they might be able to take yeah, a chunk, but I think they're going to take it into the locker room here. Yep. So Tamu will just take a knee. You enjoying this? <laughs> How can you not? It's set for the start of this third quarter. Ezard fields. Both teams can now release after he touched it. And he's going to be brought down shy of the 30. So DC will start with the ball to start this third quarter. And we talked about this dual quarterback situation. It's not a controversy because they both know what's coming right. and they both lot like each other and encourage each other. Yeah, it, it's a blend of a, a power running game, quarterback run game, and they like to take some shots downfield. We saw that with Chris Blair there in the first quarter that led to their first touchdown. And line up inside. Flex. Yeah, 23, shoot. So oh, Jordan Tom will right, start yeah. at quarterback here, here on this go. first drive ready, of the third ready. quarter. Set, go. Tom will hand it off to Smith. And we talked in that first half with Harry about just how both quarterbacks love each other, how both running backs love each other. And I asked Jordan right, Tom and Derek King how they do that. 22. He said, we all go out to eat, let's go, let's go, let's go. and we play credit card roulette. <laughs> I said, what, what is credit card roulette? We all put our credit cards down. The waitress picks, the waiter picks whose credit card pays for it. And there's Tavo getting dragged down. Harry, you ever play credit card roulette in the NFL? Um, we went out to eat. We played credit card roulette. <laughs> and man, when my credit card was the one that came back to me early, I Give praise God every time. <laughs> <laughs> you might be in a little different tax bracket than they're in here. You're right about that. Ram, ram, ram. Third and seven coming up for DC. Damu, good protection. He's got a man wide open. Hits him on the money. Lucky Jackson makes a move. Did he step out of bounds? Yes, he did. Marked out at the 40, but a 28-yard completion. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Let's go, let's go. I like the let's tempo go. here. This is really smart. Big play. Get up and run another one. St. Louis isn't lined up. Got 11 men on the field just now. First and 10 from the 40. Damu will take it off with his feet. And he's going to be brought down after a short gain of a couple. It's Kevin Atkins for the stop. So he felt like Lucky Jackson pushed off to create that space. Tamu pressured up the middle. And he will complete that to Abram Smith. That was Atkins already there on the pressure. Gain of six. This is what Anthony Beck was talking about. He felt like that push right there got the defender off balance and to the ground, and I'm not so sure he's not wrong. Twins right. Twins right. Twins right. Twins right. 82 DC. 82 DC. 82 DC. So on third and short, they bring an extra tight end in. Trey Barry comes on. on that left side of the formation. Now he goes in motion. Toss is to the right side, back to Tamu. And Tamu just does get rid of it. I threw, I threw, I threw. The runner was down prior to the pass. Down. It's fourth down. No, I threw it. Taniella Tupo. Put it to 43. Credited with the sack. Intentional grounding. I threw it. Intentional Correction. grounding. The pass is incomplete. Anthony it's Beck's right. Down. Wait for him. Spread left. Six. Five. 22. Play clock is winding down. The clock is at one. That's an intentional foul. He's either. I don't. I don't have a challenge or anything. I can't do it. Let's go, man. Get the first. <clears throat> so they reset the play clock. Is that right? Roger. 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 And because oh, Beck used his there? challenge in the first half, he knows he doesn't have another one. Fourth and two. On the ground, sneaking through the hole. That's Abram Smith with a first down for DC. Ricky, 
Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky. Here's what he thinks is intentional grounding. It's tough to tell from that angle, but I did not see a back or an eligible receiver anywhere near. I think Anthony Beck's right on that one, but he's got to start focusing on the next play. Handoff is to Armstead, trying to get over the edge on the right. Gives a stiff arm to Travis Feeney as Feeney pushes him out. Ace right. Ace right. Right. So the unique rule here in the XFL is that both teams. I want to know. I didn't see anybody around them. He's still talking about that play. Both teams receive one challenge they can use at any point during the game as long as they have a timeout remaining. He already challenged the play in the first half, so he does not have another one. Back to the ground with Armstead. And a good ankle tackle there by Wells. Pro pony, pro pony right. Pony right, pony right. Two backs, two backs, two backs. Two backs, two backs. Pro pony right. Wide pro dump. Pony right, wide dump. Wide dump. Hey, wide dump, 50 wide dump. So both Smith and dump. Armstead will be in the backfield with Ta'amu. Tenth play of this drive go. coming up. Ready, ready, set, go. Third and nine. Pressured backside, Ta'amu got rid of it. But his tight end. Ethan Wolf could not hang on to it. So you hear that wide dump. You look at Ethan Wolf right there. He actually goes right to the ground, acts like he's falling down, and then he gets up to, to, to run the option route. You see him right there on the, on the right, falling down, getting on the ground, and then he's got to make that catch. Good, accurate throw from Jordan Tomlin. So a 41 yard Number field 96. goal attempt. Number 98. Matt McCrane is on to put some points on the board for D.C. Snap is clean. Kick is up. And McCrane puts it through. So Matt McCrane kicking things away for D.C. Shepard, the returner. Once he touches, they can move. There he goes. A lemon comes out. Shepard still on his feet. Makes a cut back up the middle. Shepard. Who will track him down? And he's taken down from behind. What a return. Darius Shepard, St. Louis, in good field position. Really one of the, maybe the longest kickoff return in, in, in XFL history. Watch him shift gears right there. Really nice job keeping his feet, maintaining his balance, and then Shepard just gets in a foot race. Fantastic field position now for St. Louis to hopefully get an answer. Trayvon Fuller saved a touchdown right there for Did DC. 72-yard return. Longest so far this XFL season. Say again. Lemon was thrown. Set. What is it? They start with Hill on the ground. And Hill will be stopped for a gain of a few. And some extracurricular after the play. I'm telling you, this, team, this game means a lot to both of these teams coming in undefeated. Stormy, what do you got for us? Just a little information for you guys. St. Louis center Mike Panashuk was the last guy out of the locker room, wasn't even out here for D.C.'s opening drive here to start the half. He and Brian Hill both dealing with what appears to be cramping coming back into this half. And also after the big return, Darius Shepard now in the tent was holding on to his right hamstring. All right, Swami, thank you so much for the update. Panashu, the center, he was a defensive lineman. Yep. And he yep. showed tape of a couple weeks he had worked on being a center, and that's how this team took a chance on him. Beck said he's been a star so far for St. Louis. Anthony Beck thinks he's going to be in an NFL camp as a center. McCarron, wide open, Jake Sutherland. A 23-yard touchdown pass as St. Louis takes the lead. You know Anthony Beck, the former 12-year tight end in the National Football League. You can see him right in there. And this is just a nice 
job of taking advantage. Pre-snap of exactly knowing exactly what DC was going to be in as we see some more lemons hit the field. I was wondering who was screaming. <laughs> that was A.J. McCarron fired up. And they go for two from the five-yard line. The pitch inside to Hill, and he does not get in. They're so grateful for this exactly. opportunity. Exactly. The appreciation in their voice and how much fun they're having in the, in the sport that they love. Ezard fields. Both teams can release. Oh, we lost it, but got it back. All right, in the truck, we got Aaron Owens producing, Johnny Hanna directing, and they find every angle to make oh. sure we got this game covered. Look at this angle from the top of the stadium. Let's go. The beer snake has reached the top of section 137, and we are all over it. Stormy needs to be all over it. I, we got to get Stormy to, to run over there, get up into the stands amongst the people, and give a report. I want to know how heavy it is. Like, we were talking about that in the break. But it's almost to the top, right? Look at that. That is three quarters worth of empty beer cups. Smith on the ground. Can the defenders channel their inner beer snake and come back here down by three? <laughs> so because they've reached the top of 137, they're now starting a new one. Well, of course they are. What else do they have to do? Here we go, here we go. DC Defenders fans, we love you. You guys are the best. Second and five, back to the ground with Smith. And Smith pushes the pile enough for a first down. Here we go, home the ball, the ball, the ball. Trips left, trips left, trips right. 71 slam. Trips right, 71. Trips left, trips right. Trips left, 71. Trips left, 71. 71. Trips. It's okay, I'm trying to get the room for X. Here we go, here we go. 71, slant. Bubble. Ready, ready. First and Set, 10 go. for Jordan Tamu. Looking for that slant. There it is. He finds Lucky Jackson, puts it on the let's money. Go, let's go, let's go. And he picks up seven. Razor, 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 razor. Razor, This is the tempo that helped him that right. first drive of the game score a touchdown. Big time. And again, here we go, here we go. being successful on first down gives you so many ready, opportunities ready. here Set, by completing that slant route. Second and short, quick pass to the outside to Hammond. Hammond, a good run after the catch. Let's go, let's go, let's go. get up, get up. Let's flex go. Right, flex and you hear Tom, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. Lisa, Lisa. Who's Lisa? Lisa, 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 Lisa. Lisa. Slamming, slamming, Ethan, slamming. It's, it's left, I can ready, tell you that. <laughs> ready, ready. Take him. Tom throws in, and his tight end, Wolf, can't haul it in. It's an unfortunate drop there. Nice play design, too. Flex, it's a left, nice tempo left, work. Left, it did. Queen, flex Queen. left. Queen. 15 Bronco. 15 Bronco. 15 Bronco. Hey. Let's go flex right. 15 Bronco. 15 Bronco. Here we go. Here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. St. Louis. They bring the blitz. And the quick throw, Chris Blair, the wide receiver, wasn't ready for it. It was both there. It was both there. Chris Blair running that slant right here. Yo, red, flood, F shoot. Red, flood, F shoot. Seemed like it was difficult for him to locate that ball coming out of the shadow and into the sunlight. Yes. Free release. Yes. That thing got on him quick. Yeah, he wasn't ready. Ready, ready. Wolf the tight end in go. motion on third and ten. Good protection for Tom, who has a man, completes it. Lucky Jackson gets behind the defense, a gain of 36. Just a nicely thrown football on, a, on really a vertical route. You got the out route underneath it. Lucky Jackson just runs by the defender. Defender's got his eyes to the inside and keying the quarterback. You can't play man defense while you're watching the quarterback. That was Mike Hampton, the man who got beat. Empty backfield, first and ten. Tamu, he gets 
decked as he delivered. Lakeem Williams. They say he's the fastest linebacker on this team out of Syracuse. Well, it also helps when you're unblocked. <laughs> Jordan Tom, who's got to get, got to have a feel for, for some of that pressure, and then pre-snap, know where he's exposed within the protection. Right side, 71, 71, let's go. Now, because the coordinator can talk to the quarterback, can you tell your quarterback, "Hey, watch your back right there"? Sure, yeah, absolutely, he could have. But I don't think he wants to talk to him post post snap. Second and ten after. Incompletion, Tamu drilled again. That's Williams delivering the blow, and he's talking after that one. <laughs> you hit out there, you could talk a little bit. Spread, spread, spread. Spread right, yellow, spread left, spread left, spread left, spread left. Red rocket, red, red rocket, rocket, red rocket, spread left, red rocket. Here we go, here we go. Red rocket. Red, red. We don't have to force it now, but ain't there. We already got a field goal. Ready, ready. Tenth Ten. play of this drive for Tamu. Completes that one. Catch is made there by Josh Hammond, a gain of 12. Move the chains. Josh Hammond just running a what we call an option route here. He's just going to settle in, stay in the open void, show the quarterback your chest. Nice connection and pitch and catch there from Jordan Tama. Here we go. First and goal for the defenders. Tama keeps it himself. He's got a hole up the middle, but it closed fast. He's going to be marked down at the two. He had the option of pitching this right here or taking it inside. Yeah, the pulling guard. That's a well-designed play for quarterback run. That was Tupo there on the stop for St. Louis. Armstead is the man in the backfield to the left of Tamu. Tamu keeps it himself again, and he walks into the end zone. A two-yard touchdown run. D.C. retakes the lead. So DC, we don't kick here extra points in the XFL. You got to go for one, two, or three. DC electing to go for two from the five yard line. Tamu rolling, stops, throws, got his man. Lucky Jackson, two point conversion is good. Snake. Let's take a look at our progressive game flow. It'll start here. Last time St. Louis had it with their kickoff, a huge return. Darius Shepard. That led to a touchdown pass by A.J. McCarron. Finding his tight end, Jake Sutherland. And then how about DC with a 12-play, 81-yard drive. Jordan Tamu finishes it off. Jordan Tamu had a great drive there. Lucky Jackson was the main man in the passing game. Jordan Tamu actually right now is in that medical tent, getting his hand looked at. So Shepard fields it. Away they go. Had a huge return his last one. This one brought out to the 30. D.C. has scored on their first possession of each half. Yeah, they've gotten off to a hot start. And, and you know, now we're going to have to see, can Seattle, or excuse me, can St. Louis answer? This is kind of how, it's, it's, it's really very similar to how the first quarter played out before things started to get sloppy. Now we'll see as we talked about at halftime, can you avoid those mistakes? Can you protect the football here in the second half? Well, we could tell the the under never really had a shot. We thought this was going to be a shootout from the first quarter. The over has already hit. 
go to the ground here with Brian Hill. Let's send it down to Harry. I'm here with wide receiver Lucky Jackson. All three of you guys are scoring drives. It's because the wide receivers have made explosive plays. How does it feel to be involved in this thing, man? Uh, I mean, we knew we was going to step up. Uh, O-line's been doing good. We got to give the quarterback a chance. He's putting the ball up there, and we're going to make plays just like we said we would. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Harry, they've taken advantage of some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Jordan Tom has put the ball where it needs to be. Let's see if St. Louis here can answer. Under two and a half to play here in this third quarter. D.C. up by five. McCarron pressured, and he'll be dropped for the sack. D.C. with all the momentum right now. Joe Wallace bringing down McCarron. Wallace, 99 from his nose tackle spot. He's just so disruptive. What he lacks in height, he makes up for with quickness and leverage, and he plays so hard. All right, I heard Obama special. We didn't get to see it earlier. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like here on third and 13. McCarron! Ball is out. Was his arm going forward, or was it a strip? Davin Bellamy. Three ball. Fumble, fumble. Okay, fumble. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. Where's our recovery spot? Checking. 24 is a good spot. 24 is a good spot. So DC already running their next play. It was ruled a fumble recovery. Dean, of course, they looking to see if the arm's left. going forward. Let's go. Flex Ball's out Flex prior to that. Good call. Yeah, that was Davin Bellamy, the guy who stripped it out and forced it free. Yep, former Georgia Bulldog. So D.C. with all the momentum right now. De'Eric King in at quarterback, handing it off to Smith. Last time we saw De'Eric King in this first half, they challenged him to throw. Yep. Do you think that we're going to see him throw here on this drive? Well, Ace left. Hold on. Ace left. Let's go Bear Snake Zero. Bear Snake Zero. Hey, Turbo, 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 Bear Snake Zero. <laughs> um, I think they're going to have to at some point. They're going to have to load up the box and say, hey, you're going to have to beat us on the outside. We're not letting you run it on us. Third and two. St. Louis not allowing any push up front. I think Derek King should have pulled that ball right there. Had he pulled the ball, he might be walking into the end zone right now. So a loss of one will bring up fourth down, and DC's bringing on the field goal unit. Little surprised that they made the quarterback switch after the momentum that was gained offensively under Jordan Ta'amu to get the ball right there in the red area. I don't know if you want to disrupt that flow, and it, it clearly for this particular series wasn't a successful. Derek King in the first two games has been the spark off the bench, yes. but today seems like St. Louis has been ready every time he came out there. No doubt about it. Great turnout, crowd, beer snake. We have a sister beer snake that's being developed as we speak. Snap is clean, kick is up, and McCrane adds three more for DC, taking an eight point lead. All right, Stormy, if people listened to you last week, they made some money. What is your best bet so far right now? Well, here, I want you guys to help me talk through this a little bit because bettors were expecting that field goal to be made on the live line. They went from, D.C. went from a four and a half point favorite up to a seven and a half point favorite very quickly. And I want you guys to tell me if you think the scoring is going to continue here in this quarter. The total sitting at 56 and a half. So can we get Ooh. more back and forth? And can St. Louis continue to do what they have done the previous two weeks? weeks in the fourth quarter. They are a plus 575 money line underdog right now, which means you bet 100 bucks, you yeah. win 575 back if Whoa. they win this thing. Wait, Stormy. St. Louis has come from behind in their first two wins mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. 
Don't but we think they could potentially do that again? So it's very, very possible, but important for betters to also keep in mind that this DC Defender squad has also pitched back-to-back -back fourth quarter shutouts. So yep. who do you have more faith in? Ooh. Stormy, you got to tell me, because you're the expert. What do you got? Oh, it's hard to count out AJ McCarron in the fourth, guys. He makes me <laughs> a little nervous, I got to tell you. Stephen Mitchell Jr. on the return. And he is forced out of bounds. See the first three episodes of the XFL docuseries Player 54, Chasing the NFL Dream. It's available now on ESPN Plus, directed by Peter Berg. This nine-part docuseries chronicles the creation of the XFL under new ownership and provides an all-access look at all eight teams. Dwayne Johnson, Danny Garcia, Jerry Cardinal. I mean, thank you guys for bringing the XFL back. This is everything I could have imagined and then some. The players have all been grateful. The coaching staffs have been grateful. Everyone. Look at this turnout, too. I mean, just the investment. McCarron, quick pass to the outside, finds Mitchell Jr. AJ McCarron takes his game to another level in the fourth quarter. He certainly does. He's played his best football when things have been on the line. When they've needed something from him is when he's performed the best. And that interception you see there, that one interception for A.J. McCarry, his, his wide receiver fell down essentially and led to a pick six. Range it! Range it! Set! No, pylon! Sutherland, the man in motion on second and two. McCarron fakes the handoff. Plenty of protection, but some air underneath of a dangerous pass, incomplete. That was broken up by Francis Bernard. Francis Bernard does a great job of finding his landmark when he drops into zone, and he gets right in front of the crosser, which is Marcel Aitman, number three. And he's just keying the quarterback, getting to where he's supposed to be. Really well played and executed there by Francis Bernard. Greg Williams, defensive coordinator at DC. Here we go, here we go. St. Louis, three for eight on third downs. This is third and two. McCarron, jump ball. Incomplete. Stephen Mitchell thought he might have had it, but didn't come away with it. This ball would have had to have been just dropped into the bucket perfectly, and he's looking directly up into the sun. See the safety coming off the head, off the hash there, late. Nice job by Dewan Neal to recover defensively. Here, Greg Williams yelling, "Watch the head bob, watch the the hard count." They want to give him a free play. Offrichter punts this one away to Ezard. Ezard will get a chance to return it spinning and right into a tackle. Who broke apart Better there ready. briefly, but we're back go. intact. On first and ten, they go to Abram Smith. And Smith gets a gain of two on first down. There he is on the bottom. He's just one hand in it, like no problem. We're good. Spread right tight. 71, all gator. 71, 71, 71. All gator. That's the sister snake that they're trying to start. Go, go. Yep. The big one is to the right. That there one goes all the way up section 137. Damu throwing on the money, finds Josh Hammond. Hammond a gain of 10 for a first down. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Really decisive throw that time from Jordan Tamu. Flex 51, flex 51, flex 51. Here we go. Spread. Spread left. Spread left. Spread left. 22 all stops. 22 lock all stops. Here we go. Here we go. Ready, ready. Four wide with Armstead in the backfield. Tamu, quick throw. Back shoulder throw is complete to Lucky Jackson. This D.C. offense, they are humming right now. Harry, walk us through that. The back shoulder once again taking advantage of the defense. 
Yeah, from the wide receiver position, you're running a goal route, but if you can't get on top of the defender, your quarterback is going to put it back shoulder where only he can catch the football. Great job by Jordan and also Lucky Jackson locating yeah. the football and getting his foot down. Yeah, it's so hard to defend because you're either it's either going to be a pass interference or a catch, right? Exactly. Here we go, here we go. Right Jackson, his fourth catch for 89 yards all coming in this half. Tahamu keeps it himself, safely will slide down. Sugar, sugar, sugar. And DeLuca there with the stop for St. Louis. Let's get the other way, I think. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you're DC, you know St. Louis offense. They come back in the fourth quarter. You've got to put together a drive here. you got to put together, and you got to end it with a touchdown. Uh, you don't want to leave this team in St. Louis on the field offensively if you're going down and kicking field goals. Second and ten. Bodies up in the box. Armstead runs right through him. A speed burst picks up ten. First down. Really nice job hitting the crease, getting downhill. Raquel Armstead is a big physical back. And again, the influence of a running quarterback helps open everything else up because the defender's sitting there going, well, is the quarterback going to keep it? Is he going to, is he going to hold on to it? You know, D.C.'s been doing so well using tempo, but do you almost want to use some clock and slow things down but, here? Potentially, but I don't think you want to become something that you're not, right? Th this is where they've had success, so let's not screw it up. Armstead following his blockers finds another hole. A gain of 11 on first down for Armstead. Let me know. Let me know. Having their way right now. And I mean, let me know. Tony Wright. Tony Wright. Gotta help our Tony Wright. Flex 22. Flex bump cube zero. So they're going to run 22, which is going to be inside zone to the right. Both Smith and Armstead in the backfield. It's the gift to Armstead. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Coach. And you heard Jordan oh, Tamu. Keep, keep running that same play. Yeah. 22, 23. The arc needs to pull it. Yep, did you hear that right there? That's Jordan telling. Flex charger zero. Go ahead Flex and pull it. Flex charger zero. Flex charger zero. There's Derek King in the game right now. 22 23. Tony Wright. Zone to Tony right or left. 22. Tony Wright, 22. Hey, 22, 22, 22. So Derek King is in there on second and three for the defenders. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Take it King will give it to Smith. And Smith is going to be stopped just short of the marker. See where the spot is. They're confirmed it will be short. It'll bring up third down. Trey, put tight, Trey tight. Ace, ace, ace right, ace right. Yak. 17 fire. Oh, yeah, 17 fire. 17 fire. 17 fire. You got yes. Right. Here we go. Right, yes. On the other side. Right, right, right. On the other side. On the other side. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Hey, we go. We go. We go. Time out. Get in. The first of the half. 30 seconds. So DC making sure they're on the same page offensively, calling a timeout there. So they wanted a tray. That's a formation, but it also required the tight end to be in on the call, and the tight end came onto the field late didn't get the call and was lined up wrong and so they couldn't run it that was going to be I think a quarterback run with something tagged on the end of it again the team numbers to the right or left even odd 18 19 16 17 I think this is four down territory too here. This isn't field goal kicking time if you're DC. Unless you take a massive loss right here, I think they go for it. This will be the first third down go, of the go, drive for DC. Third and a short one. King keeps it. And he's got it up for the first down. A gain of four. De'Eric King just following his blockers. They went away from the overload, which was to the right side, so they pulled quarterback counter. Really good play call. Able to convert. Ace left. Ace left. 
16 Gucci. 16 Gucci. Fire. Hey, we got 16 Gucci fire. One more, ready? This will be the 10th play coming up on this drive. Over five minutes for the game clock. Nothing doing there as Smith just slides down safely. That was Willie Harvey blowing it up. A loss of six. See Derek King and, and Abram Smith talking about it. Hey, lucky. Lucky. Bridge, bridge, bridge. Let's go get 10 personnel. I mean, that thing's going to fly out into the parking lot soon. Spread right tight. <laughs> Love it. 71, Z mesh. Z mesh. Hey, 71, 71, 71. Look at flex cover two, flex 52, flex 52, flex 52, flex 52. Here we go, here we go. Here's these crossing routes again. Ready? Take Second and goal. King looking to throw. Had two men, and he finds Smith. And Smith will be tackled after a gain of six. Flex cover two, don't drop to the end zone, guys. Come on. I mean, he had two receivers right next to each other. Yeah. Let's go. So he had two crossers, and then the running back was actually in the way, trips wasn't right, he, Harry? Trips right. Let's go. Trips even right. hawk, double. Even hawk, double buzz zero. Even hawk, double buzz lady, zero. Lady, lady, hey, lady, 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 Just lady. Just read the end there. Lady, lady, lady. QB. Telling Derek King to read the defensive end. Ready, ready. Take it off. King looking left, gets rid of it. Touchdown. Chris Blair, a four-yard touchdown pass from De'Eric King, waving to the fans. Well, we said De'Eric King's going to have to throw it, right? You're going to have to give something to offset what has been a strong run game for D.C. all season long, particularly at the quarterback spot, and two critical throws. Completed one for a touchdown from Derek King. DC, because we don't kick extra points in the extra in the XFL, will elect to go for two from the five yard line. Tom was on the field, and now we're going to blow this one dead. I think we got some lemons coming on the field again. The play has been paused for lemons that are flying on the field. The teams are going to go to their sidelines. He announced something. Only in the XFL. That's why we love it. Now, if you want your beer snake, you got to act accordingly. All right? Now, let's understand something. The beer snake's a privilege. It's not a right. Don't get your privileges taken away due to poor conduct. Now, the Lemons only came out in week one because, to your point, they, they took didn't their toy allow away. the beer snake. Yeah, they took their toy away. To the powers that be got on the same page, allowed the beer snake to come back this week. You cannot be throwing lemons. You can dress like a lemon. Don't throw any lemons. We're going bunch right, Zach. Yellow, Z mesh. You ever experienced anything like this here at Audi Field? <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. Well, in, in 2020, we had a couple of games here in the, the exact same environment. They love their football here. The venue is a perfect spot for it, but they're invested. There's no doubt. <laughs> Don't take <laughs> out snake. <laughs> See, now you can do that. That's good, wholesome fun right there. You've got the lemon hats. Hey, let's, let's go flex. Let's go flex 52 here. Flex 52. Flex 52. Flex 52. Flex 52. So the fans have listened. Flex 52. No more lemons coming out. And the two-point conversion is coming up. Ready, ready. Tom, who went at quarterback. Smith, the running back to his right. Tamu fires one and chopped down is Josh Hammond just short. No good. I'm with wide receiver Chris Blair. A lot of people in this organization told me that you're a sleeper. You're one on one backside. You got a slant. Take me through your mindset. I mean, you just seen the results. You just seen the results. It was a touchdown. So, you know what I'm saying? One on one backside, I'm taking me every time. You know what I'm saying? So, say less. Thank you, my man. <laughs> 
That was Darius Shepard again on that huge return, man. He has been big for St. Louis. He's been huge, and you asked the question, can St. Louis do this again? Well, that certainly Hell puts yeah. you in a position. Yeah. Anthony Beck's loving it. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, be all right! Shit. Down by 14, A.J. McCarron, 550 to work with. And three timeouts. Sutherland, the man going in motion for St. Louis. There's McCarron. They start this drive on the ground with Brian Hill. A good tackle there by Reggie Northrup. Cyclone left. Cyclone left. Cyclone left. Cyclone left. Cyclone left. Cyclone left. Joker. 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 John and Tom, you guys talking about can the St. Louis team do it again? Anthony Beck on this sideline has been saying a ton. Dig deep. You guys got to believe just one play at a time. That return was a big play. Now see if they can string a few of these together. There's McCarron and his pass incomplete. Looking for Giovanni Haskins. I mean, Stormy, we've seen this in the first two weeks for St. Louis. They've come from behind in each game to win in the fourth quarter. Look at the play differential. Yeah. 37 plays to just nine for St. Louis. St. Louis just hasn't had many opportunities, haven't had the ball. DC's been able to extend drives, take time off the clock. Third and eight. McCarron out of the shotgun. Across the middle, finds the crossing, Austin Prohl. And he's going to be brought down after a gain of seven. Fourth and short. Looks like the offense is staying out there. Yeah, I like this call. Viper, 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 Viper. God damn it, get them off. There we go. Let's go. Jin left open. Jin left open. Jin left open. 300 jet. 300 jet. Jin left open. 300 jet. Why signal? Defenders fans getting loud. This is the ball game right here. On fourth and one. McCarron looking to throw. Incomplete. Was trying to find Butler. Nidare Rouse with the good defense for DC. Yeah, and they, uh, AJ McCarron would love to have this throw back. He's got a tremendous height advantage, six inches from Rouse to Butler, and just doesn't place the ball where it needs to be. That would have been an easy back shoulder catch. And Harry, I, that, that's just a missed opportunity on a perfect one-on-one -on -one scenario. Yeah, you got to be able to connect right there, especially on a key fourth down conversion. But Tom, I got to tell you, man, this secondary for the DC defenders, yeah. those guys have showed up and showed out today. And it's, it hasn't just been this game. It's been every single game that they played in this year. Ready, ready. Set, so go. DC trying to run out the clock to Amu. We'll hand it off to Smith. Gets a gain of seven on first down. St. Louis does have all three timeouts remaining. Leon, turn around, Leon. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit more rapid. Don't, don't do nothing stupid. Just tell Hold on to the ball. Tell enough, Trey, don't do nothing. You get up there and just fucking, uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, I didn't, by the time we caught it, we didn't have any time. Uh, Terrible, come on. 23. You hear Fred Kice, the offensive go, coordinator at D.C., go, saying, go, don't do anything stupid. Protect the ball. Ready, ready. Set, go. They go back with Smith. A rush straight ahead, picks up the first down. Let's send it down to Harry with a defensive mastermind for D.C. I'm with defensive coordinator Greg Williams. Coach, what do you got to say about you guys' performance today? They fight hard every single snap. We as coaches got to help them out. Okay, they, they made some great adjustments at halftime both in technique and understanding. You got to love these guys. Coming into the game today, St. Louis didn't turn the football over. You guys are able to force three turnovers. Yep, you know what? Three turnovers, at, or, and listen to me, don't call them turnovers, call them takeaways. <laughs> it's takeaways on defense, but we had a couple of more we could have gotten. So hopefully we'll finish this game with another takeaway. Thank you, Coach. Keep you taking bet. that damn ball you away. You bet, take that ball away. <laughs> <laughs> 
We stand Great. corrected. It's a takeaway. That's right. Greg Williams, man. I mean, you look at his defense, and it's so unorthodox. What is it that makes it work so well? <laughs> Just all of the, the eye candy, if you will, all of the movement. We talked about it coming on air today. It's a lot to digest, and it's not always sound, but you've got to identify it if you're going to be able to beat it. And for the most part, quarterbacks in this league haven't gotten onto that yet. The two-minute warning. D.C. Trying to stay perfect on the season at 2-0. Can they get to 3-0 up 14, 158 to play? Jordan, I don't think we're going to go trade left, and I'm just going to run 22 duo. Tell them nothing stupid, hold the ball, let's fight, let's get this first down. Get the first down, protect the ball. What was it, 23? Trade off, this is 22 duo. Trade off, 22 duo. 22 duo. Hey, 22 duo. First down, we got the win. Here you go, Lon. Hey, we're here. Yeah, 22, 22 duo. I just want to talk to y'all. Hey, we get this first down, we win this game. So you, it starts with y'all right here. Push them. I'll come back there if I need to. All right, Trey left now. Trey left, 22 duo. Hey, duo, oh, double team. Oh, double team. Let's go, guys. So flex charge zero. Flex charge zero. Flex charge zero. Hey, just watch the extra shit, too. Watch the extra shit. Big Trey, you good, cousin? We got most of the two. Trey left. Trey left. 22 duo. 22, 22 duo. duo. Trey left. 22 duo, baby. Great hand up. I'm going to carry my fake, though. Oh, wait, don't line up yet. Come here. Trey left. 22 duo. Yeah. Flex charges zero. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Huh? Make sure we got the quarterback what? taken care of. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. Flex charges zero. Huh? Yeah, let's clean up this. Hey, Q, 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 Q. Stay right here in front of me. How great are these DC Defenders fans? Love yeah. it. Don't forget, stay with us right here on FX. Coming up next, Orlando is taking on Arlington. And then tonight, the nightcap at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. San Antonio taking on Houston. And we're lucky because we get this rematch. Yep. On March the 18th, our crew will be in St. Louis when D.C. goes there. Big hit. Armstead doesn't get much. That'll bring up fourth down. St. Louis, their first of the half. 30 seconds. So St. Louis uses their first time out. They've got two left, which means if D.C. can get this first down. Hey. But they're going to decide to get the special teams on and punt yeah, this one away. Considering who their punter is and what he's capable of doing, you have to do that. Give it to me quick as possible. Got it. I mean, it can't be last minute. Yep. Let me change it. A.B., dial a couple nice ones up if you want, if you want it. I was talking with Daniel Whelan earlier, and he was saying it's a little tougher because normally you want to boot it and angle it out of bounds, but you can't kick can't. it out of bounds here. Right. So what the punters do is they point the ball down mm -hmm. so that when they kick it, it goes end over end, and when it lands, it kind of checks up. Exactly. Like you're hitting a, a, like a, a wedge. Pitch, a pitching wedge. Correct. No question. So when you watch him, he'll put the end of the ball down when he punts this one away instead of hitting the fat part of the ball. That one, he just boomed it. Went ahead and punted it away. Angle it, looking to go out of bounds, and it dies. <laughs> but it does go into the end zone for a touchback. That wow. thing almost died right before the goal line. On the two-inch line. <laughs> Whoa. Look at this. 
Almost could have just left it. Oh, it was going in. So anyway. close. <laughs> Daniel Whelan has put on a punting show today. He has. Here we go. Let's see what it's going to do. So the ball will come out to the 35 yard line hey, because it went jet. into the end zone. Three, three. Let's see what A.J. McCarron's got dialed up here. Two Seven. timeouts remaining for St. Louis. Karen completes that one to Butler. Butler, three red jerseys, and he still doesn't go down. Picks up seven. Clock will continue to run. That's just taking time off the clock. Karen, his jersey being tugged down, and eventually he goes down. Andre Mintz bringing him down in St. Louis calls a timeout. Timeout St. Louis for a second and a half, 30 seconds. The play just kills you because not only do you have a negative yardage play, but you also have to use a timeout as opposed to an incomplete pass and just getting it out of your hand. I want Joker, 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 Joker. And we're going to go empty right, 51 Obama special, and tell the back and X Utah. So Obama special. In Utah with the X and the H, empty right. I'm not sure what the Obama special is, but last time they ran it, it was stripped out from McCarron and it caused a turnover. It was, correct. Empty right, 51, Obama special, Utah one, right? I don't know, who's Utah? Hey, uh, 51. On third and ten, empty backfield for McCarron. Stepping up in the pocket, he'll find his dependable receiver, Butler. And Butler will cross the 50, eventually brought down. So the clock will stop as they move the chains. But as soon as it's spotted, the clock will start again. Just the second first down of the half for Seattle, as for St. Louis, yep. as they clock it. That's it. Trips right, three just right, swoosh right, right pressure. We're doing Trips right, three just swoosh, oh, wide pressure, real. X dagger. Here we go. Trips right, three just swoosh, wide pressure, X dagger. To the battle hat, Hawks have another comeback in them. Make it check now. 180, one side. One minute to play. McCarron will check it down to his running back, Hill. Makes the first guy miss. And that extra push gets the first down. A gain of 11. I got clock this right now. Get your ass on the ball. Clock. Set. Hey, the clock's still running. I got 49 less. <laughs> Let's go bunch right, bump right, bump please right, reset the game clock. three jet Obama, 51 seconds, 51 seconds please, bump right, the clock will start three on jet the snap, Obama, wide pylon. thank you, here we go, so the official's all over it, resetting the clock to 51 seconds, three jet, three jet, set, make it check down, white 80, white side, second and ten, McCarron throwing across the field, and it one hops Austin Kroll incomplete. AJ just didn't have enough behind it, and Austin Kroll took his eyes off the ball trying to see who was coming. Three just swoosh F pressure, Y shallow. Jin left open. Jin left towel. Three jet swoosh F pressure, F pressure, Y shallow. Third and ten. Four-man rush, good protection. Crossing over the middle is Butler, but he's still in bounds, short of the marker. The clock will continue to run. Timeout, St. Louis. Their final timeout in the half. Thirty seconds. 
you know, it's tough for them because they don't have a lot of speed at, at wide receiver. They got a lot of size. So if they don't get that ball near the sideline, they're not getting out of bounds, and it's killing them with their timeout usage. So St. Louis now out of timeouts, 36 seconds to play. But because we are under the two minutes, Tom, to your point, yep. if you get out of bounds, that does stop the clock. There's no question. Haven't seen a lot of shots to the outside. And the underneath shots, they don't have enough speed to get, get out of bounds, get to the sideline, and turn the corner. AJ McCarron letting everybody know you got to get to the marker. If you don't, game's over. 180. Fourth and six. McCarron, the deep throw. Intercepted. Picked off at the goal line. And DC will win it. Fourth takeaway of the game for D.C. Kentrell Bryce coming from his center field position. He was about 25 yards deep. Gave him a lot of time to get off and to the sideline to make a great play on the football. I just don't think A.J. McCarron thought he was going to be able to make up that much ground. You see Greg Williams loving it. Takeaways, not turnovers. Offenses turn the ball over. Defenses take it away. What an atmosphere here in D.C. The defenders will hold on. We'll move to 3-0 with the win. Damo goes under center now and will just rush forward to try to get out of his own end zone. Ooh. Thinking about a reset at 23. Wait, we got a fumble here. Take a look at this. Is that what they're? Tom, who Ball's never got the snap. Ball came Thank out. You. St. Louis, it's not over yet. 26 seconds. 26 seconds, please. Ben DeLuca came away with that one. And they put 26 seconds on the clock. Wow. Thank you. First, it looked like he wasn't even going to get out of his end zone, not realizing he didn't even have the football. F field, 12 duo, X now. I mean, uh, X, X is If we don't get it, we got to clock it. First and goal. Brian Hill, the man in the backfield. Sutherland goes in motion. McCarron looking left the whole way, throws it up. Touchdown, St. Louis! Two, two, two. Stephen two, two. Mitchell Jr. And we're not done yet. Let's go. Scatter to trips right. 51 wide swat. Scatter to trips right. Fourth and 15. Fourth and 15. Scatter to trips right. 15. Now we got to go. Fourth and 15. Scatter to trips right. 51 wide swat. Scatter to trips right. 51 wide swat. 11. Nice release off of the football there by Stephen Mitchell in a well thrown ball. 22 seconds going for two. You hear Anthony Beck yelling, fourth and 15. That's the make it, take it opportunity that they could have. That's why this game is not over yet. Correct. 51 now. Set. Starts here with this two point conversion from the five. McCarron. Stepping up, throwing. Got it. Right back to Stephen Mitchell Jr. Two point conversion is good. St. Louis is the only team in the XFL who has converted a fourth and 15. That's in lieu of an onside kick. Right. Listen, immediately. It's fourth and 15 at the 25 yard line. So instead of an onside kick here in the XFL, you can do the make it, take it. You have one 
Snap on a fourth and 15. If you convert it, you keep the ball and the drive will continue. Hey, Stormy. I love this. What's the live line right now? <laughs> this is crazy. It's all locked up right now, guys. I'll get back to you in a moment. Hey, let's go. Come here. That's understandable with all the things we've seen so far in this game. Well, this is incredible. We've gotten everything we expected to get today between these two teams. Outside of the turnovers, this has been a great football game. 62 points, the highest scoring game we've seen so far in this XFL season. Look at the alignment there in the defensive secondary for D.C. Six players aligned on the 40-yard line. One snap, fourth and 15, McCarron, pressure, and he's dropped. Davin Bellamy saves the game for D.C. Oh, and we have something going on after the play. All kinds of flags. With a game that was this good, you hate to see it turn to this. Tempers have been flaring the entire game. It's been very chippy. This is really unfortunate. This isn't what the game's about. No, no, this is not what the XFL is about. The XFL is about taking advantage of an opportunity, putting positive things on tape. You don't want this. No. Get off the field. Get off the field. Hey! Come on, guys. Don't end it like this. Hey! It's a dirty ass shit. punches hey, yeah whoever, from st louis there were multiple punches on the ground yeah so we can have a sportsman like and then 23 st louis is going to be disqualified 23 st louis dc 43 both disqualified everything's dead ball 23 dc 43 st louis and 70 other way around DC. other way around other, other way, way around, around. That's DC, 43. DC 43. Yes. St. Louis 23. 43, 23, and 73. 43 yeah, right all there, disqualified. Right there, right there. I'm going to give you a dead ball spot because we do have time on the clock and we are going to snap it. Okay. Hey, bring it in. Okay, so I'm going to need help with this announcement. Hey, let's. They all offset, right? It was 16 seconds. We all leave offset the after the after the down. So 43 DC, 23 St. Louis, and I'm also going to eject 73 DC for throwing a penalty flag. That's that's good. And the 18-yard line is your dead ball spot. That's where we're going to snap it. <laughs> a lot of infractions here. He might have to have a note card. <laughs> there are multiple fouls after the play. The following three players will be ejected. Unsportsmanlike conduct, DC number 43. Unsportsmanlike conduct, St. Louis number 23. Unsportsmanlike conduct, DC number 73. All three players are ejected. The ball will be spotted at the 18 yard line, first down. All right, so let's clean this up. Francis Bernard, linebacker for DC, ejected. Brian Hill, running back for St. Louis, ejected. That's because of the scrum that was going on in the pile. After that was getting cleaned up, the guard, Rod Taylor for DC, picked up a flag and threw it. He's ejected for doing that. Uh, be a pro. I think that's, you know, that's my response to this. Be a pro. All right? and don't do something to embarrass yourself, your team, the league. After a game like we've had here, I know Anthony Beck doesn't want it. Reggie Barlow doesn't want it. And guess what? Both these two teams, they'll see each other again oh, yeah. in two weeks in St. Louis, and we will have that game, our crew. Just get our players, I get it. Just get our players back. Listen to me, AB. Tori, I'm fucking talking. Chill. I am talking. 
So after all of that, DC will have possession. St. Louis cannot stop the clock. All they need to do is take a knee, and this one is over. The defenders in victory formation. Tahamu takes a knee, and yeah, this was predictable. This was predictable. Another penalty flag to end this one. That's Kevin Atkins. Get up! Get off the field, please! Offside in the neutral zone at the snap. Defense number 96. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. I apologize. That was 96. Lakeel London called for the penalty. Get off the field! Coaches, players, get off the field! The game has ended. Not how we wanted to end it. Wait, 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 wait. This was an outstanding game. DC, they stay perfect with a 34 20. Here we are, the rematch in week five, and it's all going down in St. Louis. It is a packed house because this could be the best matchup of the season. They took some from us two weeks ago, and I want it back. I want it back. All right, bring your A game today. We're not leaving this field without a W. You hear me? We're not leaving this field without a W today. Everybody's here. St. Louis fans are ready to run. Don't walk out of this tunnel unless you bring a W back. Break them down. Let's go. DC's undefeated. St. Louis, their only loss came against DC. Hey, today is our day. Today is our day. This our shit. Nobody still don't believe in us. So we gonna take what we want. You know what I'm saying? Y'all boys ain't ready. Y'all already know what time it is. Y'all say shit. I'll fix y'all boys ain't ready. Shit. I'll fix y'all boys ain't ready. Shit. Big in. What? 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 We gonna talk about this shit though after the special team. Let's get this Andy going. Hey, hey, dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. There they go. We are underway in the zone. DC defenders on offense under Let's go, up. Here we go. Let's here we go, go. D. Let's go, D. Here we go. All right, let's go. Flex right hack. Uh, 23, T drink. I'm on, ready. Ready, ready. First and 10. Here we go. Green to Chris Blair. He's got room to run. Red, red, red. Red, two times. Red, two times. Let's go. Third and nine. Two -time. I want. Ready, ready. First down. Down. Offense stays on the field. Hurry! Hurry! Ready, ready. Tahamu trying to stretch. He doesn't get it! Trey left, boom, Z fly, 19 taxi on one. <laughs> Throw is on the money. Team Butler with the first down. Wait, Trey. Oh, what a shot. Good catch. St. Louis on the board first. Hey, way to go, baby. Way to go, let's go. That's it. Way to go. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Go, go, Smith, go, go, a go, huge go, hole over the left go, side, go, showing the burners. Oh, man. How do we not have an angle there? To put on the afterburners, that's the longest run in the XFL this season. Yes, sir. They take an eight to three lead here in the second quarter. What is it? What's that? McCarron starting to scramble. Butler dropped it. 
DC rushes four, and they still get to McKenna. Ball is out. That's good oh, shit. No. Microphone the head. Microphone the head. That's good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, that's what KB. Two down, we got you, baby. We got you, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Blown off the goddamn ball. Smith, his second rushing touchdown of the game. He's going crazy. Come on, man. He's going crazy. Make a move. The defenders will take a 14 to 3 lead into the half over St. Louis. Pick it up. Let's go. Hold yourself accountable. Frame him up offensive line. Running backs run hard. Receivers make plays. D line strain. Linebackers fill a hole and make a play in the back end, man. That's all it is. I'm not worried. Are you worried? Uh, Are you worried? Uh, then let's go do it. Let's go. So St. Louis will start this third quarter with the ball. McCrane boots it away to Shepard. Goes left and back right. He's got some speed down the sideline. Sidesteps the kicker. Shepard on the sideline. Who's gonna get him? What a return! St. Louis does get points, but once again, field goal, not a, a touchdown. Job. That was a great job by y'all. Oh, I like here we go, here we go. Hey, he, might, he might pop it though. Back, go. Back to Smith. Are you kidding me? Makes a man look silly. Abram Smith, how about it? Another huge run, and he's Jesus in the end zone. A 70 yard house call for Abram Smith. Just take it over tonight. He does see eight both. Wait, McCarry touchdown! Kakaa, Kakaa! George this Campbell! Two, two, where you running, Bruce? Where you running? Two, two, where you running, Bruce? Good shit, baby. Good job. Good hey, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. And we got a ball game. Good job, man. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. That's why you make the play, George. We are setting this up here for a special finish in St. Louis. Wait, wait. King using his legs, makes a move, and he's in there. Touchdown, DC. That's what I'm talking about. I tell you. And DC goes up by two scores. Action, two jet, watch these on. 180! Wait, son! A carry! Oh. Oh. And it's out! Downfield! Got it! Steven Mitchell Jr. And St. Louis is not done yet! Why are you backing up? Why are you back up on that? McCarron, pump fake, looking deep, intercepted! Yeah! Let's go! His XFL leading fourth interception, and that's ball game. Good job, man. That was well fun, done, man. Well, well done, bro. Well done, man. Good, Good luck the rest of the way, bro. Right. Thank Good you very much. Up. We beat him one time. Yeah. yeah. We beat him twice. Yeah. yeah. They mad? Yeah. yeah. We got a band. Yeah. yeah. We hit on the plane. Yeah. We going home. Yeah. How many days off? Yeah. How many days off? Three. How many days off? Three. So we going home. Yeah. 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 My dad, he was head coach for a long time, but he he really was a, a defensive coordinator, an innovative guy that put in the 3-4 defense, which in the NFL no one else was playing. So when he hired me in the NFL, we were the first ones to play the 3-4 defense. I started with the Houston Oilers. I went on to the Saints, then I went to the Eagles with Buddy Ryan. Oh, oh. Buffalo, Atlanta, San Diego Chargers, <laughs> head coach of the Cowboys, the Texans, the Denver Broncos. We won the Super Bowl the first year that I was there. There we go. 42 seasons later, I had finished in the NFL. Oh, yes. You know, I've always loved football.
The camaraderie and the closeness with the players, the coaches, and their families. It's a team. It's a, it's a neat atmosphere. Let's go out and play our game one play at a time. I'm from Houston. I live in Houston. Now I'm back in Houston coaching another professional team. Nice. Then the league itself is Opportunity League. It's opportunity for guys to live out their dream. You love football, you love playing football. This is the place you can do it. Play as hard as you can, but let's go out and kick their ass! <laughs>
June Jones now calling right the play. Now, 860 Aloha. Go, go. X and Z9. Get Turn good splits. Good split slots. Okay. Here we go. 860 eight, on two. Ready. Ben DiNucci, his quarterback, former Dallas Cowboys project, started one game in place of Dak Take Prescott. Go. Donucci throwing to the leading receiver in terms of receptions and yards in the okay, XFL, Jacor Pearson. Blue Tejan, pistol, tackles right, strong left, 24 Denver. Pistol, tackles right, strong left, 24 Denver. Tackles right, strong left, 24 Denver. On two, ready. Left, 20 Denver. See so that tackle's right. It's going to be an unbalanced formation. Both tackles are to the right-hand side. That Denver is an inside zone. Josh Gordon, the former All-Pro, wearing zero. He's at the top of your screen. Hot. Hot. And it looks like June Jones is buying drinks back in Arlington because that is Darius Bradwell with the first carry of the game. Trio left, 80, Z, Indy, X levels. Trio left, 80, Z, Indy, X levels. 80, 80, on two, ready. So Bradwell getting the start at running back, the leading rusher in the XFL. Morgan Ellison is available, but not starting for Seattle. Said some nagging injuries the past two weeks. Third and three. Danucci. Good mitts by Juwan Green. First down yardage. X bunch left, Tampa, eight smoke. X bunch left, Tampa, eight smoke. Here we go, Tampa on two, ready. That Tampa call for this offense, it's that power look with the H on the left side, the smoke screen look. Check go. Hot, hot. Bradwell, right side, brought down, tackle for loss. And that is Tim Ward. So no Trent Harris, but Tim Ward from Old Dominion Dime, making the stop. Mug, read one pill. Dime, double mug, read one pill. Here we go. 91 on two. Ready. I love the communication from Tim Ward. You see him doing that thing with his head. That means he's peeling him in the other end. You rush, and if the, if the running back releases, you got him. Alert the pill to Ward. Ah! Danucci back to the air, gets it off as he goes down. The adjustment not made in time by Josh Gordon. And Tim Ward with the pressure. Let's go uh, spread left, stack left, 91 Indiana X cross. Here we go. 91 Indiana X cross, stack left. Dig, dig. Dig. Here we go, here we go. 5 0, 5 0. Set go. Hot, hot. Tim Ward taking this play off. Danucci, Witton crossing to Josh Gordon. Incomplete. Broken up by Jordan Mosley out of Maryland. So the great thing about this play, you heard that peel call. It means we're bringing pressure. You've got to play man to man. But if the running back blocks, you don't have to peel. It's a way to get not only simulated pressure, but to create real pressure. But as long as you can cover on the back end. Cameron Nizalek out of Georgia. Punted in the NFL with the Falcons to boot it away. Back deep is William Likely leading the XFL in punt return yards. Fair caught at the 20. A little betting between right, so AJ Smith and his mentor trip, June Jones. But it's during the kick, so we're going to come with it 15 this way because that's the kicking team. Right, the play. During the kick, tripping, kicking team number 96. The penalty to be added to the end of the kick will be first down, Houston. Timeout. Now Smith and Houston trying to take down his mentor and the former head coach of the Houston franchise, June Jones, and batted down by the playmaker, Jordan Evans, out of Oklahoma. All right, here we go. Give me this. Give me this. Give me low 
low check swing, uh, low check swing, uh, wide shallow change. Low check hey, swing, low wide check shallow swing. change. On one, ready? Low check swing. There it is, good. Smith, you got the dig. Go! Tell it Silvers, he has the dig. You'll hear Smith talk to his players right up until the snap, your progression. as that's complete to Cedric Bird out of Hawaii. All right, here we go, third down. Here we go, give me spread right purple again. Spread right purple, line right, up, right, Ferrari, purple. Ferrari, Ferrari, Ferrari. Spread right purple. Purple, purple, purple. And you heard that purple last time around. The hard count, as soon as, it, as, soon as the jump, it's a free play. Give me Z smash and run streak on the back side. Right, Z right, smash. Right, 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 red, red check. Here we go. Go. Crowd here in Seattle into it. Silvers to Borgie, and he's brought down yet again by Jordan Evans. Everyone on the back end is locked up. Look at all these man-to-man. -man. It's man-to-man. It's man -to -man. Everyone's locked up. And so you see Silvers has to go to the check down. Jordan Evans, he collisions the running back, slows him up, and then he's able to make that tackle. This is great coverage. The DBs for Seattle are ready to play. So expecting a lot of offense right out of the gate. Right now, no points. Hope you took the under to this point. That's blocked. Seattle gets a piece of it. Elijah Holder with the rejection. Holder, a Stanford man. Notice Elijah Holder, he's off the edge. He just dips and rips. This is busted coverage on the left side, a busted assignment. Elijah Holder leans, gets the block. Spread left. Flip 91, H lock, Hank F check. Flip 91, H lock, Hank F check. 91 on two, ready. Here we go. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Quick strike and complete to Damian Willis. He played with Brandon Silvers at Troy. Let's go, trips right, 81 X9 to five. Here we go. Chips right, 81, X9 to 5. 80, 81 on two, ready. Seattle coming off a slow start to their game offensively this week and against San Antonio. Taking a shot to the end zone, underthrown, and the ball is broken up by a Jane Harris standout from USC. Jamie Harris out of USC. Notice he plays it a little early, but he's in phase with the receiver and he's able to make Church that break up. Right, Tampa. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Church right, Tampa. Go. Here we go. Tampa. On two, ready. Tampa, Tampa, Tampa. Let's go. Say so Seattle receiving core. With Jacor Pearson leading the XFL in receptions and yards. Blake Jackson, who was second in catches. Danucci will take it himself. Right at the first down marker. And that's an element to his game. Yeah, Danucci's an elusive runner. He's yes, he's a great passer, but what he makes his hay is with his legs. Third and one. Here we go. 60 on two. Ready. 60. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Set, go. No leading rusher. Morgan Ellison to this point for Seattle. Too easy. Pitch and catch. Jacor Pearson, the breakout star of the XFL, moves the chains. The one thing that defensive coordinator Brian Stewart worried about were some of these pick routes, these rub routes, and that's what we saw right here. Jacor Pearson lined up at three. Man to man, it got rubbed off, he got the two yards. You hear that Bucks call, also that Tampa call? That's his power, right? Last time Danucci kept it. Let's see if he keeps it or if he hands it off. Houston with the number one scoring defense in the XFL, trying to bow up here inside the red zone. 
So a lot of talk about the coordinators, but Wade Phillips has been the head coach of the Bills, Broncos, and Cowboys. Jim Haslett, former coach of the year with the Saints. They're about the defense. Here we go, 880 on two, ready. Danucci flushed, gets it off, but it's out of the reach of Damian Willis. Last time we saw this, we saw inside breaking routes on the right side. Danucci sees daylight. This is what they want him to do more. Step up and run. Danucci, end zone. He's in. Seattle on the board. So let's set up the extra points. We don't kick extra points at the XFL. You can go for the one-point conversion from the two-yard line. You got the two-point from the five, and the June Jones special three points from the ten. They've done this for every attempt except one, and that has no shot. Eric, thank you so much, Danucci. 29 rushing yards on that drive as Lee will return just inside the goal lines. That's really a perfect kick by Seattle. And the Roughnecks will set up at the 20. So look at the scoreboard. You see the OU. That's the over, under, or the total. It's at 43 points. So that's saying it's going to be 43 combined points by these teams. If you take the over, you need 44 to collect. 43, by the way, is the highest in the XFL this season. Houston is also favored by five points. Houston has now been favored in every game this season. They've covered in every game. Silvers to throw. And he's got Justin Smith, the burner from Norfolk State. Trips right, but trips right, but. It's Brian Stewart, defensive coordinator for Houston, checking out the film on the tablet. Go. Uh -huh. The shifty and elusive good. Bryson Aline. Trips right, purple. Trips right, purple. Line up quick. Ferrari, Ferrari, line up. Trips right, purple. Trips right, purple. Hey, trips right, purple. Purple, ready? Purple, purple. Line it up, line it up. Is a small yet fast Houston offense. Borgie, the only running back or receiver at 200 pounds. Justin Smith, the only receiver running back at six feet. No, cat, 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 cat. Z-slide, cat. Go! Travell Harris on the flat. Caught two touchdown passes last week. Was trying to get an extra block from Cedric Bird. But that didn't materialize. So here's a great thing. You see the coverage early. Brandon Silver drops him down the field. Miss coverage for Bill Harris. Gets the, gets the extra yardage. Over the middle, complete to Deontay Burnett. Slipping two tackles in the extra yardage. They're not big, Sam, but they're relentless. They thrive in yards after catch. Give me trips left, brown blast. Trips left, brown blast. Hey, trips right, 
Steps left. Browns black. Oh, and ready. Right. And for this offense, these blast plays, it's 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 a running play, but it's really a pass play. It's a pass out wide that simulates a run. Strike to Bird, one on one. And that's what both these offenses are all about, getting one-on-one -on -one opportunities. It's getting the ball in open space. Even if you're not running the ball, throw that quick pass, and it simulates a run. Trips right, dog, Detroit dog. Trips right, Detroit dog. Let's get this one. Hey, Detroit, no one ready? Four straight completions to Silver. Houston to the ground, and there he goes. Bryson Aline from Delaware State to the end zone here in Seattle. Oh, hold on now, and a backflip. But a flag is down. During the run, holding offense number 10. The 10 yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Spread right, red, eight. We've got balls at the 32. Okay, we're playing, we're replaying second down, so we're good. We're still short of the line of game. So we're on the 32, going to the 27. So that's a VP of officiating for the OH, XFL, OH. Dean Blandino. He's reviewing everything in the command center back in Van Nuys, California. Borgie checks into the game. And Sam, this is tough when you do a backflip okay, and then you have to bring it back. And so this Detroit play, for them it's a draw. And so Bryson Aline, he has the space he needs. And then you're going to see Lyndon Stevens, number 21 for Seattle, trying to get off yeah, the block. Yeah, I just assume that That worked. little hold is what keeps that play from being a touchdown. The effort is what makes it happen. Aline hit the hole, hit the end zone, hit the backflip, and then had to bring it back at the end of one. 6-0 Seattle. Between quarters, we heard Houston OC A.J. Smith tell his coaches we should have challenged that play, the holding call on Justin Smith. We now bring in Dean Blandino. Dean, if Houston did challenge, what would have been the outcome? Ruling on the field would have stood. We were looking at it, trying to get an ISO shot. We could see that there was actually a grab. It's tough to tell how much material restriction there was, but didn't have enough evidence to overturn had Houston challenged. Dean, thank you. Got it. And Sam, that's been the most effective use of the challenge from coaches in the XFL. Penalties that were called or not called. That's what the XFL coaches have been doing. They've challenged plays specifically like that where they think there should have been a penalty, and oftentimes they've been successful. But you would have burned the timeout and lost your challenge for the game if you were Houston. Borgie, and it's now seven straight completions for Silver. He slips out of a neck tackle, and that's going to be close to a first down. Okay, good. And moving the chains. Okay, here we go. Give me this. Trips left, brown blast. Trips left, brown blast. Borgie was a star at Washington State. Played for Mike Leach and Nick Radolovich. Said if you get the wall, you got it to go outside. Uh -huh. So that is air raid and run and shoot. Quick pass to Cedric Burr for a few yards. All right, give me this. Uh, give me a uh, red F win prop. Red F win prop. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, red F win. Oh, and ready. One thing about this offense is that they love to set up plays for the future. So those blast plays, those plays where it's like this quick screen, be wary because when they go to the pass, oh, they've thrown it off a of fake. Read corner first. Right, right. Eight straight completions for Silvers. Check down. Aline was open. He's probably doing a backflip again if that ball is not batted down by Nico Lelos. Nico Lelos. So, you know, you can't get to the quarterback. Keep your eyes on him and knock it down. He's out of St. Fitz at St. Mary, the same high school that LeBron James went to, also a former basketball player. That's a block right there. Wolfpack, Wolfpack. 
and some of those LeBron-like hops. He got a tweet hey, from LeBron, his first NFL hey, game with the Giants. Divides back to Owen Rex. F oh, oh, no. no. F Blue, blue, blue. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Five on the clock. Go. All right. Urgency for Silvers on third and seven. Backside pressure. Ball is out. Seattle has it. Antoine Brooks forced the fumble. Daniel Joseph pounced on it. One of the great things about the Seattle defense, they'll have little guys, corners, safeties up around the line of scrimmage and blitzing. Antoine Brooks, most, most safeties, most safeties when they're up around the line of scrimmage, you might just want to get a sack. But he's thinking, they've worked on this. Let me get that ball out, because not only is it a sack, it's also a fumble, and then recovered by Daniel Joseph out of NC State. And what did Ron Zook tell us coming into this game? His head coach, Jim Haslett, told him, we need takeaways. That's only the second all season long. This team has been the worst in the XFL at taking the ball away. Talked to June Jones earlier, he said, man, if we can get some turnovers or offense, it would be more unstoppable. Danucci facing pressure from up the middle. Pearson with the catch, breaking the 50. Matt Warner's talking about a defense. 21 yards. Here we go, here we go. Hey, hey, here we go. Hey, Bucks, Bucks on two, ready. So these calls, this Bucks and the Tampa calls, you know they're, they're, they're power plays, they're inside runs, but they're setting up for something different. The RPO, run pass option. Hot, hot. Bradwell with the carry, positive yards, carrying the pile for five. D.C. St. Louis game is huge for Hot. Seattle. If they can Hot. get a win tonight, if D.C. wins, they'll be in second in the XFL North. Pearson eludes one tackler. An aggressive stop by Kerry Vincent, but Pearson wins that battle. T-Mac. Thanks so much here with center Alex Molette. You guys were just coming down here and talking over some stuff on the iPad. What was said? Um, we just need to settle down, eliminate the mistakes, eliminate the penalties. And, you know, we do that. We're in the end zone, and the score's a little different right now. How do you combat some of the pressure they're getting on your quarterback? We just need to block it up, ID it right, and, um, you know, we get a hat on a hat. I think we'll be good. Thank you. T-Mac, thank you. Bradwell. Face mask. Close to a face mask. There was no flag. And again, this is the type of play that you can challenge in the XFL. It wasn't initially called, but you can challenge for 15 yards. Well, those in-game adjustments are everything. He said, try something different. We have to be able to get to the quarterback. We can't let them sit back and be comfortable. It means you have to play man-to-man, -man, but they're comfortable with their defenders. Hot! Hot! Danucci, screen to the left. Josh Gordon barely holds on. And a fine open field tackle by Jordan Mosley. Not coming, Josh. Yay! Trips right. 81 X stop in the end. Here we go. 81 on two. Ready. Here we go. 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 Set go. Hot, hot. Seattle three for four on third down. Josh. Danucci, Josh Gordon didn't see it, but there is a flag. You got two flags. You got two flags. Hold off. I've got illegal contact. Defense, what's your number? Zero. Zero. 23, offense, zero. Okay. There are multiple fouls on the play. Holding. Offense, number 23, illegal contact, zero, defense. Those penalties offset, repeat third down. So the penalties on Darius Bradwell. Yeah, he might have wanted that. And Kerry Vincent for Houston. Here we go, here we go. Nine, one, 90 on two, ready. Half check, half check. Meanwhile, Josh Gordon, who's number two in the XFL in yards, has one catch, but no yards to show for it. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci popped! Absolutely rocked and it's picked off in the end zone. Sean Davis, another Maryland Terrapin. 
with the INT, but Jordan Mosley absolutely hammered Ben DiNucci. This is why this defense is one of the best in the XFL in taking the ball away. They bring pressure, and when it's up in the air, they catch it. This is the only knock on the Seattle offense. That's their 10th turnover, which now moves them past Orlando for the most in the league. Yeah, and it's the turnover margin that hurts the most, right? You can, I get it if you turn it over, but if you're not taking it away, it makes it even worse. The Seattle Sea Dragons are, are last in the XFL in turnover margin, and this is part of the reason why, being reckless with the football. You've heard us say Maryland a lot. This Houston defense is built around players that Brian Stewart has coached in the past, and he's had two recent stints at Maryland where a lot of these guys played for him. Especially the guys on the back end. Brian Stewart says, man, all our back end guys, they were with me at Maryland, so they understand his scheme. Hold on, Ben, Ben, Ben. This is my best look. Your handheld will be, will be the next shot. Yep. Yep, I'm looking at it. So he comes in, head up. I've got him leading with the hands, head up. I don't see any forcible contact to the head neck area. It's a big hit, but it looks to be legal. Let me just take a look at this near handheld. Yeah. Still got the head up. I've got nothing in the head neck area. All right, Jason, after review, we're going we're gonna to let the play stand. No roughing the passer. Your spot is good at the 26. So that was a Seattle challenge. Where the fuck did you come up with this stuff? You just saw it. Team can challenge hey, anything. Dude's fucked up too. After review, the ruling on the field stands. There is no foul. Seattle loses the timeout and their one challenge for the game. The results play as first down, Houston. So Jim Haslett's hot. He didn't get the call, but compare this to the NFL where he has no shot to challenge something like that. In the XFL, you're allowed to challenge any play that has been called, any play in the game. You have to be specific, though. So we challenged specifically that that was a roughing the passer. Dean Blandino, VP of officiating, looked at it. No call, you lose the timeout, no more challenge. t -Mac. Davis, what did you see to come up with that interception? Uh, I seen a quarterback through a duck, so I shot it Go. down and grabbed it. <laughs> Your defense puts uh -huh. so much pressure on quarterbacks. Yeah. How does that open up you guys to make plays? Uh, the, the, the pass rush and coverage run together. So, you know, as long as we're working together, we feed off each other, we come up with plays like that. Appreciate it. Lowell? Sean Davis with three interceptions moves him into a tie for the most in the XFL. Michael Joseph for DC also has three. Go. All right. Silvers complete. That's first down yardage to Nick Hawley out of Kent State. This is what the hit sounded like on Danucci. Hot! Hot! has a first down. Played his college ball for Jay Norvell at Nevada. Here we go. Good shit, good shit, man. Here we go. Hey, trip left, lion, dog, going, oh, ready? Lion. So that, that lion calls that draw play again for this team. Go. Oh. Hot, hot. Draw two, Dejon Lee. The other side's running back is tripped up by Nico Lelos. The ESB and out. Go! Hot, hot! Empty for Brandon Silvers is 12 of 16. On the line, complete to Putman. 
That's good for about nine yards. Talk about unlikely stories. Ben Putman is one of them. Was barely used at Nevada until playing in the Arizona Bowl. Had four catches for 114 yards. He was a special teams player before that. Jay Norvell, his head coach, at the trophy presentation announced he was going on scholarship during the celebration. He never heard, so he had no idea he was on scholarship. Third and one, Cole McDonald checks in a quarterback. McDonald will keep. And down to the 35-yard line, little wrinkle there. Good job, Cole. Good job. So one thing you see here, you see the extra offensive lineman on the right. Cole McDonald from Hawaii, he loves running the ball. When he's in the game, usually in the two-point play or the three-point play, they love to keep him on the quarterback zone read. So that's what you have to be aware of every time he gets in the game. The clock will continue to run after first downs, incompletions, out-of-bound plays, red, red, up red. until the two-minute warning when it will turn into the college-style rules. Uh -huh. Silver's back in with plenty of time, and that's overthrown to Deontay Burnett. Uh, if, it's, if it's pressed, we got to get off it. All right, here we go. Give me this. Go, uh, give me low, a rock check swing, H shallow chain. Rock check swing, hey, rock eight check shallow swing. change. Eight shallow change. Oh, one ready. Rock check swing. We've seen a few drop plays already. All these drop plays do is they slow down a defense. And so you may not get a lot of yards on them, but you have the defensive linemen say, man, maybe it's going to be a draw. I'm going to get up the field. The total is 43, right. the highest of the XFL this season. Six points as of now. Silvers lets it fly to Putman. And he is shut down by Thompson. We talk about that total, that over-under a lot. The thing to remember for people who are thinking about the overs okay, and the Okay, here unders, we go. Give me same well, no clear. The same well with no clear. Same well. The thing to remember is that these defenses practice against similar offenses, and so they're ready okay, for right what's happening. Go. Outside release, receivers. Every receiver, right. outside release. Checking it down. Borgie stays alive, stays up in a hurdle. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Seattle's bringing a ton of pressure. How do you slow down a team that brings pressure? Screens and draws. It keeps defenders not as aggressive. What do you think about the field position here for a punt? Because if you cook this into the end zone, it's coming out at the 35-yard line. You know your defense has been playing well. You know it's a little bit out of your field goal kicker's range. And so you trust your punter to be able to get it down at least within the 10-yard line, even though you're not allowed to leave until the ball's kicked. And there is a penalty flag. Cat, see if he wants to delay the moving back or not. Take it back. Delay game, kicking team, five yard penalty, Williams fourth down. So they're looking for more yards to back up to get more room because if you put this out of bounds inside the 35, there's no directional punting. It's coming out on the 35. If it goes into the end zone, it's also coming out at the 35. So field position is huge in this punt. This punt can't get in the end zone, can't even be close. Seattle has already gotten a piece of one punt so far tonight. Fair catch called for a doozy at the 10 yard line. Ben DiNucci in Seattle, worst field position of the night from the end zone. Wow, had to get rid of that Good with job, Tim six. Ward Good breathing job. down his six. neck. The total here 43. 80 Z Indy H levels. Trips left 80 Z Indy H levels. 80 on two, ready. The highest total in the XFL, we got six points with four minutes left. Both these teams can light it up in an instant. But long odds if you took the over. Here's Ward again with pressure. Danuzzi dancing on the goal line. Throws it away right at the line of scrimmage. It's going to set up a third and long.
So Houston trips left. AD feels that Danucci is comfortable trips scrambling. They Indiana. don't think he handles pressure from the, the middle 15. very well. So what they're trying to do is they want to keep him in the pocket, but we're noticing he's been able to scramble not only to get yards, but also scramble to find receivers open downfield. We have not seen the XFL leading rusher Morgan Ellison tonight. Danucci clean pocket with time. First down yardage into the midst of Damian Willis. The beautiful thing about this play was two plays before. We heard June Jones say, hey, nice job on a throwaway. It was a throwaway. Well, that throwaway, which is a non-interception, sets up this play right here to Jordan Willis. You stay alive, another down. 23 yards for Willis out of Troy. As nine. NFL catches for 82 yards in his career. All with the Cincinnati Bengals. Danucci, quick pass, batted down at the line of scrimmage. Well, going back to that third down play there, you know, Houston up front tried to run some games. You saw great patience by the right side catching the games. Great job giving the quarterback time. I've been really impressed with this pass pro on the edges. How comfortable does Danucci look when he's facing pressure? Man, I, I got to tell you, he is comfortable getting out in space. He, he is very confident in his legs, his ability to gain yards, but also scramble to get guys open and throw down the field. He's got a 20-yard touchdown, the lone score tonight. Empty. Nice touch. Pearson is there. Takes the hit to the 35. The mighty might that likes to go by Peasy. He ain't too small. Danucci with time, and that's Willis, who's been very active tonight. To the 20. The top two teams advance to the playoffs. Nothing doing there for Darius Bradwell. Devontae Beckett with the stop at the line. Trips right up, 881 mesh, X po post H choice. 881 on The toughest part about all these draws and all these screens is that choice on the backside. You don't know when to go or when to slow down, and so it keeps defenses way off balance. Inside the final two minutes, college rules with clock stoppages. Wide open is Jawan Green. Green inside the 10-yard line. A standout from Albany. Was an FCS All-American in 2019 when he hauled in 17 touchdowns. We asked defensive coordinator Brian Stewart, man, what do you do with all these crossing routes? Why do they run them so much? He says, man, they run them because eventually someone's going to come open. Whether you're in man or in zone, someone's going to be free. We saw it right there. Red mile. Red mile. Time, red bio. Let's go, let's go. Seattle let's go. doing this with no Morgan Ellison, the leading rusher in the XFL. Josh Gordon has been shut down. Only one catch. Oh, good move by Danucci. Felt it, and his receiver does the rest. Damian Willis, his first touchdown grab of the season. Part of what makes Ben DiNucci so dangerous is the red zone. So we did this in week one. He scrambled not to go and run, but he scrambled to throw. We saw earlier in this game he scrambled to run. His eyes are always down the field. In the red zone, you have to do what's called a crush rush. Keep him in the pocket to keep him from being explosive. Another three-point attempt. It's been all three-pointers except one. The last conversion that Seattle had against C uh, San Antonio. Now, we heard the coaches calling and asking for which hash. You're allowed to pick which hash you start from. Three-point attempt from the 10-yard line. Pressure, Danucci floats it, looking for Green. There could be a P.I. if this is not cold, but it is a score. Jawan Green, how'd he do it? Yeah, we're looking at it. I was looking at the low end zone now. I'm looking at the handheld. I'm looking at I'm looking at the high end zone. You said the cart. Yeah. 
No, he's got control. He's clearly in bounds, and he's got left arm around it. Okay. We're clear. You're clear on the try. Good job. So Dean Blandino taking a look, and to clean everything up with so many unique rules, it's the college rules when it comes to possession of the football. You need one foot, one body part down. One foot, a hand, an elbow has to be down, not two like the NFL, just one. And similar to the NFL, the ball cannot move when you land. So you have to maintain control of the football. That's what Dean Blandino was looking for. Hey, and this is the Danucci difference. When he's taking care of the football, he's a beast. That's the best thing that I heard. The best thing that I heard this entire game so far was hearing June Jones say, hey, nice play on throwing it away. I asked June Jones earlier, I said, man, what do you tell Ben DiNucci with the turnovers? He said, we don't talk about it. Why? <laughs> we talk about it, it may happen. And it's happened for him more than any player in the XFL. DiNucci leads the league in turnovers, but when he's on like he was on that drive, tough to beat. 90 yards for the score. Dominic Emily to kick it off from the 30. Teams lined up at the 30 and 35. They cannot leave until the ball is caught. There's a catch from Lee. And Lee will take it out, but there is a flag. Down, flag down. Yeah, it's fine, 45. That spot's really good. You got it? During the return, holding return team number 25, 45, excuse me. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Let's check in with Eric. Ben, you have such a feel for this pass rush. You're able to move around. You're finding guys downfield. How you doing it? I'm having fun. These guys are going out there making plays. O-line's doing a heck of a job. I'm in a groove right now. I wish halftime wasn't coming up, but uh, all, all the kudos to these guys, man. We're playing a heck of a half right now. Got to keep it going in the second half. There you go, man. That fire's lit, Lil. And they continue to stoke it. Danucci has probably the most versatile group of playmakers in the XFL when you consider oh. the upside of Josh Gordon oh. and when they have Morgan Ellison at running back. And we haven't even talked about Blake Jackson, that really the number three receiver for this team. Now Houston, they got their three timeouts. They go to Borgie on first down. Facing their biggest deficit of the season, it's 15-0. Looks like Houston's going to be okay to take this into the half. That's a little surprising to me. Well, the way this game has gone so far, you know you're down. You know you need to find a way to get some momentum. Sometimes halftime is the best thing for you. You go in the locker room, you regroup, you look at the scoreboard, you say, hey, we're fine at 0-0. Let's go play our game. It's looking like a brilliant move here with a 15-0 lead. So on the kickoff, you need to clear the 20-yard line, keep it in front of the end zone, and if you don't, and it goes out of bounds, the opposition takes over at your own 45-yard line. About the 20 for Seattle. Here's Danucci mic'd up in the first half. MTV, welcome to my locker, ESPN edition. We in Seattle, big Thursday night game, Sea Dragons, Roughnecks. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm dropping straight down. <laughs> He's good and he knows it. That's Ben DiNucci. Three NFL games in his career with the Dallas Cowboys, FCS All-American at James Madison. Here's the Arkansas Razorback with a full head of steam, TJ Hammonds. Okay. Let's go uh, trio left, trio left, 50, slow. Z crack, 50 flow, Z crack. Red, yes, I no, 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 no. Red, go! Come on, back here. here. Red 19. Laredo to H on two, ready. Yeah, you 50 got it. Surge. 50, 50 slow. Laredo to H. Laredo to H. June Jones almost had the lasso <laughs> Darkest <laughs> Bradwell to get him off the field. Bradwell's been with the team for only two weeks now, and short weeks after that. That's uh, Blake Jackson, second leading receiver in terms of catches of the XFL out of Mary Harden Baylor. 
The live line is now Seattle favored by nine and a half. Coming into the game, it was Houston by five. The total is 35 and a half. Live line. Yes, yes, yes. 43 coming into the game, the highest all season in the XFL. Caesar Sportsbook helping us with those lines. Danucci feeling comfortable. Didn't even move his foot as he was trying to find Jacor Pearson. There's a cool customer in that pocket. He's going to bring up third and nine. So, Sam, big factor, though, for Seattle doing this without the leading rusher in the league, Morgan Ellison. 91, Indiana, X cross. 91 on two, ready. Here we go. Ellison we go. is a physical and violent runner. And the San Antonio Brahmas had some hits on him last weekend. One thing we heard from June Jones Check is that out. even in his, in his offense, everyone who runs the ball has their best years. 39 inside pressure by Ward. Danucci flushed, escapes the tackle, calls for Josh Gordon. Got Josh Gordon, but was he out of bounds? Yes. So we could have an illegal touch bounds. here. Nearly out of bounds. It's a good play. Yep. Illegal touch, number zero, number zero. So it's going to be, we've got a great shot on the high end zone. Number zero, number zero, number zero. And he did reestablish first to touch, legally forced out of bounds. So they'll decline the penalty. It was first to touch the ball. Penalty's declined, fourth down. Jason, they can't decline it It's because he caught it. It, it. it caught it. It's a loss of down at the previous spot. Loss of down at the previous spot. Spot. Still fourth down. So much access in that exchange from Dean Blandino and his crew taking a look at it to hearing the mic on Danucci calling for Josh, Josh, Josh. Nizalik punts it away. Travell Harris. Fair catch. Just shy of the 30 yard line. And a flag down. And you saw Ben DiNucci going back and watching the play before, not just the picture of it like in the NFL. Number 36 for the kicking team. Left too early prior to the kick. The five-yard penalty is added to the end of the play. First down, Houston. So left too early. So with the punt, the Gunners are not allowed to move downfield until the ball leaves the foot of the punter. And that's not just the Gunners, that's also the interior players. No one can be more than one yard down the field when the ball is punted. Unlike the NFL, where you see Gunners can go, or in college, everyone can go. XFL rules. No one can. It encourages punt returns in this league. Houston entered averaging 335 total yards per game. They've got 109. Silvers flushed. Eyes still downfield. Finds a crosser that Cedric Bird. And the Seattle defense has set the tone with defense, Sam. And this is what we've been waiting for. Even talk about defense creating offense. You see Austin Fowlu and Tuzar Skipper with the sack. Then you see a pump block. If you get a turnover, at least you get a tipped punt. And that creates field position. And then lastly, you see Antoine Brooks on the edge. He's a safety. He's 5'10". But he comes in not just for the sack, but also the sack fumble. That's the uh, only thing Seattle's been missing all season long. Here's Sporgy out of Washington State. Brought down by Clarence Hicks, the UTSA Roadrunner. Clarence Hicks, Clarence Hicks is known for his speed. Here we go, here we go. Hey, low check swing. I want ready. Low check swing. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh. Uh -huh. Silver's quick release and elite arm strength showing it off there for the first down let's go, let's go, let's go. and it's Cedric Bird out of Hawaii again hey, so anytime we're bringing up 
these receivers and playmakers from Houston, from Washington State, from Hawaii, those are guys that have played in either the air raid or run and shoot. So they understand the offense really well. There's not a steep learning curve oh. by any means. Uh -huh. Pitch and catch to Justin Smith. Trips left, black, blast. Trips left, black, blast. I'm telling you, you start. Try, 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 try. Here we go. Black, black, forward, ready? You start watching the tape on this Seattle defense, every single one of these corners, Lyndon Stevens, Chris Payton Jones, they all can cover this blast play. We remember it. It's that outside pass that simulates a run. Uh -huh. To Bird. Upended by Bryce Thompson. But sooner or later, they're going to use that as a setup for a, a, essentially a screen and go. Thompson, eight NFL games under his belt. Last with the New Orleans the Saints. Completed pass. Completed, completed pass. pass? Yes. Okay. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 56. 15 yard penalty. Third down. And that's against D. Parker out of Mississippi State. Yeah, it's obviously a late hit that's very illegal, but you got to add Bryce Thompson to that list of corners who can cover. He plays nickel. Watch the tape on him. He's great in late disguise. He's fearless. He's sticky in coverage, great in coverage. That's the stuff that I see when I watch him, but also all of these DBs. That's how you can slow down He's this run and shoot offense. He's going to get screen or draw offense. here, guys. Screen or draw. Oh. So each team has 15 headsets that can divide among offense and defense. Most of the times it's the linebackers defensively relaying the message like that from Ron Zook. Here we go. White. Next to the orange. Seattle prepared for a screen or a draw on second and 21. Go. Hot, hot. Got neither. How about a deep shot? Way overthrown to Justin Smith. Fine. Give me this. Give me trips go get him, right. Go get trips him, go get right. Him. Here we go. We got over, four, trips right. Over four. Now let's go four trips man. Left, over four man. Over four left, man. Quarter. Hey, over four left, man. We gotta have a rush. Divide. I want ready. Gotta have a rush. Over four man. It's unbelievable, Ron Zook. He's so confident in his receiver in his DB to be able to call either over cover four, four or man to man. Essentially, the outside hey. guys are going to be man to man because he knows they can cover. He knows it's going to be a deep oh. pass. It's third and twenty. Uh -huh. Longest third down for Houston tonight. Silver's hit, got it off, but broken off. Fantastic play by Zafir Kelly from South Carolina State. Houston and DC, the two undefeated teams. But right now, the Roughnecks are on the ropes. 9.08 left in the third quarter, down by 15. Through the first four games here into week number five, but I don't want to say the wheels are off, but it's not going well. Deep shot, Danucci, jump ball. Damian Willis and Ajene Harris were battling. Houston offensively, 30. 0.5 points per game. Shut out tonight. 333.5. 126 total yards tonight. Passing yards and rushing yards. Top three in all of those. It's just not clicking tonight, Sam. And part of it is this, the familiarity. You have the personnel who were able to cover Houston's receivers. We have familiarity. You see these same calls in practice, even when you're going good on good. The live total is 31 and a half. Back Nearly back picked back. off, was it? No. Danucci was looking for Jacor Pearson, and William Likely, the playmaker, was there and almost grabbed it. Well, it's the reason you say the playmaker. Remember, last week against Orlando, he recovered that fumble for 49 yards for a touchdown, and Will Likely, he knows he can undercut this route. So that's the so one eight, thing you're waiting one, for. Two, you're saying, man, I know that Danucci may eight, give me the ball. This team turns it over. I have to take advantage of those opportunities. It's typically on underthrows like that. Likely another Maryland Terrapin. Danucci, this is what Wade Phillips was talking about. 
Elusive with the legs. Oh, stood up. Takes a shot and eventually brought down by CJ Brewer. The man was looking for contact. And part of the reason you say, man, we weren't expecting, you weren't expecting this run game. Well, it's not even that you weren't expecting it. You're coming off of a short week. Remember, these teams, we had Seattle on Saturday, and then you're back, you get home, you're from a long flight. You have two days of walkthrough, and then you have to get back in. And so that's part of the difference and why you may not be seeing these teams as prepared as you would have liked. No, short know, weeks should have as much time. Nizalik on the punt. Georgia Bulldog, the former Atlanta Falcon, gets it off. Here's Travell Harris. Harris thumped from behind. Return of five. The hit made by Zafir Kelly. Here you go, Brian. Think about, I think about the mentality of teams often. A team F like Houston. They've been the, the hunted. Blue. F wing, X Texas. I want right. Seattle saying, hey, no, we're going to hunt you. We're going to show you that we're actually oh. the best team in the league. So they're coming in, it seems as if, with a more of a chip on their shoulder. Go. Uh, hunt. Silver to Aileen off the mark. It's just not clicking. And keep in mind, this is a Seattle team. They open up the season against D.C. They have the go-ahead score set up, ran an option play. Danucci was hit and fumbled. Week number two, we had them against St. Louis. It was back and forth. St. Louis kicked the walk-off field goal. So they've been battle-tested. Those two losses are close. Really, the last play of the game was when they lost both of those games. So they think they should have won. They're just as confident as anyone. Very close to being 4-0 like Houston. One-on-one -on -one defense, Chris Payton Jones, a lot of grabbing there with Deontay Burnett. The fuck are you looking at? But the Nebraska Cornhusker wins that one-on-one. -on -one. He's the top cover corner for Seattle. He told Ron Zook, no one's throwing my way. <laughs> the coaches were like, yeah, I wouldn't either. Well, coach said, hey, he came to him. Peyton said, nobody's throwing to me. Coach said, I wouldn't either. That was on full display right there. Go. Right, Silvers on third down. Broken up at the last moment by Kelly. Zafir Kelly is having himself a ball game. Representing South Carolina State well. So it's not just Zafir Kelly. I mean, this is great. Uh, you, you, you're allowed to undercut routes, especially when you know you have a safety over top of you. So that's great on that. But going back to all of these defensive backs, every time you put it on tape, you say, man, this team brings five people often, and so they play a lot of man. So all these guys communicate extremely, extremely well. Elijah Holder has already blocked one. Number 33 in orange. Big punch! Here's another! Seattle has done it again! So that was blocked by two czar skipper. It was... What's so great about this play, it was, it was just mano we mano. I'm going to run you over. Stu's our skipper, number 51. He just bull rushes the, the left guard on, the, on pump protection, and he gets so far back he knows where the pump block point is. Even if you're not taking the ball away, you're creating field position by doing a blocked punt like this one or a tip punt like we saw before. Great field position after that skipper block. And check this out. That's Morgan Ellison checking in for the first time tonight. So the leading rusher in the XFL is back. We've seen him the last two weeks. He got injured and banged up last week and came back in. The week before, he got banged up again. And so you wonder if the short week is allowing him to get a little bit more rest. But hey, let's pound this ball in. He's 6'2", 235. Flip 51. Hey, easy. Flip 50. Flip 50. Flip 50. Flip 50. You have to be alert for Danucci's legs every time you're in the Take red zone. Go. Defensive linemen have to keep that pocket tight. Danucci felt the pressure. 
dealt with the pressure. Flag down. Danucci, one man to beat. Held up at the two yard line. Flag down. Flag down. Holding offense number 73. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, second down. That's on the center, Jared Thomas. So you see the holding by Jared Thomas, yes, but pay attention to Tim Ward getting up the field. You can't do that in the red zone. Why? Because the field is more longer. It's like, you know, it's, it's more horizontal when you're down there. It's not more downfield passes. It's more quarterback ability to step up and then go sideways. That hurts defenses when you go upfield. And so Tim Ward has to communicate. They didn't let him know, don't go upfield in the red zone. You're not going to get a sack. Set, go. Josh Gordon, think quiet. He's at the bottom of your screen. Danucci looking that way initially. Fires to Gordon. It's picked off. Ajane Harris with the interception. T-Mac, thank you, Ajane Harris. Proud product of Crenshaw High School in L.A. Easy, easy. Gray, 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 gray. Went to USC where he was a standout. Continuing that here in the XFL. Silvers laces it over the middle. He had him. Cedric Bird was there. Let's check in with Eric. Guys, coming off the sideline, we saw Jacor Pearson coming off wide open, visibly frustrated as he came off the field, screaming, doesn't know what's going on, slams his helmet you know, on the ground there, visibly upset. Understandably so, Lully is so wide open. Eric, what happens with Danucci in situations like that? Why is a turnover such a problem? Yeah, man, I think that he just gets so confident within the game that, man, he forgets there's other people out there sometimes. Throwaways are better than picks, and it just got away from him right there. There's the frustration from Jacor Pearson. Part of it in this league, cameras and microphones always on you. It's going to make you a star, but you got to be able to handle it when times aren't going well. Third and manageable for the Roughnecks. Go. Right, hut. Silvers to throw. Pressure. Drops him. Ball is out. And we've got a fumble. Tuzar Skipper comes up with it, forcing it out. Got an empty. Got an empty hand, clearly empty hand. Houston recovered. Great look on the car. And Houston recovered. That's correct. That's correct. Fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah, we're clear. Empty hand. We're good. First down. So give Skipper the forced fumble. Houston does recover, but it backs him up. Sets up a fourth and 15. Race Porter punts it away. And Calvin McKnight spinning shy of the 30 yard line. Hot, hot. To Ellison. The wild child, Morgan Ellison, not much there on first down. Sand got to get into this though. Danucci is trying to get back to the NFL. Jim Haslett has talked to him about turnovers and says he knows what's expected. Nine turnovers in five games ain't going to get it done. And we've seen six interceptions. We've seen three lost fumbles. Those hurt teams. Now, you still have the lead. You still have a chance to keep the lead. We're seeing a little bit more run plays because we know, as we know, the clock runs in the XFL. Danucci in rhythm and complete. Scott, Charlie Temapayao, the tight end. Only his third catch of the season. Check that, that's Jordan Vesey out of Cal. Here we go, let's go first down, first down, first down. Tampa on first down, ready, let's go. Monday, 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 here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Ellison with the first down carry. So Houston is trying to stay undefeated. They still have a nice cushion over the Renegades, or 2-1-2 two two out of Arlington in the north. 
becomes really interesting if Seattle can win this game and DC beats St. Louis. St. Louis would have two losses, and that would be a two-way tie for second place. If the Sea Dragons don't get this win, I know it's just five weeks in, but the 10 week schedule becomes that much more difficult to move into the top two and put yourself in a playoff spot. This one really matters. Danucci, again, the strike to Damian Willis. Willis now with five catches tonight. Do they look like a team that's going to be a factor? Oh, they absolutely do. And they look like that team even from the beginning of the season. It was just those, those, those missed opportunities whether it's penalties or by turnover but this team is confident and defensively they're getting stronger and stronger as the season goes on really the only phase of the game for seattle that has not been perfect is offensively as ellison wants bodies on the third down carry he gets the first down yardage that's what we're talking about man he's raw but he is physical and wants it First time Houston trails entering the fourth quarter this season. Mention the multiple phases, though. Let's keep in mind special teams has blocked two punts. The first team with multiple pump blocks this year. Offense, defense, special teams. Have your defense lead to offense. Have your special teams lead to points. That's how you win in any league. Danucci. Fortunately, holds on to the football because Tim Ward gets the sack and it was close to a strip sack. Here's T-Mac. Here with Brandon Silvers. I'm assuming you were talking to A.J. Smith on your headset. What was he telling you? We just got to put a drive together. You know, we're moving the ball and then we get penalties or something happens. So, you know, we're just not playing very good offensive football right now. We just got to get a drive together. And we're down two scores and, you know, we'll see. Down 15, how do you come back here? Yeah, put a drive together. You know, completions, catch the ball and get north to south. Let's protect up front and, you know, we got to put the ball in the end zone. Appreciate your time. Lowell? Allison with a carry. Allison with a stiff arm but brought down. That was William Likely with the stop. Now, part of this is the time winding down. It's going to wind down quicker than maybe you're used to seeing left. on. Trips on different left. levels. 80, X and Z9, divide special. Here we go. 80 on the clock right. will 80. keep running after 80. it's reset, after let's incompletions go, go. and out of bound plays until the final two minutes. June Jones Let likes go. to run plays. He's also a smart man. Hot. Hot. He's taking this clock all the way down. Danucci <laughs> pressured, won't get out of this one, brought down. By Chauncey Rivers. Chauncey Rivers, he, so remember, this is a new left tackle in the game. And so we saw Liam Jimmins go down, and so new left tackle in. Chauncey Rivers understands that he beats him with speed. He bends around the edge, and he's able to bring down Ben DiNucci. So guys, what you're seeing right there too is, as Acho, you just mentioned, you got a new left tackle. That guy plays right guard. Right. It, it is extremely difficult to go from guard to left tackle, the most difficult position on the offensive line. And he's just being overwhelmed by this pass rush. Two plays in a row there. Eric, should that and does that affect play calling? Well, you want to get the ball out quicker when you have those werewolves on the other side for Houston, as, as we all know. 12-13 left for Brandon Silvers. Off the back foot, nobody home. One of the best things about this point in the game, at least for a defender, you talk about the new offensive tackle, but even on the other side is Seattle has been in this position before. Last week, they were up late in the game, and so those rushers got a chance to get after the quarterback. You start believing in yourself more once you had a couple sacks in that game, especially late in the game, fourth quarter. This is what you live for. You play for times like this. Here we go. Go. Hot, hot. Ali with the carry. Shifty. Undersized. Doesn't matter. It's going to be close to the first down marker. And they say move the chains. Big carry there by Bryson Ali. Wade Phillips trying to keep this Houston Ooh, franchise yeah, undefeated. And we're 5-0 in 2020 before COVID shut the league down. Here we you, go. Heard, you heard the F wheel, so Bryson Aline out of the backfield. Be watching go. him for the pass going to him on a wheel route. All right, Silvers will go the other way. Bat it down at the line by Emmanuel Smith, the Fandy Commodore. 
swing. All right, hey, give me spread right, spread right Detroit, outside release. Spread right Detroit, outside hey, release. Spread right Detroit, oh, right. Ready? You can uh, see people, the stress. What's that coming out there? Go. Stress growing right. for A.J. Smith as Ron Zook's defense is in control. Wide open running lanes for Aline. I like it. Okay, give me this. Give me trio right. Find your conclusion. Go. Hot, hot. Silvers has been harassed all night. It was tipped again. The guys in orange coming up with another stop. Daniel Joseph. This could be four down territory. No, it will not be. That's the third pass knocked down by a defensive lineman that we've seen. One thing you know if you're D-line, if you can't get there, get your hands up. Those lead to incompletions. Daniel Joseph out of North Carolina State got a big mitt on it. Former fourth overall pick in the CFL draft. He's originally from Toronto. High Archer. McKnight. On the 15. And Seattle will start shy of the 20. Let's listen in. How do you do it? I, I work hard like every morning at four. Good man. Oh, God. Divide special yet? Yeah, that's what I call it. Oh, yeah, 80Z9 divide special. Yeah. 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 A rushing touchdown and a Here passing go, touchdown go. by Ben DiNucci and a three-point conversion getting us to 15 points for Seattle. Oh, the ball came out. He was down. Houston thinks they have it. We heard DiNucci said he was down. Team, he might have been down. But Morgan Ellison it. coughed it up. Uh, we got him up and we're going to look at it. It's right there. I've got the high end zone. I've got clearly a fumble on the high end It's a ruling zone. on the field. Dean, you want to look at this? or you? Uh... Yeah, I'm looking at it. You have recovery by the defense, right? Fumble recovered by the defense. Yes, recovered by the defense. Yep. I've got a great a look here. It is a fumble. The, the recovery is good. We're clean. Very good call. That is or are we going to go? the 12th okay, clear, turnover clear. on the season by Seattle. They lead the XFL by far. This game should be a blowout. But Danucci has thrown two interceptions in the end zone. And the leading rusher in the XFL, Morgan Ellison, just lost that fumble. They now have a minus 10 turnover margin which is, as you mentioned, last, eighth in the XFL. 15 points. Go! The deficit oh. for Houston. First play in Seattle territory in the second half. Silvers over the middle, out of the hands of Burnett. He had it and dropped it. That was a great route by, by Deontay Burnett. He kind of was like a shake route, then he stopped, then he started, but Trey Walker in the middle. He may have heard footsteps. That's what sometimes you say as a defender. See John Trey Kirkland on the sideline. Kirkland left the game off one of the first plays. Ruled out for the Go. remainder of the game. That's the leading touchdown maker in the NX XFL. Borgie, open field stop. Made by Mikel Wright. The live line hot, hot, from Caesar hot, hot. Sportsbook. Seattle by 10 and a half. Okay, the total 22 and a half. H option, red hey, check, red H check, option. Red check, red check. Go. Hot, hot. Silver's in zone. He was wide open. Does he make the catch? No. 
Justin Smith was there, but the ball got there late. We do have a flag. Let's listen. In the end zone. 32. Ball 32 DPI in the end zone. So he's got early Pass contact. interference. Defense, number 32. Foul occurred in the end zone. Ball he placed the one yard with an automatic he's first down. Yep. This shot, I'm looking at the far hand right here. He's into it. Wind it up balls. whenever you're ready. Far hand held a good look. That's that's our best shot right there. He plays it. Strong right. Denver, punch. Owen, ready? That's a play that Seattle absolutely could challenge if they wanted to, but they unsuccessfully used the challenge earlier in the game. First and goal. Borgie with a carry. Still moving. No signal yet. Rubnecks want the touchdown. Down inside the one. I can't find the ball though. Far hand. Here, up right there. This is typically where we see Cole McDonald at quarterback. Houston staying with Silvers. Borgie looking for the second effort. He's tackled into the end zone. It took a while, but Houston is on the board. Max Borgie had 41 total touchdowns at Washington State. He has a nose for the end zone, but now they got to find a way to get these points. One, two, or three. The one from the two-yard line, the two from the five, the three-pointer for the ten. Here we go. All right, let's go. Houston will go for the two-pointer, where they are four of 11 on the season. Go! Corner. Off the hands of Travell Harris. Low. It is a nine-point Seattle lead. That is still a one-score game for Houston. They will need a touchdown and a three-point conversion. Seattle with not much going with T.J. Hammonds. One on two, ready. So there was a false start. See, dig. That added some yards Take for down. Seattle. They got 7-16 to try to ice away. Danucci over the middle. That's Josh Gordon. Gordon makes only his second catch tonight. First positive yards for him. It's a former All-Pro. Trips right, Bucks. Trips right, Bucks. G4, G4, G4. 19's in the game. Set go. Hot. Hot. TJ Hammonds with the carry. The Razorback thumped. Oh, launched backwards by Tavante Beckett out of Marshall. You see Seattle going to the run game, trying to protect that ball. And a new running back. It's not Ellison. Now it's TJ Hammonds in there. Nebraska, Z Dig. That's right, 581 Nebraska, Z dig. And the clock is still running, still Zorro running. Zorro spoke. Zorro spoke. A win here for Seattle on this drive is simply not turning over the football. Set, go! Hot! Hot! Danucci thought about running, it's high. That's a forward pass, so incomplete looking for Hammonds. It's going to set up a third and ten. How in the world is Seattle two and two in position to be three and two with the minus Trips right. 10 turnover differential? That's right, 81 X9 divide special. Here we go, 81, 81 on two, ready. Well, it's because their offense 81, is still 81, so explosive. 81. And so you, if you don't want to turn the ball over, but you can score at such a high rate. So it, it almost, it almost go, go, erases go. those Check turnovers. Danucci taking a shot. It's too far and it picked. Harris is now your XFL leader in interceptions. His second of the night. How is that possible? Come on, man! Fucking ass nine! Get him out of the game!
Is Danucci calling for Josh Gordon to be removed from the game? Sam, did I hear that right? I don't know what I heard, Law. All I know is what I saw on the tape. You see another interception, and you might say, okay, man, that's on Gordon, or maybe it's on you reading the us reading the coverages differently. But now we have Houston back in the game, essentially a hand-wrapped gift delivered for Brandon Silver. Go! Oh. Two picks in the uh -huh. end zone. That was his third tonight. Silvers throws it away. Sam, they're now minus 11 in turnover margin. And that exchange, that was Danucci expressing frustration with Josh Gordon. It was, it was. And now it's also a one-score game. We've heard some of this frustration before, but we need to see what's going to happen, how this game ends. Sometimes winning cures all, losing doesn't. Go. Oh, uh hut! -huh. Ali. It's four yards. Now you can go back to the second interception in the end zone. He was looking for Gordon. It was picked because that ball was thrown behind Gordon. So it's not like Danucci's been perfect. Right, right. Hey, right. Huge third and six for Brandon Silvers, an undefeated Houston. Go. Oh, hey. Check down the lead. Can still get up and run. Hit hard to complete the play. It's Emmanuel Smith. Now it's the NFL rules. You have to be down by contact. So it's great awareness by Aline getting up, trying to get the extra yards. Fourth and hurry, four. Hurry. Roughnecks going for it with under four minutes left. Hot, hot. Seattle scrambled. There could have been movement, too, on the Houston left side of the offensive line. Oh, no, no, no. Hold up. Prior to the foul, timeout. Seattle was called. It's the first charge time out of the half. Wow. Seattle was in scramble mode trying to get the right personnel on the field. Well, they knew if you have that five, if you have 12 men on the field or if you're offside, that's an automatic first down because it's fourth and four. And so great play, great decision by Seattle's coaches calling a timeout. Let's listen in to Wade Phillips. We got to go for it. Hurry, hurry, snap it. Snap it! Snap it! Snap it! Snap it! Snap it! Snap it. Snap it. And it looked like it was going to be a false start on James Moore. Let's see how this play is being set up. Hey, hey, hey. All right, hey, hey. Run it. Remember Blinn call here, Blinn. Try to find grass and roll. Go! All right, hut! Fourth and four. Could be the ball game. Silvers, there's a flag down. Heaves it over the middle, incomplete. Let's wait for the call. Down. Holding offense, number 73. The penalty is declined. The result of play is a first down for Seattle. The Seattle defense comes through again, Sam. That was Elijah Ponder on the outside. He had a sack last week. You notice his get off and notice his hands. He waits, he waits, and he does it's almost like a side swipe and keeps that bend. That's where the holding call was called. This guy has great hands. Sack at a critical moment last week in the fourth quarter. Points makes this one a lot more interesting. Tackles right, strong left, Miami on two, ready. Points will make it a two-score game. But remember, the special fourth and 15 make it, keep it rule, that if a team that is trailing scores, they can elect for the fourth uh, and 15 instead of an onside kick. So Houston still has a shot, but they need a stop. 
Here we go, here we go. Set, go! Seattle keeping it on the ground to Hammonds. This is only a game because of turnovers. Four of them tonight for Seattle. Trips left. Trips left. 80, C, N, D, H levels. Here we go. 80, 80 on two. Ready. So That's still give Bendinucci options. He'll have levels, levels routes. Run at 5, 10, 15. Here we go. A chance to make his own decision depending on the Check coverage. Out. Tread lightly oh. here on third and four. Oh. Danucci outside to VZ. VZ made the catch. The Cal Golden Bear. That's going to take us down to the two-minute warning. Coming up on the final two minutes. Houston with three timeouts left, down by nine. Seattle will keep it on the ground. They've thrown three interceptions. They've lost one fumble. Second and nine, playing it safe. The spin move, Hammonds to the five, and brought down at the four. Tanucci wants a timeout for Seattle. We build this as the battle between A.J. Smith, the Houston offensive coordinator, and June Jones, his counterpart with Seattle. They've got a deep friendship, goes back, to when Danucci first started learning from June Jones at SMU, when How Mummy was there as well. And that expression says it all for oh, AJ Smith. First yeah. matchup oh, against his mentor, it's not going as planned. And they talk every single day. They talk about football, they talk about life, they talk about what happened in the game before. But you see AJ Smith saying, man, what is going on? How did this happen? Though the game is not over, he has to stay locked in, but yet he's facing another one of his mentors. A.J. Smith, like his mentor, smart, creative, passionate, approachable. I'd say the least paranoid coordinator I think I've ever been around in the game. Yeah. Set, go! Darius Bradwell is the running back. Bradwell, flag down, finds the end zone. Black down, black down. I got DOF, number 45 defense. He's over the play as a touchdown. Offside defense, number 45. The penalties decline. Result the play as a touchdown. Seattle with a little security. Red zone has been problematic with two interceptions in the end zone, but Bradwell. Out of Tulane, got the start tonight. It makes this a 15-point game. Okay, let's go. Uh, trips right up, 860 Kansas, F and X post. So you got, you can hit four or 15 or just touch one up to the corner. Jones saying that Juwan Green or Damian Willis will be open. Check out. Hot, hot. Right side. Man, we gotta get in. Thrown oh. short. So what does this mean in the XFL standings? Sea Dragons, the preseason favorites to win it all, could end the weekend tied for second in the North if DC beats St. Louis. Tough task. In the South, it gets really interesting, especially with the Renegades and Brahmas, who will play each other in back-to-back -back weeks. Top two in each division make the playoffs. After this week, we'll be halfway through the season, so get a little more definition for that playoff picture. And teams are watching this game saying, man, how do we take notes on how to beat Houston? Arlington is saying, man, we get back-to-back -back wins, now we're four and two. San Antonio saying we have a chance to beat Arlington back-to-back. -back. 
Now we're back in the mix. All these teams have been waiting for Houston to get knocked off, not only for the standings, but also to understand the system of how to beat the team that was undefeated. And this game is far from over because of the XFL rules that are built to promote comebacks. Kick is away. Don't want to kick it out of bounds and risk the ball being placed at the 45. Dejon Lee takes it. Oh, goodness. Big hit at the 25 by Trey Walker. So Silvers and company, they have to move quick enough with two timeouts. They've got to find a score and then go for the fourth and 15, make it, keep it. But you see the offense has been shut down tonight. Red, red. The only score courtesy Go. of a Seattle uh -huh. fumble, leaving Houston with great field position. Silvers, that is complete to Travell Harris. He's playing without his top receiving threat, John K. Kirkland out of LSU, who left the game red, after an early injury. Red, red, red. out. I believe we have some confusion with the clock here in the timeout situation. So one thing we will see is when you get a first down, you'll see that clock stop after a first down. 11 on the clock. That's when he called the timeout. It's a good job resetting the clock. Second timeout for Houston. Playing second down. So both teams out of the timeout. I mean, I'm out. So both teams down to one timeout. The clock is reset to 111. So Wade Phillips was calling for that timeout. Got it. He was, and he knows he's going to go back to the college rule. So you need to get first downs. What happens is you get a first down within the last two minutes of the first half or second half. In this case, then the clock will stop until those chains are reset. And so think college. You have a lot more time in these last two minutes. Houston needs to get first downs or get out of bounds. Right up. Red. Five are going. Ready? I'm back. They do need to score quick. You do need to leave time okay, for that fourth go. and 15. Go. Uh -huh. But the Seattle defense has been relentless. Silvers, and that hit the backside of Zafir Kelly. Man. Special prop. Yeah, Falcon. Blue divide right special prop. Hey, blue, blue, I want right. Trips right up. Quarter four man. If we can get a clean first down, take it. Go! If you took the over, oh, you're hey. cooked. It's at 43. We got 27 combined points. Staying up and trying to get out of bounds is Harris. Harris has to find the sideline there. He has to find a sideline, but there is a flag on the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number nine. 15-yard penalties added to the end of the play. First down. That is a big penalty on Clarence Hicks. Here's the other issue you run into if you're Houston. If you burn your last time out, you lose the ability to challenge. I'll give you the down. That's another reason why you get out of bounds. Nope, no, no foul. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the, the, the dead ball spot. Right on the 40. Yep, put it back on the 40. First down on the 40. No mask. After review, there is no foul for a face mask. The penalty will not be enforced. However, the result of the play is a first down. So let's bring in Dean Blandino, VP of officiating. What did Line you see up. there compared to the initial call, Dean? Yes. Yeah, so right. remember. In the last five minutes of the fourth quarter, if it involves player safety and a face mask foul would, we can get involved from the command center. We had a really good ready, look. Ready, it was actually go. the shoulder pad, not the mask that was grabbed. Beautiful. Thank you, Dean. Silvers over the middle. 
Burke cannot make the catch. Receivers are not helping Silvers tonight. That's Lyndon Stevens again, number one. That's actually Bryce Thompson again, number one on the cover. He's been all over the field. Hey, red check on, ready? Hey, Frisco, Frisco. All the two teams in the XFL averaging more ready, than ready, 300 go. yards per game. And a flag and a false start. 73, the clock was stopped. Clock, yeah, clock was stopped, so we're good. False start, offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. This was the play that Dean Blandino reviewed in the final five minutes. Player safety was able to overturn this. Initially called a face mask. Sam, you can see from that look, clearly it was not. He's looking at all the plays, but in the last five minutes, he is allowed to make a change to a play. And so that did not have to be challenged. Go. Oh. Uh -huh. Houston down by 15. Sideline throw, heads up to get out of bounds by Travell Harris out of Washington State. All right, here we go, 48 seconds. Okay, line up and spread right purple, spread right purple, line it up, line right it up, right spread right purple, purple spread right purple. purple. Get up on him, over four men. Go. All right, hut, hut. Silver's flag down, sideline catch made by Deontay Burnett. Ruling on the field is a catch. We have a flag down. Ruling on, I got your spot. We have a defense offside. I lost the number, but that's going to be declined. Offside, defense. Penalty is declined. Result of play is a first down. But one thing you have to keep in mind, especially in the fourth quarter when it's passing situation, Hard counts, hard counts, hard counts. We saw Seattle jump off sides last week in this situation. Ready, ready, go! The Silvers, in zone, has a man, overthrows Harris. Those are throws that Silvers was okay, making here we go. in the first four games. Give me a uh, spread right, Y hook, red Y hook, H street, Y hook, spread right, H street, Red, red one. Hold on, ready. 38 seconds. 38 seconds. They got to get the ball into the end zone and go for that. Get those three points and go for oh. that. Make it, take it. That's why I hear some of these uh -huh. streak calls down the field. Silver's off the back foot. Let and another flag. All right, Nick Collins. Holding offense, number 64, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. That's the top offensive lineman for Houston, Jack Snyder. And it's been indicative of the Houston problems tonight. Scoot in a little bit, Justin Smith. All right, there's Perp. Run like hell, Nick Colley. Remember to read Nick Colley on that safety back side. Get a real nice Go. clean inside release, Justin. All right, hut. Smith talking to his quarterback all the way up to the snap. Over the middle, complete to Justin Smith. Justin Smith wheels. Houston is still alive. Wait, wait, not quick. Let's go. There we go. Oh. You're talking to Nick Holly saying, get upfield. Nick Holly gets upfield. He eats up that safety, and all of a sudden, Smith comes underneath. The communication we're hearing right now is Man, pristine. Empty off. Sub in there. Sub. We should be in foul. It's okay. It's okay. You got to get down here. Cole McDonald checks in the quarterback. And we've got an official timeout as Daniel Joseph is down for Seattle. So let's set this up. It's now a nine point game. It looks like Houston is gonna go for two, which would make it a seven point game. 
regardless they'll have a shot with the fourth and 15 make it keep it to keep a drive going so these are the rules the teams can keep the ball after scoring by an onside kick or electing if they are tied or trailing in the fourth quarter to go for the fourth and 15 from their own 25 yard line clock runs and the drive will continue if you convert it's played just like a regular football play and so after this two-point conversion whether you make it or not they can elect to do an onside or you do a fourth and 15 from the 25 and then if you get a first down you keep on playing the clock runs for interception it's an interception it's a regular football play and in week number one in a game that was played a lot like this st louis converted and was able to score off of it to beat san antonio in a game that much like houston they were getting dominated before the final moment they were getting dominated for three and a half quarters st louis had nothing going offensively then they came back in the last 90 right, seconds and won the game it. get good outside on the two side get good wide splits that good that looks good so Cole McDonald was usually a yeah, running threat. Read it. Read those two guys. He's that quarterback. McDonald will throw. Great hey, hands by Burnett out of USC. Brandon, go. Brandon, go. Hey. Fourth and 15. Okay. And immediately, Houston calls for the fourth and 15. This is a great call not only having Cole McDonald in there but deciding to pass the ball he could pass it as well though he does have the running threat now you're down by seven 24 seconds left fourth and 15 from your own 25 and so you have to be thinking once we get this not if we get this if you're AJ Smith once we get field, this field. here's our next two or three plays don't show it don't show it but we're going Patriot Brandon find your one-on-one -on -one and give me trips left up trips left up red five verticals now I'll tell you this with Patriot. No, Justin Smith, go in. Don't show what we're doing. Now let them line up because I may I check quarter. to a cutter I want quarter again. Out there. I may quarter. check Is to a cutter. One? But it's X and Z grab. Yeah, you got to get wet. It's like two up routes on the outside unless you get, yeah, unless you out, get cover two run goes. Hey, blue, blue, I want, ready? I want. Here it is, fourth and 15. Houston needs to convert to keep the drive going. The clock no. will run on the snap. Uh -huh. Silvers has to get to the sticks. And there it is, converted to Burnett. So drive continues. 19 seconds and a timeout left for undefeated Houston. You heard him say, find your one-on-one, -on -one, get the verticals. You have to know defensively, it's fourth and 15. You don't need to defend the end line, defend the 15-yard mark. Deontay Burnett comes back, it's a vertical, he's off. Perfectly placed ball by Silvers. Go. Uh -huh. 19 seconds left. Silvers letting it go. Two defenders are there, incomplete, but a flag! Flag down, flag down. I got defensive pass interference. Wow. I don't have the number. It's number one. Number yeah. one. No, number one. Number one. I don't. I don't have my flag in a good spot either. We'll help. We'll pass help you with the spot. Defense number one. The ball will be placed in the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. 27, call it to 27. 27. You heard Wade Phillips say, yeah, yeah. even if they score, he said, we're, we're going for two. They want to score and they want to win this game. 13 seconds left, one oh. timeout. Oh, and that at that point, the total becomes a factor here. Silvers. No, ball is out, and it's picked up by Lalos. Lalos ends it. He did it before he can do it again. In his first start in the NFL with the Giants, Nico Lalos had an interception. The second week of recovered fumble.
This and dude knows how to find the football. And look at this, celebrating with the home fans. Television right Sea Dragon fans have been awesome. They're getting their moment. XFL North, we tried to tell you last week you should be on watch for the Seattle team. And Nico Lelos was on watch. Remember he had that batted down pass earlier. He's not rushing the quarterback. It's a three-man rush. Keep your eyes on the quarterback. And you see Elijah Potter with the bat, with the, essentially the forced fumble, but that turned into an interception. And Lelos finds the football. There's nothing better. He's a turnover machine. Yeah. Now, this needs to be a challenge by Houston. So here's the benefit. One time out left, you can challenge anything. 51, Find something. Hands to the face, left tackle on our left tackle. Number 51, we don't challenge. On our left tackle. Okay, hand to the face. So, so he's saying that there was hands to the face against his left tackle, correct? Okay. It's not, it's not, it's not number 51, but it, I'm looking at it. And so I've got a real, yep, yep. It's no, it's actually defense 42, correct. It's number 42 that's on, working on their left tackle. I've got a left hand, yep. I've got a left hand to the collar, shoulder pad, not to the head neck area, not hands to the face. So after review, the ruling on the field stands, no, no foul for illegal hands to the face. So after review, no know, foul for legal use of hands. Oh, no. yeah. After review, there's no foul for legal okay. use of hands to the face. There's no foul. The review says there's no foul. Oh yeah, of course. Now the important part of that is for Wade Phillips to challenge, he has to specify what part of the play he wants to challenge. He has to, he has to not only Best has to have a timeout, but say specifically who was the player, what was the play, what are you challenging, and what are you calling, what are you hoping to get called? And on a night in which Seattle turns it over four times, Jacor Pearson is right. The Sea Dragons are coming because the defense plays one of the best games we've seen all year long. They're finding their stride. Last week they beat San Antonio in this exact same fashion. A game ceiling win. They're finding their stride at the right time and other teams should definitely watch out. And how about this for poetry? June Jones, the former Houston head coach, hands the Roughnecks their first loss as an XFL franchise. June Jones, the XFL coach of the year back in 2020 with Houston comes in for the win. I'm all about competitive, but remember, we want to keep these guys off the ground, though. That thing that happened with O-line and D-line, that was some ch chicken jump, because that O-line could have really dumped that kid, and that kid got pissed. He did finish him. He came with the extra? No, nah, he, he, he pulled it out. Come on. Yeah, Come on. <laughs> Come on, Jordan. He held off. He could have dumped him on his head. Look, he pulled up. Then you get mad. Then you say it was extra stuff. The arm around the uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One of ones, though, like that. So, so at that point in time, like, it's over. Pause. You see that whistle, Pete? You got it? <laughs> it's over. You know what I'm saying? Now, me being a pass rusher, I am. Like, come on now. Don't give me, don't give me, don't give me the extra. Don't give me the extra. Let me echo my compadre over here. We're not taking any either. Okay. So, so right now, we're taking the so now, if you hold my back, and you no, listen, no, 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 there's no. nothing going on right there that you haven't done a million freaking times, and now you, you come in and step in for they're, they're fine. You've got every advantage. You can hold your head all you want, Joey. I've been around, I've been around a little while too now. That <laughs> <laughs> snaps under my belt at the same level you were at. I, I, nobody's even said that. Well, <laughs> that just... I've never said nothing I'm about not, I'm not going to... You can't hear nothing from me. Yeah, I know, man, you want, but you want <laughs> more. You're like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you get competitive when you're doing one-on-one -on -one drills, and sometimes we butt heads, but it's just like any other brothers, you have little quarrels, you have little fights, you make up, and we move on to the next day. Pete, I got a drink for you, man. <laughs> you got me misunderstood. I'm your guy. <laughs> well, Joey, he's really a brother to me. Hines is my brother. 
Been together 24 years, and the bond we built can't be broken. Don't let the old man put one on you. Ooh, I got him! Go! Oh, you dirty dog. We're very similar in a lot of ways. We love to compete. We hold each other accountable. But also, man, he's just an uh, all-around good dude. On the Steelers, he was one of my closest teammates. The only way we know is the Steeler way. Once you become a Steeler, or now as a Brahma, you're going to be linked together forever. Are you lying up? No, not yet. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the final game of this four-game week. This has been a fun season so far for Wade Phillips in Houston. The Godfather himself. How you doing, man? Good. Wade and I, we go way back. It's kind of like a mentor, man. I'm a first-year coach going against a, a guy who's been coaching as long as I've been alive. Well, you know I appreciate you, man. It's always been a pleasure. I love you. Uh, I love you appreciate buddy. it, Coach. My son! Jack Cohn has been their leader at quarterback, and they're coming off of a really nice win last week. Sure. They're saying that they're the best team in our division. Let's go show everybody the real best team. All right. All right, are we ready? Yeah! One, two, three, go right. ahead. Travis Johnson set to receive. And a knuckleball. We are underway in Houston. Johnson takes it at the five. It's a key block on the edge. And he's got the sideline. Johnson first out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Are oh, you proud of baby? You think Hines is excited? Let's go. Jack Cohn is a quarterback. Five man rush to the slant. It's caught. Touchdown, San Antonio. That's what I'm talking about. Come yeah. Here. San Antonio brings four at the flat. Set chucks over the middle, and Houston's on the board. I seen you. You was almost there. Run his ass over. Pressure coming from everywhere. Unloads to the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. It's DeAndre Burnett. Cole McDonald change your quarterback. This is Cole McDonald. All right, McDonald will take off, and he is in. Houston stands its way to a 22 to 7 lead. Let's go. Don't blink. Don't blink. Let's go. Let's go. This could be the game with four minutes to play and a fourth and goal. Cone hands it off. Penetration and they stop him on fourth down. I'm going to take that one. But if I'm going to take that one, y'all damn for sure better stay together. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, Bring it in. Bam. Oh. Hey, man, Family in here, bro. We're oh, yeah, we sticking together. All right, no matter what. Let's All go. Right. Family on three. One, two, three. Go. This combine is really very important for our athletes. It's an emotional moment, it's an impact moment, and this can change their future. Life all comes down to opportunities and how we take advantage of those opportunities, how hard we work to meet those opportunities halfway. We are getting ready for our big XFL combine here for the next few days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We got about 200 total players. We got 100 on offense, about 100 on defense. XFL combine is where they can go out here, make a name for themselves, open up some eyes, showcase what their skills are. We're gonna go grip strength. That's gonna show how many Newtons of force they, they put on that grip machine. I think we're gonna get guys that are gonna be in the thousands of Newtons of force. That's really good. The other test is gonna be jumps. We're jumping with our hands on our hips. So anything over 20 inches is gonna be equivalent to like a 38, 39, 40 inch verticals. We want these guys to jump high, but we want them to jump quickly and put a lot of force in the ground. So the best way to do that, hey, hands on hips, high as you can, as fast as you can. Here we go, boom, good landing. Then we're going over to the bench press. We're gonna be able to see what their estimated one rep max is. 
The cool thing about what we're doing is we're getting moderate to, to lightweight and we're saying hit it three times, let's see how fast you can do it, and then we're getting an estimated one rep max. Then we're going to our field sprints, all right? So we're gonna put the catapult units on, we're looking at acceleration, and we're looking at top speed. Anything for our skill guys in that five or six number, that's really good because that tells us those guys can get going a lot faster. And we're looking at anything over 20 miles an hour. Let's rock and roll. Me and Dylan are gonna run through it. And that way, any kinks with Wi-Fi, anything like that happen, we get out in front of them right now. All right? Well, let's do it. Oh, good baseball swing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! One more, one more, one more. Way back, way back. This tech that we're using, we use this throughout the whole entire season. So each position has averages of all these metrics and top performers. So when we get these guys in, we can compare apples to apples now. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. There we go. Oh, okay, okay. asymmetry's down. Tighter? Are you kidding me? Woo. That's all I care oh, about. Up, Joe. Come on, he's hot. So if I'm a scout and I'm looking at who I want as quarterback, here's a good sample size. Where's the average? Here's our top performers. Here's, here's our top players in the XFL. It's not just handing the coaches the numbers. It's giving them a cheat sheet with all that information in, the, in one page to say, boom, boom, okay, this guy compares to this, I like him. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. This high. Innovation is the name of the game when you're talking about the XFL. For years and years and years, we've seen combine one way. 40 yard dash, 510 five shuttle, jumping up and touching a marker to see jump height. There's a lot of years of combine that laid the foundation for us to watch over the NFL. All we want to do is take that and evolve from it a little bit. We're really excited to see what these guys bring to the table and see what they got. I know we're going to get some, some high numbers, so excited to see it. So we got moment of That is our right test there. right there. Above or below 18 miles an hour. Woo. Coach Irv, we're coming. We want to see that top speed. What we got, Irv? Uh, Sean, you had 19.01. Oh, okay. Oh. Dylan, you were 18.12. Oh, all right, all right, all right. So he got me on that one. He was 19 but we were both above 18. So all you people that sit above, thank you. Thanks for the belief. You know, I think when you look ahead, obviously we had a great product this past season, but I look out ahead and know what are the mistakes we learned from? You know, how can we get better? How can we grow? How will our coaching staff grow and, and really build upon this? 2023 summer meeting, it's about to kick this off. This felt to me like the longest off season. Maybe didn't feel like that to everyone else, but it's just, you know, I get to do other things, but mostly I get to do this. And this I love. And I love it with this team. And I want to say, I know you probably have heard me, I'm going to, it's going to take me a couple months to get through not saying this. I'm so proud of what we did last season. And I'm so proud of the work. I am so proud of our athletes. We had headwinds. And we proved specifically that we are the dominant spring football sports. So this year, we move into being the world's greatest spring football sports. So Monday was a great meeting. It was a full day with our entire XFL team, including our coaches, including Dean Blandino. We were able to review the year, but really focus on what we're going to do for the 2024 season. So today, what we're gonna do is kind of go through the season in review and talk a little bit about some key, key statistics 
and, and really get into some of the rules and if we need to make some tweaks. And that includes taking some look at some of our rules and saying, do we need to make any tweaks to actually continue to advance the game, make it even safer, get more dynamic plays. There are areas where like, can we get the scoring a little higher? Can we get the gaps a little closer? Can we get more excitement and get greater opportunities for our athletes? We had a we had a issue in the last 30 seconds of a half. I see the official, he's, he's stopping the clock. But someone in the booth or what, I mean, you, you said, no, it's right. And I, I didn't call a timeout because I saw him going timeout. Point being, something, maybe you stay out of it in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> what, you know, when, when time's an issue is all I'm getting at, rather than reversing, I didn't know it was reversed. Yeah, and that, that's on us in terms of communication with you because they got to tell you, coach, it's going to start on the ready. Yeah. So if you want the timeout, you got to take the timeout. Absolutely. Last year at this time, everything was new. We didn't have any history. It was a different environment. Now, for, for our head coaches who have had a year under their belts, they're, they're bringing, for lack of a better term, baggage with them, right? This play, that play. And, and that's good because that means that we're, we're creating a, a, a little bit of history and we're, as we build this league. And so this is such an important part of what we do because we're all on the same team. And there were times, and I guarantee you, you all went through it. There were times where you're like, it's the first quarter. Should I challenge it? Because I'm done, right? Because I'm done. To be here a year ago with eight head coaches hired, no staff, no teams, and to be here tonight and, and just seeing the excitement um, and what's coming for 2024, it's incredible. Uh, it, it's, it was hard to imagine a year ago that it could have been this great. All right, appreciate you all. Again, this will continue this conversation, get feedback, and uh, let's uh, look forward to the rest of the meeting. So together, we are always looking to improve this game, right? improve it for our players, our, our coaches, our, our fans, everyone who circles this ball, this XFL ball. Let me ask you in particular, Coach Barlow, for season two, mm -hmm. what are your plans to elevate, differentiate, you know, you don't have to give us the secrets, so, <laughs> but maybe the philosophical ideas, right. what you want to do. So season two for us, obviously, um, we've been blessed to have some guys that get um, NFL opportunities, so we have to replace um, those guys. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to bring in even more talent to make it competitive. You mentioned the 28 million fans that watch. Mm -hmm. um, that was because of the product, and we want to continue to upgrade that product. So bringing on even better players, more athletic players would be good. And then, of course, um, you always want to develop the guys, mm -hmm. and that's in any, any type of fashion. So uh, when we talk about the stage coach, all right, the bus that took people from one place to the next. Well, for us, coach, C-O-A-C-H, is called on as Christ helpers. And ultimately, we want to be able to take these guys from where they are now, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all that stuff, and uh, get them to the spot where they want to be. Beautiful. So, you know, a full 360, right? You don't, you're not looking at this as just, you know, here are the plays and this is what we're going to, obviously we're going to put something on the field, but we're going to put something into life. We're going to do right. more with our athletes. Right. That's fantastic. You know, I always share, and, and I think coaches have heard me say this and I've said it to our athletes at the XFL, our job is to take and create moments for greatness but to not make that their greatest moments in life, right? To set them up so greatness and their great moments continue and they get to experience something new every year, um, uh, every day uh, going forward, that their time with us has set them up in that way. Spin your fingers out here, right? You might do a hand spin. I'm nine and a quarter, right? Let's see what you are. interest in our league, the desire to play in our league is second to none. And when you have that, you're going to have greater talent. 
One of the things that we instituted with the Combine is the interpersonal interaction, the interviews between coaching staff and the prospective players. And that goes a long way because they wanna make sure they get to know that person. You can scout a guy and see what he puts out there on tape, but what, what, what's his makeup? What is he gonna bring to the locker room, to our team? We're in a good spot. And the other part that is even better is with the success of the first Jobless League, now the guys that were questioning it before, they now they're going to jump in, right? Like we're not going to have, I think when we get to that, that October 4th draft and we get to the South Middle draft, you're going to have some guys that have NFL experience or have football experience that are going to be chomping at the bit to get into this, to keep extending their careers and to say, hey man, you know, I could go play in that league and I can go do that for four months and then you know, bounce, right back, yeah, bounce yeah. back into the NFL. Yeah, like, yeah I'm going to do that. One thing I'm looking forward to with this combine is being able to show my talents and show that I can play at the highest level. We got toe walks, big upper body action, all right, big movement. Playing football professionally has always been a dream of mine. Um, I think the XFL has shown that they've done, you know, good work in terms of getting guys that exposure they need to go and play even at the next level. Once upon a time, the NFL was the only option for a lot of guys like us, and now the XFL provides a dream opportunity for us to reach that level, and it's an opportunity for us to continue playing the game that we played since we were kids at a high level. So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, so I want to make the most of it. All right, here we go, fellas. You're going up through the tunnel, you're going to your right. We're gonna be in four groups. We'll have the coach there. We'll go grip. Okay, you'll see it in here. All right, so just get to your group number here. Grab a car, hydrate, and we're in the weight room. Let's get it. So we're about to do our acceleration test and our um, our max velocity test. Uh, so it's going to be a quick acceleration. What we're going to see is how fast these guys can go from zero to full speed. The part I love is I love guys competing. Like get out here and show me your heart, show me you know, where you are, because none of these guys have the easy road. Some of these guys are living on dollar to dollar, chasing a dream that might never happen to them, but they're still doing it. Bill, when you hit this, you're going 100 miles an hour. props and a lot of these guys we've seen from years past and they're just like man I love football I got to get out here I got to compete and do whatever I can to catch your eye and maybe I didn't catch it last time but I want to do what I can to catch it this time so I, I love that I love the XFL it really it truly is a league of opportunity because you don't have to really know anyone anyone can come anyone can go to a showcase but are you good enough to go to the next level pretty, pretty good stand up nice shot. haven't played football in two years as a kid, you always dream about it, you know, and only a few a few guys get to live it. So just to be out here this week, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a dream come true and looking forward to extend it in more after this week. I mean, you, you walk in, you think about it, and in the NFL, You've got, you know, a seven round draft and you're, you, you know, you, you kind of got a pretty good idea of who's going to get yeah. drafted where. Yep. We walked into, into Las Vegas for a draft 
and walked out with 50 players. Yep. We had zero yep. when we walked in, yep. and two yep. days later we had 50, 50 yep. plus. Yep. Yep. And I remember your voice on the phone when we had Zoom calls and stuff saying, hey, can we break this down? Give me some, <laughs> give me some help here. I was trying to make it as easy as possible to myself. <laughs> yeah. To my coaches and all, I was, I was feeling all confident, talking all confident. As soon as I would get off Zoom, or as soon as I wouldn't say, I'm like, bro, I have no clue what is going on right now. <laughs> uh, hopefully what I'm actually saying is, something that's gonna happen. Hey guys, I know we're gonna get these players. As soon as I cut off, I have no clue. I hope <laughs> these are the guys, that, cause we didn't get a chance to see them in person. Yeah, right. yeah. You, I mean, you don't know. Yeah. With us in the league, man, we there's millions of dollars that's dedicated to going out and scouting these players, body typing these guys, yeah. talking on the phone with them, going to the combine and seeing them in person. We had no clue. I didn't know if the guy that I drafted even had two legs. <laughs> at that time, you know what I mean? We were getting live updates. Russ G going, he just signed in the CFL like right a minute ago. Like there, there was days I was sitting there like, thank God, man, please just let me be right. Let me be right on this one because it was just you. You trust that you're a good evaluator and you and you believe in what you have been taught and what you learn, but then you know you got other guys in the same position that have been doing it. And, and they're going to be looking at those same players, and you hope that that guy, you can get to that guy, right? And I hadn't, I hadn't been in a draft room since 2007. So for me, it was extra daunting, right? I'm sitting there, man, 15 years removed, and I'm going, man, I got a draft against Randy Mueller and Rick Mueller and Rick, Joey Clinksdale, and I mean, what, you know, Vaughn? I, I don't, I, it was, I was sitting there like, okay, man, ho I hope I'm up for this task. And so, you know, and, and, and then the other part is, I don't want to let the, King of Texas down, man. You know, I got I got Wade Phillips right here. You know, if I if I fail him, that's not gonna be great. So, but it was a uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know if people ever ever really know those hours you sat there. You know, up at night, and and, and it was stupid because I'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning going. Oh, Vaughn's probably watching film right now. You know, Rick's down there. Do Rick's doing something, man. It's, if, he, if Rick's talking to that agent, I talked to him yesterday. I'm gonna be so mad. You know, it, it made it tough. I think one of the things that uh, that we'll be a little bit better at this year is. Um, bringing in players, selecting players that fit your scheme. Sure. You yep. know what I mean? Because, you know, last year it was a little bit twisted, yep. you know, and you're acquiring players and you don't really have your, your scheme. Uh, your coaches are a little bit more settled. You know exactly what you're going to run. So you're bringing guys in. They fit what you do, opposed to uh, the other way around and then getting uh, into the season a little bit. You know what I mean? That, that, that deal where you... Right. We ended up wasting a lot of our skin. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a Russ Gilio thing. But, um, <laughs> we go. but you know, you spent all that time one replacing. One <laughs> you, 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 you spent all that time replacing these players because they didn't necessarily fit early on what you wanted to do. Now you're utilizing all those skill cuts that you could have better used, you know, as your season progressed. You know what I mean? So I think we'll, we'll do a much better job of handling that than we did this, uh, this past year. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Give me three. Left. All right, feet together, feet together, hanging hands. Give me one. And down. Here we go. What's up, Harry? How are we doing, coach? Good. All right. Good to see you. Yeah, we're telling you. Doc, run it. Doc, Yeah, how are we feeling this morning? Good. Trying to find some new Vipers. Yeah. So we're ready to go. Are you looking for anybody specific? We're looking for all of them. <laughs> Sam and KJ, can you hear me? Sam and KJ? We got 20. We are 20 seconds away, guys. 20 seconds. And they're gathering people for the address, so you need to get over there. 13, as as come on the 12, air. Okay? 11, 11, 10, 10 9, 9, 9, 8, 8 8 8 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 4 open 3, their mics. 2, 1. Go, Sam. Welcome to the XFL Combine. We have over 200 players here. What are we doing this morning? Sometimes that doesn't go What are you most looking forward to in this Combine? Honestly, I'm ready to look. I'm looking for some 4240s. Okay. I'm looking for some guys that come out straight out blazing. I'm looking for some agility. Guys come out with that swaggy sauce. You know what it is. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So it's going to be a fun one, man. Earlier today, we talked about the fact that one of our jobs is to set a platform for greatness, right? We have got to bring everything we can. We've got incredible executives around you. We've got the coaches around you. We've got their staff. This is the moment. Don't think about anything else except that your time is here. We are all about opportunity, but we just need our partners to grab that opportunity. And you guys can. Set, go. <laughs> gotta stay with them, gotta stay with them. Keep your hips down. No way spending. Move your feet, move your feet, move your feet. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. 
We all got to learn. I know. Yeah. There's a lot of elements about the game that you can try and control. There's a lot of elements about the game that you can't control. And then there's special elements about the game that mean everything. And that's opportunity. One of the best parts about coming out to our combine, an event like this, is all of these players that I have met, that I continue to meet. Handshake is strong, but there's just so much gratitude in that handshake, man, and you could feel it. And the first thing out of their mouth is, thank you so much for the opportunity. First thing out of their mouth. I have goosebumps right now. Thank you for the opportunity. And then we start talking shit <laughs> and having fun. But for a lot of these players, they were told, hey, you're really good, but maybe this is where the dream ends. No, nope. doesn't, not now, not with us. The quality of the athlete that we have this year as opposed to last year, all around, is great. But now since we're not starting from scratch, now we're talking about true competition. As I tell our guys that we have coming back, hey man, my job is to try to replace you. So don't get complacent because there's these guys out here that are trying to take it. Because ultimately at the end of the day, we all want to win the championship. So we're always looking for that edge or how you can improve your team. This is an incredible game and we play in a serious way. And those athletes are reflecting that. So they, they came, they came to ball. There was no messing around. You know what, it's all good. Hey, you don't run back this year. Time should come to all. Oh, let me break this thing up. Let me break this thing up. Great kid, great kid. Yeah, yeah, we love it. How you guys doing? Doing good. Well, I just want to say, hey, thank you for coming out. We take a lot of pride in creating what I feel is the League of Opportunity. And as you guys know, that's what life is all about. About And you guys have been in big situations before, small situations before. But this kind of opportunity here, this is the kind of opportunity, as you guys know, because you've been working your asses off, where it's a kind of opportunity that you have to grab by the fucking throat and not let go because this is the one that's gonna propel you to that next level. I know it's hot as fuck out here. I really, it's hot, I know, man. But you wouldn't want it any other way, right? You want it hard, right? Cause, cause that, that, that's the thing that just creates this character. So let's get a break in here, boys. And I really appreciate you, all right? Here we go. XFL on three, on three. One, two, three, XFL! XFL! Thank you, boys. I got five reps. Elbows in. Bam, bam, bam. Here we go. Five reps. Here we go. He's talking that shit. I don't care if you can cover people. I didn't want to. I want to do it all. I do it all, baby. What you need me to do? You gotta jump high today. We here, we here. I got that. What you else you need? Push the bench I got that. What else you need? <laughs> you gotta grip hard today. Come on, you gotta give me something else. What else you need? Who knew I would make it this far? They hated. They never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. Got me, you really playing with your life? I'm about to come and run it all back. I'm the new ever about to snap back. You ain't fitting for it because you all cap like. I shoot my shot, wait, hold up. I'm really about to run this go up. You know it's all net when it go up. I love what the XFL does with testing. It's different than the NFL. We really focus on not how many reps they can move the bar, but how fast they can move the bar. There's a lot of outdated testing, and we have the opportunity to change that. We need to help our coaches, you know, one piece at a time, put together, like, to find, like, what's the next XFL athlete look like. We know a guy that can run 22 miles an hour is fast, but can he catch the ball? Can he get in and out of a break as a receiver, right? It's those measurements that you can get with these tools that translate to these, these real life in-game things that get to a, a better level of a decision-making process. ODU. I got mad without his That boy ain't want to go to Virginia State. 
Then we got this one. I hold over here. We tried to play as Kappa. We tried to play as Kappa, but the Kappa's didn't want to. And he can't say nothing mean to me because he want to get drafted. <laughs> You won't get drafted by the nukes if you say so. Oh, so I'm going to just give it to you all day. <laughs> Welcome back to the final day of the XFL Combine. We got me, Sam Macho, ESPN. We got KJ Sales. Yo. But more importantly, we got defense, baby. It's Chair, DB Day, baby. Bring it all. Grab that opportunity. Grab that greatness. Stay present and just give it to us. XFL. Let's do it. Seeing a lot of good looking athletes, man. <laughs> you get through the ball, they don't move much else. Come right into the football. What football is in people's lives? what it can represent, how hard it is to get here. It is an emotional time and I'm so grateful. They feel our love, they feel our support, they feel our connection and sincerity and that makes a place to be real and to know that this is important. Being here is a blessing because uh, just an opportunity just to get my foot in the door is all I ever asked for. And you know, and now that it's presented with to me, like I feel like it's my obligation to take it seriously and make sure that uh, I'm impacting people around me and showing these coaches, uh, you know, my value to a team. Oh my God. But it's kind of cool, you know, it's kind of chill out and settle down, you know, the, the work has been put in. You know what I mean? Kind of reflect on it and stuff like that. It's nice, cool to kind of exhale. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then take it in, and then when you leave here, you take the experience with you on what can you work on to get better. Definitely. You know? That wasn't for the camera, by the way. I was just talking. <laughs> <laughs> we are wrapping up our first XFL combine. The performance on the field has been as hot as the temperatures that we are dealing with. It's triple digits, and these players didn't bat an eye. They came out and performed well. We're excited to see what they can bring to our league, and we're excited to be starting year two come January. I would say to any of our athletes, whether they're here today at the Combine or maybe not with us just yet, is to hold the dream and keep it. To look at where you want to go and every day make a commitment to work towards that. I think a lot of individuals don't realize that it's the daily commitment and the decision to do something daily towards what you want to achieve that makes all the difference in the world. We are always going to cast the widest net possible. We have players who were with us last year at our combines, didn't quite make it, who come back again, who did the work and now are at that place where they have a great shot of making one of our rosters. So to never stop, never stop and never stop that process. Spring ball doesn't conflict with the National Football League and our schedule. It allows our game to be better. The only way you get better at football is playing football. Every athlete has a dream and aspiration of being a professional athlete. Welcome to XFL to NFL. Today we have the great pleasure uh, to have the legendary Troy Vincent, Executive Vice President of Football Operations for the NFL. Just a little background on Troy. He was the seventh pick in the 1992 NFL Draft out of on Wisconsin. We won't mention one of our coaches got drafted ahead of Troy. We'll, we'll leave that for another segment. We're going to keep it above board now. But five-time Pro Bowler, 2002 NFL Man of the Year, I believe. And Troy, welcome to XFL to NFL. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. That's the nicest thing that you've ever <laughs> said about me. I appreciate the intro. And yes, oh, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Won't mention uh, Seminoles. So, Troy, uh, appreciate you coming here. You know, 
We've talked a lot about the, we've collaborated a lot about XFL to NFL since we started getting up. We really appreciate all of that. And you know, our tagline is really where dreams meet opportunity. And when you first started hearing that and us saying that, you know, how did that resonate with you? How did you feel about, you know, that sort of mantra with the XFL? Well, it's every child, every student in particular, every athlete, has a dream and aspiration of being a professional athlete, whether that's basketball, football, baseball. And that's every kid's dream. And to have an opportunity to still have your dream be obtainable. This is what, when I first sat down with your leadership team, that's what I heard. That was loud and clear was that this would be an environment, this would be a place, this would be a place where those men and women that are still dreaming, whether that's to be a coach, whether that's to play, whether that's to officiate, whether that's to be a team trainer, work in film, the XFL presented that opportunity for those dreams to still become a reality. And, and, you know, more on those opportunities, you know, we talk about that as well. This is the, you know, the dreams meet opportunities. The opportunities right now, when our season was over, we had a, over 100 guys sign, you know, go to camps. Uh, 66 signed contracts. 17 XFL players are currently on NFL practice squads. We've got one on an active roster. We hope that continues uh, in the future. So when you hear those numbers and you see those numbers and you see our vision of what we were trying to do, you know, how do you feel like that, feel about that as a whole and the, the talent level that you've seen with our league? Well, I, it begins with leadership. You all had a clear vision of what you were and what you were not. And I believe having good football minds to be able to identify, beginning with yourself, identifying talent. And we, you talked about that in the beginning here. How do you identify? Is there a place where you can develop that talent? And then is there a place for an opportunity for that talent to be displayed? And I feel like that's that environment, that culture that the XFL has 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 done that, has created that. But that starts with who's seeing, as we would say, that diamond in the rough, really identifying the college player or the pro player that just need a few more snaps. The only way you get better at football is playing football. And that's what the XFL, it presented that opportunity, that dreamer, the opportunity to be identified, develop those skills that were necessary for him to compete or to take his game to the next level. And then he finds himself in camp, which is, that's everyone's dream. You can't make a club without being in camp so people can see you. What's the NFL's overall view on spring leagues Because I throughout history? Because I think there might be this misconception out there that the NFL is like nobody else, no other football leagues. It's just us. Talk about that, about y'all's view of it as a whole and going into the future, you know, with spring leagues. Our view of spring leagues in general, the farthest thing from the truth is it should be us, only us. That's the farthest thing from the truth. We understand that people need opportunities to develop their skill sets to be seen. Spring ball doesn't conflict with the National Football League and our schedule. It truly allows individuals, the players, the coaches, support staff, video, trainers, the opportunity to get real reps. The only way you get better in football is by playing football. It complements, it allows our game to be better. More polished, more ready players, more ready personnel folks. So it's a great thing. This is all about the growth of the game of football. And this is what the XFL provides. A true training ground, a development ground for those to continue pursuing their dreams. As we've talked right from the start, that, that's been our goal to develop football and grow football, but not just players, Troy, as we've talked about 
but rules and officiating and health and safety initiatives and uh, you know, diversity, equity and inclusion initiatives with that. So speak on that a little bit about some of those things that we've talked about and what you guys do as an NFL as a whole and how we, we try to help y'all with those initiatives on and so off. Mark, yeah, so Mark, I, I think this is the heart of our relationship. The partnership was rooted on trust and information sharing. Nothing proprietary. We have rules that we've talked about, we've discussed, we've shared with you. You all have implemented some of those things that didn't didn't take priority in some areas or didn't hit the floor, but were really good ideas coming from individuals or clubs. You all would take take those and implement them. So the information sharing has been critical from day one. Officiating using our NFL officials, our development, Wayne Mackey development officials. So you're as closest to the game as far as personnel, the information sharing, the health and safety matters, working on officiating mechanics. So again, it's been a great partnership, a great relationship, but rooted on information sharing. No doubt. Just how you mentioned players have to play to get better. Officials have to officiate to get better. You know, rules people have to implement those things. So that's something we're definitely really proud about is that from the beginning, we talked about it. We discussed, we had a vision, we had a plan, and we're able to to help you all with that and make it happen for you. The, the kickoff uh, rule, for instance, not to say that the NFL adopted our, our rules, but you guys talked about it to have something new this year with, with the kickoff Yes. Yeah, so this year for it was a one year only rule. Uh, we just went to the college rules. So fair catch ball comes to the 25 yard line. But what you all have done and we've studied this is and we say, hey, what the XL, what the XS, XFL has done is potentially reduce that space and speed that we see on our kickoff that has impacted a lot of players. Some big blows happen in there. Space and speed is real. But you all were able to reduce the space and the speed of those impacts at a point at the point of contact, your injuries uh, seem to be down. Your your start drive, we call it your start play drive after that, seems to be up. So these are things that we have discussed with our head coaches, with the competition committee. We'll examine a little bit more going into this offseason after this one year only rule uh, has been. We've seen what has worked, what hasn't worked. Has it reduced the number of injuries uh, that? that we hope that it reduces, as well as how does it affect points? We know that there'll be a reduction in returns just by the simple fact of the rule, but the XFL rule was very interesting to us. Again, that space and speed being reduced and those those impacts, uh, those body impacts being reduced as well. Troy, take the fans inside of, all right, how are you y'all observing us as a whole? We've talked about our discussions and you look, but how often do y'all just sit there and say, okay, well, we watched that XFL game or we've had this meeting and talked about this. And how often is that bandied about and discussed in y'all offices to say, let's keep an eye on what they're doing so we all can get better? Well, throughout your season, I mean, our staff football operations, football development ran by Roman Oban and, and Kevin Booth, who's with management council. Um, we discussed the XFL, Walt, Perry, George Stewart, um, those that are leading are officiating. Why? Because we still want to learn. We're constant learners. And you all present a place where we can learn. Hey, talking to Dean all the time. Plays, passes, penalties, start drive. What are you learning? What have you seen? What is working in your booth? What's not working? And you're also saying, I'm watching ball. So at the end of the day, we're watching people. Seems like a good coach. Did you see that assistant coach? Maybe that's somebody that we should be considering. Did you see this young lady on the medical staff? So we are constantly looking and evaluating just what we're seeing in spring ball. So you all present a, a wonderful product, and then we take those things back. We discuss it per week, and then we wait till we get to sit down and talk to you all annually. As many people know or don't know, there's 53 guys that make an NFL roster, and then there's a lot of 54s, 55s, 56, all the way down the line. And one of our owners, Dwayne Johnson, he always felt when he came out of Miami, played at the U, didn't make it. He was always player 54. But I always like to compare it to as well, Danny Garcia, another one of our owners. She's a player 54 because she's 
the first fe female owner of a sports league. And Jerry Cardinal, uh, the owner of Redbird Capital, he's a player 54 because, hey, people say you can't make this happen. So how many player 54s do you know, Troy, and your, throughout your career and, and how that carries our league? Player 54, great question. The one that comes to mind, and he's not necessarily not a player. I believe that our commissioner, Roger Goodell's story, that's a player 54, Mel Room. And literally, as an intern, just working your way through the system for decades. That's a true player. That defines player 54. You talked about Danny. You talked about Rock. There are so many of those stories that are untold. And we were when we were first in as a group with your leadership team, that was the one thing that resonated. The storytelling of the dream deferred and how each person has a different story, a different way on how they're getting to this point or this destination. So last question, Troy, I know you say you're in the office, but it looks like, you know, you acting like you're doing work there, but we don't know about that. I'll call some people to verify. Uh, you know, year one, we thought we crushed it. A lot of growing, a lot of learning. How do you envision the future for the XFL with the NFL uh, for years to come? Well, you did it and you had a successful year. When you look at your points per game, 43 and a half, you look at your plays per game, 141. When you look at your margin of victory, you're right below us, that eight, I think is 8.85. When you look at your, your game time, the efficiency, I'm talking about 249, you know, we're right around 301. The efficiencies of your game was good. It was a clean game. Your average start drive, 30 yard line to 30 yard line. Ours is what, 25.2. So when you look at what you, what the game presented, good, clean play, high quality of play, you saw that. And the, the, the perfect, when you, when you look at the number of players, as you spoke about, in your original question, a number of players who've gotten into camp to to live out that dream, that speaks to the quality of play and the quality of players. And you got great coaching. And you present it, as we would say, your game day presentation, which is critical. What, what it looked like, what it felt like as a viewer watching, I thought it was a very, very good product. Well, we appreciate that, man, and we got we to gotta get you to a game next year, get you down to D.C. or St. Louis to check yes. out the atmosphere, yes. how we're rolling there. You, you kept pushing me off last year, but maybe well, not. I'm, I'm an empty nester again. now. Tommy and I, we're empty nesters, so we look forward to that invitation. <laughs> no doubt, man. Troy, thanks a lot, man, for being a part of the, the XFL to NFL, and hope to have you again in the future. Mark, thanks for having me. Week seven here in the XFL in Orlando. Will the Guardians get their first win, or will the defenders stay perfect here in the XFL? Bork Alice boots things away, and it's K.J. Sales returning, spinning, and he'll be dropped at the 25. Bring him out, bring him out. D.C. defenders offense led by Jordan Tamu. Well, you see Jordan what he's been able to accomplish, and particularly last week in the passing game when Houston's defense did a nice job in the first half taking away what has been a vaunted run game, forcing D.C. to throw the football to move it, and Jordan Ta'amu delivered big time on Monday night. It's been incredible to see this dual quarterback system for D.C. Jordan Ta'amu, De'Eric King, go, they work so well playing off of each other, and they love being basically co-starters for D.C. First snap of the game, throwing to the outside. Chris Blair with the catch. One play, first down, picked up 11. Hey, 16 kick, 16 kick, 16 kick, 59, 16 kick, 59. I really like that opening play. Here we go, here we go. Don't be predictable, don't run it. Get a nice confidence throw for your quarterback. Take the handoff to Smith, throwing it back to Blair. Blair, nice run after the catch. He is popped just a yard short. That let's was Najim Hossein with a big let's go. hit. Lady, lady, lady. Right, lady. Let's go, let's go. Lady, lady. See how quickly offensive coordinator Fred Second Kais turn. has that play into the game. Run 25 ready. seconds left Back on the play up. clock. Second and one. Here's the XFL rush leader, Abram Smith. Man, can he scoot on the ground. Texas, Texas.
Texas right, Texas right, Alaska, Alaska. Let's go, let's go, Alaska, Alaska. Here we go, here we go, Alaska. Let's Let's go. Go. Out wide outs. Good cut back by Abram Smith there. Defensive end of the play side just overruns the play. They're so concerned about quarterback duo. run. 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22, 22. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. First and 10, back to Smith on the ground, finding his blockers. And as hard as he runs, he does a great job being patient in that hole. Red, red, red. Very much so. He he feels when that open crease is gonna is gonna present itself, and then he's got the burst to dart through it. Second down, Tom looking to throw on the money. Lucky Jackson. Breaking free, still on his feet, and he's in the end zone. Lucky Jackson playing like it's a video game. A 32-yard touchdown strike, and DC's on the board first. 0-1, Hey, hey, sugar, sugar, sugar. I get y'all luck. It's a really nice catch here by Lucky Jackson. Ball's thrown to yes, the outside away from the defender. Then he just breaks right. tackle. Under, That's poor squirrel, tackling squirrel. on behalf of Orlando want, defensively. Again, plagued them. Mistakes like this have plagued them all year long. We don't kick extra points in the here XFL. Here you go for one, two, or three. Ready, ready. DC's going for two from the five-yard line. Looking left, Tamu completes it to Chris Blair. Two-point conversion is good. DC's up eight to nothing to start the ball game. Eli Rogers is the deep man. Almost 90 degrees here in Orlando. Feels like it's approaching summertime. The crane, the short kick does not reach the 20. Oh. So that's going to be a major infraction. Here comes short the first county flag. The ball will be spotted 15 yards from the previous spot. It's first and 10. Literally and figuratively. That is a plus 45 yard line start for Orlando's first offensive possession. That is such a brutal penalty. You see the kicker slip down. He loses all power right here. And considering how DC started, this is the type of start that Orlando needs. Maybe this can jumpstart Orlando to get off to a fast start in their own right on offense. So Orlando comes out for the first time on offense, led by quarterback Quentin Dormady. Devin Darrington, the man in the backfield. Looking to throw, dangerous pass, incomplete. No, that is picked off, but we do have a whistle. And Thula Kelly. Gonna wave it off here, We don't have any flags over there, right? Referee has roughing the passer. Ball's on the ground. It's an incomplete. Personal foul. I'm good with that. Roughing the passer, defense number 17. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Cody, you in? It's Davin Bellamy. I didn't even see you. I got hit in the head. So that's what they called on 17, Davin Bellamy. Not necessarily late. It's just his left hand slaps the back of the helmet right there of Quint Dormady and then pushes him to the ground. And you heard Dormady say, I didn't even see the end of that play. I got hit in the head. <laughs> right. Hey, listen, right now Orlando will take the yards any way they can get them. 180! First and 10 from the 30. Dormady slinging it on the money. On the ball. That's Charleston on the Rambo, ball. a gain of 15, and Orlando's using tempo. Black! Black! I Black. love this. Sarah, Sarah! Dormady looking left, trying to set up his Cody Latimer. On and the ball. Latimer pushed out of bounds after a gain of 10. Let's look at that previous completion. Wayne's right. Really nice poise hey, Bison here by right. Quentin Dormady. Bison right, Bison right. Bison Hangs right. in there, keeps his eyes downfield, delivers a strike late. And then the Sarah, tempo, Sarah. as you mentioned, John, Sarah. DC on their heels a little bit. Second and one, that was a gain of nine. On the ground is Darrington trying to reverse course. He does have a first down brought down by Bellamy. Buffalo left. Dose left, Buffalo left. Dose left, dose left, Buffalo left. Dose left, Buffalo left. I won, ready? Shane Matthews, the quarterback's coach. They're playing cover one, run slants and go crack. White 80! White 
First and goal from the four. Dormady keeps it, throws to his tight end, upended. Logan Carter does not come in. We do have a late penalty flag. They might call that on me. Will they call? No. Oh, dude. You can't have OP the pass but if there is no foul on the play, the contact was ruled Come legal. On. It's second down. Come here, bring it up, bring it up. This initial flag was thrown. I believe the Motion. back judge Bison thought right. that the ball was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage, which would have made right. a legal block Motion. Bison right. Motion. by the receiver Bison blocking, right. but that wasn't the case, and they waved it off. Good call. So it'll be second and goal from the one for Orlando. Opening drive for Orlando on offense of the game. What it is! Handoff. Derrickton. And he is stopped See, short. On the ball. On the ball. Hey. Hey, dose right. Dose right. Nike. Dose right. right. On the ball. Go. Nike, right. Nike, Nike, Nike. Nike, Nike. Dose right. Dose right. Dose right. Dose right. Nike, Nike. Derrickton Sarah, just Sarah. fighting for every yard he can muster. <laughs> Quarterback sneak, and Dormady is in there. Touchdown, Orlando. A funky go! We said this offense looks different with Dormady at quarterback. And how about that opening drive? I just love the tempo. I love how quickly they got lined up. They're not messing around at the line of scrimmage. Dormady had a nice, efficient drive, and Shane Man quarterback's coach, who became the play caller and essentially the offensive coordinator over the last two weeks. He's got himself a nice game plan early on. How about this, Orlando they electing to go for one here. You like that? Yeah, I think what it does, if you elect to go for one, I think it's it really keeps right, your run F game in, in play. Dose right, F-Soar option at nine. Dose right, right F-Soar option at nine. Tell the quarterback. In the white, in the white, in the white. See Quentin Flowers coming into the game, so we could potentially see some quarterback run opportunity here. So Flowers will try to go for one point from the two-yard line. Rodgers, the man in motion. Flowers looking to pitch it, but he's going to be stuffed. The try is, is no good. That was Joe Wallace breaking it up for D.C. That's one of the reasons why D.C. has been so consistently productive is they just don't beat themselves. Sales set to return. Starts out as five. Trying to get over that left edge. A good return by Sales. We do have a penalty flag around the 25-yard line. As Boric Alice, the kicker, ran him out. During the return, holding receiving team number 26. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first and 10. Well, and, and there you go right there. This is These are the hold types on, of on. plays that we were seeing from Orlando all year long. Not seeing for, from DC, so you get a decent return. What we got? Now you got a penalty, you're backed up, long field to go. Great opportunity for Orlando on defense here. And Reggie Barlow is a guy who prides himself on discipline. Right, right. When right, he right, was a player, line. he learned right, from one of the line. best, Tom Coughlin. He said Tom Coughlin would find guys for anything. <laughs> on the road, you had to adhere to the dress code. He said one day he was in the hotel lobby. He had a shirt on with a collar. He thought he was good. The next go, day go. he had a $600 fine. He said, Coach, what happened? He goes, yeah, I just didn't like your shirt. Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, easy, 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 easy. Hurry, hey, though, man. You got to hurry, 20, though. Two eight, two eight. going down. Come on. 20 o'clock. Time. Ready, ready. Reggie Barlow not Play liking what he sees. Offense. Timeout. We had a timeout, timeout before. Prior to the delay of game, D.C. called their first timeout. I would expect Second. to see Cole McDonald as well. For Houston, played an awful lot last week versus D.C. So Abram Smith. So just wrapping up that story with Reggie Barlow. He hey, said, left, I left. had to set the tone with my team early. He said early on in camp, guys were fighting. They were getting after each other. He said, I had to actually kick them physically out of practice. He said, the third time that happened, guys realized, he said, we've never had any problems since. Right. you got to set the standard, as he referenced in his pregame speech. Ready, ready. Set, go. Second and seven, back on the ground, Abram Smith. You know what I'm wondering? Harry Douglas. Did you pick up any fines in your day in the NFL? Anything interesting you, you found yourself fined for? Oh, yes. We had a lot of them going on when I was playing. If you dropped a ball, it was a certain go, amount of money. Go, go, go. If you came into the meeting room with the hoodie on, you got fined. Go, go. We got fined for body language, ready, ready. all sorts Set, of things. Go. How about missing a block? Oh, no, no. We got praise for great blocks. <laughs> we got oh, praise. Jump ball incomplete. Chris Blair couldn't come down with it. Huh. Balin Buchanan huh. 
was there. Great coverage for Orlando. Great opportunity here for Orlando. And what have we been talking about? Self-inflicted wounds, right? Back-to-back -back penalties for DC on offense. You have to call a timeout on a change of possession. You throw the ball up here, and that is a ball that Chris Blair and this DC receiving core has going, come down Danny? with each and every where's week this season. Come on, guys! So Daniel Whelan punks it away to Eli Rogers. Will field at his own 35. Makes a couple guys miss and will eventually be brought down. A 41-yard punt, a return of six. So Orlando, after scoring on their opening drive, will come back out on offense. See if they can stack series upon series. No, not having a false start, not talking? having a, a silly penalty. This is a very clean opening series for Orlando. Flank left in motion. Liz stay Cancun F wheel. I'm on, ready? We gotta go, we gotta go. Set on. What any? Eli Rogers in motion here on first down. Dormady look in his direction. He can't come down with a one-handed grab. That was Dewan Neal in coverage. I bet Quentin Dormady wishes he could have that one back. He had an open Eli Rogers down the sideline there, and he just missed and threw it high to a five foot ten Rogers. Twins right, scat right, scat right, scat right. On one. Doug. 180! Second and 10, DC rushing for Dormady. Finds the hole in the zone. That's Charleston Rambo. And early on, this Orlando offense moving the ball. Yeah, and they've had some intermediate throws that have been big chunk plays. And again, Quentin Dormady on time. Back set, good platform, drives the ball into the hole. Scat right, scat right, on one, on one. See, I don't know if I would huddle here. I would continue on the pace. Side that had DC on their heels. Just picked up 17 yards, first and 10. Dormady going deep. Oh, what a catch! You can't be serious! Just outrunning the defense, KD Cannon, and that was on Michael Joseph of all people. A 41-yard touchdown strike. And how about it? Orlando takes the lead. Tank right bunch. Hey, You'll see pass. him right here, and he's just going to go vertical Tank and just left. run by. Look at the cushion right that 15 bunch. Michael Joseph Tank has. Gone he's just going to run right by him in a I'm wonderfully ready. thrown football. And Katie Cannon just arrived to this organization on Monday. Terrell right. Buckley, the head coach, referenced. This is a guy that's brought some juice to our offense, getting off to a quick start tonight. Going for one from the two. Dormady flushed out of the pocket to the right, scrambling, trying to find anyone open. Dormady throwing across his body. And it is tipped away incomplete. The try no good, and Thula Kelly got his hand on it on defense. Unsuccessful. How about this start for Orlando? Winless on the season. Let's send it down to Taylor. Yeah, Katie Cannon joins me now. A huge reception for you for that touchdown. How'd that one feel? It felt good being out here. You know, I've been hurt for two months, so it felt real good. I saw your celebration coming out of the end zone. Speed kills. This speed kills, he said. This team is eager to get in the win column. With a start like this, you gain momentum. How do you continue? We just got to keep capitalizing on our big plays. How's it feel to be back out there? That injury behind good. you, right? It feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's what the XFL is about. Terrell Buckley yeah. has tried to change things up. He oh. told us this week he's trying to do anything different to get the first win for Orlando. I mean, everything. If a meeting started at 8 the previous six weeks, it now started at 8.30. The coaches would ride in the front of the plane on road trips. Now they're riding in the back of the plane. Anything to get out of this funk, he's trying it. Brandon Smith, he is popped on the return as soon as he crossed the 30. And I'm telling you, Orlando is bouncing around right now. They got tons of life. You gotta take a look at this, though. They're looking at the thumb of starting quarterback. 
Quentin Dormady. I can tell you haven't played that position. You've got a Band-Aid on your thumb, on your throwing hand. It is going to alter your grip. See if he starts picking up a ball and seeing how he can handle that. Is DC now trailing? Unfamiliar territory for the defenders. Trying to set up a screen to Hammond, and that one goes nowhere. Just a gain of one. Terrence Plummer was in there with CJ Holmes. Trips right, trips right. Linda, Linda, Linda. Linda, Linda, Linda. Let's go, let's go. Pick it up, pick it up. Linda, Linda. You hear Tomo saying, go, pick it go. up. He wants to speed up ready, the pace ready. now for DC. Armstead gets the carry, breaks through two tackles. I mean, it should have been a gain of maybe one. Texas Eventually right. picks up Texas seven. Right. Texas right. Texas right. 22 duo. Okay, 22 duo. 22 duo. 22, 22. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So this Kept is either going to be an inside here run here to the right or a quick screen right, based right. on the look down to the receivers. Third and one. Armstead back on the ground, shifting through that hole, picks up the first down, brought Spread down at right. the 44. Spread right, right, Spread right, Spread right. Philly yellow, Philly, Philly yellow, Philly yellow. Z cross, Philly Z yellow. cross. Philly yellow, Z cross, Philly yellow, Z cross. Here we go, here we go. Left to right, read. Ready, ready. Zach, go. So he looks left, throws there right away. Tamu completes trips right, it. Trips right. Linda, Linda, Linda. Briley Moore is tight end to gain a six. Efficient, ball out of the hand quickly. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. See another run here. Second and four, here comes the pressure, gets rid of it. Back to Briley Moore. Harry, how about this tempo on offense by DC? Texas. Yeah, that's left. one of the Texas, things Texas, that Texas, Frank Heist wants to do. He wants to go tempo. 20, he feels that if 20, the offense 20, can get you tired, 20, at some 20, point you're going to make a mistake, you're going to misfit, go, someone's going to not pay attention, and they're going to take advantage of it. Right, so right. he wants to go tempo as Back much up. as possible. Yeah, and sometimes you just don't get lined up correctly. First and 10, Abram Smith. They bring him down. A couple weeks ago, he broke a huge one, gotten by that last defender, picks up 22. Now, you referenced his patience earlier, but look at when he sees a crease. Boof! There is that burst that he has, and he gets a full, a full head of steam. And look at the forward lean with his pad level, particularly at the end of this run. He just gained by lowering his shoulder another three or four yards through the air. Matt Elam just saved the touchdown hey. right there. Free safety, oh, making that tackle. You have an injured player, Jacoby Jones, back to his feet as he gets off to the sideline. Here we go. Ken's right, 29. I was going to kill him. Clock runs under six minutes here in this first quarter. Orlando with a 12-8 lead over undefeated DC. Armstead gets the carry over that left side. Good run on first down, picks up about five. Terrence Smith there with the tackle. This is where I think DC is, is yeah, really efficient. Yeah, yeah. Is Ken's right. Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. Lenny, they, Lenny they'll Lenny. line up, call a play, run the play. They're not always trying to get in the perfect go, play. They're not taking a bunch of time at the line of scrimmage. They just trust what they're going to do, and they do it well. Fake the handoff to Armstead. Pressured in his face. Tamu gets rid of it. Ball comes out. Did they give him the catch? It is completed to Briley Moore, but Tamu yeah. took a shot at the end of that one. Dubs. Coming off of the naked here. and Nice job right there from Orlando. 48 to Quain Blakely by holding off, not following through on that hit. Ninth play of the drive coming up for DC. Brings up a big third and five. Ready, ready. Back up. Damu scanning left, back over the middle, completes to Hammond, and Hammond will have enough for a first down. He's in. Hey, hey. Skins left, skins left. 29, 29. They love this inside outside zone play. We're going to have 29 going right over here. All right, to your left. Here we go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Got the option to check it right if he right, sees right. the numbers are correct. First and goal for DC, Abram Smith. That left side, it's been opening up. Smith sees the end zone. 
And he stepped out a couple yards short. Twins. Twins right. Twins right. Alaska. Twins right. Twins right. Twins right. Go Alaska, Alaska. Here we go, here we go. Second and goal from the one. Smith in the backfield with Tamu. Go in the center. 29. 29. Here we go. They're bread and butter. Tamu now under center. Finds his guy, Abram Smith, will walk into the end zone. DC retakes the lead. So McCrane slipped on his last kickoff. As his footing there, boots this one away to Eli Rogers. Fields at the nine, throwing it across the field now. Trying to get something going. That was Jordan Thomas, the tight end, eventually brought in. <clears throat> Take a listen to, to Buckley on that docuseries, Player 54. Special teams fiasco. Who told you to go in and win? TC did only work with the giant with all week. This is the XFL. We keep it real here. <laughs> First and 10 for Orlando, and Jermaine Martin goes nowhere. Harry, what's the update on our guy, Mike Maietti, the center for DC? Yeah, guys, he's going to be out for the rest of the game with a left knee injury. It's a huge blow to them because the foundation of this offense is that offensive line. He is the leader. But last time he went out, Ty Clary stepped in, and he did a very, very good job, guys. Yeah, he certainly did, Harry. and. Um, it's so unfortunate, but they've played a lot with Ty Clary because of Mike Maietti's previous injury, so hopefully we won't see a reduction in production. It's TJ Stormit. He just started grabbing at his right shoulder and asked him to be sub. taken out of that game. You can see him. Something definitely uncomfortable with the right tackle for Orlando. TJ Stormit was a, a DC defender up until three weeks ago. Please reset up. the play clock to 10 seconds. Thank you. Getting traded here to Orlando. You know how important the offensive line okay. here is in the XFL. Oh. It is a premium okay. position. David Davis. So Jalen Spady will go in and replace him with right tackle. Dormady looking to throw. Will dump it off. Oh, <laughs> intended for his running back. Tip to Eli Rogers for the completion. Again, a six. He tipped to Eli Rogers and not tipped into the waiting hands of a DC defender. Literally. Twins left, scat left. Oh, oh. Cancun, why spot? Scat left, scat left, scat left. Sometimes you need to catch a break when you're 0 6. Absolutely. Maybe the tide's turning a little bit here. Hey, easy, easy. Alert, alert. Hey, fetch, fetch. Here we go, here we, we go. Approach hey, two right. minutes to play here in this first quarter. Third down for Orlando. DC bringing the blitz, airing it out downfield. And Rodgers can't bring it in. It was dumped in perfectly over his shoulder. Michael Joseph was there in coverage. This is a remarkable throw by Quentin Dormady. Puts it right where it needs to be. And Harry, the over-the-shoulder focus on the vertical ball. What's the most difficult part of tracking that throw? Well, actually tracking the football. That is the hardest catch, I believe, in football. Is a football that's over your shoulder, tailing away from you, but that's why coaches preach eyes to the catch. Always put your eyes to the ball. Mac Brown punting it away. And Josh Hammond will make the return into Orlando territory. A return of 18. 120 to play here in this first quarter. Are you surprised by the score right now? 14 to 12, DC on top. A little bit, but again, in, in watching Orlando and seeing them as seeing their personnel, it's not as if they don't have some good players. They have good players, but they haven't played smart. They haven't played well. You come out, you start playing well, and DC's had some penalty here issues, go, go. and all of a sudden you find yourself in a dogfight. Here we go. Here we go. Well, here we go. Good starting field position for DC. Right right. Back up. Smith and Armstead both back there. That's De'Eric King. 
about King and Ta'amu on the field at the same time? Let's send it down to Taylor. Here we go, here we go. Well, guys, you were talking about the differences just in the demeanor of ready, this ready. Orlando team. Harry ready, and I actually spoke with Coach Buckley before the game, and he said he had seen that pregame. He said they just are carrying themselves on, differently. Right. We've approached the week differently. He really felt like this was going to be the narrative today. Taylor, what, what's the energy look like, though, from a body language standpoint on Orlando's sideline? Yeah, it's been solid. A, a lot of communication, a lot of encouragement. I actually heard someone say, I believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Like, there's a lot of camaraderie down here. And look, I think when your back is against the wall at this point of the season, you turn to each other, and, and they haven't crumbled. I, I haven't seen it down here at all. Good stuff, Taylor. Picked up the first down. That's for Krell Armstead. And final seconds here in this first quarter, 15 seconds left. Let's see if DC elects to run another play here. Say Tomo telling his guys, let's go, let's go. Seven seconds to play in the quarter. Orlando bringing the pressure, getting away to Lucky Jackson, and that'll be the last play here in this first quarter. De'Eric King in at quarterback for DC on second and six. He gives it to Abram Smith, and that is blown up in the backfield. Checking on an injury update for Orlando Taylor. Yeah, guys, we saw Stormont leave the field. It seemed like he was favoring that right arm. Well, he was in the tent for quite some time. He has now been taken to the locker room for further evaluation. I'm told it is an upper body injury, and he is now listed as questionable. And look, this offensive line has shifted a lot this season. Quentin Dormady told me that they focus so much on communication this week, so another big blow. All right, good stuff. De'Ara King up the middle, showing you what he can do with his wheels. A 23-yard pickup on the ground. <laughs> He's so dangerous. Takes the snap here, and then it's just a sit, wait, pause. You've got lead draw, number 18. Their tight end comes in up the middle. And now you've just got the defense for Orlando outnumbered with that extra blocker and the quarterback being used as a runner. It's been lethal Time for this Guardians. offense all year long. First a half. late substitution for Orlando, forcing them seconds. to call a timeout on defense, not to get caught off guard. They've been very fortunate not to have many injuries. King still in there at quarterback, keeps it himself. And he'll be dropped for a loss of one. Let's listen into. Tony Carter, defensive coordinator for Orlando. Hey, same call. S same call, same call, same call, same call, same call. Stretch is coming. Same call. De'Eric King under center. Hands off to Armstead. And when it works on defense, just run it back. Well, and, and you heard Tony Carter. They, they knew it was coming, right? Watch the stretch. That's another term for outside zone. So far today, D.C. four of five on third downs. They've got a third and nine with De'Eric King in at quarterback. Here comes the pressure. King gets away, throwing across his body. End zone. No way! You cannot be serious. Briley Moore with the touchdown reception. De'Eric King. King. What a Houdini. Right toe dragging. Yeah. I'm looking at the left foot for two. Really, yeah, Look at De'Ara King. This is the value yeah, at, that's what I'm looking at. Here you know. of an athletic quarterback. Slow down. Dash. We're looking at it. Slow down. We're looking okay. at this. It's really right. close. Left hash. Okay. Left hash. Okay. Going for two. Left hash for two when, that, when we come back. I think the, we got to toe down. Yep. Toe down. Control then. Okay. We're clear. We're clear. The score is clear. The right toe is Wow. Down. So Dean Bandino confirming that touchdown call. Briley Moore, his first touchdown catch on the season. Tiamo cannot get the snap off as the play is ruled dead. Coach called timeout. Coach called timeout, Dean. Did you hear Fred Kais? Snap the ball, snap the ball, snap the ball, because he doesn't want the Guardians, I'm sorry, anything to be reviewed. He doesn't yeah. know what we just saw. And so he, he's, in his mind, it could be taken away. Timeout, Orlando. They're second and a half, 30 seconds. He's out. He's out. 
So Buckley, Buckley is looking at the Jumbotron in the stadium, but he does not know that Dean Blandino back in the command center has already looked at this and cleared it as a touchdown. And, and he should know and be aware that this has already been looked at. It's a touchdown that was... Look how many screens Dean is looking at right now. He's not going to miss this call. Hey, Dean, just out of curiosity from your perspective, how on top of this should the coaching staffs be in terms of knowing that on a call like this you've already looked at it no question we've told the coaches when it's reviewable catch no catch involves the boundary the end line we're looking at that and right if there's an issue we're gonna stop the game we slowed it down we wanted to see the different looks able to see that the toe was down so coach Buckley knows if he challenges this he's gonna lose it got it appreciate that Dean so DC will go for two from the five Tamu in at quarterback looking left the whole way completes it and the two-point conversion is good Alex Ellis Matt McCrane kicks things away Frederick Thomas set to receive it fields it at the two cannot make that first guy miss gets out of bounds a return of 18 so if you look at back at what Terrell Buckley was looking at from his perspective in the stadium He's not necessarily seeing hey, that, okay? Right, he's focused right, on that, right. and if he's looking at that foot, he said, oh, he's out of bounds, he's out of bounds. But from the other angle, you can clearly see that go down first, and that's not the angle he was seeing in the stadium. So see, you can see why the coaching staff's going, I don't know, that looks like it's out of bounds. But as Dean Blandino referenced, the coaches should know on a catch, no catch, that's automatically getting reviewed. And remember, you just need one foot in bounds for it to be a completed catch. Bounty flag. 81. False start. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That's Jordan Thomas. And this is and this is again what has plagued them. Jordan Thomas came in with Katie Cannon. He's one of their newcomers Same last play. Monday. Same play. Same play. All one on one. Coach Buckley likes him as a kind of a well rounded blocker who can receive type of tight end. First and 15 after the penalty. That'll be Jermaine Martin on the ground. 11 Bulldog. 11 Bulldog. Reggie Northrup up there on the Bulldog. stop along with Karan Reed. On left. Bulldog, Bulldog. On left. Out of Aggie X ditch. Aggie X ditch. Gone left. Gone left. I want Ready? You hear him say gone left. That's the protection. Everybody else on the offense is getting that in their helmet from Shane Matthews. What did he? What did he? Second and 14, DC on defense, dropping back in coverage. On the ball. Hendrick on Thomas on the, ball. On the, ball. the soft the ball. spot, a short gain. Reggie Northrup put the tackle. Hey, red ball. Right, red ball. Red, red ball. Red ball. Twins left. Twins left. Twins left. Twins left. Twins left. Easy, easy. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Motion wide dragster. Motion hey, scout wide right. dragster. Scout right. Scout right. Scout right. Come on, Eli. Sarah, Third and Sarah. eight coming up for Orlando. That's Rogers, the man in motion. He goes over the middle, crossing the other way. Completion is Cody Latimer. Here we go, on the ball, on the ball. On the what ball. a great drawn up play. Oh, Michael ball. Joseph there Twins. with the tackle. Twins left. Black, give me black, X Hitch, Ohio. Black. X Hitch, Ohio. Black, black. You got N. Sarah, Sarah. Thomas picks up the block, the running back. The pass is complete. They gain another five yards with Cody Latimer. You see the leadership of Quentin Dormady telling his running back the protection. He's dialed into the scheme, dialed into the offense. Ace left, Seattle F stop. Seattle F stop. Ace left, ace left. David Davis, huh? Wait, Andy! Wait, that's... Dormady will step go, go, go. up in the pocket, will take off himself, oh, man, and will slide oh, one oh, yard oh, short oh, of the first, first down marker, picks up three.
They need a yard. Twins right, Bison right. Let's bring in Harry. Right. Twins right, Bison right, Bison right, Bison yeah, right. Yeah, I think Quentin Dormady is doing a great job of throwing with anticipation, which is very imperative at the quarterback position. Anticipating things happening Sarah, Sarah. versus a quarterback yeah. having to see it happen instead. So great job by Quentin Dormady getting the ball out on time, throwing with anticipation and deciphering coverage. Yeah. Mark, go ahead. I'm sorry, John. No, go for it. Martin uh, picked the first down there. Yeah, I think, you know, when you're reacting late to what you're seeing, everything's going to be off. Nothing's going to be in rhythm. You're going to be out of sync. And I would agree with you, Harry. I think he's gotten the ball out of his hand really nicely, and he's direct and trapped right. well at getting his players lined up. Ditch. Scout right, ditch. Oh, I see Hey, scout right, scout right. Touch. Wait, Andy. Wait, touch. Dormady with time, loads. How about Rodgers? Nice little shifty move, picks up an extra couple yards. Neal on the stop, eight yard gain. Rodgers was one of the premier receivers for this DC defender team in 2020. Went into the draft, got taken by Orlando and is really, really quick, really good out of the slot. Harry, what, what do you call that move after the catch to get the extra couple yards there? Shake them, bake them, cake them, whatever you want to name it. <laughs> I love it. There's Rodgers in motion again across the formation, handing off. Somehow breaking through every single arm tackle. Jermaine Martin gets that first down. All right, here's that shake them, bake them, whatever that move was. Right here. Boop. That's B button. <laughs> Pride of Louisville, pride of the University of Louisville, uh, Harry. Different breeds at Louisville. <laughs> why why you gotta get, why you gotta get Harry started on Louisville? Gone right, gone right. You know better than that. I'm a rep hard, guys. <laughs> Ninth play of the drive coming up for Orlando. Empty backfield for Dormady. Throwing. When you give him time, he's going to find his receivers all game. But he always makes his own time, too, because it's hard to rush him because the ball, he's very similar to what Houston was the first four to five weeks. Tough to rush the Regular quarterback because the quarterback 11. protects himself oh, and his offensive line by not holding on to the football. You got a headset? Yeah. I know Orlando is 0-6. This just yeah, no, looks no, no, no. and feels like a completely hey, different uh, team. They've got confidence, Ace right? Ace right, Ace right. right? You got, got some energy. Curl, curl, curl. Sarah, Sarah, touch. Dormady dumps it down, but incomplete. Was looking for the running back, Darrington. Wholesale changes on defense for DC as a third and six coming up. Diamond, here we go. Listen up, Diamond. Ram single. Ram single press. Ram single press. Look where this guy's lined up right there. Look how far off the ball he is. And when, when they line up and say single press, they mean it, man. They're not letting anybody off the ball. They're in cover one, man coverage with a deep, deep free safety. Handoff, not happening. Darrington gets dropped for a loss. Anthony Hines just exploded into the backfield. A loss of five. Yeah, he's been a fixture within this linebacking it's core. Good. It's a five-yard net if we miss it. And they just flat out don't block him. Poorly executed in the offensive line that time from Orlando. On a critical hand third down. The ball, the hand. This is a waste of yards. Dormady wanted them to go for the field goal. Instead, they're going to punt it away. And a fair catch called for by Hammond. Welcome back to Orlando, D.C., with a 10-point lead here in the second quarter. Jordan Tom, who comes back on the field, but you got to throw back to the last touchdown by D.C. Derek yep. King, at the end of this play, goes airborne, takes a shot. Harry, what can you tell us about De'Eric King right now? Yeah, guys, right after that fantastic play by De'Eric King, he went inside the tent to be evaluated for a concussion. I just seen him go inside the locker room to be evaluated e even further. So that's where we are right now with the Eric King. Appreciate that. Abram Smith up the gut. <laughs> he is fired up. The XFL's leading rusher picks up 16 more. 22, 22 duo. Right down the middle. This is 22. Inside zone, as we've talked about. What a well executed play at the point of attack for DC. Screen pass to Hammond. 
DC has not been effective with the screen so far today. The defense sniffed that one out again. Let's take a look at the numbers for Abram Smith so far today. Over 75 yards already here in this first half. Look at that average yards per carry. No, let's just give it to number four. We'll get a first down just about every time. DC crowding the box on defense. They know the run is coming. And Smith. Are you hearing that? I love having the running back mic. It's the best part. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So Smith will get a breather on the sideline. Raquel Armstead will come in at running back for DC on third and four. Ready, ready. Back up. Empty backfield. Tom Moo passes batted down incomplete. Passes Terrence incomplete. Plummer got his hand on it on defense. That's a huge stop. A huge stop for Orlando. You have DC backed up. Don't give any ground. Hopefully you're going to get a nice return. And if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. Really, really well done from Terrence Plummer. <laughs> Terrell Buckley. <laughs> Even he's got a different swagger he about does. him today. Eli Rogers is the deep man set to receive this punt by Daniel Whelan. Rogers will field it. Throwing across the field now. Orlando getting tricky with it. Trying to get a return set up to Charleston Rambo. And good field position. Well, it's been a roller coaster of a season for Orlando, especially at quarterback. Quentin Dormady, the third quarterback used. He started his career at Tennessee. Finished it at Central Michigan, where he threw for over 2,000 yards in 2019. He was released by the Guardians on March the 2nd, reportedly for giving opponents his own team's playbook. What? Yeah, it sounded crazy to us, too. He was reinstated after his name got cleared, added to the active roster. And Taylor, for Quentin Dormady, this is huge just to be able to clear his name. It really is. I talked to him this week, and he was really candid about the whole situation. He said, look, it was frustrating. Now when you Google my name, that's what comes up. But he said that it's been so gratifying to be back with his team, back on the field. He feels like he's been playing effectively. And Coach Buckley said it took him about five minutes to assimilate back with his teammates in the locker room. But it's been tough on him. He's honest about it. Taylor, that's all. Awesome. I mean, Tom, think about it. I'm you have you the, Google I'm your sign. name, okay. and the first thing that comes yeah. up is a negative story. Oh, it's, and it's and it's one that can stay with you forever. Seventeen, five-yard penalty, still first down. How do you shake that? And by the way, let's commend not just Quentin Dormady there, the offensive line for Orlando. Hard count. Please Everybody stays poised. When we were here three weeks ago, that was a an illegal procedure penalty, no question. So after the offsides, first and five for Orlando. Darrington, the running back, now at the bottom of the screen, looking left. Dormady throws a missile on the money, completes that to Dan Williams. It'll bring up second and short. You know, you also got to credit the powers that be at the XFL to really investigate, right. figure out what exactly happened in order to reinstate Quentin Dormady. Yeah, you have to make sure with that type of allegation, you have to be right. No, just line up like that. Go out. All right, there we go. Dormady directing up traffic out there. there. Telling Eli hey. Rogers to get set up on second and one. Handing up. No, he keeps it himself. Dormady calling for blockers. Spun down by Santos Ramirez. Love the play call. Love the play call. He's not generally a running threat. What are you going to do? Pull it. All you got to do is get a couple. Here comes the tempo. Sarah, Sarah. Who is Sarah? <laughs> Come on, fella. Formation wasn't ever set. 83 was still moving. False start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That is Dan Williams with the penalty. So is Sarah kind of. Is Sarah kind of like Omaha? 
Well, Sarah would be, so sometimes you get a one-word play call where right, everything's right. included. Hey, turkey, it's turkey, turkey, it's turkey. memorized by everybody. So go the protection right. is in there, the pass routes are in there, and it's to simplify and go fast so you're not okay. using a lot of verbiage. All right, I like it. So the penalty will back him up five yards, first and 15. Oh, he moved, he moved. Throw it Another up. penalty flag. Martin. And you hear Terrell Buckley, head coach for Orlando. He wanted to take a shot because he felt like it's offsides. 95. Good job. Lined up. Lined up or in? In. He jumped across. Okay. Neutral zone infraction. He's going to take that. that um, offsides. Defense number 95. Five yard penalty. KD is Let's not the game. Down. That's 10. Okay. Give me a back. That's Terrell Owens offsides for DC. Scott Wright. Scott Wright. Scott Wright. David, David. Touch. Under three minutes to play here in this first half. Wait, AD. Wait, touch. Here comes the blitz. Dormady doesn't get rid of it, and he'll be sacked. And Thula Kelly coming in on the pressure for DC. A loss of nine. Take a look at it. Look at the right side of your screen. They're just going to overload the field side. And they've got three for three, Go but they don't have four. a fourth for four in terms of blocking the free rusher 24 back. coming through the C gap right there between the guard and the tackle. And that was David, all simulated really pressure. Guys sugar hubbling from D.C. about the line of scrimmage. Tough to know who's coming. D.C. with a 22 to 12 lead here. In the second half, they're getting after him again. And that is in. They call a fumble, actually. So it looked like it should have been an incomplete. There's a fumble recovered by the offense. Yeah, I think Dean's going to have to take a look at this one. That's incomplete. With the receiver in the area. Incomplete pass with the receiver in the area. We're going to give you the clock. Right here. Yeah. So we're going to go incomplete. 157 on the clock. It's going to be third down. The play has been reviewed. The pass right? is incomplete. It's third down. Please reset the game clock to 1 minute 57 seconds. 157. Twins right. Twins right. Twins right. Ace right. Ace right. Ace right. It's imperative that Orlando somehow come away with some points. Get Try and get half of this back. Make David a decision David. whether you want to go for it or potentially kick a field goal. Orlando gets the ball coming out of the locker room. Third and a mile. Dormady stepping up over the middle, completes it, making a move. That's Rambo again. Still moving, cuts it back. Brought down in the red zone, a first down and then some. 31 yard pickup on third and a forever. Way to hang in there, Quentin Dormady. Find the pocket work, eyes downfield, and at the last second, deliver a strike. Well done. They're going quick on the ground. Penalty flag is coming in as Darrington is turning, brought down at the five. But let's see what that penalty is. Think about it. Under two. Holding. Offense, number 59. Ten-yard penalty. Replay first down. That's on the center, Xavion Furkron. Bunch right, bunch right motion, ace left, ace left, ace Pay left, Pay attention, left. okay, automatic front, okay, Tokyo, automatic front, Tokyo, make the ball right. check down. White 80, White 80. First and 20, Dormany, he's looking for everything, incomplete, he had Latimer, but a flag comes in. And defense number 29, one yard line. Yes. I, I won't, I won't, hey. Pass interference, defense Flank number right. 29. Flank right. Ball replaced at the one Under yard center. line. Under center. First down. Flank right, bison wow. right. That was Kentrell right. Bryce right. Yeah. hitting the helmet of Latimer. Okay. Okay. Right. I call Oki on the field, Oki. Bison right, bison right, I'm under. David, David. Cheat the back, Sam single, press stop. Cheat the back, Sam single, press stop. David, David. The penalty will set up first and goal for Orlando. They run into each other. Darrington 
and miscommunication between the running back and quarterback. Buckley can't believe it. They were at the one yard line and they're now backed up to the nine. And, and this is why Terrell Buckley's so frustrated. You, and you see it in his body language. You're on the one yard line and you just. Hank right in motion. Go on right, go on right. Hank right in motion. We're pivoting out here for one. We got four. He... Sneak the ball in there. Over here. H wheel, H wheel, H wheel. Play clock's winding down. It's at three. Second and goal. They get it off. Dormady. Pump fake. Throws over the middle. Tackled down at the two is Jalen Smith, the tight end. Tank right. Tank right. Hey, Nike, Nike, Nike. Orlando has one timeout remaining. They're choosing not to use it. Quarterback sneak. They're pushing him. He is not in there. Mark inches short of the goal line. It'll bring up fourth. You got to call timeout here, Terrell Buckley. Let's talk this over. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's reset the game clock to eight seconds. The clock will start on the snap. So Buckley's no, gonna wait to use his final timeout. What, Chris? What'd you say? Okay. Yeah. The ball was kicked by no, one of the defenders. It. Hey, we all out like of the spot. Inch. So inch. if you want a timeout at one three, inch. he was going to take a timeout at three. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what is, what is, hey, we got to push it. We got to push it. We got to push it. Yep. Tight end. Yep. We're well, look, I'm looking at the cars. I've got the defense. I've got him down short. Man, I wanted to take a timeout. That's my best look. This is their final timeout of the half. There you go. We put it. Seconds, you're going to call a timeout at three seconds, right? So he stopped it because the ball was kicked. Orlando took their last timeout. Managed to for them. So, so we put it in three seconds. I looked, I looked at everything. We we've, we've got nothing definitive, so we can't so put the ball in the end zone. Hold the snap. Okay, fine. And you're out of timeout. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, hey y'all got the push. Yeah, Get I've in got there. a knee. We don't have the ball. Get in there. Sneak. Get in there. All cold. Do you like Orlando's decision to not use that timeout on third down and go for it? I, I don't have any issue with that. Um, I, I just think you take the timeout to settle down to get the best possible play that you can. And on, on third down, they had a, a wealth of options, right? And they tried to get the sneak. It was really, really close. Look at this formation. The sneak at the goal line. Orlando's in there. Touchdown, Guardians. Quentin Dormady kept it himself. What a ball game here in Orlando. There you go. Let's Woo. go, baby. Wow. Let's see it from this angle here down the line. Ooh, what the question is going minute. to be. Wait a minute. Was that knee down, his right knee down, okay. before that ball crossed the plane? So I'll let you know. Far handheld is my shot, right? So we're gonna we're gonna look at that, we're gonna look at that far handheld. And what I'm looking at is the right leg, Dormandy's right leg. When the shin is down, I'm trying to see where the ball is. I've got a ball in the right hand, but I don't have to look right down the line good, to say for certain. Let me know if we've got anything else. Yeah, double check. Let me know if we've got anything else. Okay. We're going to let it stand. After review, the ruling on the field stands. After review, the ruling on the field stands. After review. The ruling on the field stands is called No, that's, what it's that's why I didn't use the timeout. I did. That was the timeout. So Orlando electing to go for two here at the five-yard hey, line. Hey. Woo. That's why they call it a game of inches. Dedrick Thomas, the man in motion, now will come to a set in the slot. Dormady scanning. Still has time, and time runs out. Hey, right. Joe go. Wallace Let's in go. there, two-point conversion, go. no good. As we get set to kick off here in this third quarter, John Schriffen alongside my partner, Tom Lugamil.
Taylor Davis, Harry Douglas on the sidelines. We are pleased to be joined with you here in Orlando. Both teams will line up five yards apart for this kickoff. They will be able to release as soon as the ball is caught. Thomas is the deep man for Orlando. As Matt McCrane getting set, placing the ball on the tee to get this second half started. Well, one thing we've seen from Orlando in the kicking game is a little razzle-dazzle. We've seen some throwbacks and some stuff that's gained them some extra yards and field position. See what we could expect here. Thomas will field. Everybody's set to go. Cuts it back over the middle. Finding a seam. Making dudes miss. Looking for some blockers. And Thomas pushed out of bounds in D.C. territory. What a return. 46-yard return, and Orlando, good field position to start this third quarter. Great field position, momentum. You've got energy in the stadium, energy on the sideline. This first drive of the third quarter, so critical for the confidence of this Orlando offense. Take a look at the quarterback comparison for both starting quarterbacks, Tamu and Dormady. Dormady, 166 yards in the air in that first half. Yeah, really the completion percentages for both signal callers very strong here tonight. There's Jermaine Martin on the ground. And Martin was in the most recent docu-series, Player 54, talking about, we feel like we've been slept on. And that's for a variety of reasons. But he's one of the guys very vocal, talking about how they want to turn things around here in the season. I think he realizes that they've got some pretty good players and that they've made some roster moves that have improved their roster. It's just about not making mistakes. That's what it comes down to with this team. There's the penalty flag. Dormady knows he's got a free play. His receiver fell down. That was Katie Cannon Offside. who fell down. 39, 39. Offside in the neutral zone. Defense number 39. Five yard penalty. We play second down. Santos Ramirez for DC. We're seeing unusual penalties for we defenders. Are. Yeah. Good white, good white. This has not been their style of play. He outside. He outside. He outside. Throw it. Throw it. Oh, he put another penalty. Come on, T-Buck. You're a defensive back. You don't call a penalty on that. <laughs> Second and two on the ground with Martin. And he has stopped short. You hear his head coach, Buckley, saying, stop bouncing. Because he bounced, he didn't get to that first down oh. marker. Get Take a look at the now. live line according to Caesar Sportsbook. See, see DC favored by seven and a half. We have a player down. That's the running back, Martin. You a little surprised by that live line? I am very surprised, especially by the way Orlando's been moving the ball. I tell you what, I, I agree with Terrell Buckley here. You got a 230-pound back. You stick your foot in the ground, and you get north and south. Trying to bounce the play, the play to the perimeter, Michael Joseph with the low tackle there. That's the type of back Jemay Martin is, is north and south. All right, Harry, we are both surprised up here in the booth by that live line, DC minus seven and a half. What do you think? Which side would you be on? Well, it depends on past history. What we've known from Orlando is that they're going to figure a way to not get it done. That's just the past. Not saying that's going to happen today. Right. That may play something into it as well. Well, and how strong the second half, too, Harry, has been for D.C. throughout each of the first six weeks in terms of closing games out. I agree with you, Tom. Third and short for Orlando. Darrington gets through that hole with a speed bar spinning free. Brought down just shy of the 25, a gain of 11. This is what Terrell Buckley is saying when he's saying, go, go, get downhill, fit through the crease. Got a nice little jump cut in the hole there. Darrington, he, he started this off in the last couple of weeks, really kind of becoming the go-to back. He's got spark, he's got some juice. And you can see the ability to make people miss there, too. So Vegas feels like Orlando might fall apart. Taylor, what are you seeing on the sideline? What are the guys saying to each other for Orlando? 
there was so much intensity in that locker room, but out here, it's a lot more calm. It's almost composure and poise. That they're really focused on the task at hand, but uh, I mean, there was a lot of emotion in that locker room, I'll tell you that. You can sense how bad Orlando wants to get this first win, but Dormady wasn't set to make that throw. That's just, it's just bad footwork. If it's gonna be a rollout, you gotta get your shoulders square, throw through to the target. And he, he, he almost looked like he tried to aim it. And that's why you hear Terrell Buckley there all, all over his quarterback. And he's right. So after the incompletion, it brings up second and 10 for Orlando. Hand it off to Darrington. And Darrington is brought down. That was Santos Ramirez on the tackle. Scat left, Cancun, Y spot. Twins left, scat left, Cancun, Y spot. Let's go. You got a curl. You got right there. Right. Don't wait on him. Hey, check, check dragster. Check wide dragster. Wide dragster. Dragster. Dra They're going to try and get Cody Latimer, number 11, right there at the top of the screen across the field. Right there. Crossing route. They find Latimer, and he does get enough for that first down. And Thula Kelly. Eventually brought him down. See the coolers. They are ready for this temperature as it, nighttime is hitting here in Orlando, so it is starting to cool down a bit. Jermaine Martin, the man in the backfield on first and 10 for the Guardians. They give it to Martin. There's no bounce in there. He's going straight ahead. Yeah, if he wants to stay in the game, I guarantee you, <laughs> there's going to be a downhill approach to number 30's game. I kind of like how Orlando's relying on this offensive line, though. Get wider, 81. Get way wide. Give him a chance here. Look the safety down the middle. Look the safety down the middle. So Dormady's got a key in on the safety for D.C. here on this play. Second and six, looking over the middle, trying to find where that safety is, and said to some dump it off to his running back, Martin. Flat, hot, whistle, Oscar. Flat, hot, whistle, Oscar. Smash F Poco. Double smash F Poco. Now we know the offensive coordinator is talking to his sticks. quarterback. Yeah, Who is Greg Santos. Williams talking to on defense? We so hurry. He's talking to hurry. his linebackers hurry. and his safety people. Get everybody lined up. They've all got it in their helmet. You hear that Poco? It's a term for post corner. Shane Matthews is going to try and get a Timeout. double Orlando. move here on First one of his half. routes. A big third down coming up. Perfect two of two on third downs this drive. Dormady looking end zone left side. What a catch! Cody Lattimore. Excuse me. One, 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 one. That's Jordan Thomas. Jordan Thomas just taking it away. Turn the lights out in the stadium. That's what kind of a catch it was. One, one. That's a six foot six, 277 pound tight end split out to your left. Shane Matthews in the break said, listen, you've got one-on-one. -on -one. Let's take the advantage. And what a spectacular acrobatic play there from the former Mississippi State Bulldog. Go get it, kid. Oh, just jumped over with Joshua yes. Allen. Yeah. 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 One point, one point, one point. Down the road, down the road. Let's see if they you think Coach Buckley's excited? <laughs> they go for one from the two. That's Rodgers in motion. Dormady will hand this to Martin, and he is in there. Yeah. Orlando Let takes a three-point lead here in this third Let's quarter. Go. They're having trouble keeping the Let's lights go. on. Let's That's go. how hot Orlando's right now. Let's Taylor, go. what you got? I'm trying not to get injured by the celebration. What a grab. I heard a lot of expletives from your teammates. How'd that one feel? Oh, man. All oh, glory to God, man. I've been through a lot, man. Let's go, D. I'm grateful for our opportunity. Let's go, D. That's it. 
Oh, I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, guys, the emotion. You know what? That's a real moment right there. Oh. Like, like, I literally just got goosebumps because the XFL is about making dreams happen, keeping dreams alive, and guys who are just so grateful for this opportunity. Jordan Thomas just took advantage of his opportunity. Well, and let's point out, Jordan Thomas, 81, 15 KD Cannon, two players that Terrell Buckley specifically pointed out that they had newly acquired last Monday and felt like they changed their locker room. They gave him some advantages and some mismatch opportunities. We've seen a touchdown from Canada tonight, as well as that spectacular play for the touchdown there from Jordan Thomas. So Orlando kicks it away. DC returning. Pushed out of bounds. And man, you can hear Buckley call for that holding penalty. Here comes the flag. During the return, holding, receiving team number 38, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first and 10. That 81 look good, huh? That 81 look good. I'm a big old dude. <laughs> <laughs> that 81 he's talking about, Jordan Thomas, who just went up and got that for Orlando. And yet another penalty for D.C. They now have twice the amount of penalties Orlando has tonight, 6-3. to three. D.C. finds themselves down by three here in the second half. Abram Smith. Two strikes, two strikes. Here he is, 81. Hey, 51 hammer, Rachel. 51 hammer, Rachel. Here we go, here we go. Right around you. Wow. Jordan Thomas is literally in tears right now on the sideline for Orlando after catching that touchdown. Nothing to be ashamed of, bro. You can let it out, man. We understand when you have gone through some yellow, stuff, yellow, yellow. Yellow, being yellow, able to put on the pads again yellow, and haul in a touchdown on national TV, that's a big moment. You can enjoy it. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Back up. Third and 11 for DC. Damu has a man over the middle. Chris Blair. Get off me. Chris Blair. No one's going to get him. An 86 yard touchdown strike. What a response by DC. That was Balin Buchanan who missed that tackle. Chris Blair would not be denied. Well, they try to bring pressure and they pick it up terrifically. Abram Smith on the right one-on-one -on -one pass protection and a strike down the middle from Jordan Ta'amu. They love this deep in-breaking route. Threw it a ton a week ago in their win against Houston. We've seen it a couple of times here tonight, this time for a touchdown. Touchdown, baby! Touchdown, baby! Yes, sir. DC is back. Right, Krell Armstead goes out to the left. Tamu throwing right. Tipped away. Incomplete. Two-point conversion. No good. That was Wiggins for Orlando getting his hand on it. And just like that, DC back on top by three. Somebody's got a flinch, right? I mean, when, when you have this type of back and forth, I love this because now it's not necessarily going to come down to the plays made. It's going to come down to the mistakes. Who makes mistakes? The man who just caught that touchdown pass, Chris Blair, standing by with Harry. Chris Blair, deep in cut. Not only do you catch it for a first down, you take it to the house. What's that feeling like, bro? I told defense I had him. We've been under some adversity. I told him I was going to make a play for him. And Jordan found the ball, found, uh, gave me the ball. I just had to make a play for my team. I think one thing that's unique about y'all team is that when y'all face that adversity, the highs aren't too high, the lows aren't too low. You guys stay even kill. You take on the personality of your head coach, Reggie Barlow. How was that? How was that happen? Every day at practice, Coach Barlow's always, he always expressed to us that we're going to face adversity. So it's all about how we bounce back from it. Timeout. Um, we knew they were going to be a good team. No matter what they record seconds. say, we knew we were going to face adversity at some point. But at the end of the day, we're DC defenders, and we're going to continue fighting. Thanks, Chris. 
We the DC defenders. That's yeah. a statement right there. 6-0, undefeated team in a fight right now with Orlando. Yeah, and that is not a happy man back, right back, there. Back, man. Just had to call a timeout on a change of possession because they didn't have enough people on the field for their kickoff team. Dedrick Thomas is the deep man. The crane will kick it away to him. Get up, blocks! Once he catches, now both teams can release. Thomas over the left side, hurdles a dude, and will be brought down just shy of the 40, a 38-yard return. All right, a quick strike by DC. If you're Orlando, now how do you respond? I don't think you get too greedy. I think you just do what you've been doing. That's been running the football effectively on the inside and Quentin Dormady getting the ball out of his hands and don't make mistakes. No procedure penalties, no silly penalties. And, and, and use this energy you got, but maintain your composure. Logan Carter lining up as a fullback. He will now sneak out. Dormady on the run. Carter giving him a block. And Dormady will pick up a couple on first down. We've seen that a couple times. Quentin Dormady, he's pretty elusive in the pocket. Not the quickest dude, but he can still pick up some yards. Yeah, he's got enough athleticism to extend the play, get you out of trouble. Twins left, black. Ohio X Hitch. Bambo, get off the ball. God almighty. Dormady asking for another player to come on the field. That was Logan Carter, the tight end. No. And now Orlando's going to have to use another timeout. I got they have delayed. one timeout. timeout left in this half. Prior timeout. to the delay game, timeout Orlando, second of the half. Hey, tell them, don't call a timeout. Hey, take the penalty. Don't call a timeout there. We are, hey, listen. We are going B7. 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 It's 12 Logan, but I don't know who you want hey, in there. Norman, we, we don't call a timeout. Take a look at Orlando Guardians last drive. It started with a good kickoff return. Setting them up in DC territory. They went on the ground. That was Martin. Excuse me, that was Darrington. And then Quentin Dormady will find Cody Latimer. Dormady throwing the jump ball. This was the touchdown grab. Just jumping over the defender, Jordan Thomas. So emotional, he was on tears in the sideline. What a drive put together by Orlando, their last scoring drive. This is Darrington, the running back. Scampers for a first down, crossing into D.C. territory. You know, you heard Shane Matthews, the, the quarterback's coach and play caller, getting frustrated because they don't have the right personnel on the field, right? Yes. They're calling for a tight end late. Or they're calling for an X late. Then they lose a timeout because of it, and it's those types of things Chicago that have plagued them. Flat, X, curl and go. Scat left, scat left, scat left. Watch down here. You heard X, curl and go. So he's going to get vertical, stutter him, and take off again. First and 10 from the 49, dumping it down to Darrington. Darrington, a nice run after the catch. Crosses the 35, knocked down at the 33, a gain of 17. Ramirez on the tackle. Twins right, brown arrow, let's go. Twins Good decision by Dormady here. Doesn't like it on the outside, just dump it off. Check downs, get first downs, man. Going quick, and that's batted away, incomplete. Santos Ramirez got in the backfield and knocked it down. I want B7, B7, B as in football, B7. Second down, Orlando, second down. Santos Ramirez does a really good job there. Pressure, unblocked, get up, deflect the pass, no throwing lane. Harry, last week Santos Ramirez had a pick six, knocking down plays. Is this a guy who can play in the NFL? Yes, it is. Actually, when I talked to Greg Williams, he was he coached in New Orleans a guy named Malcolm Jenkins. Also, when he was with the Washington Commanders, he coached Sean Taylor. He said that Santos Ramirez, he uses those two guys. He uses Santos just like he used those two guys when he coached him on defense. Bryce knocking Jermaine Martin out of bounds, a 19-yard pickup. That's a huge comparison. Let's take a look at that last yep. play. 
I tell you, this offensive line for Orlando, I mentioned it two series ago. This, this is uncharted waters for D.C. on defense. They have not had teams line up and run the football on like this. Orlando in the red zone. Martin hurdles the dude. And really what Harry was getting at there, too, when you talk about Santos Ramirez in those comparisons, is scheme versatility. Sometimes we'll see 38 as a deep half safety, or we'll see him in the deep middle, or that time we'll see him coming off the edge and blitzing. Sometimes he plays in the box. He's one of those guys that can line up anyway. Santos Ramirez out of Arkansas. He's a guy that just wants to be on the field. Yeah. Second and 10 for Orlando. Dormady, pass. Jordan Thomas again with the catch. Marked down at the four, enough for a first down. What are you supposed to do? You have a six foot six, 275 pound tight end lining up over a corner. I, I mean, unless you're gonna walk a safety over and get on top, I don't know how you're supposed to be able to defend that matchup. Reminds me of Kyle Pitts at Florida when he was in college. He lined up, up all over the place. Nobody could cover it like that comparison. On the ground, stopped out his ankles. Darrington doesn't get anything. Gabe hey, Wright was in the backfield to stop it. for a loss. He can't, wait a minute, he can't see it. Get, hey, he can't see it. They're talking about Jordan see. Thomas. He was waving to the sidelines that he's having trouble seeing right now. Thomas 81 at the bottom of your screen for Orlando. Second and goal. Throwing in his direction, and Thomas didn't even jump for it. That's because he was held. Here's the penalty flag. We got multiple flags. We got multiple flags. Okay, so the referee has a dead ball personal foul on 96 of the defense. Okay, and we... So, Dean, two fouls on the defense, one live and one dead. We're going Correct. to the one-yard line for the P.I. and then half the distance. No, 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 we're only going to enforce one. We're only going to enforce one. So, we'll so, just... so the PI to the one PI and decline to the, one. the... Okay. Correct. Hey, what's the number? What's the number? 26. 26. 26. DC 26 Master DPI. Defense, defense number 26. The Personal foul. That's DeWan Neal pass interference. Defense number 96. That penalty's declined. The pass interference is enforced at the one yard line with an automatic first down. Taylor, Jordan Thomas couldn't even see on that last play, but still drew a penalty. Yeah, so he was pointing, you know, to making the hand motions that he couldn't see, and the coaches were like, just stay, just stay, thinking it was a cloudy face mask. Guys, he lost his contact. His contact fell out. He literally couldn't see. There we go at the goal line. Did not get in. Taylor, that is crazy. His contact was out. All right, so they guess he's got to put it back in, but right now he's still on the sideline. There he is, pointing at his eyes. Taylor told us lost his contact. But he had his other eye. For an injured player in the defense. So now he's like a pirate. Well, Taylor told us that Jordan Thomas had lost his contact. He's got it back in. Looks like he's ready to go. Fadal Brown, who was down injured after that last play for DC, he walked up off the field. We are set, ready to play again. Second and goal from the one. We got whistles. We spot the ball. Spot of the ball has been corrected. It was moved forward by the offense in second down. Hey, you're not allowed to do that. You're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> second and goal. Quarterback sneak. And he is in. Quentin Dormady keeps it himself. Back and forth we go. Orlando back on top. Turn out the lights. like what Orlando does here, using that motion to influence the defense, and then Quentin Dormady not just taking it to either side of the center, going ahead and delaying a second and picking a nice little crease to fall over. Loving the quarterback sneak tonight from this Orlando offense. Orlando had 13 rush yards in the first half. They've got almost 50 here in this third quarter. Go for one from the two. Rambo in motion. Dormady 
will hand it off, and Darrington will not get in. But Orlando goes back on top with a 31-28 lead. Week 7 in the XFL wraps up tomorrow right here on ESPN with the Battle Hawks and the Roughnecks at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, also available on ESPN+. Plus. What are you looking for in that game, the last game of the week here in Week 7? I want to see if Houston can get back on track. You know, uh, they've struggled each of the last two weeks, both losses, ironically. They've struggled in the kicking game, had two blocked punts two weeks ago. And then they haven't been able to just produce those explosive plays down the field. And they lost John Trey Kirkland, who was the most explosive player in this league, the first series of the game against Seattle two weeks ago. How do they replace him and get back on track offensively? I, I think St. Louis, when they don't make mistakes, they can play with anybody in this league. Oh, we've, seen it. we've had them. We've had them twice. And what they've done is they've made more mistakes than the other team. Haven't necessarily got beat, so I think it could be a good ball game in Houston. Well, Dallas with the kick. Smith will return it. Finds that seam on the left side, passes the 40, and eventually pushed out of bounds. We'll send it down to Taylor. Yeah, Quinn Dormady is with me now. A couple solid drives ending in the end zone for you guys. What are you seeing out there tonight? I'm seeing things clean. Um, they're bringing some pressure, but we're picking it up and making some plays, and QB sneaking it in. So, uh, <laughs> Just got to keep it going. There's been a lot of intentionality this week. You guys really wanting to get that win. You're close to it. How yeah. do you finish this one off? Got to keep going. We just got to keep scoring points. We're up three right now. Get defense needs to get us to stop and get us the ball back. Let's go score. Thanks, Quinn. Yep. Ready, ready. All right, Taylor, good back stuff. Up. DC with the ball back. Keeping it, throwing it over the middle. Chris Blair with the reception will pick up 12 for a first back, down. Back, like Quell Armstead wanted that football. <laughs> How about the redemption story for Gormady? I know it. Was Great. released reportedly because he was sharing plays with another team, found out that wasn't true. Back on this team, the starter, and he's making things happen. Armstead on the ground, taken down as he crosses midfield. That was Smith on the tackle. They've made fewer mistakes with him leading this team than they had in the previous six weeks. Let's go, let's go. Ready, ready, set, go. Second and seven, it's a quarterback keeper to Amu. We talked to DC this week and Reggie Barlow said Tamu has to make better decisions about when to give it, when to keep it. What a decision there. Great decision right there. And, and just reading the inside defensive tackle, he goes with the backfield action. There's nobody there in the B gap between the guard and the tackle. Now he's throwing it, this one back to Blair. Blair shakes another tackle, eventually thrown out of bounds by Matt Elam. Once again, starting to use some tempo on offense. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you, Terrell Buckley's not going to be happy with this football team. Win or lose, when they watch the tape on defense, it's been a poor tackling effort tonight for Orlando. Ready, ready. Set, go. First and 10 for DC. There's the handoff, Abram Smith. Just running through dudes. Out there looking like a Costco-sized shopping cart. Get out the way. Uh, that's Terrence Plummer, 230-pound middle linebacker right there. Oh. Here we go, here we go. Whoa. Here we go, here we go. Better get a note from your mother. First and 10, giving it back to him. And Orlando will make the stop. Harry, we're talking about all the missed tackles, but is it maybe you got to give more credit to the DC players making guys miss right now? Yeah, you have to. Those guys are very elusive right now. Abram Smith. Abram Smith is running through defenders. You love to see it. Under a minute to play here in this third quarter. Second and 10 for DC. Tamu keeps it batted, incomplete. Was looking for Blair on the slant route. That was Marcus Murphy getting his hand on it for Orlando. That's that staple of this offense. They're either going to give it, quarterback's going to keep it, or they're going to pull it and throw what they call the glance behind it. This job, time, really nice job there by Marcus Murphy, 38, sitting in the window and getting his hands up late. Did he just save a touchdown? Uh, he, very likely, yes. Run, 
Third and ten. They need to get to the one. Tamu looking. End zone. He had lucky Jackson, but Jackson just couldn't find the ball. Gosh, that was strange. Oh, if he lost it in the lights in the opposite corner of the stadium. Number 97 of DC has recruited his eligible. Oh, right there. Number 96 oh. DC has recruited. No, I, I gave him an offer. Troy, Troy, Troy. 97 and 96. Harry, from that vantage point, what happened with Lucky Jackson? We'll, we'll get your perspective when we come back, because that is the end of the third quarter. An interesting play. DC looked like they had a gimme touchdown, but a miscommunication. This will be a 29-yard field goal attempt for Matt McCrane. It's 10 of 12 on the season for DC. Snap is clean, kick, and he shanked it. Just pulled it, left, no good. Episode five of the nine-part docu-series, Player 54, is now available on ESPN Plus. An all-access look at the XFL and its players and coaches that you cannot get anywhere else. Player 54 is on ESPN Plus. I've watched every single episode, and it just keeps getting better and better each week. Guys are getting more comfortable with the cameras yep. around them. They're opening up more. It is a spectacular docu-series. Yeah, I love, I love the fact that it's so um, kind of raw and genuine and you, you know just like we've seen from Jordan Thomas here tonight how important the game is to these guys because you know it these guys are ball players they're yeah. not used to having cameras in their face all the time right. but now they're starting to get comfortable and they're letting their personality show they're letting them know what this game really means to them player 54 check it out ESPN plus Martin just gets back to the line of scrimmage no game how about Quentin Dormady a single game high in the XFL this season. Five total touchdowns. Unreal performance. He's done a really nice job. He's been efficient. He's made good decisions. He's put this offense in position to make plays. And the people around him have made plays. Very few self-inflicted wounds. In fact, that's been reserved for the D.C. defenders here tonight. Second and ten. On the ground. It opens up up the middle. Jermaine Martin. Said, don't sleep on Orlando. We got something to prove. Drew Buckley told him one time, stop bouncing the ball to the outside. So what does Martin do? Sticks his foot in the ground. Guard comes around. Nice job. Hits the crease. North and south. That's the tight end, Cody Latimer. Stood up as he passes the 45, a gain of seven. Right, Corvette F slant. Dan, you got a six yard under. Get wider. Get wider. Get wider. Explain why that's important. Because you want to have the spacing be correct easy, easy, for your easy. routes that are going to mesh together. It's hey, all about Houston, timing and Houston. spacing. Quick ace, Houston. Now he's going to check out of it. Second and two. Throwing, completing, Eli Rogers. Ball comes out and is still loose, and DC jumps on top of it. Turnover, defenders get it back. Yes. recovered by the defense. It's first down. Yep. Joe Wallace with the fumble recovery for DC. This is close. Looking to see the knee. That left knee is the first thing that hits. I've got the ball starting to move before the left knee hits. Let me know if we have anything better. My far hand nail just blocked out. Are we clear yet? We're looking at it. Just slow it down. I'll give you the okay. Sky. Yep. Right there. That's a shot. Low end zone. Piece those two together. It's coming out just as the knee hits. Yep, yep, that's a good look. Okay, we're clear, we're clear. That is an awesome job by Dean Blandino, being able to piece together shots in order to figure out the perfect angle confirming the fumble. Well, and it really makes you realize all the different angles that you've got to have to be able to make the correct success. 
Throw over the middle. In traffic, Jordan Tahamu on the money to Josh Hammond, picks up 20 yards. Man, they love that deep in cutting route. You look at the numbers here. You know, not only do you do you have the takeaways, but you've got touchdowns coming off of those takeaways. Three pick sixes so far on the season. So great complimentary football, offense, defense to kicking game for DC. After a missed field goal, DC gets the ball back on the fumble recovery. They go to the ground. Abram Smith shedding a tackle, diving just short of the 20, picking up eight. Marcus, Marcus Murphy, 38, trying to go low on Abram Smith. And he just tippy toes right over it. Second and three, here comes the blitz, picking it up perfectly. The quick throw is complete. That's Alex Ellis right, for a right. first down. 23 right, lock, right. squirrels. 23, 23 lock, squirrels. Here we go, here we go. It's clean. Ready, ready. There go. First and 10 on the ground is Armstead. And, and we're looking at offensive coordinator Fred Kais and Harry. Personnel. It's been incredible that he personnel. talked about the HBCU, how important that was to his development as an offensive coordinator. 23, Z Glance. Yeah, in his 25 year career coaching, all of those have been at HBCUs. And I asked him what led him there. The first thing that he mentioned to me was God. And he said being at HBCUs and coaching those kids made him a better human being today. And it was a luxury experience for him as well. Touchdown, DC. Fred Kais drew it up to perfection as Lucky Jackson's in the end zone. Yeah, you could get your dance on. DC retakes the, the lead. Middle field, five yard line, going for two. Middle field, middle field. Empty right. 01, 01, 01, 01. The backfield right. action, you get that whole player to come up. It vacates the window behind it for the Zeke Lance, the slant route. Josh, you go to the left. Josh, you go to the left. Really well executed. Hey, tell him run safe. 58, slant, slant. They go for two go. from the five. We don't kick extra points in the right, right, XFL. Right. Up three, can they go up five? Yes, they do. Two point conversion is good. Alex Ellis on the catch. DC now up over 400 total yards on the game. That is a season high right here in Orlando. Nine and a half, so they still got some work to go. That ball goes into the end zone. That'll be a minor infraction, so the ball will come out to the 35 yard line. Here's according to Caesar Sportsbook, the live line is now minus five and a five and a half, which means DC has to win by more than six in order for you to win that bet. Or if you say plus five and a half, that means you think Orlando's going to lose right by less if than six. Hit, if you're hitting that and he's hitting that, they don't get that off. It's got to be the, lot, the highest total over under we've had in the XFL live at least so far in seven weeks. Orlando gets the ball back, down by five. So much time to play here in this fourth quarter. Quentin Dormady with time will unload down the middle. Oh, oh. Dangerous throw and a double coverage. Was looking for Charleston Rambo, but Dewan Neal was with him step for step. We thank you for joining us here in Orlando for this week seven action. Man, has this been a good game. Alert, scat right, scat left, Cancun wide spot. And John Schriffen here in the booth alongside Tom Lubendil. We got Taylor Davis, Harry Douglas on the sideline. I mean, this game has been a shootout from the opening kick, second and 10. Orlando will hand this one off. Tom, does this have the feeling like whoever has the ball last is going to win it? 11, 11, 11. Potentially, yeah. You know, I, I think that that last Dose turnover. Right, scat right, Exxon. Dose right, scat right, Exxon on two, on two. That on we two, saw from Orlando two. was just a on two. killer turnover because it changed momentum. It took away energy. Now you hear Shane Matthews say right there, on two, on two, so you're going to see the hard count. Orlando's been disciplined on that tonight, but not in the previous six weeks. Let's see what they can do. 
Orlando, third and 10 from the 35. We've got a free play for Orlando. Dan Williams, a good run after the catch. Go, twi twins left, twins left. Got to have offside. So let's go, Defense, Dose right. Number 39, Dose. give me the climb. Offside. Defense number 39. The penalties for climb. The result of the play is the first. Down. That's the second offsides yep. against Santos Ramirez. Really good discipline that time, and that one was close. Michael Joseph still got a shot on Dormady. Certainly did. Orlando first and 10 from midfield. Dormady, oh man, threw that one right into the midst of Jacob Panashu. Panashu does a really nice job here. You realize he's on block. Wait, let me get in the throwing lane because he knows that behind him is that hitch route. Seen that in the in, in game study. They know it's coming off of that backfield action. You can't get there, stop and get your hands up. Almost intercepted himself one. The clock continues to run until we get inside the final two minutes here in this fourth quarter. Second and ten. Dormady throws over the middle. And that's Eli Rogers just getting down, avoiding the hit. Late substitution for DC as Orlando's already over the ball. Wide dragster, wide dragster. Dormady checking the protection here on third and four. Wide dragster, they're going to try and hit. Latimer again. Here comes the blitz, crossing her out. They got Latimer. It's a big hitter. Latimer still on his feet. Touchdown! That's third women, women six. Orlando Guardian strike for 44 yard pickup. Latimer would not be denied. This is an outstanding job by Shane Matthews. Here you go, you're gonna have this here, you're gonna have that there, and they're gonna rub off of each other and clip the defender that is trying to cover Cody Latimer. Now he does the rest, makes somebody miss, and it's a foot race to the end zone, but you heard Shane Matthews say, all right, let's check, check to wide dragster, check to wide dragster. He knew they were in man-to-man -man co uh, coverage, and crossing routes are great man coverage beaters. Kentrell Price had the chance to stop him. He missed the tackle for DC. And now behind the play, we do have a defender who is still down for DC. That looks like it's Santos Ramirez who is down right now. That is As not good. Slowly news. gets back to his feet. Good to see Ramirez trot off the field. So what he's challenging is that that this receiver here picked the defender. DC is challenging the ruling on the field. DC is challenging the ruling on the field of no offensive pass interference. The play is under review. Yes. So there is yes. there is contact, but the key here is that the ball was already caught. So there's no pass interference by rule because that contact has to take place prior to the ball being touched. That's the best look, the left 25. Okay, Chris, after further review, there is no foul for offensive pass interference. The block occurred after the ball was touched. No foul. After he caught it, so he just After review, there is no offensive pass interference. The block occurred after the ball was touched by the receiver. He's out right now looking at the play. He's a touchdown. So what's unique about the XFL is that both teams get one challenge. You can challenge any play, even if it hasn't been called, if you feel like something was missed. Right. And that's what DC just did there. They thought the pit play was missed, but you heard Dean Blandino's explanation. That was a good challenge. I actually thought that was a really good challenge because oftentimes that, that ends up being a pick and it, it's illegal if the receiver doesn't play it correctly. They go for two from the five. And Dormady can't get it through that tight window looking for Latimer. So Orlando with a one point lead here in this fourth quarter. Welcome back to Orlando Guardians with a one point lead following that Cody Latimer touchdown who joins me now. Obviously momentum had shifted after that turnover, but you guys drive down and regain the lead. How'd you do it? 
just keep fighting, man. Trusting our coaches, trusting the players. You know, like you said, we had to turn over, but we've been moving the ball really well downfield, and Coach Shane's been doing a great job of dialing it up. So we just believe in each other at this point. We ain't got nothing to lose, so we just go out here, like I said, playing for each other and making plays. You've played a lot of football, but how would you describe what this opportunity and this team means? I mean, it's just an amazing opportunity for all the guys. You know, uh, this is a lot of people's second chance, a lot of people's first time being on the professional thing. So this league has been nothing but amazing to me, my family, and my teammates. So uh, we're just blessed to be here, man. And uh, just going to keep bringing it every day. Like I said, we're happy. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Guys. All right, Taylor, thank you. Brandon Smith there on the return. Takes it back across the 20. <laughs> Smith, like a bowling ball, going through that hole, still churning, pushing those legs, picks up 11. Harry, I know you were impressed with Caitlin Clark of Iowa. Yes, I was. You talk about someone who allows the game to come to them. And it's hard to think that when she scores 41 points in a ball game, but she's amazing. Her body control, she can shoot the ball from deep. I love watching her game, love watching her play, and looking forward to that championship game. I love how she wouldn't even come out to the top of the key. She just said, hey, go ahead and try and shoot that. You go ahead and shoot that. I don't think you can make it. I'm not getting to defend it. We got a big one here. Oh, incomplete. Lucky Jackson. Just a step too short, overthrown by Jordan Tamu. Just a little more air to allow Lucky Jackson to run into this one. 29, 29. And that's again the sluggo route, the slant and go. They got Houston on this for a big gainer to Lucky Jackson a week ago. And this one just a couple inches too long. Ready, ready. Back up. After missing on the home run, they give it to Abram Smith on the ground. And that's going to bring up third down. It's kind of been that night, though, for DT, hasn't it? And they haven't had one of those yet. The only undefeated team in the league. No, go 12, go 12, go 12, go 12, go 12, go 12. Go 12. Go 12. Here we go. Fred, skin's right. Skin's right. All choice. Yellow, yellow, yellow. All choice. All choice. Yellow, yellow, DC, six for nine on third downs tonight. This is going to be a third and long. Ready, ready. Thank you. Empty backfield for Tamu. Throw his receiver down. Incomplete. Ty Smith almost came up with the interception for Orlando. Got yeah, double choice routes to both tight ends. Jordan Tomo chooses to go left here, and his intended target just falls down. I think he would have had a completion. It would have had to have threaded the needle there into a tight window. But again, these types of things have not plagued DC, and they're having one of those nights where things aren't necessarily bouncing their way as they become accustomed to. So Daniel Whelan who's got a monster leg, will punt this one away. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Rogers just sit, looks to sail over his head. <laughs> Week 7 in the XFL wraps up tomorrow right here on ESPN with the Battle Hawks and the Roughnecks. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, also available on ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> I've a 66-yard punt. Well, I was just going to say, I've had a few people, and I'm sure you have too, say, well, you know, who have you seen that you think's got a shot at the NFL? Who's going to sign? Maybe stick. I'm like, DC's punter. <laughs> That's the guy. Yeah, to Whalen. You know what's interesting, though? This turf field. I've seen a bunch of people slip I know. down tonight. Have tonight. We, we, we saw the kicker for DC. We just saw the tight end slip there. Harry, have you noticed anything about the field? It looks like it's just a normal turf field. Illegal substitution, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. I think it's just guys need to get their, you know, weight under them before kicking a football, you know, planting their foot in the ground. This is turf. This is fast turf. They should be able to uh, play on this and stay upright. I appreciate that. Twelve men in the huddle there as Orlando breaks the huddle, gets a penalty. So Orlando with a one-point lead, get the ball back after the penalty, first and 15, and oh. False start, offense, number 58. Five-yard penalty, still first down. It's first, it's first and 20, let's get some, get some positive yards. It's Jalen Spady, and this is the 0-6 Orlando I mean, I we know. Dose right, dose right, Corvette, F slant. Dose right, Corvette, F slant. Dan, you have an under, get out wide. See if Orlando can get some positive yards here on first and 20. 
from the 25. Throwing is Dormady, completes it to Eli Rogers, and another penalty flag. That's three in a row we've seen now. 68. Go, go Ineligible receiver downfield, offense number 68. 58, 58 is the number. Number 58, correction. Five yard penalty, replay first down. And that's now back to back Step penalties Soar, against Jalen Spady on the left. offensive line. Dose yep. Right. F Soar, X quick screen left. Dan, that's you. Get a little bit wider. They've been doing that all night. Oh my Should gosh. Should be throwing man. the quick screen Who they call it on? to the bottom here. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Setting up the play is Orlando tossed over bounds, and there come the penalty flags. That's like a wrestling move. You can't do that. Just hang on on that spot. Dan Williams was just tossed over the benches out of bounds. Get on the bench. Get on the bench. 43. Get on the bench. 43. It's Francis Bernard. Yep. After the play, personal foul, late head out of bounds. Defense number 43. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. I need y'all help. I'm trying to keep them all. And he's heading out of bounds. Just let him go. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Now you just took a backed-up Orlando offense that was frustrated and gave him new life. So Orlando will, guard, will gain 16 hey, yards on the play, the and then the penalty tacked on. Looking to throw. That is caught. Completed to Dan Williams. DC jumped that route. <laughs> Almost had a pick six. My goodness. Wait a minute. Does the ball come out at the end? That's DC ball. We've got a turnover. Momentum stop. We play that. His momentum is not stop. Covered by the defense, first down. Oh boy. Okay, we are looking at this. Jim is hop on the ball. The recovery. Chris, we're going to review this. We're going to review this. Yep. The ruling of a fumble recovered by the defense. That's the first part. Yep, that's the first part. He's not touched. Coach, he's done a momentum stop. His momentum was not stopped. There's no progress. He's still go he's moving forward the entire time. Now I'm just looking to see if he's down by contact. That's the other thing. I'm on a low end zone here. That's my shot. The ball is out. The ball is clearly out. I've got a recovery on the left 25. The DC defender is not out of bounds. Inbounds the whole way. Okay, after review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. There was no progress. He was not down by contact. And we have a recovery inbounds. Wow. Turnover chain to Nidea Rouse. It's first down. Rouse <laughs> almost had the pick six. He's the guy who jumped the route initially, and somehow he still comes up with the fumble recovery. Yeah, lots to un uh, unpack on this one. Should have had a pick six, and then the hustle play to come back and get in on the tackle and strip fumble. Look at that. That's what we call it a game of inches, right? And then Dan Williams comes up fighting, scrapping, doing everything he can. And Dean Blandino's right. It's a forward momentum play. His momentum is not stopped. I know Terrell Buckley doesn't want to hear that. That's a hustle play by DC on defense. Abram Smith lowers the shoulder. Under six minutes to play here in this fourth quarter. DC down by one as they get the ball back. Z Jeff. Play. Play T Gun. Timeout challenge and play the defense. Hey, flex up Queen. We have an Orlando defensive player down. That's Terrence Smith. And now he gets back up and walks off on his own power. Good at you, guys. Please reset the game clock to five minutes, 40 seconds. The I can't believe that play by Nidea Rouse. Missed the pick six, came back to strip the ball away. From 10 yards away. And then Joseph came back and fell on top play. of it for DC. Here we go, here we go. Play, 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 play. Play, T. Glenn. Play. Let's go, let's go. Second and six for DC. Run ready. Ten, go. Tamu looking to throw. He completes it. Trips right, trips right, trips right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Move those sticks again. Brandon Smith on the reception. Gain of 16. 
Get set, get set. Hey, now, now. Ready, ready. Back go. First and 10, DC throwing. Damu going back to Smith, and he's pushed out of bounds. Now, you got to remember, earlier in this quarter, DC missed a 29-yard field goal. Right. They find themselves down by one here, under five minutes to play. 23 lock 23 squirrels. 23, 23 lock squirrels. 23 lock squirrels. Here we go, here we go. Get set, get set. Ready, ready. Back go. Second and seven. Tamu looking to throw again. Finds his tight end, Briley Moore, and he will fall forward. Inches short of the first down. It'll be third down. 23 duo. 23 duo. Let's go, let's go. Bubble, bubble. Let's go, let's go. 23. Here we go, here we go. Inside. Ready, ready. Dual block on each side. Run game here. Abram Smith. He needed one. He gets a bunch more. Inside the 25. Orlando feels like they've got the ball. Let's see what the officials say. Hey, skin, skin, skin. Let's go, let's go, let's go, skin. He was down. The ruling on the down. field is a fumble recovered by the defense, first down. Gerald Willis comes away with the football for Orlando. An unbelievable turn of events in the fourth quarter. We'll take a look at a couple of these replays. The big tight ends have blocked and run. That's a good call by the officials and good lobbying by Orlando defenders because Abram Smith is on top. He's on top of Gerald Willis, former Auburn Tiger right there, number nine. Let's go! That is an unbelievable play by Willis. Yeah, He's on his back play. and punches the ball free and recovered. That is just um, incredible. Under four minutes to play in this fourth quarter. Orlando with the ball. They're going to try to run out this clock. That's Devin Darrington. DC only has one timeout remaining. Let's send it down to Taylor. All right, Gerard, this thing is swinging back and forth with momentum. Your team needed you, and you came up big. What'd you see? Oh, um, I just seen him, seen the ball out, and I just hit it. And I seen the ball helping got on it. You know, it's just a blessing, so thankful. You know big-time players make big-time plays. That might have been one of them for you. How'd it feel? Yes, now it just felt like also really, really a blur, but I'm just happy I made it. So we get the W. Good job, man. Thank you. John. All right, Taylor. Orlando's going to have to pick up a first down if they want to run out this clock, though. Darrington, he will be stopped. I need regular 11. I need regular 11. Regular 11. Remember, the clock does stop at the two-minute warning. DC also has one timeout remaining. Tank left motion. Tank left motion. Ace right, wide dragster. Tank left wide, uh, motion. Ace right, wide dragster. Once again, we've already seen this on the touchdown. So you're going to get the, the pick route with the tight end coming from the top, crossing underneath. That same play, and it works again. Cody Latimer gets down, inbounds, first down, Orlando. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is the first time Orlando has been in a position to actually close out a game, finish a game. Find a way to win a game. First time in seven weeks to see what they got in the tank. That was the same exact play they ran when Latimer had that touchdown. And we all said it on the broadcast. Earlier in the third quarter, the live line was minus seven and a half for DC. Vegas thought Orlando was going to fall apart. Look at those last two uh, uh, categories there. You got the combined points and then the penalties and the missed. 29-yard field goal was a killer for D.C. tonight. So Darrington with the run. D.C. will use their final timeout. Timeout, Orlando. Their final timeout of the half. 30 seconds. Said Orlando, but meant D.C. It's okay. Hey. 
direction. Hey, O-line. Call out to guys. Just block the right one. Y'all move it. We won't need for five yards. Hey, we won't need for five yards. Just get by, throw it, get what you can, and get the not run out of bounds. Do not run out of bounds. Stay in bounds. The clock will stop. Hey, he said hand it off. Quentin Dormady just taking charge in the huddle. He knows under two minutes the clock will stop if you get out of bounds. He just said if I throw it, I hope he doesn't throw it. <laughs> Orlando, or D.C. hopes he throws it. D.C. is now out of timeouts. Second and six. They're going to run it. D.C. will stop Darrington right as he crosses the 40 to the 41. The clock will continue to tick. Orlando, they need a first down. Yep. The boot is better, huh? Run the boot. Dormady, huddle up. Listen to me. If you need, do not run this out of bounds. We're going to go flank right, flank right, fake left, boot at eight. Stay in bounds and just don't throw an incomplete pass. Let's go. Snap it with two seconds. Let's go. Let's go. Dormady, there's the boot out to his right, pressured, and he gets down in bounds. DC gets the stop, which means they will get the ball back as Fidal Brown with the tackle. Absolutely. absolutely. Really surprised by that call. Really surprised by that call. Why? You've run the football so effectively between the tackles. And now you take the ball further away from the line of scrimmage with the risk of potentially throwing it, getting an incompletion, and then the no, clock stopping. No! 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 Don't! Timeout, Orlando. I just think their percentages were better hey, running the football there and actually converting. Get it off. Please reset the game clock to 30 seconds. 3 0, please. Now, last week, Orlando had a punt blocked in the fourth quarter. That was their demise against Seattle. And you just heard Terrell Buckley tell his punter, Matt Brown, you got to get this punt off. <laughs> no question. We got a Okay. Hey, Matt, tell Matt to get it off. Tell him to get it off. Get it off, Matt. Get it off. If you're Coach Buckley, is this a max protection? Do you have everybody just stay home and block? Well, the problem is if you do that, you're, you're going to have coverage restrictions, and you could be giving oh, up on. a big return, and now you're giving up a field position. Why? Pop is good. Pop is good. They just don't. Why? Over 27. We counted it. Josh five. Hammond is the deep man for D.C. Brown does get it away. A good punt. Hammond fields. Let's see what he can do to start this return. Oh, he is just drilled. And a penalty flag comes flying. A 50-yard punt, a five-yard return, but let's see what the penalty yeah, is. Here we I, go. I got illegal use of the helmet hitting him with the crown. Did you get that, Dean? 48. Runner. Yep. So no, no foul. No foul. No foul. Okay. There is no foul on the play. The contact was ruled legal. First down. Because the returner was a runner, yep. Jaquan Blakely was not called for using the crown of his helmet. That was a clinic tackle, though. Woo! Here we go. Man. This game has been fired. 20 seconds to play. What can DC do down by one? Tamu throwing, completing to Chris Blair. Now the clock will stop as they reset the change just like it does in college. Tamu's calling for the spike as soon as they set it. Here goes the clock, and Tamu spikes it with 13 seconds. Hey, sugar, sugar, sugar. Remember. The kicker, Matt McCrane, missed a 29-yard field goal go, go, earlier this go. quarter. Hey, spread left, spread left, spread left. Red, Tucson, Red, Tucson. 
So now what they've got to do, they've got to get another gainer like that to get them close to field goal range, but they're going to have to have another clock situation, which means everybody's going to have to hustle. Four wide receivers set for D.C. on second and ten. Tamu, he's got to get this first down, and he does. The clock will stop. Marked down at the 45. Spikes it at the four. Four seconds to play. That might be a penalty. I think Jordan Tom was correct right there. Hey, Dean, is this something that needs to be looked at? The Orlando defender? Was he offside? Was he offside? I can't tell. I can't tell if he's in or not. Yeah. Yeah, I, that, that's the only thing. I don't worry about him, what, what he did after. So Matt McCrane will attempt a 63-yard field goal. It's on its way. No good. And Orlando gets their first win of the season. Yes. Yes. Don't need but 25 yards. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm call a regular guard. What can DC do down by one? Second and ten, Tamu, he's got to get this first down, and he does. Man. They got six seconds. Field goal, field goal. Marked down at the 45. So Matt McCrane will attempt a 63-yard field goal. No. It's on its way. No good. Gets their first win of the season! Yeah. Ah. That's what I'm about, man. Yes! Yeah. DC is undefeated yeah. no more! Oh my god! Yeah. The Guardians shot the defenders! 37! 36! Good job! Congrats on the win! Good game! Good job! What a game in the XFL! That's what it's about. That's what this game is about. That's what the XFL is about. This opportunity to be a part of something that's just so special. I want to get a game ball to all you got. Once again, best crowd in the XFL on hand. And here we go, Jose Borgales, short kick to the dangerous Darius Shepard. Shepard to the 30, and a flag is down. Hey, flag down here. Get the spot, yeah, both, I think you and David are on the same one, so. 55 during the return. Yeah, 55, we're good there, going from the spot, 10 yards, first down. During the, During the return, return, holding number 55, receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first down, St. Louis. So we're going to talk a lot about the tiebreakers. The fourth tiebreaker is your combined rank in the division in scoring offense and scoring defense. Seattle leads St. Louis by one spot in both. Here's the bottom line. St. Louis needs to score 20 more points than Seattle does this weekend to pass them for scoring offense and allow seven fewer points than Seattle to pass them in scoring defense. Do you have that down, Sam? That, there's that and there's so much more. But this game will come down to, yes, winning, but also how you win. A.J. McCarron back at quarterback for St. Louis. Leads the XFL in touchdown passes. McCarron will check it down to Mateo Durant. Durant picks up the first down. How he does is going to be critical because Brian Hill was a fantastic security blanket for A.J. McCarron. Brian Hill is one of the best backs in the XFL. He's out this week, so it's going to be Mateo Durant. It's going to be many of other weapons, even on the outside, to help this offense go. Brian Hill, second leading rusher in the XFL. Ace Mike. Behind Abram Smith, Set. out. One eighty, one ten. 
Back-to-back -back carries for Durant. And quickly met by the Guardians defense. And Savion Patton, Let's go on the ball. the XFL right. defensive lineman. Spot spacing. It's right. hey, 51. 51 X 51. spot spacing. 51. X spot. You got that. It's a play no, call from right. one former right. NFL quarterback to another. Bruce Grodkowski to A.J. McCarron. We're good. We're good. St. Louis with only 12 Ready. points in the loss to Seattle. Coming off their lowest scoring game of the season. Back to Durant. Initially slipped through one contact from Terrence Smith. May have gotten one extra yard to set up a crucial third down. And that was a great tackle by Terrence Smith. He's up to his game. This entire Orlando defense has played better and better and better in the last half of the season. Talked to one of their defenders. He said, man, we started getting rid of guys and then guys who really wanted to win. Third and seven. Nothing downfield yet for A.J. McCarron. He's got the receivers to exploit. A questionable secondary for Orlando. Marcel Aitman at the top of the screen. Darius Shepard at the bottom in 11. McCarron trying to get out of the pocket. This is where he struggled last week, and he's hit and brought down. Tigray Scales with the stop on third down. So first of all, give credit to Tigray Scales. This dude's been on a journey since he was at Indiana back six years ago. Eyes on the quarterback. You see A.J. McCarron, you step up, and then you go sideline to sideline. Don't, don't get out of your coverage. Everyone else stays in coverage, and then you do your job as Stansley Mapanga doing his little dance. <laughs> He's 32 years old. He might be old for that. <laughs> but I respect you, Stansley. Stansley at 32, the hips don't lie. <laughs> Justin Rogers back deep. We do have two punters in Sterling Hoffreiter and Matt Brown that have successfully executed fakes this year. Rogers return. We do have a flag. And he is brought down at the 22 yard line by Will Flag Harvey. down here. Flag down. Hang tight before we punt. Illegal formation. All right, so we're going to tack on five from there. Illegal formation. Illegal formation, kicking team, not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, it's first down, Orlando. Here's Guardians head coach Terrell Buckley before the start of the game. Play hard for 60 minutes and let's finish. Finish every play the right way. Finish, 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 finish. Hard and finish, see it before it happens. Lando Guardians! Lando. And a new motto for T Buck this week. The Guardian Way. And what that is is a team that's organized, disciplined, and detailed. They had such problems with penalties at the beginning of the season. They've cleaned that up. And now after this St. Louis penalty, they want the Battle Hawks to re-kick. Well, it's a smart play by Coach Buckley, having the, the offense punt hits again. Why? Because these, these guys, you can be tired running down the field on a punt, and so hopefully you get a bigger return, like you told Justin Rogers. And that three and out has to be deflating for St. Louis, putting so much stock into how they played this game. Rogers fumbled it. It's still loose. Does Orlando get it back? The ball is down at the 20-yard line, and it will be Guardians football. Well, we talked about this earlier. You have to find the ball or find a way to get points on offense or slow down points on defense. Sometimes you don't even have to force it. The ball will come to you. So in this punt, the ball came the St. Louis Battlehawks' way, but don't force it. Relax. Let the ball come to you. Great effort play right there by Lakia Henry. Wow. The old Miss Rebel able to pounce on that, saving points for Orlando. So here is DeAndre Francois making his first start. Power formation by the Guardians. Francois on the run. And we'll just throw this away. Francois looked like he was going to be the next great one out of Florida State. Had a fantastic freshman year. However, in the season opener in his sophomore campaign, hurt his knee against Alabama. His career has never really been the same. He, he led Florida State to their biggest comeback win in school history. Threw for over 400 yards and two touchdowns. The injury derailed his career. Now he's trying to revitalize that flashy career. 
Good news for him, he's got Cody Lattimore, second leading receiver, wearing number 11, back over the middle and through the hands. He was looking for Ryan Becker, and it was there. 11. Let's go dose right. No, let's go twins right, twins right, scat right, Y option five. Twins right, scat right, Y option five. Comeback 81. That's a former comeback 81. Frank Gator and Shane Matthews call them plays to Francois, and it's nuts inside the door. France Wall with time, sideline, and cut by Charleston Rambo out of Miami. So we've had a Noel, a Gator call in the plays, and a reception to a Kane. And you, sure, you heard Shane Matthews say to 81, which is Jordan Thomas' comeback. Well, also on the other side, deep comebacks on the outside. Get past the sticks, get past the first down line marker, and then give your quarterback an, a, a target to hit. And so we, we also hear the audio from head coach or hey, even coordinator to their receivers. Daddy. Let's see it. That's been one of the themes this week for Terrell Buckley. He just wants to see what Francois has. Check down, Devin Darrington. Darrington slips one to the 50 for the former Harvard Crimson and Virginia Cavalier. Keep an eye on Devin Darrington. He's specially six in the XFL in rushing, yet he missed the first three games. He graduated from Harvard. 2020, his season got canceled, transferred to UVA. But that was a pass-happy offense. He says, finally, I get an opportunity to shine. He did it last week over 100 rushing yards. He's starting off strong this week. Keep an eye on 26, Devin Darrington. to the run game, nowhere to hide. Travis Feeney will find you. The ninth TFL for the Washington Husky. Okay, so keep an eye on, on Darrington. Keep an eye on Feeney as well. So Travis Feeney, he has five sacks on the season, but he's more than just a sack artist. He's a great defensive player. Got drafted in the sixth round by the Steelers from University of Washington. This guy's 6'4". He's 240, 35-inch vertical. He's a freak athlete, but he's also just as smart of a player. Francois over the middle and cut. Brought in by Dan Williams. Let's check in with Fitz on the St. Louis injury situation. Darrington close to the sticks on third down. You're not able to get Fitz's audio, but the situation here, Nate Maters is out with a high ankle issue. Mike Rose, star linebacker, is also out. Ben DeLuca at safety has been out for quite some time. And Silas Kelly, another standout linebacker, is out with a concussion. So the back seven for St. Louis is razor thin. Standout Lowell is an understatement. Mike Rose, for example, Fair. NFL coaches have been calling about him during this XFL season. So the missing pieces on this team may potentially be detrimental. France Wall. Charleston Rambo for the second time. And when it comes to the different tiebreaker scenarios, the best path for Seattle and St. Louis is defensively. If St. Louis is gonna catch Seattle in one of those categories, the easiest way to do that is with scoring defense. Well, the best path for St. Louis specifically is just to hope that Seattle loses. Correct. Why? Seattle's playing a division game, and so if Seattle loses that division game against Vegas, St. Louis will have a better divisional record, which is one tiebreaker ahead. So St. Louis would like a shutout. Down the sideline, just out of the fingertips of KD yeah, Cannon. Down, flag down. We do have a hanky down. What number you got on that? 38. 38 defensive hold, defensive five yards and a first down. Yep. Yep. 38. Holding number 38. Defense, five yard penalty, automatic. First down. Brandon Sebastian called for the hold. 
and the advantage that Seattle has in all of this, of course, the pressure of winning, they will know their magic numbers on what they need to score and what they can allow for their finale against Vegas on Sunday, the you, final hey, game hey, of the hey, year. You talked about it, Lowell. Last week, these two teams hey. played each other. Play action. Francois, huge drop and just has to get rid of that. Last week, St. Louis and Seattle played each other. Seattle won that game by 18 points. At the very end of the game, Seattle was up big, but they went for this field goal. People were wondering why. Well, they knew that if it came down to these tiebreakers, those 18 points would matter. You see, Seattle scored 19 more points. And so that tiebreaker, number one, defensively, they've given up six less points. So at the end of the season, all those different stats will matter. Really? Every point that is scored this weekend by all teams to the final one between Seattle and Vegas could determine who goes in the final two spots to the playoffs. Francois, early flag, he's wrangled down. The ball is out and it's picked up by Lakel London and it's out again, but into the hands of St. Louis. There was yeah, an early flag. flag. Blue ball. DOF 56 St. Louis. Oh, yes. wow. So it's five yards in the second down. 56, offside, 56. Here we go. Offside, number 56. Defense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So remember, in the XFL, coaches are allowed to challenge. You can go and look and say, was he offsides? He's leaning, leaning, leaning. Ooh. You can go back and look at that and see if he crossed the neutral zone. And so that's a challengeable play that Dean Blandino back in Van Nuys, California, could review if St. Louis decides to challenge it. Fourth penalty for the Battle Hawks on this drive. They came into this game number one in fewest penalties. Orlando was last with the most. Nowhere to go there. Give me 11 Trey Bulldogs, Watson 11 Bulldogs. Senior with the stop. He quads right. I mean, uh, empty right, empty right, double smash, Y spot. Empty right, double smash, Y spot. Right, that right, is Shane right. Matthews. Ten, 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 get wider, ten, 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 Orlando scoring 25 points per game, third best in the league. Two for two on third down for the number one third down offense in the XFL. Francois pressure in his face. Andrew Jamil wide open. His second touchdown in as many weeks. Come on, come on. Let's go. That's how they roll in Stonehill. The Cape Cod, Massachusetts kid. Making the most of his opportunity. And speaking of opportunity, Coach Buckley specifically pointed out Andrew Jamil as a guy he wanted to give an opportunity to. They said, is he too small? Well, let's find out if he's too small. Can he play? Let's find out. That's what this league is about. Coaches giving their players opportunity to see if they can play at the highest level. Now it's time for the extra point. One, two, or three. Orlando, their bread and butter has been the one-pointer where they are six of 14. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah, Sarah. Latimer in motion. Francois looking for one. Tries to get away from Feeney, throws it up. And it's through the hands of Lucas Dennis. But job done with the extra point. We had their game two weeks ago, and I ran into Battle Hawk One, that fan with the accent, <laughs> with him, and like we ran into each other at a barbecue spot. We started talking about football. I almost asked for an autograph from him. That's how much these fans matter. And they really like Darius Shepard, who leads the XFL and kick return yards, gets it out to the 26-yard line, and there's a late flag at the 20. I've got the end of the run, picks the so, ball up. So white 38, right? Kicking team on Sportsmanlike after the play. We're gonna tack it on, 38 white. After the play is over on Sportsmanlike conduct, number 38, kicking team, 15 yard penalty. It's first down St. Louis. It's number 38's first on Sportsmanlike conduct of the game. 
And that's huge for St. Louis. They need something to get going because, frankly, offense wasn't good last week. Go, and it boys, wasn't great for most of the game before that against Vegas. Move. And their defense the struggled last week, last week as well. And so you want to see, yes, how do you respond, but also what's the character of your team in a high-pressure situation? Who are you? Set. Kareem Walker at running back. No White Brian hey. Hill. White Second hey. leading rusher in the XFL. McCarron, pump fake, went back over the middle to Akeem Butler. One of the breakout stars in the XFL. Taylor. Guys, something to pay attention to on Orlando's defensive line. Their bestie lineman, Savion Patton, is out for the rest of the game with a glute injury. Taylor, thanks for that update. So it's late season. Keep in mind, no bye weeks in the 10-game schedule for all XFL teams. Second and five. McCarron wants it all. He's got it. Steven Mitchell, fight on. Now we understand why A.J. McCarron leads the XFL in passing touchdowns with 18. It's his timing, his poise, and his leadership. Notice him looking off the safety. He's looking in the middle of the field, so the safety think he's throwing in the middle. The last second, he looks outside, gets his hips outside, and drops a dime in the bucket for Mitchell. Whoa, 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 whoa. And McCarron now playing traffic cop. He has a freedom to call many of these plays at the line. McCarron on the dart. That's who you want to leave it high to. Akeem Butler couldn't bring it in. And the reason you say that, so Akeem Butler is six foot six inches tall. That was it perfectly, but you see him smiling. He knows he should have ca ca caught that one. But what I'm interested in seeing is, remember a few weeks ago, they got Akeem Butler involved early in the game, and all of a sudden he went crazy. And so, you saw that early catch, just a short catch, but now you're getting him involved early. He starts to build even more confidence as the game goes on. No catches last week on only two targets. Marcel Aitman, number three. That was the go-to guy early. Y80! Wait a sec! Flag down. Back to Butler. Butler hit immediately. Got a flag down. And the Orlando Eagle defense. formation, 78. We only have Ty six men Smith. on the line of scrimmage. The ball was touched behind. They're going to want it, right? Yes. Illegal formation. Illegal formation. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. Correction. Orlando would like to decline that penalty. It's third down. You're good with that, Sam. I am. You hear some of the boos in the, in the stands. But the bigger picture is it's third down at the 17-yard line. Don't give the offense an extra down. Force them to get this first down in the red zone. So I love that tight. decision. All right. Tight one double robber. Safety showdown. Hey, tight one go. double robber. Here's Safety one. showdown. Two jet. Camaro. Camaro. You got the V-line. They don't have to get it all here. Anthony Beck Set. planning on being very aggressive in fourth down situations in plus territory. That's going to lead us to a timeout. Set. Third and 10 for McCarron. White side. McCarron to the end zone, overthrowing Stephen Mitchell. And it looks like St. Louis will take the points here. Smart. Donnie Hagman strolling out. That's a huge stop for Orlando. It is. And you heard the coverage beforehand. He talked about one robber, cover one. And so everyone's in. Everyone's in man-to-man, -man. and so C.J. Holmes, number one, had the great man-to-man -man coverage, staying tight to his receiver and not getting handsy, not allowing a penalty. 35-yard attempt for Donnie Hagman. Just keep your eyes out. Anytime the specialists are on the field, something funky could be happening in this game. We talk so much about the fourth and fifth tiebreaker, though, because both St. Louis and Seattle are massive favorites, two of the biggest favorites that we've seen all season long. Orlando doesn't care. Vegas almost beat the St. Louis team a couple weeks ago. So we know it could be some upsets around the XFL to wrap it up. St. Louis relentless on pursuit and special teams. Carson Wells out of Colorado with the stop.
Now, right. Orlando, this is what they do. One of the best teams in the XFL in scoring on their opening possession. However, it typically slows down after that first drop. Well, this is why you have DeAndre Francois in the game. We saw it last week. He came in late in the game, but he was on that play when, when Devin Darrington had that huge 60-plus yard run. It was a zone read, and so the ability of Francois to be able to run the ball, that threat can slow down defenders and open up an offense. And so far, no targets to the second leading receiver in the XFL, Cody Lattimore. Darrington denied. Stuffed by Kevin Atkins, the Fresno State Bulldog. You talk to any one of the coaches for St. Louis from beginning to end, Kevin Atkins is the name they continually say. He lines up on the inside. He's a big, physical human being. But they say, no, it's more than that. It's his technique in the run. It's his ability to rush the passer. Talk about NFL talent, NFL yeah. pedigree. He's the name they consistently say. Injured his peck. While he was benching at his pro day workout, couldn't do the on-field workouts. That hampered him from getting his shot in the NFL. This is his shot now. Francois has wheels. The pursuit, however, by Taniella Tupo. Let's go ET, uh, 11 Bulldog, 11 Bulldog, 11 Bulldog. Hey, Tupo was booking it there. Well, he's, got, right, he's, he's a former rugby player right, as well, so he's got this rugby right, experience hail. as well. Smash, F, drive, Z under. Smash, F, drive, Z under. Going right. 81, bring your split in. For sure. Matthews. Matthews. Bring your split in. And And Francois will have to call a timeout with one second on the play clock. What was happening there with the communication? So Shane Matthews, so in the XFL, we, there's extra communication, about 15 headsets. So coaches can talk to receivers or running backs, whoever you give these headsets to. Shane Matthews was telling tight end Jordan Thomas, hey, it's a smash route. You have the corner. Come in tighter, a little bit away from the, from the sideline, because you're running a route to the outside. And so that's why he said, bring your split in, bring your split in. You need space to give your quarterback space. That's what that communication, it happened late. And that's why the timeout was called. Here's Francois. Hey, go, go on left, go on left, go on left, go on left. Go on left, go on left, go on left. Sally, 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 Sally! On the money, but to the wrong guy. Intercepted by Brandon Sebastian. From Chestnut Hill with love, the BC Eagle with his second INT of the year. So story is an understatement. Brandon Sebastian lost his brother to colon cancer on October 19th, 2017. His brother Jordan was his hero. His brother said, man, Saturdays are my favorite day. And so everything he does, he does for his brother. Notice his eyes on that route. His eyes are on the quarterback. And then he goes and makes the play. Brandon Sebastian did the same thing in college, but in the XFL, he says, man, everything I do, I do for Jordan. He talks about his motto, DTD, dominate the day. Right there, Brandon dominated the play. And St. Louis, with great field position at the 42. Clean pocket for McCarron. This is where he struggled last week. When he felt pressure, he lost his footing. Was that a sign of a guy that had missed a week? I think it was more of a sign of a guy who had been injured a few weeks back. So three weeks ago, he had an injury. Last week, he came back. And sometimes you, you're not as confident to throw it. And so then you start to look around. And then you're, do I slide? Do I run? Now he looks a lot healthier. 50, x tank 50. Coming down 50, to the final left. moments 50. of the first quarter. Set. Oh. Whitey. Whitey. In the traffic, and Aitman got crunched. Terrence Plummer, defensive leader with the thump. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter. Third and six for McCarron to Akeem Butler. Butler has the sticks. Butler has more. Hop on and go for a ride with Akeem Butler for 29 yards.
You know what I love, Lowell? Four weeks ago, when St. Louis played Las Vegas for the first time in Vegas, they fed Hakeem Butler, and it got their entire offense going. When all else fails, give it to your 6'6 receiver out of Iowa State. Let him do the rest. Sam, we've seen him, even with his days in the Cyclones, he does things not a lot of dudes can do. Last week, shut out. He is a factor here. Swinging it out. Oh, and a big collision for Stephen Mitchell. Ty Smith and Stephen Mitchell going head to head. Mono E, mono. Well, Ty Smith, he has NFL experience. So he's looking at this. He says, okay, Ooh. I have to bring, when, when you're in the red zone, you cannot hesitate. There's no tiptoeing. You have to come downhill and come downhill fast. That's what Ty Smith, Ty Smith did on that play. Now you're set off second and goal. And we have an injured Orlando Guardian coming off the field. That is Nick Coe, former Auburn Tiger. How important is finishing right here? Not with three, but with six. Well, it's important because of all that goes into this game, the point totals that we've talked about. Outscoring your opponent by at least 20 and then hoping that Seattle doesn't score. So that's why these, these points matter. You can't just walk away with three. You need six, and then maybe you get another three for the three-point conversion. Hey, both teams fighting for that bonus check for the winner as well. McCarron, Butler dropped it. Now, these are the throws that are head scratchers when it comes to Akeem Butler. He'll make the one-handed acrobatic catch, but we've done multiple games where he's dropping gimmies. Well, this isn't a drop. Give all credit to Ty Smith right there. Yes, it's tight coverage, and yes, you could potentially challenge and say pass interference, but I would argue that it's not. That's just great coverage playing on the inside, knowing that there may be a slant possible to a big-bodied receiver. So more of a hat tip to Ty Smith than a knock on Akeem Ball. Hands down third and goal. This is certainly Six. four down territory for A.J. McCarron and St. Louis. Little inside pitch to Shepard and it's going to come down to a tip pivotal. Jumbo, for jumbo. Jumbo, jumbo. Jumbo, deuce right king. 12 power plus. Why now? Jumbo, Deuce Right King, 12 power plus, why now? Deuce Right King, 12 power plus, why now? 12 power plus, Jumbo. St. Louis with an XFL low, three rushing touchdowns on the season. Go here. And a timeout, Orlando calls it. I got Can't him, I got him, enough, AJ. Just what this sequence means. Hey, Let's make sure you guys coach check in here. again. Make sure you declare again, okay? Hey, let's go. Hunker down. Get the touchdown. So St. Louis with the dynamic, the potential for tiebreaker if they win and Seattle wins. They have to match them in both scoring offense and defense or pass Seattle in at least one of those categories. That means outscoring Seattle by 20 points. Or allowing seven fewer points than Seattle does this weekend. A lot of math involved, but it's the here and now. Fourth and goal. Carry to Kareem Walker. Walker is in. So notice, you heard Anthony Beck. He said, get that ball in there. This is not a pretty play. This is a physical football play. I don't care who our back is, whether it's Brian Hill, Kareem Walker. Good job, Our Dallas. offensive line has to dominate, and that's what we Good saw. Job, and how about Steven Gonzalez paving the way, a guy that Anthony Beck believes will end up in an NFL camp. Two-point conversion time from the five-yard line. Set. St. Louis is 8 of 16 on the two-pointers. McCarron, all morning, all afternoon, all night, 
What will he do with it? Corner. Receiver goes down. There's no flag. Stephen Mitchell, it looked like there was some contact. No flag was called. Becht is wondering if that was a missed call. Final weekend of the XFL regular season. Kick is a way to Dedrick Thomas. Thomas fields it at the six. Thomas out of Mississippi State. Trips and is hit and brought down at the 27-yard line. Fascinating the way this could all potentially play out. And that man, Terrell Buckley, is here just to spoil this party, told Anthony Becht when he saw him yesterday. His former teammate, hey, can't wait to send you to an early vacation just like me. He's yep. embracing that spoiler role. And we do these calls with coaches. All We've done them all season long. The smile that came across Terrell Buckley's face when we told him about the opportunity to spoil this dance, I hadn't seen him smile that hard in a very, very long time. Orlando playing their best football of the season, coming off back-to-back two-point losses as Jermaine Martin is hit by Willie Harvey out of right, Iowa State, the leading tackler right, for St. Right, Louis. Seattle, Z-Dig, X Shallow. Right there, 81. So you keep on hearing Shane Matthews talk to 81, Jordan Thomas. He's the tight end that had that phenomenal touchdown last week where he essentially just big-bodied the defender. He's going to be or should be a focal point all series long. And a former battle hawk to boot. Francois looking deep for Jamil. Almost picked off. Through the fingertips of Levert Hill. We saw him out of Michigan with a two-interception game at Vegas. And you see this miscommunication. It's an obvious miscommunication between Jamil and Francois. But better is the awareness by Hill. You just have to come down with that. Great awareness. It's hard as a DB to try and track the ball that way. But he's, he's going to come down with the next one. We saw him do it a couple weeks ago. Had a couple picks. How is Francois's mind right now? That was almost two straight passes that were picked off. With one being picked off by Sebastian. Everybody's moving early. Yellow flags everywhere. Okay. False start, number 67. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's on Brett Boyko, the left tackle. It's amazing how Orlando can look like world beaters on the opening drive. I mean, opening drive of the season, they marched the length of the field against Houston, scored, and then hit the brakes and part of that false start maybe because of this crowd noise we hear the crowd getting louder and louder and louder especially on a critical third and long Francois is just going to check down bad decision bad intentions LeVert Hill I'm not saying that you go and you make up for a bad play, but as a player, sometimes psychologically you say, you know what, I'm going to go back to my technique. When the next one comes, I'm going to make it. Look at Hill's eyes. He just shuffles, shuffles, and immediately takes out the legs of Jermaine Martin out of NC State. North Carolina a &T. So a three and out after the interception for the St. Louis Battlehawks defense. Will we see the second coming of the Blandino? Mac Brown had the fake to KD Cannon. It led to a touchdown last week in San Antonio. Mac Brown, he's going to do it again for Jordan Thomas. Jump ball. Thomas got it. Thomas is still up. The former Battle Hawk rumbling to the sideline, to the end zone. What just happened? 84 no. yards! Yes. We tried to warn you! We tried to tell you! Orlando don't care! Talk about fearless. Talk about, talk about tired, first of all. Jordan Thomas running 84 yards for that touchdown. Tired, fearless. We're going to go back and look at that play. Jordan hey, Thomas was initially on the sideline. Okay. I don't think he knew that the fake was up. Then he ran on the field. He crossed the numbers. You have to essentially cross the numbers. But he's not usually lined up that wide. 
That's what you have to be alert for. The fearlessness of a, of a team that really doesn't care. <laughs> What's going on? How do we get all these fake punts? I mean, I'm not complaining, but there have been three crucial ones, and we've seen them all in succession. I'm going to give them time to figure this out, but too many players there. How about... Hey, what's the yardage on this? It's five, right? Five yards. Yeah. Illegal substitution, offense, five-yard penalty, two-point drive. I mean, Matt Brown is stating his case to get some snaps at quarterback, right? Between Francois and Dormady, just let Matt Brown throw some jump balls. Well, last week, he, Matt Brown, the punter, had the 64-yard pass to KD Cannon. Now this week, Matt Brown, the punter, had the 84-yard touchdown hey. pass to Jordan Thomas. So Matt Brown leads the XFL with 76 and a half yards per completion. <laughs> The puncher. <laughs> Not bad. Two point conversion for Francois. Backside pressure. Finney brought him down. Helmet is loose. Ball is loose. Good response there by the St. Louis defense. All right. Break this down. I mean, it's poetry. This is a former Battle Hawk bringing it in in Thomas. Well, we heard Coach We heard coach talk about Mac Brown. He said, now, I got some punters that could throw, but not like this. And people who could catch, but not like this. Jordan Thomas, Mississippi State. He's 6'5", 277. But he ran a 4'7'4". He also, they used to call him Bone Crusher because he's a big body. And so Jordan Thomas, big body with speed. Here's Taylor with Mac Brown and Jordan Thomas. Guys, how many times had you practiced that? Um, how many yeah. times? Just a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> it's, just, it's just natural, man. He's a ball player, man. He makes plays. Makes plays. Okay, but I saw you on the sideline, and it didn't look like you were going to get over. How did you make that play happen? Uh, oh, God, man. I mean, he's using me, so I can't, I can't complain. I'm, I'm getting the opportunity, a great opportunity to show what I can do, and I can't, I, I'm, I'm grateful, so I can't ask for anything more. And Mac, what were you looking to do there on that throw? Hey, he's a big body. I just had to put it up, let him go get it. He's a ball player, man. He's a baller. I'm lucky to have him on my side. I appreciate it. <laughs> Guys. Sam, name another level of football where we would see a play like that, especially given where it started from low there is none <laughs> it is the xfl give me more there he is shepherd out to the 30. i mean that's a gutsy move from terrell buckley he's throwing it from a couple steps in front of the end zone and and, and it's about it's yes terrell buckley the move yes matt brown the throw but jordan thomas after the cat we we love to say high and tight it doesn't matter you scored a touchdown <laughs> Here's T. Buck. Wow. Orlando taking the lead. St. Louis, your response. Mateo Durant with a good start. Takes it for about six yards. Just going back to that play, we were talking to Buckley earlier in the week, and he talked about if we're gonna have a fake on, I don't want to hear anybody looking to the sideline. Is it still on? It's just throw it. And so that kind of confidence and fearlessness can come when there's trust between, I would say quarterback, but now I would say punter and head coach. And those points from Orlando, even if St. Louis comes back, wins this game, so damaging. And Surratt weaves his way to the 45. Because of the fourth tiebreaker, if both St. Louis and Seattle can win, it will go down to the fourth or fifth tiebreaker to see who gets in. Fourth tiebreaker is your rank, your combined rank in the division in scoring offense and scoring defense. These are the updated numbers. The big one and the most likely way that St. Louis was going to catch Seattle is by points allowed. But now... That's an 18-point difference. As here's a shot to Shepard, who brings it in. That's how they do it at North Dakota State. 40 yards for Karen to Shepard. Darius Shepard's a three-time North Dakota State college football champion. But more than that, he's a reliable receiver. He played with Trey Lance, who plays for the San Francisco 49ers. You listen to Trey Lance talk about Darius Shepard, said he's the most confident and consistent player I've been around. 
Kareem, the dream to the 10. And sometimes it doesn't matter who your running back is. Look at the, how big that hole is on the right side. Great job by Vidal Alexander making that hole wider. I mean, I could run through that. <laughs> wham, wham on, wham on, wham on. So as it stands, hey, St. Louis to make up ground and pass home. Seattle and scoring offense or defense Set. would need 20 more points than Seattle scores against Vegas. So that means they have to at least Wait. get to 20. Right Wait. now they've got nine on the board. Durant, right side, down to the seven yard line. Defensively uh, ten, is where ten, they ten. had the best shot, ten, ten, ten. catching Seattle. But now Seattle go, knows left, two jet going midnight. into their finale trips against left, Vegas, two jet midnight. they jet just two, have to hold two. the Vipers to 18 midnight. points or less to maintain that edge in scoring defense. And the truth is, Lowell, you can't get too caught up in the numbers because we saw there was an early opportunity with that muff punt. You didn't take advantage of it. But also you saw with this game, the next one matters too. McCarron, back foot, Butler, give it to him. We talked about with this offense, getting Hakeem Butler involved early. This was a simple corner route to the outside. It's not just his size. It's his route running ability. Akeem Butler had won on a few inside routes. Well, now he stems inside and goes outside. All that space, A.J. McCarron just lays it out there for him to catch. And it will be a two-point conversion as Butler makes Kaka Nation proud. Three-point lead for the Battle Hawks. We got TP in the end zone. Streamers coming Wait. down left and right. Wait, See XFL, baby. McCarron hit as he throws to Aitman. Got it! And Akeem Butler's been in the NFL before. He played with the Cardinals in 2019, so he has NFL experience. Unfortunately, he hurt his hand and got injured. It wasn't so forgiving. Now people watch these games and say, get this guy back on my team. Dedrick Thomas getting loose. He's got to beat the kicker, but the kicker with the edge. Wow, we saw Donnie Hagman just keep six points off the board. Here's Taylor. Thank you, Well, We're about to witness the quarterback change. Coach, why the change? It's, it's part of our game plan. Uh, he was always going to play. I just want to give Francois a start and get some reps in and see what he can do. Thank you. Lowell? So it's got to be Mac Brown at quarterback now, right? <laughs> he, might, he may be the third option. Behind Quentin Dormady, who's really helped take this Orlando offense to a different level. It's been the combination of Shane Matthews taking over as the primary play caller and Dormady at quarterback. Dormady, deep, hits his man. Six more for Orlando. K.D. Cannon, another deep shot for the Baylor Bear. So K.D. Cannon holds records at Baylor for receptions, receiving yards. He's a record holder, played with the Cowboys. They talked about him saying, man, he's one of the fastest players on our team. And this is what the players for the Dallas Cowboys said when he played. And so his speed is what stands out. So whether he catches it from Quentin Dormady like he did this week or from punter Matt Brown like he did last week, he's a big play machine. This entire game is really challenging my math skills. Some more quick math there. That's now three catches on the season for KD Cannon for 155 yards. Two-point attempt. Dormady complete. That's to Andrew Jamil. Two more points and Guardians adding. 20 to 17. This is inspiring to watch with Terrell Buckley, who's with Taylor. Coach, is that exactly how you drew it up? Yes. <laughs> yes, that is exactly. We had the pose, we reading it, and then at two point, we finally trying to get some different plays in. What's allowed your offense to collect as explosive plays like we've seen through the first half? We're reading it, and we're calling it, and we're trying to make sure it happens. Instead of putting it on the board, we're actually trying to make it happen. Appreciate it, Coach. Lowell? So think about this. Eight coaches in the XFL, four of them have head coaching experience. And those 
are the coaches most likely to end up in the postseason. The four other coaches don't have that experience. Terrell Buckley had a very difficult start to the year, to the point where you almost felt bad for what was happening with this Guardians team. But every week, it's been better and better, and he is so appreciative for this opportunity for him. I talked to Terrell Buckley before the game, right at, right in the tunnel outside of their locker room, and he was saying, man, I wouldn't get this type of opportunity elsewhere, an opportunity to learn, to go through the ups and downs. Talk about, look at Nick Saban early in his career, all the great coaches, Bill Belichick. Some of these guys struggle early. So he was grateful for the opportunity to learn, and now second half of the season, they're progressing. And knows that next year, he comes into the season as the coach with experience that's going to be helping some of those other potential first-time coaches whether it be positional coaches or head coaches other where know how to establish yourself Good as the way. man in charge Please. the kick from Jose Borgales is away Shepard at the 10 Shepard to the 35 yard line McCarron back to work to Akeem Butler, had the last touchdown. Butler to the 40-yard line. Here's Taylor. Guys, I go back to what Dan Mullen told me about Coach Buckley, the two coached together at Mississippi State with one of the most dominant defenses in college football history. He told me that Coach Buckley relates to players almost as good as anyone he's ever coached around. We know there are growing pains with simply being a head coach, but I just go back to that chemistry with players. Coach Buckley talked about it on our call yesterday. Sometimes that will win out, and I think that's what we're seeing a little bit here. Wonderful. Had one-on-one -on -one meetings a couple days ago with every player on his roster, and that made him walk away saying, regardless of the record, this year is a success because I helped people develop away from the field and on the field. And a lot of teams will have exit interviews, so the season ends and, and all of a sudden you meet with your coach. But he did that a week prior because he knows that this may be the end for this team. Who knows who's going to be there next year? So he met with every single player, not just to find out their why, but to say, hey, how can I help you be better for the future? So that's what you learn when you start getting experience as a coach. Back-to-back -to -back two-point losses. Four losses this season by three points or less. And oh, by the way, only one team has defeated D.C. this season, and it is? It's this Orlando Guardians team. And you want to know who stood out in that game? It was Katie Cannon, who we saw the, t the big play from, and it was Jordan Thomas. Yeah, get, right? Not bad when you got Inside, a quarterback in quick dormant that's coming up right? with six Find total touchdowns. It's coming. Even if you got six we're doing that, you might want him to go at four. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Let's go. Bail it. Bail it. Bail it. Bail it. Hey, Brown Steelers cover one. Opportunity. So cover tough one. to find. If you want to be a head coach, how do you prepare for it? And to see the XFL giving four coaches an opportunity to be a head coach for the first time. And this is what we want in sports, too, ultimately. More opportunities for minorities to have power positions in sports within their team. And we're seeing that with Terrell Buckley. We're seeing it with coaches. We're seeing the opportunity for players, even referees. These are referees that the NFL has been looking at. Some of these referees have refed in college, and now it's saying, let's do it here, and now we'll get to that next level. And we have a woman on every officiating staff within the XFL. Penalty, it's fourth. So it's one Correction, thing third down. to <laughs> say we are a league of opportunity, but this group has put their money where their mouth is. They live that. Well, it's because, look at the leadership. You talk about Dwayne Johnson. He's a former player. I talked to some players in the XFL this week. They said, man, he gets it. What other league has ownership that used to play? Look at Danny Garcia, chairwoman of the XFL. She gets opportunity as well. And so everywhere you Here's see, it's kids, from the top Chevy, down. Leadership, providing opportunity all across the board. Third and six here for A.J. Six. McCarron. McCarron to a wide open. Gary Jennings. Jennings move the chains. Give him a first down. 11 11. 11 11. Good shit, guys. Good shit. Bunch right yak, 13 wham. Bunch right yak, 13 wham. 
Well, we talk a lot about what St. Louis has to do to win this game and score points, but we forget that Orlando is playing as well, and so all your plans could be great until the other team shows up on the other side. And there's nothing like facing a team that has nothing to lose. And case in point, that fake punt from Mac Brown, cheetah, cheetah, Jordan cheetah. Thomas, backed cheetah, up. Cheetah, cheetah, cheetah. Let's go empty left. That's cheetah, not in the normal left. realm of what you're expecting to see. Empty left, H. Malcolm. Cheetah, empty left, H. Malcolm. Right. H. Malcolm. On left. H. Malcolm left. And the fact that he even ran out on the field late, so that could have been an alert. Mac Brown wasn't phased. He said, I'm running it. Coach said, throw it. I'm going to throw it. St. Louis started with the football first, so Orlando will get it to start the second half. Working inside, and another completion to Jennings out of West Virginia. Here you go, Chita, so Chita. Gary Jennings. Let's go, bunch left empty, on his bunch catapult. left empty. 50 Chevy, Ohio, bunch left empty. XFL players wear catapult devices that tracks their speed through GPS. Jennings, the fastest of anyone that's won, won a sensor this year at 22.2 miles per hour. That's flying. What would your speed be, Lowe? I'm a solid 11. Here's McCarron. McCarron for the end zone! Brought down, no! Broke it up at the last second by Najim Hossein. That was the play. And that was, you, you, you know, A.J. McCarron's been through it all, so he understands, right? Won national championships. But plays like that, you'll get more opportunities, but plays like that, shout out to Najim Hossein, but also you want to come down with that at a critical moment. Fourth down, they're going for it. Empty left. 50 Purdue. I'll let you know. Hurry up. Fourth and three, part of the aggressive nature the Coach Beck was telling Ohio. Fitz about off the top of the broadcast. So from the 50 to 30, fourth and three closer. This fits the math that Beck would go for it inside the 30, fourth and six closer. Because again, if you're just tuning in, St. Louis is not just trying to win this game. They are chasing Seattle in points allowed and points scored because it could come down to a fourth tiebreaker scenario. And the benefit of a game like this is that St. Louis, they're trying to, th those two points allowed and points scored are separate. So if you score more points, you could actually pass Seattle in that ranking, even if you give up less, give up more than you would hope to. And so there is a formula for you to score a lot of points, even though you've given up more than the six that you would have hoped. Now the problem is Seattle yep, is averaging yep. 24 points per game. So if they need 20 to pass Seattle, that would mean scoring 44 points in in this game, which would tie Houston for the highest scoring game in the league this season. That's asking a lot for St. Louis. Here's fourth and three. McCarron staying alive. McCarron had first down yardage. Did Butler bring it in? He did. First down to Keem Butler. Who do you go to when it's on the line? Well, there's so many options, actually, with the St. Louis team. Butler is the most obvious slash right there. <laughs> right. That's Cordell Stewart back in the day. Punter slash quarterback in this case. Two minutes. We go to the college rules when it comes to clock stoppages. Clock will pause as chains are reset after first downs. It will stop with incompletions and plays out of bounds. McCarron, low snap. McCarron will keep going. Brought down at the 30 by Lakia Henry. 10, trips left. Trips left, 18 Wanda Sprite. Trips left, 18 Wanda Sprite. So if this eventually does come down to a tiebreaker, with St. Louis and Seattle, the first half has been a win for the Sea Dragons. Butler, wide open. Butler, did he lose the football and get it back? Down to the five. 
He did. He looks like he almost hey, lost it twice. Well, you know, so he grew up with the Harrison twins, right? Those Kentucky basketball stars. So it looked like he caught it, he dribbled it, and then he picked it back up. That was a great hit by the defender. Catch, obvious catch. Ball oh gets my. punched out by Matt Elon, the former first round pick from the Baltimore Ravens. But he recovers the football. That's that basketball awareness as well. And also being cool under pressure. Wow, sometimes you hear that phrase. And that's Matt Elam was well, injured, but is coming off the field. Sometimes we don't get the bounces. Well, sometimes you do get the bounces. They would always say in basketball, hey, man, the ball chose me. The ball found me. The ball found Akeem Butler in that situation. Ball don't lie. So a first and goal from the five-yard line. And St. Louis needs to just channel the mentality of making this a track race. They got to score as many points as they can. They want a shot in this tiebreaker scenario. Final spot in the north coming down to Seattle and St. Louis. Regardless of the outcome here, a Seattle loss Sunday against Vegas sends the Battle Hawks to the playoffs. That's a nice play call, Jake Sutherland. End zone. So one of the hardest things to do as a defender is to cover someone in space who's crossing from the other side of the line of scrimmage. Your eyes have to be great. If your eyes aren't great, then someone's going to get lost. And what happened was Jake Sutherland, the tight end, essentially had the defense get lost in coverage. That's how, why he was so wide open. And that play moves St. Louis past Seattle in terms of points scored this season. They need to keep padding that number because Seattle will know the magic number that they have to match or exceed yeah. on Sunday. Here's a two-point attempt. Set. Hey, bring, bring, bring. And this is all Wait. McCarron at the line. McCarron to Butler. Butler looking for a block. Did it get it? He's just a large human being. He don't need the block. I don't care if it's football, basketball, hockey. Hakeem Butler can do it all. And that was a play more about Will. You talk about it, man. You make the first man miss. Then you make the second guy miss. And then you do everything you can to get the ball into the end zone. Right. Miss right there. Stiff arm. Miss right there. Then you reach. Use your six-foot, six frame, your long arms. Get that ball in there. Hakeem Butler is that guy. Hard to believe only two targets last week. It's just fascinating because every point will matter up into the final point scored Sunday night with Vegas and Seattle. If it comes down to a fourth tiebreaker, it will be the combined divisional rank of scoring offense and scoring defense between St. Louis and Seattle. St. Louis trails Seattle in both of those categories it's a sizable deficit to start the game in scoring opposite offense. It was more manageable with scoring defense. But the 20 allowed seriously hurt St. Louis chances. They need a shutout from here on out. Cody Lattimore, his first reception of the day. Let's check in with Ian. St. Louis came into this game low as a nine point favorite total 48. So if you have the over in this game at 25 to 20 total of 45 points, you're feeling kind of frisky. <laughs> I love it. Teams favored by seven plus this season. One in five against the spread. Charleston Rambo, another large gain for Orlando. 26 yards. Did you see that? Pass by Quentin Dormady <laughs> in between two defenders. Twins talk about right, why Orlando's been so right, good. Inside That's why. Pin, X and Z stop. It has to be thrown in the end zone. In the end zone or out of bounds. End zone or out of bounds. You can't take a sack. Ten seconds 
This is a crucial stand for St. Louis. Dormady, no one there. Good job. That's a smart play. You heard Shane Matthew. You hear him say, good job. Smart play. Why? No more timeouts. So ball's got to either be out of bounds or in the end zone. Last, a few weeks ago, there was a sack, and that sack caused Orlando to lose the game they could have won. But going back to this play by Quentin Dormady, I mean, look at the precision of this pass. This is a cover two, so you have a player underneath and a safety over top trying to get to that edge. A perfect pass beats any kind of coverage. There's Jose, Jose Borgales. He's made six straight. This kick, we've got a flag. This kick goes back. I have a false start of 78. The game. 78. 78. Hold up. False start. What'd you have? 78. False, false start. Number 78. Offense, five yard penalty. Still second down. These points so critical for St. Louis. Ultimately, a field goal doesn't give Orlando the lead. However, every point allowed is a potential backbreaker when they're trying to close the gap on the Seattle defense. 51 yards for Borogales, the former Lou Groza Award winner at Miami. And a whistle. And a timeout. Prior to the snap, St. Louis has called their third and final charge timeout. So Anthony Beck trying to ice Borogales. To your point about the points, it's not just these two teams competing. I say these two teams, I mean St. Louis and Seattle competing for the points. It's where do they rank in their division, the XFL North? Where do they rank against D.C. and Vegas? And then if that tiebreaker isn't sufficient, where do they rank in the entire XFL? And so... They're not they're competing against the teams that are going to play after this game as well Tough to see anyone in their division passing them But there are more teams in between them in the XFL overall if it comes down to a fifth tiebreaker 51 yarder is up And it is No good Thank you for the insights Ian Fitzsimmons second half here we go Dedrick Thomas with the return Orlando will start with the football after St. Louis decided to take the ball to try to get some momentum early on. Keep doing what you're doing. All right, take advantage of every single snap. You're going to get the opportunity to be aggressive. Defense, not bad out there. Get off the field on third down. All right, no more points for them. All right, no more points. Shut them down. Let's go. That is a man that is fired up. Anthony Beck has done a heck of a job. It's his first season as a head coach. St. Louis came into the season as one of the preseason favorites to win it all. Well, they have so much talent. Even two of the players on this Orlando Guardians roster, one of them being Jordan Thomas, played for this St. Louis team. And that is Devin Darrington getting the carry. Darrington, solid first half. Had 133 yards rushing last week in San Antonio. The second best in the league this season. And I could see Orlando getting back to that running attack, getting the ball in Devin Darrington's hands early in the second half to calm everything down. Second and five. DeAndre Francois started at quarterback. Back to Quentin Dormady. Dormady goes down. Carson Wells with the stop. Wipe me down. There was nowhere to go from Carson Wells on the left side, pushing the pocket, collapsing the pocket, to Travis Feeney on the right side. LaCale London on the inside. That's called four people rushing as one. There's nowhere for the quarterback to escape. Coverage was great on the back side. And then Carson Wells finishes with the sack. A shutout in the second half is vital for St. Louis. That message relayed from Anthony Beck through Ian Fitzsimmons to us. Dormady's just going to flip it to Darrington. Darrington spinning out of one tackle. And three battle hawks there to bring him down. It will force a punt. High alert with the punt situation coming up. 
Well, they talk about having a few fakes up. They even put a new punt fake in not too long ago. And so you have to be on alert, but you also have to trust your technique and your preparation. If there are different people out there, you're St. Louis, you're saying, hey, we got we to gotta make sure that there is not a fake coming out. Remember, Mac Brown wasn't even the starting punter to begin the season for Orlando. That was Johnny Townsend who ended up getting hurt early in the season to open the door for Mac Brown out of Ole Miss. What do we have here? Oh, it's just a punt? Come on. There is a flag. Stephen Mitchell off the hop to the 30, looking for the sideline and tackled shy of the 40 by Mac Brown. Oh, they're going at the punter. He is living rent free inside the Battle Hawks dome. Hey, go slow here. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, here's the punch this shift. right here. Yeah, illegal shift on the one. Okay. Yeah, so. So we got a legal shift because they're not set, and we saw that. He was okay. never set. That's the first one. And then we're going to have something different. So we know we have Orlando up front. So hold on. Talk, yep. talk it through. Yep. So who's your foul on? Blue 33, he's the receiving yeah. team. Yeah. Okay, so you said that. Okay, so no late hit out of bounds. No late hit. They don't nope. have a okay. late hit. So you out of said balance. it was in play. So you're talking something after they the play with a chip shot, which is fine. Okay, so you're going dead ball. So we got the live ball and a dead ball there. But is it still? So you're into? What do you have? There's a there's a third foul. So there's no foul there. So we're going with 38. All right. So 33. Okay, dead ball. And that's going to be declined by rule. And then we're going 15 yards back that way after the play's over. Okay. Wait. Mike, so Mike, 30, slow down. So Let's talk about the okay. enforcement. You've got you've got a illegal illegal shift on the kicking team, correct? Yes, and correct. And we have a change of possession, and then we've got a dead ball on the receiving team, correct? Yes. So then, so we've got a double width. St. Louis can keep it and have yep. their ball and their 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 foul and force. But since we have a kicking play, yep. they can elect to re-kick. They have that option. Yep. Yep. We're t we're talking through that right okay. now. Okay. Great. Wait, each team. Yeah, he said a late hit. On them. And then they were illegal yeah. motion. So here's it's double width, right? What? So so this is what we have. You have the option we can we can offset both of these here and replay forth. And then we've got a late hit by your guys, which that could be enforced with your ball. Wait, our punt return. Mike, Mike, it's a re-kick. It's, re re -kick. it's an offset yeah. re-kick or Correct. 15 from he's, the he's dead ball spot. Correct. Correct. He's you, ball you want offset and re-kick? Yes. Okay. So we got 33 Kick and then, three. hey, Tate, 33, 33 blue, and then an Pump illegal return. shift by the offense. Pump return! Pump return! Okay. Yeah, so 22. Two, two. two fouls on the play, both by each team. The illegal shift, kicking team. Dead ball, personal foul on the receiving team. Those fouls will offset and we'll replay fourth down. So that's an inside look of what happens with the communication from the XFL's VP of Rules and Officiating, Dean Blandino. He has the constant communication with his officiating staff as well. All four sites every weekend. And the bottom line is, it's put into place this system so you ultimately get the calls right. At the end of the day, we talk about it. You want, you want it to be correct. So if you have an opportunity to go and look and say, this is what should happen, then, then make the correct call. In other leagues, the NFL, college football, they're looking at these types of rules innovations and saying, maybe we should implement these types of rules as well. Each team also has one challenge. You see that red dash below the timeouts. You can challenge anything. However, you need a timeout remaining to call a challenge. Matt Brown will punt again. Expected St. Louis to bring a little more pressure throughout the day on these punts. Haven't really had too much of an opportunity. As that is Mitchell trying to turn the corner and is brought down at the 32 yard line. You're trying to avoid a brawl after this, huh? You know it, baby. Is AJ McCarron wide open to Keen Butler to plus territory. 22 yards hey, for Keen Butler. I'm from Louisiana.
Louisiana. His best for last. I live in Texas. And let me tell you something. Watching that. Eight catches. Coach. 98 yards on the day for the Iowa State Cyclone. Sometimes when you're a type of player that can build the momentum, just keep on feeding me, and then it'll open it up for other people. And so you're going to see Akeem Butler get more targets, but watch out for Marcel Aitman as well. McCarron wheeling and dealing. Shepard slips through one. Shepard brought down at the 35-yard line. So interesting in, in a league that promoted Martavis Bryant, Josh Gordon at receiver. Don't get me wrong, Gordon's been really good, but it's been the emerging threats. Ja'Core Pearson in Seattle, Darius Shepard in St. Louis, they've been more of the story of the league. Back to Kareem Walker. Walker full head of steam. He's about a yard and a half shy of the first down. 300 jet and you almost Z smoke pump Hakeem stutter and hit the sideline bump right tight action 300 jet Z smoke pump so telling Hakeem Butler stutter and hit the sideline there's a stutter there's a sideline but McCarron was pressured flag down McCarron's got the first down and a flag down at the 15 yeah. and the 30. Got hey, stay there. Got we have two fouls. We have yeah. two fouls. Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. Dean, can you look at the back in 61? Was there enough engagement there on the left guard for a high-low? I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. Illegal contact on the defense, number 23, and I've got a potential chop of zero and 61 there. No, I'm good. Yeah, you're you're okay. There's enough There's enough okay. engagement. Yeah. yeah. So there's two fouls. We're going to offset this. 23 is on chop yours. Lock. That's what they have. Okay. There are two fouls on the play, both by each team. They're engaged. One, Illegal one, contact, one. number 23. Defense, personal foul, chop block, number zero and number 61. Offense, those fouls will offset, will replay. Second down. Ha ha. The beauty of this Pirate. league, Lowell, is Pirate. that Brown piece Raiders about cover one. Brown Raiders cover one. communicating, 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 and then getting the call right. And that was a play call from Tony Carter, former All-ACC DB at Florida State, defensive coordinator for the Guardians. Second and one. Walker almost breaks out of a tackle from Ty Smith, thinking a house call against the first down. Again, this is the St. Louis team playing without the league's second-leading rusher, Brian Hill. He's out for personal reasons. And it's been a pass-happy approach. I mean, McCarron is putting together one of the most prolific passing games we've seen all season long. This is who he's been all season, outside of last week coming out of that injury. But he's been precise. I mean, I don't know if he's on the level of Mac Brown or Sterling Hoffrick here, but pretty good. Hey, we're good. We're good. Here we go. Three national championships Six. at Alabama. Two as the starter at quarterback. Walker. Why trade to Trips right? Why trade to Trips right? Jihad. Why trade to Trips right? Jihad. Let's go. Stop the bullshit, guys. Right. Bruce Gronkowski looking for a little more intensity with his offense. Why trade to Trips right? Jihad. Urgency. It's Set. the name of the game Move. for St. Louis. Hurry up. They need a win, Set. and they need to make up ground on Seattle in points scored and points allowed. Wait, 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 Play action. McCarron in zone. What a catch! Stephen Mitchell put him on the Sports Center top ten. You heard the communication right before the snap. A.J. McCarron talking to Stevie Mitchell, and he gets him on the same page, rolls out to the right, knows the pressure is coming, and lays it out away from the defender, and Stevie Mitchell makes the play right before A.J. Karen told him, go make it for me. That is a former NFL quarterback with an NFL throw to a former NFL receiver making an NFL catch. Stevie Mitchell with 10 games in his NFL career, 
Last played in 2020 with the Texans. Two-point attempt here for St. Louis. All sorts of time for McCarron. Directing traffic back in the end zone. Tight window. Two more points. It's that man again, Stephen Mitchell, times two. How much does point differential and tiebreakers come into decision making right now, Coach Beck? Well, yeah, you know, we've been aggressive the whole game. I mean, we're having fun right now. This is a point in point in the game for us. Great try by our offense. We had a stop on defense. This is where you can kind of maybe get one from them on the defensive side. It's a huge opportunity for our defense here. So every time we get the ball, we really haven't been stopped offensively. We got to keep it going. A lot of time left. Clock's in our favor. Guys have momentum. We got to keep scoring. Go. Oh. Right. Thank you. So if both Seattle and St. Louis win this weekend, it's going to come down to a fourth or fifth tiebreaker to determine who goes to the XFL playoffs. This is Dedrick Thomas. There's a flag down. Thomas keeps going north of the 35. Holding 65 Orlando during the return. I had that same one. Uh, it was that much in the open. Hey, where do we want to enforce that from? We want to go from the 24 or the big line? Big line good? 25? 25-yard line's fine. It's a five, it's a 10-yard foul. Yeah. 65, we said yes. 65, yes, sir. 65. During the return, holding number 65, receiving team, 10-yard penalty. It's first down. So the fourth tiebreaker would be your combined rank in scoring offense and defense in the division. Currently, Seattle, coming into the week, leads in both. St. Louis would need to match them in both of those categories or pass them in one of them to force a fifth tiebreaker, where Seattle would still have the edge. If they pass them in both, St. Louis would go. Quint Dormany, quick pass behind Cody Lattimore. Here's the deal, though, because... Seattle plays last, so they will know the magic number. And this is why we're on the fourth tiebreaker. The head-to-head, -head, the team split. First one was very close. St. Louis winning in Seattle. Winning percentage in division games are both three and three. And the combined record of the teams they defeated, it's the same record. So that brings us to the fourth tiebreaker. I know it's convoluted. But it will make sense at the end of the weekend. First down from Dormady to right. Cody Lattimore. Twins now right. that is if Scat both right. teams y win. Five. If Seattle five. loses, this that game is irrelevant. 81. If Seattle loses, St. Louis will go to the XFL playoffs. Did you get all that? Dormady again. Locking in on Cody Lattimore. Needs to score more than 14 points against Vegas and allow less than 26. Fitz, those are both doable numbers. And if Seattle does that, they advance if both teams win. Lola, it took me six and a half years to get out of undergrad at Alabama. You're <laughs> making my head hurt, but God bless you. Hey, I'm making my head hurt. <laughs> You can feel now, Lowell and Fitz, the crowd get involved into this game. They understand how critical of a moment this is. Third and three, Dormady into traffic. It is brought Ghost in right. by Jalen Smith, right. another right. Right. former battle hawk for the smash. first down. Double smash. Actually, we go heard lefty. <laughs> Tell Jalen go lefty. My guy. Lefty. Lefty. Is that possible? My guy is drinking a beer through a Hawks mask. I don't know how that's possible. But I love that guy. Dormany. Quick strike. Dan Williams. Yeah, Decent yeah, gain yeah, on KDM. first down. Yeah. I wonder the math on right. that. On Stand the guy with right. the battle <laughs> Inside pin. That's got to add to your X total in some way. Play calls coming in from Shane Matthews, one of Steve Spurrier's former gunslingers at Florida. There he is. St. Louis could not surrender more points. Dormady engulfed by 
the Battle Hawks defense give the sack to Ellum Lamore. That's back-to-back -back weeks for Ellen Lamore with the sack. Started off the season strong, got injured, but we talked about it. Four rushing as one. You see all the guys, even back to Jalen Robinson. He's the cover guy. He's the one who's making sure the quarterback doesn't escape. Three of the defenders all collapsing the pocket. One guy spying on the quarterback. That's called a unit, a defense playing as one body. The pride of Western Illinois, Eric Hansen from Upper Iowa, also there. Sometimes, though, you can take the game into your own hands. Lakel London is, is a big body. He's 335 pounds. They lined him up on the outside to use his power. And then Eric Hansen on the inside, he loops around. And so it doesn't matter who on this defense is getting the pressure, but all four guys on the front, even the rotation, guys are getting it. And you can feel the magnitude of every snap. It's going to be like this. Three hit zeros in the last game of the weekend with Seattle and Vegas. Urgency, urgency, Sam. Arlington with the win, they are in. If Arlington loses and San Antonio wins, the promise going to the XFL playoffs. And with the Seattle loss, that at the moment looks like St. Louis's best shot to go. A Seattle loss, regardless of what happens here, sends the Battlehawks to the playoffs. But both St. Louis and Seattle Two of the biggest favorites this weekend that we've seen all season long. How tough is it to play when you are that heavily favored? Well, it's more probably tougher to coach. As a player, you're saying, hey, I'm looking at my matchup, whether I'm a defensive end looking at the offensive tackle or if I'm a safety reading what the quarterback does. You focus on your matchup. But as a coach, you start looking at the numbers. You start thinking about the momentum that you may or may not have. It does get difficult. So you have to channel your emotions and just do what you've done all season long. Momentum squarely residing on the shoulders of the Battle Hawks. They have scored touchdowns on four straight Whitey! possessions. A.J. McCarron unconscious. McCarron into the hands of Butler. Case and Blunt. Butler, you're not going to catch me. You want to know why this lead is so great for so many players. Hakeem Butler was a fourth round pick in the NFL, had a great opportunity, great college career. He broke his hand in training camp. All of a sudden, you lose the opportunity, but here you're showing, I'm healthy, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm still scoring. 66 yards later, Hakeem Butler, touchdown, run up them points, baby. And how about Marcel Aitman, who was supposed to be the go-to receiver of the St. Louis offense. He's dealt with a hammy injury for a long part of this season. He had the key block. He had the key block, and that's a team being a team. I've known Marcel Aitman for over a few years now. He's the ultimate teammate, whether he did it in college, whether he does it off the field with his family. Hey, He's hey, the ultimate hey, teammate. That's the stuff that don't doesn't do show up in a scoreboard, how you block. Yep, I'm going to look at my left 25. He's engaged at this point. Feet are moving. He continues. I'm going to go to the high end zone next. So I've got three engaged. I'm looking. I don't see. I see something hooked. But I see he keeps his feet moving. I want to look at one more, one more shot. I'm going to look at my all 22 to see if there's any restriction. Feet are moving, keeps going. Okay. After review, Mike, there's just not enough restriction there. Keeps his feet moving, not enough to say holding. Ruling on the field stands. So this is a challenge by Orlando when you challenge you. the ruling of a hold. There is no foul, it's a touchdown. Orlando loses their challenges for the remainder of the game and is charged the timeout. You must specify 
what part of the play you were challenging. You cannot make a blanket challenge, but I can't blame Terrell Buckley in this moment for looking for something. It's a big moment. You want to use your challenge. You can't take it home with you. You call your timeout. You say specifically, I think that number three was holding, and if you see it, then it gets hey. called. If the Dean Blandino doesn't see it, doesn't get called. But that's the hey. stuff that matters more hey. than anything. NFL coaches are watching this hey. tape and saying, who makes the big plays? Who also does the little things? Little things done well make big things happen. 164 Oscar. through Oscar. the year for no, Butler. Tops in the XFL this season. Wait. Wait. Best for last. Week 10 here in St. Louis. Eight men can't make the catch. McCarron feeling pressure. It has been tough to rattle A.J. McCarron. Seattle did it last week, but he's been unflappable here today. A.J. McCarron has been not only the consummate pro, but the example of what this opportunity provides. Could have been a backup in the NFL. He said, no, I want to play so my kids can watch me play. And oh, by the way, because I'm going to be great, I'm going to have all of those around me be great. Stevie Mitchell, Marcel Aitman, Darius Shepard, every single, and Akeem Butler, every one of my players, I'm going to give them an opportunity as well. And it's playoff intensity from a guy that's experienced it. He's played at the highest level at Alabama, at the college football playoffs, won two national titles as a starter, three overall. While at Alabama, this is a playoff atmosphere, and it feels that way inside the dome. You cannot escape the magnitude. It's so intriguing in a way that's only can be done in the XFL, the game within the game. St. Louis trying to win this while they make up ground on Seattle in the tiebreaker scenario. Thomas to the 30-yard line. And you know what this does? This puts more pressure on Seattle. Seattle came into this game watching, saying, well, we're good. You know, we're up by 19 in points and six in points against. But now all of a sudden, you, you might feel that pressure as a player. You might want to force a few more throws tomorrow. You might want to score more points tomorrow. And so by playing the way the game, the way you need to play it in, in this game, you're putting pressure on an opponent that is sitting at home watching. So if both team wins, the magic numbers for Seattle, they need to score more than 20 points, which is below pretty much their season scoring average and allow less than 26. DeAndre Francois back at quarterback. He got his first career start here today. Bullet pass, Charleston Rambo, excuse me, KD Cannon with the grab. Quarterback chain, Cyril Buckley talked about. I'm gonna give both quarterbacks an opportunity and now we're going to see if Francois will either use his legs or use his arm to come back and win this game. It has to be shutout football for St. Louis the rest of the way. That was a message from Beck at the half. Francois on skates. Get the first down. Breaking ankles is DeAndre Francois. So Seattle averaging 24 points per game when we talk about that magic number for them. And, and that's the piece, too, that matters a lot more than we're giving it credit for. Seattle came into this game knowing, OK, if we win, we're probably going to be in. But now you saw St. Louis score more than they've scored in a half all season. It's still three minutes left in the third quarter, and they're just getting started. You've got an offense in Seattle that scores a lot, but that does turn the ball over a lot. If you start forcing it in that game, now you could put your defense at detriment. Seattle still does have a huge advantage because of the 20 points allowed by St. Louis in this game. That would be critical if it comes down to a fifth tiebreaker, which is the overall rank in scoring offense and defense among all teams in the XFL. There are more teams between Seattle and St. Louis in the overall rankings. When it's just the division, they are back to back. You can almost feel the, the, the pressure of the moment for both teams in this scenario. St. Louis no one needs to be stopped. Orlando saying what we can do to end it. Second of five. Francois hit 
dropped. Lamar does it again. I'll say this. When Ellen Lamore is healthy, and he has been these last few weeks, he is a game wrecker. He's at the top of your screen. He simply just does a club and a rip. All you do, you see the offensive lineman's outside hand. You hit it down, which turns your hips around. Then you rip your arm through. It's one of the most basic pass rush moves in the book. But when you perfect it, it can be nearly unstoppable. Finish his career at Towson. Started it at Rutgers, where he led the Scarlet Knights in sacks in three straight years. He's got two here today. Third down, pitch and catch to Dan Williams. It's close. Rolling on the field is completed pass short of the line to gain. It's fourth down. Go for it, Tom, here for the Guardians. Previous play was under review. It was determined that the receiver made the line to gain. It's first down. 43, Orlando. 43, 43 yard line. So here's the benefit. Yep, we're going to move the ball to the 43, first, first and 10. 43 yard line. Here's your, a half. So there's your progress yep, spot go. right there. Good. You can see here contact, and he's right on the 43. Maintains control, completes the catch. So, Dean, that's something you're looking at immediately, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Line of gain, scoring plays, catch no catch. That's all from the command center. We saw that the line of gain was made at the 43. Thank you, Dean. Francois first down. Hit as he throws. Sounds high. Oh, the gimme. It was there for Lucas Dennis. So I don't know if y'all saw what I saw, but number 96, LaCale London, just ran through the offensive guard. I'm not going to say his name. Give the man some grace. But I will say this. Lucas Dennis, ah! Dennis has a pick on the season. <laughs> Damn it. He had a high goal, a lofty goal. But remember last time, you miss a play, you make a play. Fundamentals, technique, fall into your lap. There's Darrington working left side and brought down in a hurry. Good pursuit by Carson Wells. You gonna keep letting him hit me like that? Yeah, it sounded painful. I can only imagine how it actually felt. Fourth quarter time. This city deserves football, and the XFL has delivered. Third and eight. France, whoa, that's going to be short. Two yards shy. Another no-brainer fourth down coming up for the Guardians. And, Lowell, you talk about the city of St. Louis. But really, every city we, in the XFL, we've been a part of these crowds, these fans. I got to pay homage to them because they're showing up for their team, for their city, for these players, and it means something. Different here, the fact that football has been taken away. XFL bringing it back. Fourth and two. Francois will stay up. First down yardage and tripped up by the turf monster. But DeAndre Francois gets the job done with a 10-yard pickup on fourth. That's the difference when you have a quarterback who can use his legs. As soon as it's not there, immediately he gets his head down and starts to go. And if it weren't for that turf monster, which you know you can get up and keep going unless you're touched, it would have been a turnover on downs. Inside the 30, St. Louis needs a takeaway right now. Thought they had one, slipped through the hands of Lucas Dennis. They cannot allow points if they want a shot in the tiebreaker scenario. Francois, big off, they got it! Dennis isn't dropping this one, he's back up! Cutting back! If at first you don't succeed, pick it off the second time!
The ball does not lie. Lucas Dennis was working corporate jobs in Boston before this. One of the smartest dudes, went to the number four business school. This dude missed a play, but then sometimes you just trust your technique and you will make a play. He had a lofty goal. He wanted 10 picks on the season. He's dropped a, dropped a few. Now he's got it. Boston College, Paul Hawks, Brandon oh. Sebastian, and Lucas Dennis, both with interceptions. McCarron to follow. Durant. Durant to the sideline. Spinning, staying up to the 30. Give him 28 yards. The NFL draft begins Thursday, and we'll have every pick once again on ESPN, along with our usual expert analysis. It's also available on the NFL Network, and ABC's coverage focuses on the prospect's journey to the draft. All three days are also live on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. Durant carrying the load with no Brian Hill, and he wants all the contact. Fitz. Thanks, Lou. Lucas, you're working at Daily and Associates as a financial advisor, and here you are grabbing picks in the XFL. Sir. You know, I, I just saw, you know, the ball come up in the air. I had an opportunity last uh, last play, didn't make it, and I owed my team that one. What's it mean not working that 9-5 to five and being out here with the boys? Uh, honestly, this honestly the best thing I could have dreamed of. Uh, just playing football again is the best opportunity. And there we go. There we go. Well, Shepard inside the five. And Sam, we can't sum up how significant that interception was because points matter in the chase with Seattle, and they took at least three off the board. And even psychologically, sometimes if you mess up or you make a mistake, some players go down in the dumps. He said, no, forget about it. Next play. When he was doing that job in Boston, hey, all he hey, would do was watch football. Hey, so he said, I can't hey, wait for this opportunity. Go stop! McCarron, the master at the line of scrimmage. McCarron for Butler overthrown. That's the guy you want to go to. Nine catches, 164. McCarron with 350 through the air. Second most in the NX XFL this season. Unreal. Shepard, back shoulder, like a loaf of bread, pour it on. So when he was at North Dakota State, he came back and ran routes for Trey Lance's pro day. And Darius Shepard actually was a little bit upset with Trey Lance for saying, man, you got to write down exactly what the yardage mark marks are, where the sticks are for every single route. The precision of this route, the timing of the route, the perfectly placed ball, then the ability to bring it back in. That's why he's a three-time FCS national champion. St. Louis, a week after having their lowest offensive output of the season, they have their best with 45 and still plenty of time to add. Two-point attempt. 180! Watch Slant! Off the hands. We have a flag. It went from Gary Jennings and almost flag ended down. up in the midst of Aitman. The ball is touching on. Gone. The gone. Uh, he he was he 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 was blocked. He was screened out. He was screened out. He was screened out. No foul. No, he, no foul, foul for offensive pass interference. Yes. No foul for offensive pass interference. There is no foul on the play. The try is no good. Timeout on the field. 
This all fits in too with the XFL fabric. It's the first time a spring league has really worked hand in hand with the NFL when it comes to rules, innovations, and also embracing the fact that these players are looking for opportunities to play in the NFL. Fitz. Lowell, talking to several scouts and NFL GMs and preparing for the NFL draft, which I'll be a part of with Mike Tannenbaum, Chris Canty, and Chris Carlin on ESPN Radio, not one but two NFL general managers brought up the name Darius Shepard to me. You talk about a league of opportunity. Not only are they getting ready and scouting college players and other teams, but also this league, Shepard, again, not one but two NFL GMs brought him up as a returner. Great point, Fitz. We're also going to have late round selections that for whatever reason may not stick as Dormady finds Jamil that could immediately end up in the XFL. And one thing about the timing of this league is that as soon as this league ends, teams are allowed to contact XFL players. They may not be able to sign until May. Got to get through the draft and that first part of the offseason team activities. But this is a perfectly timed season. Season ends, draft begins, find your NFL needs. Stormity into traffic, back to Jamil. Jamil's getting his shot to show what he's made of because for some of these players, even if you're not going to get an invite to an NFL camp, you're trying to get invited back to your team. Each XFL franchise will retain the rights to their players, but there is going to be roster movement in the offseason. There's Jordan Thomas with a gain of about eight. And you listen to some of the players as you talk to them, a lot of them want to go to the NFL, but some of them love this league. They love being able to play in this environment with these players and to still have an opportunity to play. And so some have been to the NFL, want to get there. Some haven't. Some That's their goal. But the goal of this league is to make this the destination where everyone wants to go. We think about A.J. McCarron. He's made his money with a long career in the NFL as a backup. He's secure in that area. Now he gets to play. That's something I've never thought of really. These backup quarterbacks, it's a great job. They're competitors, and they don't get to play. Here they do. And he said he's not done yet. No matter what happens at the end of this game, whether they make it or not, really at the end of tomorrow's game with Seattle, he said he's not done playing football, whether that's here in the XFL or like likely, which it may be, NFL scouts watching this saying, man, maybe this guy deserves a shot to start in the NFL, yeah. not just be a backup in the NFL. We saw it. The last version of the XFL in 2020, a guy like P.J. Walker out of Houston ended up starting games for the Carolina Panthers. Taylor Heineke as well. Here's Quentin Dormady. And that's to the former Battle Hawk Jordan Thomas. There are seven players currently on XFL rosters that started the season with St. Louis and were cut from the Battle Hawks. Not because they were bad players, but because this roster is so loaded. It says a lot about Beck and scouting talent. It's one of the deepest rosters in the XFL, hands down. Quick hitter to Andrew Jamil. So here we go again. This is vital in the race with Seattle to close the gap on them in scoring offense and defense. St. Louis really cannot allow more points. Last time inside the 30, they got the interception by Lucas Dennis. They need something else along those lines. Because if both Seattle and St. Louis win, it will go to the fourth or maybe even fifth tiebreaker, which is the divisional rank of combined scoring offense and defense. Allowing 20 points already makes it an uphill battle for St. Louis. But it's still in the realm of possibility at 20. Draw for Dormany. He's got the first down. Right at the 20-yard line. Every point is going to matter from start to finish in week number 10 to determine the final two spots. So the XFL playoffs, D.C. with one loss to Orlando. That's it on the season. They've secured home field in the north. Houston has secured home field in the south. St. Louis has already scored 45 points this game. That's the most by any team in the XFL all season long. And so you think that they're not keeping track of what we're talking about? They know it full well. 
Dormady. That is complete to Charleston Rambo, the Miami Hurricane, and former OU Sooner. St. Louis, more than a stop, they need to take away again. On the ground to Martin, and it's a first down. So will both teams win? St. Louis would have to catch Seattle in both scoring offense and scoring defense to force a fifth tiebreaker or pass them in one of those categories. If they could pass them in both, they go. St. Louis goes. Fade ball, and that is the play that worked against San Antonio last week with big old Jordan Thomas. Now, the easiest way to figure out this playoff scenario is a Seattle loss. Doesn't matter what happens here. St. Louis is automatically in. And even though you're up by 25 at this point, you're St. Louis, you're still looking at that clock tick and tick and tick in the XFL, whether it's an incomplete or out of bounds. The clock will, will not stop outside of those two minutes. And so you're trying to get a stop, but hurry up and get a turnover to get the ball back to your offense. Dormady, deep drop, swatted away, looking for Cody Lattimore. And Brandon Sebastian with a PBU. That dude loves it. Third and goal, about to get loud. I go x -Pate. You heard the X fade by Shay Matthews, so you should be looking for number 81, Jordan Thomas, 6'5", 277. Looks left instead, touchdown, Charleston Ramble. That could be a backbreaker for the Battlehawks. Yes, they're gonna win this game, but that could be the play that keeps St. Louis out of the playoffs. You could see the, the devastation on Anthony Beck's face. How do we give that up on third down? Obviously, you got Thomas on the outside, but you go to the backside to Rambo. But now, you talked about it. Those could be the points, but these two low could be the points that matter. Even there, you be smart. The easier path to catching Seattle would have been defensively to pitch a shutout in this game. But Orlando is not cooperating and put it on the spot to KD Cannon. Orlando to kick it away. 5-10 left to go in the fourth quarter. Those points allowed, potentially backbreakers for St. Louis. We'll get into the mouth here in just a moment. Darius Shepard with the return from the five. Darius Shepard looking for green. Gets it to the 50. Still on his feet to the 40. Shepard showing why. He's the best in the XFL at doing that. Turtleneck man. I don't know what's going on inside his head, but it's all admiration from here. You wonder why XFL coaches or really NFL coaches are looking at Darius Shepard? It's big returns like that. He came into this game leading the XFL in return yards, and he's continuing that march. A.J. McCarron. Move. Closing in on Ben DiNucci for most passing yards in a game. DiNucci has 377. McCarron has 354. They need more points. It will not be enough. McCarron, Shepard inside the 20 to the 10. So here's the beauty. You see it's almost like an outside zone play, an outside play. Darius Shepard gets the block from Gary Jennings and returns it. And then also the precision, the timing, the spacing of this route, of the pass. Darius Shepard, he's been doing this all season long. He's continuing in the special teams game and as a receiver. 384 for McCarron, an XFL record. Hey, kick cold. He's also got five cold. touchdowns. Looking to kick add cold. at least one Set. more. Kick cold. 180. Wait, Jennings at running back, showing some shiftiness. And the converted wide receiver inside the five-yard line. Oh, 
All right, looking at the math, this is what you need to know. Seattle needs to score more than 26 tomorrow against Vegas and allow less than 34. If they can do both of those things, Sea Dragons are in. McCarron to Aitman, tried to shepherd one-hander, could not get it. And at this point, Sam, it needs to be passing Seattle in both because the fifth tiebreaker would come into it if they only pass Seattle in one category. And it's probably not going to be the defense. Because right now, if you look at the XFL-wide numbers, Seattle is number two overall in scoring defense, and St. Louis is way back at five and could drop more. Third and goal. McCarron rocked off the fingertips of Butler. We've got a late flag. Is McCarron okay, though? In the end zone. Yeah, it would be at the one-yard line. What's the number, 13? Number one? one. Pass interference, number one. Defense, ball placed at the one-yard line. It's first down. It's against C.J. Holmes. And this is why, Lowell, to your point, all the other games matter. Because in that fifth tiebreaker, in the fifth tiebreaker, it goes to league-wide. And so that defensive mark, Seattle is way, way ahead. But those other games, Arlington, Houston, coming into this game, there was a six-point differential between what these teams have given up. And so maybe Arlington gives up some points in Houston, but you can't rely on all that to happen. First and goal for McCarra. Kareem Walker upended at the one-yard line. The most likely path for St. Louis, if it would have been wins for them and Seattle, would have been scoring defense. That has been a disappointment here. 73 points, tying the highest scoring game this season. 45 for St. Louis. That is an XFL best. Orlando standing tall. And Walker, half yard away. And the flag is out late. I've got a good spot at the one yard line. Seventy three. Seventy three? All right, and we're going to go back, and it's going to so be, it's going to be 73. third down, correct? Yep, the offense. So it's going to be third 73. Down. Number 73, got yep. it. Yanked him off the After pile. After the play, the play is, is over, over on sportsmanlike sportsman -like conduct. conduct number 73, offense. Yep. 15-yard penalty, the down counts. It's third down. That hurts. That is number 73's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Ah, is, is there a lot there? Well, you see that the play is over. The referee's right there. They don't want players going into piles and pulling other opposing players off of piles. So that's where that call is called. Coming up on the two-minute warning. And it doesn't look like St. Louis will get a playoff. And we go to the final two minutes this is the two minute of the warning. season for the, the Orlando Guardians. It's a compliment. <laughs> Third and goal from the 15 for McCarron on a record setting goal. And more. Battlehawks ain't done yet. A 400 yard game for A.J. McCarron. I don't know if there's another team that has this many weapons. If it's not Stevie Mitchell, it's Akeem Butler. If it's not Akeem Butler, it's it's Marcel Aitman. If it's not Marcel Aitman, it's Darius Shepard. If it's not, it's Gary Jack. This offense is so explosive. And then, oh, by the way, no Brian Hill. Oh, by the way, your quarterback is A.J. McCarron. St. Yeah. Louis lining hey. up for the two-point conversion. Hey. Go Razor! 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 
Razor, set. White 80, white And McCarron to Butler. Two more. And trucks that football into the home field fans of St. Louis. Now here's something to think about. Anthony Beck told us coming into this game, he would be open to a late game onside kick. Now can't do the fourth and 15 because they lead. The problem is though, the points allowed are the bigger issue right now than points scored. If you don't convert on an onside kick, you put Orlando in great field position to score. So what you do now is you kick it off normally as planned, and then now you use your timeouts. It doesn't make sense to run by so much. No, it does. Use your timeouts, stop the offense, and then you'll have your opportunity to get one more score. So we saw the point scenario there. Seattle needs to score more than 34 against Vegas and allow less than 34. With the win under those parameters, Seattle will go to the XFL playoffs. Dedrick Thomas. Hit brought down. Yeah, that's what makes it tough in this scenario. So on defense, you say, all right, guys, forget the scoreboard. Get a sack, get a pick six, force a turnover, give our offense the ball. Jordan Thomas brought down from behind by Travis Feeney. And what this also is, is a final two minutes, a celebration of a fantastic season for St. Louis, for the XFL here in St. Louis and for Orlando, a team that has gone through their lumps, have a marquee win against DC, have given hope to Terrell Buckley with a year of experience. Next year will be a different story for this Guardians franchise. And it's all these players who are getting an opportunity to play. Some of them will go to the next level. Some of them, this may be their last ride. Dormady feeling the pressure sliding down. Yeah, we talked to Terrell Buckley about a guy like Stansley Maponga, who we saw shaking it earlier in the game. Maponga is the oldest Saint Louis player. has called the first charge timeout of the second half. Ma it's a 30 second timeout. Maponga, the oldest player on this Orlando team at 32 years. Terrell Buckley loves him. Has a new appreciation for what he means to the younger guys on the team. But that's a player. He doesn't know at his age if he's getting another shot. This could be it. And he had his shot in the NFL, and he said, as a young player, I didn't really have the mentorship that I would have hoped for. Now, let me give that same mentorship to guys in this league. Maybe I'll extend their XFL career. Maybe I'll extend their NFL career, or at least teach them the habits that I did not have coming out of TCU. Playoffs start next week. Two teams are in, waiting for the final two. We may not know until the clock strikes zero in the final game of the XFL season. That is the way you want to build up drama, and this league has delivered. And we talk about this, this game in the XFL North. The game after us, the XFL South has a huge matchup as well. San Antonio wins, needs Arlington to lose. Two playoff spots are open. Let's see how it unfolds. There's a third and five for Dormady. Looking for Jameel, miscommunication that will bring up a fourth down. So what'll be interesting here is Coach Buckley talks about all the fakes that he has up this week. This seems like a normal punt situation, <laughs> but what, what are you thinking this fourth and five? Could you use one of those fakes right now to keep the other team from getting the ball back? We're going to go from one shutdown corner turned head coach to another because coming up next is the Colorado spring game with coach prime Deion Sanders as Orlando calls a timeout Taylor McGregor Ian Fitzsimmons and another Mac Brown fake will this one work picked off Brandon Sebastian with number two Clock strikes midnight. 
for the Magic Man, Mac Brown. Dominate the day. What a time to make a play like that. So it's a fake. You know it's a fake. But see the coverage. Everyone's staying back in your zone. Even if the quarterback, in this case, the punter, rolls out to one side, stay in your zone. The ball gets tipped oh. up in the air. Yeah. Make the play for your team. Here's Bart. Yeah. Ball. Yeah. Go. Let's go. It's amazing how so many of the mic'd up moments of the head coaches, it's just them screaming, yeah. Go! <laughs> it's jubilation. Sometimes you don't Every have left. the words to say, but that feeling is too much. Those are the magic numbers. This is why Seattle has the advantage. If Seattle wins and they score more than 34 points and allow Vegas to less than 34, Seattle will go to the NFL playoffs over St. Louis. And at this point, as we're shedding tackles here in St. Louis, bouncing off Gary Jennings. The edge decidedly goes to St. Louis, excuse me, to Seattle in the tiebreak scenarios. But I'm not ready to write off Seattle. If they did it in the first week, they could do it again. I mean, St. Louis with the magic. That fourth and 15 comeback against San Antonio. They can still get in if Vegas pulls the upset against the Sea Dragons. I'm saying Seattle's the team to beat. Because what we overlook with the Sea Dragons, I mean, we talk so much about June Jones, Danucci, Pearson, all the playmakers that they have around them, Josh Gordon. That Ron Zook defense, it's the best in the league. They are the best in the league from the front end to the back end. Look at guys like Lyndon Stevens on the back end, Antoine Brooks. Then you got the pass rushers, guys like Tuzar Skipper. They are a complete team. And that's why we're Off. looking at these numbers it's like, man, we're going to get this win and we'll be fine. That's what they're Set. thinking as they watch. Stop! Stop it! 180! Wait The Karen ball is up. Big ball! He's got it! And sliding down and taking a hit is Jared Jones Smith. 28. Ball's at the 28-yard line where he picked it up. 28-yard line. I got your spot, 28. Recovered. It was recovered here. We got it at the 28. We killed it there. Good deal. What, Connor, what do we have here, bud? I got a hurt late hit. Talk to me. Is that is that you saying slow down, D? Yeah. I got a late hit on number 48. 48 late hit? Yeah. Okay. Taking a cheap shot. Dean, good with that? He actually... You have it on the, on the player that recovered the fumble? No, sir. I've got it on the guy who tat who just hit the guy who recovered the fumble. Yeah, the the, the, the player that recovered. White. Pick it up. Pick it up. There's no foul. Pick There's it up. No. Okay. And we're gonna. There's no foul on the play. He picked count. it up at the 31, gonna guys. Take, he's gonna take a time to the 31, Crystal. Move it to the 31. He picked it up at the 31. 31. 31. 31. 31. 31 yard line is where he picked it up. It's fourth down. That's correct. Fourth down at the 31. Fourth down at the 31. Who called St. Louis did? Great. Timeout, guys. What down is it? St. Louis has called a timeout. It'll be fourth down. Do we want to kick a field goal? Kick a field goal. Field goal, field goal, field goal. Field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal. Field goal. It's definitely fourth down. Definitely fourth so down. So back. Looking for all so the points he can get right here. Check. And it's going to be Donnie Hagman. Hagman, the man that had the game-winning field goal in week two against Seattle. St. Louis could have clinched their spot with a win against Seattle in this building last week. Came up short. Now it will be in the hands of the Vegas Vipers to put the Battle Hawks into the XFL playoffs. 49 yards for Hagman. The kick is up. No good. So what does Terrell Buckley and Orlando do in the final 30 seconds 
And how does St. Louis respond? They absolutely cannot turn, turn allow run, any more Rudy. points. Well, the XFL has delivered overall. This is the comparison with scoring offense and defense. If both St. Louis and Seattle win, it will come down to the combined ranked in the division with scoring offense and defense. The large edge is now held by Seattle. They score more than 34 points against Vegas and allow less than 34. Seattle is in. If both teams win, the only okay, real well, way you, you can see to is St. Louis. Spear is fucking acid. The only way you can see St. Louis advancing is if there are a ton of points scored by Vegas against the Seattle defense. Well, it's not over yet, low. So it looks like Anthony Beck just called the timeout to challenge. So some help from Steven Gonzalez on this challenge. There's one remaining. Okay. Yep, normal rush, no foul. After review, there is no foul on the play. It's first down, Orlando. Can't take it with you. So you lose the challenge. And what a success story the XFL has been in the city of St. Louis. And Orlando will just take a knee. Terrell Buckley learned a ton in year number one. He's hoping to be back for a turnaround with the Guardians next year. St. Louis, however, out to a standing goal from the home faithful hey, as they you put up the most points on, in the league you this year. To, right? AJ yeah, McCarron yeah, 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 yeah. with yeah, the record yeah, yeah. 420. We have a mission to unlock the dreams that football makes possible. When they told you that the dream was over, but here's the truth, your dream is just beginning. We are ready for football and an opportunity for everybody on the field, but throughout these 18 to 10 weeks. Ross wins the cape! Parker Romo, 57 yards, and it is good! Danucci, Gordon caught it! Gordon's backstepping, Gordon's gonna score! <laughs> Abram Smith, how about it? Another huge run, and he's in the end zone! They yeah. feed off of the beer oh, snake, we feed it off of the beer snake! Jordan Thomas just took advantage of his opportunity. I've been through a lot, man. I'm grateful for opportunity. My oldest, he's six, wanted me to really get back into playing. Dad, I want to watch you play again. It means a lot, so that's why you made the decision, brother. When you're looking for football fans, with undying passion. You have to play the game in St. Louis. Oh, it's a fake and it's gonna work! Get it! 64 yards! Jacor Pearson, touchdown Seattle! Silvers, they're gonna look for a double pass. Downfield, wide open, touchdown Houston! Win or go home. The playoffs are here. Wide open is Ethan Wolf. He's in. Touchdown, D.C. And the defenders will play for an XFL championship. From 4-6 and six to XFL championship game, the Arlington Renegades have won the South Division. They have worked all season for this. And tonight, a champion will be crowned. And here's Sal Canella. First down and room to run. Touchdown. Goes deep downfield and it is caught. Josh Hammond will take it 72 yards. And Luis Perez finds his receiver on the crossing route and roll for Brown. He is in again. The Arlington Renegades are XFL champions.
This is the goal I had. This was the goal when I first signed up to play in the XFL. What a game, what a season, what a league.